Welcome my friends to Heidelberg Castle for the second day's competition here at Red Bull Wallalow Legacy. The focus today, Age of Empires 2, with 16 of the world's best players assembling here to do battle for fame, fortune and of course their share of the $200,000 prize pool. Today we will be whittling their number down to just eight competitors who will make it through to the quarterfinal. Who are they going to be? We're going to find out as we get underway with the second day's action here at Heidelberg Castle. Welcome back to live coverage of Red Bull Wallalow Legacy. For our second day, it's my great pleasure to welcome you to our casting chamber. For the first time today, my name's Riley Knight, the host of this incredible event. Joining me today here, we've got T90 and Dave. Boys, we've rested up over the, uh, in, in the break since we last closed the broadcast, but we are ready to get straight back into the thick of things, and it's a cutthroat day today, uh, Tristan. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, it's a, a bittersweet day as well, but that's what happens with competition, with the joy you get from victory, obviously. There's the sadness of defeat, and mm -hmm. we're going to have some crazy elimination matches today. And uh, amongst everything else, uh, I'm most excited for, like, the first two sets. Yeah. The first two sets will be incredible. We're going to be sending people home more or less straight off the bat here, Dave. And uh, as Tristan says, there's, a, there's a, a, a bittersweet element to it. Obviously, we've already got four qualified players going to the quarterfinals already. Today, we're going to find the other four. So these players, they can't leave anything on the table. Yeah, and for many of them, I mean, this is the biggest tournament they're ever going to be a part of. Mm -hmm. or, um, I won't say that, but they've <laughs> ever been a part of so, so far. far. Exactly, <laughs> right. and it's the biggest tournament in Age of Empires 2 history. So it's absolutely massive for guys like ACCM who has traveled so far to get here and then unfortunately comes up against a beast like Tato um, and loses out. And now he has to face a star like Daniel who took Leary right to the limit if you were watching the B stream mm -hmm. yesterday. So there is a lot of joy and there's a lot of sadness today on all of the players on our parts and it's going to be incredible to watch. One of the really interesting things about this community of, of top players as well is just how tight knit there are. And one of the things that really, really stands out to me um, amongst the professional community of Age of Empires is the mutual respect that these mm -hmm. players have for each other. You know, there's some players who like to you know, a bit of trash talk here and there, but at the end of the day, there is a deep and abiding respect between these players, and they know they're all real contenders, and they're going to come, come here, give it their all. And win, lose, or draw, you'd hope that most of them are going to walk away feeling that they've done their best here in Heidelberg Castle. But let's have a look at what we're going to get up to today. We've got a few things to share with you about the way that the day is going to be run. To that end, let's have a look at, first of all, the prize pool. This is a, uh, well, over half a million dollars are being given away across the entire event and 200,000 of those dollars this, as part of this tournament here, the Age of Empires 2 tournament, of course, the final coming up next Saturday. $200,000, 60,000 going to the winner, 30,000 to the second place. And uh, the more math mathematically minded amongst us, Tristan, will immediately realise that what we're about to watch, these elimination matches, not just elimination on the stakes, but also these are essentially in their in their own right, two thousand dollar show matches. Yeah, two thousand dollar best of three. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's I, I don't think any of these players have ever played a two thousand dollar best of three before, so uh, that's a pretty big deal. Yeah. But obviously, it's the that, that's the minimum, mm -hmm. right? So whoever wins these early best of threes, uh, those players have the potential to continue on in the event, which obviously could bring yeah. so much more. So just in case you know the players who are sitting back there, getting prepared, getting ready, in case they needed even more pressure, of put course, on them, we're yeah. also now framing it as a as a two K best of three. Yeah. Dave, let's have a look at the groups here. Uh, 
uh, and uh, and remind ourselves of where we uh, where we left the tournament yesterday. Of course, we can check in first of all with Group A. You can see the Viper and Valesse already have locked up mm -hmm. their slots in the quarterfinals, but it's those names in the middle, the people who haven't quite got there yet, the ones who are still on, uh, still have a lifeline to get through. Who's standing out to you here in this, uh, in this group? Oh, I'm looking at Jordan and I'm thinking about that performance from Kingston yesterday and they are playing first today. Jordan was very confident when I talked to him mm -hmm. about this matchup, but there were a lot of players that, that predicted 2-1 Jordan. Mm. And that's a close set in a best of three, right? If you're losing one, you're only one game away from elimination. So they, they rate Kingston pretty highly. And that is a name that I think it would be a massive disappointment to him if he didn't make it through to the later rounds. Also, we see someone like MBL who had such a performance, mm. but he's not at the top of the group. He's not there yet. No, but he could. He could very well be. We'll move on now and have a look at Group B as well. Remind ourselves of some of the huge names there. And Tristan, very similar story. Massive superstars. We've got Hera already made his way through. A blistering performance from Tato sees him in the quarterfinals. But people like Leary, people like Mr. Yo, still yet to lock up their slot. Yeah, I mean, and that, that's the big story, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I think the biggest one being Leary, who's made it to four out of potential five finals, mm -hmm. uh, going into a set today, and there's a lot of uncertainty about him. For those of you that watched Leary play Daniel, uh, many people use the word throw a couple times there. Daniel had winning positions, could have won the first series, and then Leary loses 2 out versus Tato the next series. Now, again, take nothing away from Tato because that was mm. one of his oh, best performances yeah. ever. Yeah. But is this a world where someone who has been to four out of five finals can lose mm. and not make it even to the quarterfinals? Exactly. We may, we, I mean, that may, may be the situation that we find ourselves in here. Leary's going to have to dig deep, rally after yesterday's performance, make sure that he, you know, gets rid of any nerves or anything yeah. that's affecting yep. him and just plays his best game because he is one of the all-time greats, particularly in this format. We'll come to this format in just a second. One thing I want to uh, chat about very quickly before we move on to that, of course, is the schedule, what you'll be seeing today. And you'll note as we bring up this schedule, a lot of TBDs in this schedule because we don't yet know who's going to be yep. playing. Dave, our opening match, ACCM versus Daniel. This is an elimination match. Whoever loses this, they're packing their bags, they're going home. Moving on from that, whoever wins this will move on to face one of the other winners waiting in the wings. Mm -hmm. And I have to favor ACCM in this matchup just because of what I've seen building up for this tournament. Mm -hmm. But Daniel, I mean, you talked about it, Tristan. We saw clips from that match and he was awfully close to beating Leary. He was awfully close to not yet being in this tense of a situation. Mm -hmm. He's going to have to pull through. He's going to show, have to show that uh, the prowess he showed in the qualification wasn't a fluke. Mm -hmm. The prow prowess he showed against Leary wasn't a fluke and that he can take it home against ACCM. I still favor ACCM, but Daniel is a tough customer. That's coming up very shortly. Uh, after that, of course, Sito and Valas, as you can see on your screen there, that's gonna be a big one as well. Both of these players uh, have got a lot to prove. They've, they're coming here. Sito has, has been at, um, at Wallalo events before in the past, but never in person. We talked to him yesterday, Tristan. He seemed pretty, he seemed in a good spot, psychologically speaking, and I hope you can bring that out in the battlefield. Yeah, I mean, he was, he's basically saying, I, I've done everything I can, mm -hmm. I've prepared, and I'm going to play my best and I'm going to live with that. Um, honestly, I mean, in terms of predictions, it's a really tough set. I talked to Valas prior to him playing Yo, mm -hmm. which he eventually lost, but he said, I can beat Yo. Yeah. I could beat Yo, and he did not, but that just shows the confidence he has as well. So uh, it's, a, it's a tough series. I really think the biggest thing there is going to be like the big moments for Sato because Sato can produce those big moments. Mm -hmm. He makes jokes with me, uh, uh, you know, about like, what if we nerf crossbows a little bit more? He's like, no, then I'm not even a player anymore. Like things like that. Obviously, he's a complete player, but like those big early castle age, early feudal age archer moments are going to be huge there. Valis's macro is just insane. And we're going to be able to see all of that live on this A stream here. But for those of you wanting to check out your heroes on the B stream, of course, players like Jordan will be playing on the B stream. You can head over to twitch.tv TV slash Nilly underscore AOE. That's N I L I underscore AOE. And it's there that you'll see all of those other players that we're not going to be able to squeeze onto the mainstream today. Again, cutthroat Age of Empires for the opening stages of this tournament. Before again, we move on to those matches that we had all the TBDs in. We'll fill in those gaps and we'll be underway. With some of the most exciting and pulse pounding Age of Empires you are likely to see, the biggest Age of Empires 2 tournament to date. Who knows what's... I mean, it's very difficult to outdo yourself in, in, a, uh, in a surroundings like this. Red Bull have managed to pull it out for Red Bull Wallalo Legacy. It's so good to have your company. We know that you're itching to get to the games. And so right now, we're going to throw it over to our casters, ready, refreshed and raring to go. We've got Mem and Nilly standing by to talk you through the draft. Let's get to it. 
Hello everyone, what a day we have in front of us, uh, Nili. We were talking about all, all the games that we happened yesterday, but today it's a very exciting, but also very sad day for many people, because today every single game will have one player that is, is out yeah. of the tournament. 12 players left and eight of them will go home, basically. So lots of losses and from now on I think we have in total 13 series and basically in every single one of them over the next days and next weekend, obviously, if you lose, you go home, you are out, so from now on, no more mistakes allowed. And now we have uh, two players, ACCM and Daniel. ACCM, that is probably the favorite here. I think the draft is about to, to happen, but uh, after performance yesterday, we don't know what can happen anymore. So let's see. We are going to see now because we have the draft coming. And uh, ACCM highest seed, I believe. Yeah, he's the highest seed. He could decide if he wanted to be at the left-hand side or the right-hand side of the draft. Obviously, some small changes there, depending on like if you want to ban first, if you want to pick the map first, if you want to sit left or right, what color you want to pick, right? ACM, the highest seed, had the choice there, and we see the bans. Atacama gone, Northern Isles gone there. Daniel did not want to play that. And now we go into the home maps and Seems like ACM puts a tick behind what he wanted, which is Frigid Lake. A bit surprising to me. Okay. I mean, I'm not surprised about the bands. Like Atacama, Daniel is a player that likes to play like all in, very aggressive. He's a little bit unorthodox player to mm -hmm. play, right? Like, woo, the bull. Oh, that see? excites me. Aggressive. That excites me so much. For some people that don't understand, Nandy, why are you getting excited? We didn't even see the game yet. We saw a game of Daniel in the qualification, arguably with the best strategy we have seen in all the qualifiers together. He played Koreans on there, had the full wall, the tower defense played against an ad sex all in, beautiful strategy and execution. I'm excited for this pick. Is he gonna then, ACCM, remember that? Uh, we're gonna see yes. the preparation yes. here. Yes. We're gonna yes. see yes. the preparation yes. here. I remember the game like it happened yesterday, because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it was the, those Aztecs that are always so scary, and with towers he could I mean, didn't let the, the opponent mm -hmm. do anything at all. We have a Scholz. Just look at the ban from Daniel. Water. Yeah, yeah. It's gone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's gone. I don't want to see the water. And then Arabia, the camera outcrop. Whoa. I'm kind of surprised about those. We're going a bit into the enclosed potential maps here that I could see. Okay, no enclosed is going to be banned there. Uh huh. Kavasan still an option. We see more rust gone, enclosed gone here. Kawasan, I think we have not seen it. We have not seen Red Bull at yet, least right? in the in the main in the mainstream. We have not mm -hmm. seen Kawasan mm -hmm. at all, and uh, now the two options. ACM can now choose what is our starter. He got two options from Daniel. Is Kawasan banned? I think the villager helps him out, and this seems to be mm. uh, a clivity ban. It's a clivity to ban. Kawasan, our opener. We're gonna see now. <laughs> We're gonna see the map. Interesting. I think it's a very nice map. I like it. It has a lot of possibilities. I mean, I mean, if it has some water, it's. Mm -hmm. I think it's more like, uh, you know, a extra economy that can boost yourself, but doesn't mean that if you don't hit the water, you cannot win the game. I will consider that the middle probably is more important with the five relics there. Yeah, absolutely agree. Hill advantage, the extra berries, the five relics, but also water. You can have the better openings here and now we're getting into four bands each and well let's see how the villagers are going to fit how, how can you fit in three bands there the villager yeah that's going to be tight for him there in the corner byzantines band bulgarians as the opener and at six bands so not the biggest surprises here yeah well bulgarians well for but the bull yeah for the bull bulgarians it can be very dangerous okay hmm. I, I want to see korean band uh, or he has a plan. I mean, it's Korea's. not that I want to see. It's it, it all will, will it's all will tell us that uh, ACCN remembered those, like um, because Korea can be very dangerous. Mm -hmm. It's well, true that the place has played completely different since that one. We have not seen similar strategies anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. Basically, everyone is hiding strategies since the qualification stage is over. So, the the question will be like. What changed on the bull? Because lots of players said the meta shifted away there. We typically try to wall, but that changed. Lithuanians now in there, and now we need to squeeze a bit. Make Berbers a in there as well. So Bulgarians, the first band, followed by Lithuanians and Berbers. We're getting there, guys. We're getting there. Super, super exciting. Remember that the winner of this match is going to face a decent player, guys. <laughs> 
Indeed, he's, a decent player. Mr. Yeah. Yo is waiting. Yeah, it's okay. He, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> but but nearly um, two of the current champions has let's say Struggle. switch struggled yesterday, mm -hmm. and they are now for the other part of the of the brackets. Yeah. Because of that. Yeah. 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 Indeed. Well, we kind of knew that Yo Liri O'Hara, one of them, one of them, had to go down and be not going through with a 2-0 score, and therefore could face someone like. And right now, for people that already want to get excited for tomorrow, a matchup like Viper versus Yo or Viper versus Liri can is pretty likely. Can happen. Yeah. I mean, tomorrow, guys, one of the quarterfinals. If, if Liri and Mr. Yo advance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because also that's marks. also a question mark that mm -hmm. we're going to discover today. So tomorrow the quarterfinals are going to be in another level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Quarterfinals really. are going to be brutal. We're moving to best of fives then as well. Only one ban, so we might see some of those civilizations that are now typically banned, like Aztecs or Lithuanians, suddenly being squeezed in there again. So the, tomorrow is going to be a banger, but there are still lots of people fighting to get through there. And we see Magias and Franks, pretty similar civilizations. Probably yeah. Franks for Cabasan, then trying to get to the berries. And Magias Mah for Frigid Frig Lake? Frigid Lake. Okay. Feels like it. Okay, let's see Daniel pick. I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to read, but uh, my skills are not that great, man. Trying to read the, the lips, but I can't. Mr. Daniel. They are so focused, the players. Really, really focused. You cannot imagine, guys, how much they are practicing, how focused ooh, they are. Ooh. Saracens as well. Yeah. Yeah, Daniel told me like how much he was practicing for the qualification. Basically, one month, three, four sets every single day. Just took it so seriously. Obviously, the biggest tournament in Age of Empires history. Right? Oh, we see Turks again. That is the AM preparation. We also, like, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to disclose it, but I will just say, like, Daniel and Terra have been practicing. We saw Turks there. So that kind of screams like we see Turks on the bull again and trying to see the same strategy as Hera is going for. And we go for Incas. That's interesting. Aztecs was banned, but still, typically, if we want to see another civilization with eagles, we're going for Mayans here. Is he, is he having a different plan with Incas? For, I'm thinking about the maps. Like, Mayans is better. No matter what, no? Well, Incas have some advantages, right? In the sense that you already start with some houses. So typically, yep. you're population 28 out of 35. And this time, you're 28 out of 65. So that delays your houses a bit more. You can tower rush a bit more if you want to go for bull, because that's a bit cheaper, can use the market a bit more. So there are some options. Well, for the bull, now that you're you're talking, yeah. You might be right. It's a good option. If you get to Castle Age. And then in the the then it's eagle transition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, we will see. We will see what it's going to be because we have that uh, possibility. Uh, and what about Daniel on bull? I think it has to be Turks. I think it has to be Turks. But it has to be the Hera strategy. Yeah, but Hera was telling yesterday, I picked Turks because it countered a lot of archer civilizations. Then when I saw Bulgarians, I remember in the in the strategy. But let's focus on this one. ACCM is looking and he's thinking, it's going to be the last time mm -hmm. or I'm going to be there a few hours ago, a few hours later. Did, did they just increase the epicness of the music? I think so. God, I'm getting boost, goosebumps here. But then I want to ask you about that. It's going to be his last Holy time. Holy moly, man. With that walking? For ICCM? So, so confident. Ooh. You think he's favorite, Ooh. right? I think he might be the slight favorite. I'm really surprised how many people said ACCM is the favorite for them because I thought Daniel, as we mentioned earlier, so close to beating Leary. And obviously, crazy performance. Probably the most dominant player in the qualification, right? The first one to go through 4-0 as well against someone else that then still went through. So crazy, crazy performance there out of Daniel. I was a bit surprised. Let's take a look how much confidence he is putting into the halls of Heidelberg. Daniel won 4-0 to one player that is here, I think. It was 4-0 to Vallas. Yeah. Right? Okay. Well, look at Daniel. The American player, guys. I still support him, you know why? Why? His name is same than mine. Daniel. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah. I'm Daniel too. Well, people think that this man, but it's not. It's <laughs> not, amigos. But you can see. He's looking tired now. When he opened the door, he's changed completely. <laughs> and this now is his focus. Yeah, this is, I think, not medical at his right hand, by the way. I think it is a real 
like kind of winter glove. So it's, it's not really to stabilize his wrist there, at least that's how I understood it and that's what I saw, thought when I looked over his shoulder. I actually looked up the matchups there between ACCM and Daniel and surprisingly to me, 5-0 for ACCM. Wow. Last and there's a win, so see, uh, some series this year in the Deep Waters the League. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. And okay. Red Bull 3, they face each other. ACCM won 2-1 there. But they also had some really close sets there, 4-3. Never ever did we see a sweep between the two of them. Okay, so let's see what they are going to pick. I'm, I keep trying, I mean, I keep doing the same mistake. When we have this camera angle, I always keep <laughs> trying to look, to, 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 to keep an eye to if I see something, but no, <laughs> I cannot see anything. They are really far. And when the camera is going to be there, then they change. They change the angle. Anyway, guys, ACCM versus Daniel. After this one, we have Valas versus Sito, mm -hmm. and then we have the third series. Which one is the third series, Nelly? Uh, I don't really know if they already made public what series we are going to go for. I personally thought it was Dogao versus the winner of Jordan Kingston. The match that's happening on the B stream right now. And look at that, man. We can now theory craft a bit more. Kavasan, it should be Franks for ACM. Yeah. Daniel, a bit more of a question mark. Mm, it can be anything. Because Frigid Lake could be Khmer, could be Gojaras. So kind of Tatars for Kavasan, maybe? Because Bull feels like Turks. Huh. Oh, maybe Turks is a uh, mind uh, choice there. Just to confuse his opponent. I, don't know. <laughs> I mean, I prefer Khmer, Gojaras and Tatars. Yeah, but on the Bull, like, do you get to the spot where no. Gaja Gojaras yeah, yeah. are no, shining no, no. that much? Not there. Khmer? Not there. Probably you try to play yeah. fast. Has to be Turks. Ah, so what doesn't excite me that much either. Tatars, it's basically a completely flat map, so Tatars not really shining. And, and where you pick Saracens from from ACCM here? Because talking about civilizations, Saracens is so dangerous. You can pick Saracens in either the bull, like Incas or Saracens. That's the big yeah. question. If you want to put that on the bull. Okay, I think we're gonna we're gonna know very very soon. You can see the notebook there that is already down over the table. So we're going to see the civilizations. They are getting into the game and uh, we're getting absolutely closer. Yeah, completely ready now. Completely ready. I oh, mean, in this angle, come on camera. So so everyone, what, what, what they type there? No, because we want to put the 3D model that is amazing. And we're going to see the unique unit very soon. The production is also okay. Also okay, man. Yeah, I, I can agree <laughs> with you that it's also okay. Look at that. Didn't want to have the horse um, over the notebook. Yeah, over the notebook there. Um, getting it off the table. So pushed it a bit further in. And now some communication there. Probably messaging the admin. That's the civilization that I'm going to pick on this and that map. And Kavasan, the opener. And we see Franks yeah, on Kavasan. Not the biggest surprise, simply because there are so many berries. And Franks, if they get to the berries, forging them even faster. Forge and castle drops. I mean, uh, cheaper castle drop mm -hmm. as well, 488 stone. You can get the map control there. And what to counter this one? Gujaras? Gujaras could be a good counter, certainly. If you think, OK, he's going for a lot of forces. The thing though, Franks, they kind of want to take advantage of the berries and kind of want to take advantage of their farms. So typically not really contesting those side pawns. So whatever Sif Daniel is going for, he could actually count with one, maybe even two pawns. Okay. We have to discover now. I'm impatient. Man, uh, this killed me. <laughs> this killed me. I mean, I mean, I try to, to keep it, but... It's kill me. How, how you think? I mean, well, the players are just focused. I don't think they think in that anymore. And this is so exciting because this is like, um, now we're in single elimination, let's say. In some form. In uh, some, some form, form. because yeah, every yeah, game, yeah, yeah. Uh, every, every game, game matters, you know, yeah, yeah, eliminates. Yeah. So now, now we are going at some point. Ooh. Khmer. What? Oh, look at that beautiful elephant. It's amazing. That's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> okay, the waiting has been worth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The waiting yeah. has been worth. The waiting has been worth. It even looks like it's there over the yeah, table, yeah, you know? Yeah, like it's scary, like don't move because you're gonna, it, I mean, it's gonna go angry. <laughs> it's going to be angry. I'm impressed how still that you can sit there. Like he's not impressed. He has seen some elephants in his life, apparently. Yeah. Okay. Very That's nice. Crazy. Also, with this music, with this beautiful music in the background, 
Oh man, we are about to, to be there. Group B elimination. Daniel with his beautiful banner. The penguin. Do we know the backstory of that, man? I don't. Okay. Did you know? No, 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 no. Okay, I was going to tell. Okay, let's go, Nelly. Be my guest. Well, but that's a question for Riley. Riley, if he's winning, you have to ask about the penguin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's going to be a long one, so better maybe not in the interview. <laughs> Okay, then ACCM, guys, uh, people is so focused. ACCM is incredibly happy. I was talking, well, with both actually uh, this morning, but uh, not not too much, honestly, because they, they, they're, they're focused and but they are happy. They, you don't feel that people is going to be frustrated at all because they know that it's a great opportunity. And the most important is they know that the level is that close that it's not like, okay, maybe I can play my best and I still lose. Mm -hmm. Like, because yeah, the other yeah. player is not doing mistakes, and then he's having a, a small difference, and yeah, and it's game for the other. Yeah, but the Obviously, also... you want to be there. I think, I don't know what you think. Uh, I think, like, the minimal goal for all of them is being quarterfinals, like, less advanced group stage. Yeah, yeah, that would be yeah, for, uh, for all the players. Uh, some some go higher, right? Yeah, Hera at least. clearly wants to win. Yeah, yeah and at least. Kapoch, I talked to him, he's aiming for top 12, right? Because he's playing both games. So that's really tricky. True. We will see him later on as well, and it's going to be really interesting. Now take a look at the stats. Obviously experience, we had to go pretty far down there for both of them, simply because they didn't have a lot of offline tournaments for themselves. Obviously, played a lot of online tournaments, qualified for Red Bull events earlier, and now we are jumping into the game map. Ladies and gentlemen, game number one, Daniel Kemeres yellow in the south or on the left in the minimap in your screen, and Ace and Frank's blue on the right with Franks and Daniel Kemmer. I mean, Kemmer choice here, Nelly. First, let's analyze a little bit the civilization. We see that he's exploring already with the scout. And uh, what do you prefer here? I'm really surprised that we're adding that many farms just to go off this one. Like, as I said, like Frank's not really going for the water, but it seems like Khmer is not really opting for the water. So it might be playing pretty much like a raver here, seeing that the opening, especially both players pulled villagers away from gold. So scouts is what we will see both uh, opting for spearmen. And now we go for the first dock here for ACCM. I'm a bit surprised with that. Now three scouts for this two. Yeah, but it makes also sense because both civilizations are very nice with the with the farms. One, it dropped the food automatically. Mm -hmm. Khmer and Franks having horse collar for free, even castles with heavy plow is just an amazing bonus. Anyway, we have now the three scouts coming. He need to go back. Good thing here for Khmer is that well, you start with the barracks, so you have the spears. Otherwise, with this civilization that don't need buildings to go up, it will be tricky. But not not here. If the game go longer, always happen with uh, Franks. Longer, I'm talking in feudal age. Uh, better for Khmer. Better for Khmer because they can get to the tag called Bloodlines, giving them 20 more HP. Typically, Franks at 54 compared to the 45 normally. So you are better there at the start. But once we get the upgrades, Khmer having the advantage. Now the wood upgrade being squeezed in. So one upgrade there against two. And oh, that villager is exposed. Oh, sloppy, but Danny not walling that one in. Yeah, that's really bad because the spear you can deal. But the scout is just there. So that's one villager down. Maybe the spear is going to be in time to take that scout. Let's see if he's going to save oh, it. He's going to oh. save it. I feel he's going to oh. save it. Ooh. He couldn't, he couldn't save it, almost did it, but he couldn't. Well, this is more important than you think, because right now we see how ACCM has already the dock and working. Mm -hmm. The dock and working, and that's definitely not what you want, Nelly. Forging now for ACM as well, wants to go for some more attack. Also helps the spearmen, not only the scouts here. It's like Daniel has slightly better scout numbers here at the front. Now another villager being sent to the left-hand side. Great map awareness here for ACCM, and he gets the 1-0 to zero point advantage for now. He's sending already the villager to try to make that dock. He's now yellow chasing those, those scouts, but he's going to make it. Look at how much wood Daniel is You have to attack. But, but he has to attack. All right, like, oh, okay, let's good, see fight, the scout What? Why are we running? Oh, a spearman hid behind the berry bush there. Yeah, let's see. They're going, he's, going, he's going away, but can we see the dock? Can we see the dog, Mapu? Oh, he's going to lose the villager. I see 15 HP. Seems like he will get it. No, look at that. 400 wood in the bank, man. Yeah, that's the problem. That's a I real problem it. here. It's not a balanced economy there. 20 on food. That's great with Khmer even more. But let's see. Let's see. Now he's doing the plant line. So, Daniel. He's not being greedy. He's trying to go very, very aggressive. Is that another stable? It looked like it. Bloodlines is already in, so he's going pretty aggressively yeah. there. Still not on gold. Now only sending one villager. That is a risky move. Obviously, villagers can jump into houses, but not a lot of houses what around. Houses? 
<laughs> yeah, there's no houses there. Don't those scouts are taking out villains. He's already three villains down. He's gonna lose probably a no. There's gonna be four villains down, and this is no look at no looking good. Why you don't make just a house? In all the resources, guys, you need a house when you have Khmer. Because you can garrison those values, but he didn't. He didn't. So the advantage now for ACCM is quite solid. I know that he has the bloodlines, but his opponent, as you mentioned, 14, even plus one for the infantry. Both are going all feudal, hmm. and then now benefit ACCN just because of the village advantage, in LA. Yeah, yeah, pretty nice there. Has the fist still, only now really the production starting there for Daniel on water. Another villager could go down. Nice snipe there by ACM. Now an eight worker leader. Look at those villagers. They they saw how easily ca they can get attacked and they're starting to build some farms there. Don't you think that now Daniel, if he see this situation, he need to make upgrades like forging and everything? Because if he could afford it, he's at 300 foot. He didn't finish the stable either, man. Five yeah. villagers in the queue as well. Daniel not really getting the resources on the map. Yeah, but the, that, that's the thing. He has 27, the foot is going. Now he's going to finish that, that stable. The spears are coming. But the good thing is that he keeps some numbers. He's not so behind in numbers. 10, 11 for both players. And there is action all over. But he's still not getting any kills. I really believe that he needs to upgrade those scouts. Even more with double stable now. Well, he, he's getting the resources. He's going to go castles probably. But ACCM can do the market, sell some gold and go up. And this is exactly what he's doing. Look at the market on the left. In the meanwhile, he's losing a couple of villages, but oh my god, Khmer! Khmer make that Daniel even being behind is on the way to castle it faster nearly. How is that even a thing, man? I, I did not see that one coming. Did he cancel some scouts? Probably canceled some villagers. And those three scouts, they got five villager kills already. Maybe looking for a sixth one there. Hero scout who got four kills alone, but dies there in the end. Some spearmen trying to push ACCM home. But still, equal lead there for ACM, and he's fully walled, Daniel's still open. Yeah, but the difference is not that big anymore. We see now four really is different only, three even, because now he's doing fishing ships. Remember that he was late with the fish. He has now one fishing ship less, and those spears can defend. Finally, forging, and Khmer now, what? Do you think that he should go a little bit boomy approach, or since Khmer can, there's no ball, double triple is stable and try to go all in. The thing is, the center is just so, so important on this map. So something like double stable and a monastery feels really likely here. Maybe squeeze in some spearmen. And we see Daniel even going for more scouts. So that's maybe the light calf to snipe the monks and goes for some more spearmen, maybe even pikemen to counter the knights. Questionable choice. Okay. We see also how this is triple stable. Triple stable for ACCM with an amazing economy right now. 500 food, 600 gold. He's doing a dog, Daniel. Can see ACCM that dog, Mr. Mapu? Can see that? He cannot. Mm. Those are five potential fishing ships going to be gone, and that's good. But ACCM economy is still really smooth, Nelly. Yeah, absolutely. Military upgrades, by the way, three on the side for ACCM. Daniel only sitting at one, so you know, if we're fighting with even number, it would be looking better. Now the monastery there at the front, really important that Daniel does not lose those scouts. Typically you think, okay, scouts, they're not achieving that much in castle age, right? Comparison to other units that are out the map, knights, spearmen, but those are mainly here to snipe those potential monks, and we now we see the monastery out of ACCM. Very nice, very nice. Let's see if he's gonna keep those scouts alive, as you mentioned. We see the pikeman upgrade for ACCM. I didn't see that coming because he got triple stable so and then he's doing the pikeman upgrade it's true that he has zero knights yet now he has three on the field and work alley upgrade Village he really wanted to, oh he's gonna take the, the monastery i think this is important Should this is answer. really important it is not gonna make it it's not gonna make it it's not gonna make right. it he did it oh. he did it it's really important guys more important than what you think because those relics are there in top of that hill and with that amount of army few conversions can be crucial absolutely and now the scouts are fighting off against the knight there i don't think that accm will mind that one too much and now we are sitting under the monastery that will make it really tricky for daniel to get out there especially because to leave that palisade so it's not like a monk could spawn and go for some conversions while being protected behind walls there's no no money is on any of the place he's trying to make a tc that's the foundation but look at the scout look at the scout for ACM. he's waiting in the monastery hey don't put any monk outside i'm here mm -hmm. and 15 army 13 but that army is kind of tricky yes because now he's not in the middle. ACCM has everything in the middle. I don't know where oh, no. exactly the army from Daniel 80 is, because he also has some galleys. By the way, 
Daniel Eko KD 95. He took all the water. Check the population nearly right now. It's pretty sweet. Five workers ahead there. That's his major thing. But look at that. He lost all the scouts. He had five scouts re, uh, uh, arriving in Castle Age. Now he even built a sixth one. And only one more left. So big, big losses there. Has to build a monastery further back. And controlling the area, as we mentioned earlier, so crucial on this map. Seven nights. Seven nights for Daniel. 11 for, for ACCM. Biggest problem here also is the monastery. He's going to lose the monastery, so then he can even convert. Military numbers amazing for ACCM. This is absolutely great. He's behind the village, yes, but has three tone centers. Now he's raiding as well, and he got more army. ACCM is still looking really, really, really smooth because this double monastery in the middle can give him the center. Uh oh, and that also means some Double. relics. Also Jordan here. leading 1-0 there against Kingston. They're also fighting for elimination. Same stage there. And we see Raiders getting stopped. Daniel weathering the storm. But we need to see him contest the center because if he's now just sitting back and accepts the 5 versus 0 relics plus the town center of Franks in the center, that's a guarantee for disaster. Yeah, well, also those knights. Those knights are not even with the plus 1 armor, so they are weaker. They are weaker than Franks knights right now. He has the plus one plus one even a lot of pikes is gonna take the monks i don't know the numbers are similar but this looks a much better composition for azcm nearly the score is almost the same but i'm not sure if he he, he can come back from this there's so many pikes and the nice you need some upgrade but he has no resources to do it uh, this battle should be for if he's taking if he's happening it should be for ACCM really I think so as well especially with the monk there in the back could go for conversion pikeman uh, not the greatest engagement I think this is the best fight Daniel could take but still numbers were better for ACCM the numbers are better the numbers are better just look at the numbers 58 villains but now the military is starting to disappear with the military nearly try to to find the military now from Daniel Daniel army is gone and ACCM is taking the first game GG call ACCM with a very very smooth gameplay oh yeah the scouts were pretty active there the fight for the water he only took one point let Daniel do all the work there and it just felt they went into relatively even castle age timing and then it was double stable against double stable and one barracks and those pikemen just adding so much more damage there against the knights and it was tricky to take proper fights for daniel well that's the thing i mean both players goes, was having knights mm -hmm. knights for mcc and better upgrades and also he had the, the pikes well no pikes for, at all from from daniel what else you can do yeah, Daniel, like, he set himself up for the massive knight versus monk fight, right? He had the five scouts, ran around, but then kind of lost the control over them. Macro, obviously, really tough because we had double raids going on, fight for the center, lost those scouts, and therefore, we never got into the fight that Daniel actually prepared for. We also forget that he went a little bit, maybe too much into the water. I mean, he killed it, but mm -hmm. you have to invest. War galley upgrade, he made the galleys another dog when he was already behind with the economy mm. so that put him a little bit even more behind after that and the, and the fish it lose efficiency with mm -hmm. the with the uh, with the time and yeah. with those civilizations the farmers are okay for us <laughs> absolutely okay. really okay <laughs> heavy plow right yeah yeah that was so good and also we have to remember late few late ACCM had like four scouts one spearman left and found quite something what, what is that real <laughs> he's talking to you Nile. he's uh, talking to you something oh my god he's just thinking right now what he did wrong what he's gonna make now still the city is now we're gonna see the bull I believe because the remember guys that they can pick both maps the bull or frigid lake i believe he's gonna go for the bull and turks then but feels pretty likely and then he has the option between good tatars and gojaras likely going for gojaras and now if you are accm expecting the bull what are you going for uh, do you think okay he has to go light cap anyways and then i go to, uh, just go incas because if I we get go. to kamayuks i would be so good Saracens. And I explain you why. Like, mm -hmm. you go, you got the option with Saracens that if your opponent is blocking you out, mm -hmm. you are fine with the market. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, you have that versatility that you can get if you are stuck. Mm -hmm. If not, obviously Incas is a fine choice, but but it seems that Saracens can be more versatile in this situation. I don't know what you think. And we are indeed going for Incas. Interesting choice here for sure. Probably wants to go for some Eagle Tower aggression early on. Remember, we don't have stone at our starting base. So True. Tower Rush is limited to one tower. But if you buy, it's just so much better for Incas because their towers are cheaper and so can go for more. Look at that shaking share. What is he doing? <laughs> Wild. <laughs> is that a massage share? Yeah.
What is Peckforce doing here? I, well, oh, and I, he's I, smiling. Yeah. He looks like he got a good back rub there. Yeah, I think he's just um, a little bit nervous right now. Anyway, Inca's probably the safest choice according to the civilization he has picked for this map. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, I think it's kind of a counter to the potential Turks here out of Daniel. Now the big question mark, does Daniel think, okay, he probably thinks I'm going Turks because I showed it, like, or Hera showed it yesterday, and therefore he goes Inca's trying to counter. But then is Tatars or Gojaros a good direct counter to Inca's? I'm not too sure about that. But I don't like Turks either. Well, we saw them work yesterday, yeah, right? And he is indeed. Look at that yeah. beautiful Janissary. It's yeah. amazing, the Janissary, but uh, we saw it works. But I don't think it was because of the save. I think it was the player. Hera it just played player. so great, yeah. yeah. Pushed away from gold. Had the, the scout obviously did so much damage, right? Controlling the pawns there. And you couldn't really get enough spearmen out to defend, then control at the top. And it feels like Daniel is in pain. He's not, co he's not confident with that choice, maybe? He's like thinking, maybe I'm not doing the right one. Maybe I should have drafted another. It's so tough, right? Danny is an emotional player. We know that. Like He can tilt in online ladder games. Just imagine now, biggest stage in Age of Empires history. And so many eyes on him. Elimination in front of his eyes, facing an extremely strong opponent. It's so tough to keep your nerves here. Nilin, that, that matchup now could be Incas versus Mayans. Perfectly fine, he could have hit Mayans instead of, of, of Turks, yeah, for example. Yeah, the thing though. And then you go Mayans. Mayans is not gonna be better than Inca. Ah, yeah, slingers are a good okay. thing in Mesa World, man. It's crazy, it's crazy how much damage they're doing. So then you have to kind of play crossbow, and then you feel like crossbow against Eagles is that really the thing that makes you too happy. As we can see, players in the lobby there. But yeah, as we said, like Turks, it, it feels like. We didn't see the full power of Turks yet, simply because Hera was pushed so much out of his comfort zone, reacted beautifully there, but I think, although Daniel picks the same Civ on the same map, the approach can be very different, simply because Mr. Yo's approach was so aggressive yesterday. Well, I mean, I want to be here casting with you. Three games is possible, mm -hmm. as much as mm -hmm. possible, mm -hmm. but I want aggression in the bull. It's going yeah, to man. be aggression, man. It's so, such aggression. a short distance, resources scattered all over the map, so you have to play very aggressively. Like we, we discussed it, I think Krasini yesterday evening asked us, like, how do you like the maps? And like, for example, Dave was so like full, going full fangirl uh, for the bull because it's like so diverse with the resources, with all the options that you have, and I think we could have like three, four editions of Red Bull and meta could change from every single one. Yeah. Well, uh, the bull, when they go to Imperial, it's usually one TC, two TCs, if he's going one song. I mean, we don't see like super pause Imperial games in that map mm -hmm. because it's quite not possible. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's difficult to happen. It's just too wild and it's too easy for some players to get punished for some greed or not scouting some aggression. And therefore, just just a tricky, tricky thing to go into the very late game, and we're jumping into game two. We are in game number two. Daniel has a Turks on the left, yellow. It's a blue, ACCM on, on the right, Incas. Right away, one tower. One tower already for Daniel. What that means? His goal is forward. Goal for ACCM at the back, safer. Safer goal, that's probably why he put the tower. And then... That's a complicated one here. Why? As you said, no stone, and then you cannot use the market selling the stone as well if you want to go up. Uh, from the start, I believe, I mean, if he lost the eagle, which is important, you know, that uh, a bit better position already for ACCM having the, that goal at the back and don't be forced to use the... Uh, the stone to make a tower? I think he would never use the tower, right? Because Turks are playing defensively anyways. That's a weird house there, next to the mining camp, I feel. Like, that makes it really tricky for those villagers to escape. Yeah, he has the tower, but just imagine a tower at the bottom, some archers at the bottom, some raiding. Those villagers, they will have a tough time getting home or getting to safety. Scout opening by the Turk player, just like we saw from Hera. Yeah, makes sense. Well, even with that house, it's even, it's even harder. That villager cannot even move. Anyway, dog for both players. Remember, guys, we have a short face in both both corners, as you can see there. Did he... Is there? You Ooh, got now the tower. The and now the tower is useless for, mm -hmm. for Daniel. Yeah. And just imagine, like, if we go into a tower v tower fight, ACCM can put archers into his tower, therefore the villagers can work. If Danny wants to have the same damage output, he has to put villagers into the tower, repairing also cheaper for Incas, obviously.
Yeah, it's also tower tower cheaper, so if you want to buy a tower, it's going to be easier as well to make a second one. And that's why we don't like the, also that tower, that early tower, because you give... I mean, uh, the tower now is all those villages are idle, five villages idle. Well, ACCM has a lot of idle villages as well. Population is very similar, and then we are... We see the, the typical fight for, for, for the goal. We don't see yet villages... Okay, there's a village there for Daniel to try to lock the gaps, but ooh, he's sending villains as well, but he block it. He's uh, just giving this one up. This so is dead. not looking good for Daniel, or don't know what you think, because right now he cannot take the goal and he lost the stone. Mm -hmm. It's pretty, pretty similar compared to the Herald situation yesterday. More villagers, and they are going the long way, trying to get in there, some spearmen to help them out. We also saw a villager by Daniel, not trying to rush those walls. Interesting that he's building the house first. Bloodlines now. Wow. Ooh, that's something I didn't see coming. Wow, well, see, 60 scouts is quite a lot. He's trying to control the middle. Let's see that battle there. He's gonna take the spears, he needs to kill the villagers, but he's not, he does have the bloodlines there. Yet, and those scouts are not gonna deal with three spears, Nele. Yeah, yeah, no chance there. We would need an like, endless amount of upgrades there for sure. One of them, low HP as well. Goes for the double gate spot here. Doesn't delay his town centers because he obviously built the tower earlier, so has to buy the stone or b get there another way by mining. And now the market play by ACCM. Jordan secures himself a spot in the top 12. Kingston. Although he felt so promising, sadly not even a single map win. Yeah, well, we, we have to remind the, the viewers that that victory to Jordan and the potential victory here for ACCM or Daniel is another... It's worth this, this wins $2,000, if I'm not wrong. Mm -hmm. $2,000 more for the player, which is there's a lot, a lot on the line, you know, a lot on the line. He bought it, spec'd it. I mean, the Inca has power here. You can see how dangerous it is, and you can see how dangerous was that he was already with the tower that early. But there's an archery range here, but he has no goal. He's gonna go. Mm -hmm. Now the three spearmen. I think that is Ouch. good enough. Lots okay, but scouts. he need to kill. Need to kill those villains. And no, he's walling. Oh. He's walling. Quick walls. He's walling. And there's one spear alive. And now that spear is gonna take one of the scouts. No, but it's walling. Quick walls. ACCM playing it smooth, nearly. Absolutely on point. But an archer here to punish this one. So Daniel still with all of the aggression. Those two villagers won't do much here. And I think ACM. What are you doing with this barracks? Are you trying to get some eagles out? Because those two villains are dead. Yeah, but check ACCM economy, Nelly. Ooh. ACCM economy, guys, is about to click up to Castle Age and having already the gold completely fine at home, trying to push his opponent on the way to Castle Age and Daniel on the way to nothing, sadly, for him because he has no resources. He's not mining gold for a long time. This can be as Jordan versus Kingston, mm. a fast series. And we have to say that we were talking about this Today, probably, we're gonna see less <gasps> surprises. How did those Ooh. two villagers get away? Wow, that's really, really know. great by ACCM. They yeah. probably sent out... Ah, he sent out one more spearman, yeah. I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And therefore, the scouts were debated away and then ran away with the villagers. Nice, nice move there by ACCM. Yeah, why is so important, guys? Well, because he's gonna be up to castle. He wants to make more, more buildings and then he will send villages from his base, which is very, very far. That's not gonna happen now. And we have one minute, 20 seconds think he's in castleage. 1,000 food for Daniel, so if he sells the resources, he can go up to castles, yes, but he still have no access to outside. It's true that he can go all around, he's doing his kill by the number, and he can go light caps if he's going up, but it's looking pretty for ACCM because the timing, the momentum is again from, from the player from Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And it feels like Daniel's villager in the center didn't see the lots, didn't wall off the wood line, didn't wall off the entrance there at the bottom. Therefore, only one archer range, some houses here, but the archer didn't find the kills against the villagers here. Lots of nice moves for ACCM. Yeah, he's playing really well. Now he can buy probably another tower. I will do it. Why not? Go with the market, you make another tower, you take the wood, you take more farmers. I don't know if he's gonna make it. I wouldn't be surprised that he's gonna buy a stone to make another tower. He click all the villains by mistake or... No, he's not mistake. He's gonna try to take the tower, house... but he's a wall, he's a wall, he's a wall. You, you need to wall those. He deleted... No, the scouts are coming. Actually, he's gonna try to take the towers and with the scouts that are with forging, with the scale bar in armor, he's gonna try to kill those. 
Even the ships are going to try to kill the tower. Really. <laughs> He's this? setting everything. He's setting all, man. Even the ships. Unbelievable. Okay, and now look at those scouts. Okay. Memphian... All the upgrades. Is taking all the villages or not? Memphian and Castle Age. So those villagers would affect, well, would be affected yeah, by Blacksmith upgrade. But he doesn't have a single Blacksmith yeah. upgrade. He doesn't have any single upgrade. And then all the villages are down. The towers are down. And Danielle is recovering absolutely everything. Look at the population. Danielle is back in the game. But now he's open. Eagles are seven on the map. It's really tricky here. There might be raiding at the left hand side, killing some there. Plus, ACCM is getting the town center up at the top. So, while Daniel freed himself quite a bit, ACCM said, Okay, your attention is in the center. I will try to go for other directions to get my advantage there. But now he maybe need one DC. See, he recovered that and he had very good food income. Look at the food income for Daniel 24, now 17. He got some idols and then light caps. His tables all over. He need to go all in, I think. I mean, how, do you, uh, how do you counter the... the oh, the, the, oh, he, he opened the gate. He opened the gate. Now the Eagles are taking the fist, but he's inside. He's light inside. He's light cap. The light caps now are going to eat absolutely everything. He's going to kill the villain super fast. He's doing the houses okay, but now he's going to raid. He has the timing now, Daniel, to make the damage. Keep raiding at all. Siege now, or what is the following? Because there's no stone. I think he needs to keep the momentum. Ooh, tricky decision, surely. Yeah, I think Lightcap are going to achieve something, but eventually you need to switch into something else. Daniel is going for night. We need to see some more walls, and this is so ugly. Villagers will bug out. It's tougher for them to move around house. Suddenly, oh, just finishes that one, but that one eagle is such a betrayer. He has only five villages on gold still. Remember that with Tours, you are mining gold faster. He also did gold mining average, so he's in our right position. But this is so annoying. Mm. Still so annoying, but he lost. Remember, why he is Daniel now behind in villages? because he lost all the fish in the corner. Absolutely all the fishing ships are gone. Yes, they're gone, Mapple. You can click, go back, and go for the battle. Let's go, Mapple. Love you, man. Okay, and now look oh. at the Lycan. He's inside. He's inside. He keeps killing all the villains. Oh, man. He can't really come back, nearly. But the game now is amazing. It was looking so clear, really, really clear for ACCM is not that clear anymore. Oh boy, Eco KD 12 to 10 here and more Eagles going down. It is so tough to defend this one, right? Because Eagles, not super, super good. Spearmen too slow and he found so much damage here. ACCM just overwhelmed by the aggression of Daniel. Yeah, and he's still being annoying. Even hitting the, the gate, it's it, it's annoying because you're gonna get the alert all the time. Mm. Then it, you are distracted. Now it's coming with those knights. What a game we have in front of us. Absolutely. Really. And those villagers, they are just going down here. This is still open. Knights could come in here. ACM needs to wall this area, otherwise it could be GG. And not only that, look now on the left, Mapo. There's also two knights there going. I know that Mapo is going crazy because the, but the, the goal is getting attacked. I see the mini map. I see the eagles. It's open. The, the, the village on goal is it's, everything is open. There's no knights. Where we're not going to look. Sorry, Mapo, but you're going to be crazy after this game. Two Man. knights trying to defend this one. Okay, getting he's fine. Third knight coming he's over. Passing. Yeah, it seems it like Daniel passing. can defend nice. this one. Could have been a big raid at the goal indeed. Now trying to go for the next town center here. Only now the first upgrade for his Eagles. 16 minutes into an Empire Wars game. Monk's very important, but he's coming here. He's not noticing. Him. No, he did right away. But now the light gas here will be great. He's going to take two conversions. He took one. He took one. Did a micro both. He was both monks, I think, in the same night. Uh, might have been it. Yeah. I think so. He's not going back. He's doing now the second town center. We don't see a second TC here. At this point, if he's mining a lot of stone, then the tours can be also very dangerous. If we make a castle now, some Janis or light caps, the combination can be very, very tricky in LA. Yeah, Incas don't really have a good answer to Janissaries technically, and even something like Arbalest are an option, but that's something like Obviously, that would take so, so long. So if we get to Janissaries, that's crazy good for Daniel. But for now, three on stone. Couldn't really build a town center next to it. Still plays one TC. I think it's more likely that he's trying to make something happen with like knights and maybe some CA. And Janissaries is more of a long-term option. Oh, man. I just noticed double bit tax now. But no horse collar for ACCN. Also uh -oh. true that most of the food is in shore fish in the north and fishy ships on the right. These two arches not going to do so much damage because there is a fiery galley. The game can uh, can they stop a little bit and look at this. Yeah, I'm keep with the booming. Uh, what Daniel has to do now, Nelly, because he's slowed down a little bit this push or these ratings, whatever you want to call it. He's still on one TC while his opponent is on three tone centers. He needs to make something happen. And now I believe he's a siege workshop with a forward castle with 11 villages on stone and so many knights coming, Nelly. This is going to be so clutch. Honestly, like Monk defense, Pike, Eagle here. This is not going to be an easy fight for either player.
Oh, I, I, I mean, this amount of knights, this amount of knights is scary. I think ACCMC also is scary as well. He's sending absolutely everything. He's going to the TC. He's going to take the button. He's going to try to convert. Let's see, because this can be the last battle of the game. Hopefully not, because we want to see more of this. He's going to take the bong. He's going to kill all. Ooh, under the TC. It's so complicated. He lost a lot, Dilly. He lost a lot. And the most important, his army was very, very expensive. Why did Danny need to take this fight? This was not the timing he needed. Did he try to maybe snowball the pikemen? It was under the town center next to the monastery so easily like we could have seen some monks pop out, got some conversions and now you lost your army advantage. Now the forward castle is not really an option if you don't want to accept heavy losses. Well, let's see because it's still coming with the monk. The knights is still not plus two, while the pikes and the, the eagles plus two. There's the monk, but but more monks coming. No, no, no. Military numbers is in favor to ACCM. Villiers as well. Very nice game, but oh man, I think that gap he got, Daniel, is getting closer and closer. He's getting closer and closer. It's not a gap. It's not even a window. It's, it's, it's nothing anymore nearly and now we have all the stone in the world but where are we building our castle like super defensively three towns as town centers against one this would take so long to get to janissaries and push on the other side now what a wild castle is this man i was about to see him but i remember that we are in red bull you know what i mean because man this was going to be a castle and no man gg will play daniel couldn't do it i think he got the opportunity but he kind of I, will, I don't like to say this, but uh, not a throw because he wasn't never in advance, but that, that battle wasn't needed, as you mentioned. He needed one minute patient there. Well, the thing is, I, I can see how Daniel might have felt pressured there. ACCM with the great performance. He set himself up to defend against a big night push, maybe deny the castle. And Daniel felt, okay, I needed to get some more time. That's why I was so surprised that he heavily went onto stone, right? Because it felt like, wow, your army isn't scaling well against Incas. Maybe he also felt, okay, Incas, look at that. With well, their massive lands there, just reigning supreme. If we would have gotten to Kamayuks, something on a horse is not a great option anymore. So he needed to go for Janissaries, wanted to have that castle very aggressively and took a major risk. I wanted a third game, man. What are we doing? We have only two zeros. Well, what is this? Because it was looking that it's going to snowball for, for ACCM. But the sprint for ACCM, he has kept very, very, very calm. And in a position that you can kind of struggle and, and panic, he didn't. Mm -hmm. He played well. Yeah. Well. And I feel really bad for Danny now, right? And it might yeah. hurt even more that he was very close to 2 0 Leary yesterday. And now he's out of the tournament, finishing 13th to 16th. Such a promising player, someone like the, the most dominant player of the qualification. And suddenly, out that early, it, it kind of hurts. The level of the tournament is so high. Well, but what players has he, has he played? Leary and, and ACM. ACM. I mean, the level is insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it happens with Kingston. Kingston was yesterday against the Viper. I have not, we have not seen the, the game, but then Jordan today 2-0. Mm -hmm. Really, really, really great game plays, as you can see, guys. And if you have one, one wrong uh, decision, mm -hmm. you're done. He lost that battle, uh, no way to come back. ACM punished him so well there. Just went on to, like, the additional pikemen in both games against the Knights just going going with that strategy there and it just felt like he could defend the pushes so much easier then well guys uh, ACCM is looking at me like telling Nelly man can you call can you shut up guys we shut up Riley all for you thanks very much I'm joined here by ACCM a big win for you uh, are you feeling relief uh, are you feeling like this was an expected outcome talk us through what's through your mind right now yeah, um, I think I never expect that um, I, sh I should win, mm. but uh, I think in my mind I always want to win, so uh, with every opponent, so I uh, always want to win, that's, uh, that's it. Very competitive, yeah. yeah. So I want to talk about the first map, right? We've seen players be very aggressive. Yeah. You were a bit slower, a bit steadier in, in map number one. Yeah. Do you think it's better to be very aggressive or were you happy to be a play, play a bit slower? Yeah, I think I got um, better zip with Frank because mm -hmm. it's a uh, free brick line uh, for uh, the scout. Mm -hmm. So my scout got more SP. So I should put in the aggression and focusing him 
to react to my uh, action. So, and the game is going the way that I want. Yeah, so I got the game. You lost to, uh, to Tato in, uh, in the early rounds. Yeah. He's obviously playing so, so well. Yeah. It must feel good to be able to come back from that. Uh, yeah. Are you feeling confident for the next game? Yeah, I'm pretty confident right now and uh, really happy to play the next game. Well, ACCM, it's great to have you here at the castle with us, mate. Thanks for joining us for the interview and the best of luck to you in the, uh, in the next game. Yeah, thank you so much, Relay. Thanks very much, mate. Yeah. We are going to move on now and have a chat with Tristan, who is keeping, of course, a close watch on what we've just seen in that last, uh, in that last series. T90, talk us through some of the key moments. Um, yesterday was characterised by aggression, but as ACCM just pointed out, he was happy to take it a bit slower, a bit steadier in game one. Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting. He wasn't able to make it last year, even though he earned it. And uh, he played like a player who's been to so many LAN events in the past, mm. right? Uh, from his Civ draft to his emotions when he's sitting there at the desk, to all his decisions, he did not seem frantic. Everything was cool, calculated, and calm. Mm -hmm. uh, there were a lot of really important moments, though, which we'll talk about here. Yeah, let's uh, chuck some vision up on the screen here for people to have a look at. Uh, obviously, you know, I'm a big fan of ACCM, but I'm an even bigger fan of the Franks. I love watching this Civ win. Yeah, of course. Uh, like, like he said, it's like uh, with the free bloodlines, it's very, it's a bit easier, you know, to take map control early. Mm. Dan everything is going correct for Daniel here. Like Daniel's moving out. He knows he needs a Spearman to be able to match the Frank scouts. Everyone's going to dock at this point on, uh, on the map. And so uh, you should see the mini map that is already happening for ACCM. And Daniel's tracking this army thinking, I've got this and I can get my dock up in the north. Mm -hmm. uh, so as this is happening, I mean, the dock's going to go up. There were a few tiny things here where I saw nerves, though. You could see a villager. Uh, they accidentally brought three villagers forward. You can see there. So there's two additional ones. But yeah, so uh, leading up to this, we're going to see one dock go up for ACCM. Exactly what he needs to do. Immediate fishing ship. Uh, and as he's pressuring here, so Daniel's tracking the army. This is an important moment in this game because you've got the TC to produce eco mm -hmm. and then the docks, the next building you can produce eco in. And unfortunately for Daniel, I wasn't able to see the percentage on that, but I'm guessing that that's about 50% there. And that leads to, as we see the failed quick wall, like, again, he's down bad by five or six eco, just like because of that. And I want to highlight this moment because again, newer, newer viewers may look at that and go, it's just one bill, it's just one dock, but that snowballs, the eco that that dock produces, yep. the food that produces, that losing access to that, a huge setback. Yeah, and at this stage of the game, when you're Khmer, it's almost like a trap because you can hop inside of houses mm -hmm. to save your villagers, but you can't have houses everywhere. Mm -hmm. So here, you know, Daniel chooses to fight off with villagers because he doesn't have any spearmen and he knows he'd lose villagers if he ran to the houses. And then obviously great counter attack, but look at the difference. We've got more scouts for Daniel, only he doesn't get as many villager picks because ACCM behind everything we just talked about was already walling up. Yeah, exactly. That was the other key difference we can see here on the minimap. A nice defensive posture taken from ACCM with those walls playing open here, Daniel, with Khmer, which, you know, as you say, they can they have a defensive opportunity to jump into houses, yep. that sort of thing. But the setup just felt a lot cleaner, a lot smoother on, uh, on ACCM's side. Yeah, uh, and then you've got, you know, Daniel with some bright moments in this game. He's trying to get value from what remaining scouts he was able to break in. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, unfortunately, when you're behind the five, six fishing ships and the Franks have horse collar farms, your food eco is not going to be looking quite as good mm -hmm. heading to Castle Age. But, I mean, even still, like, this is in Castle Age now. Daniel's getting his monastery up faster and everything. But ACCM, something he did a really good job of. A lot of players just like to go night monk, night monk, night monk. Mm -hmm. He made a ton of spears. ton of spears. And which led into pikemen, which is so important when there's knights out there. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Daniel, you can see, he's like, I just talked to him afterwards. He's talking to himself. He's frustrated. You know, there's the pressure. And uh, I believe the reaction we might have seen from him in a moment was him getting frustrated even with his draft. Uh, as you know, there were, I haven't talked to him about that specifically, but I think he was like, well, I've got to perform in this one because otherwise this next one's going to be tricky for me. So we'll come back and talk about uh, uh, Daniel's sort of headspace here because it's going to be tough for him. But we move now to game number two, uh, this one on the ball, a really weird map. And we're still kind of figuring out sure. exactly how yep. this one works. Fascinating to see the Turks picked on it once again. We saw, uh, we've seen that already. But here it was, it went the way of the Incas this time uh, with ACCM putting together Again, another really, really solid performance. So that tower we just saw, so many players think, oh, my opponent's towered the gold. Okay, I can't do anything about it. But he could place a tower mm -hmm. still in the range of that to deny the gold. This as well, those villagers get picked off like five times out of 10. I think even with the comp competition we have here and the three spearmen are there keeping those villagers protected, mm -hmm. Uh, there's even an instance, as Daniel added, an amazing archer range where he could have trapped in the villagers where some of the villagers actually escaped for ACCM. I don't know how he did that. Um, 
it's an interesting map because typically you've got like your base, you've got the left, you've got the right, but you've got like so many different directions you have to run mm -hmm. on this map to be able to focus on things. Well, we saw ACCM take, uh, I don't know if we want to call it map control, but certainly spread out into certain different areas. I think there was a TC that was popped up in the top uh, there for the for the shorefish, which yeah. was really neat. And uh, Daniel just didn't have the same kind of presence, right? Like he was under that unrelenting pressure from ACCM to, to just keep him off balance. He didn't really settle into this one. Yeah, I mean, ACCM's favorite unit this series was Spearman, mm -hmm. right? And he made a lot of Spearman. He ended up getting into a lot of pikes. This is a big moment, though. Like, Daniel, he's not down bad at this moment, but he's really late to Castle Age. And so he realizes that this is a per the perfect moment for him to rush out with the scouts and the sheep, actually. Oh, this was um, a huge clear. This was fantastic. But yeah, I mean, he's going to be able to take out the towers, mm -hmm. free up his gold, kill plenty of villagers. And uh, they were Inca villagers, so they stuck around a little bit longer. But... Uh, in the end, I mean, that, that swings it back to the game for him. And, and again, like, you've got eagles running through, like, the, the, the side of the bull's head, yeah, yeah, looping yeah. out to the so back of the base. It's not something we see very often, just no, a it's huge not. amount of movement on maps like <laughs> and this. And then yeah. you've got Lightcab, like, somehow broke in here as well, which is that the villagers are actually going to work against ACCM here and chop through the wood. Like, this was crazy. We, we were laughing in the back room because there were genuinely, like, four or five different spots where there were armies at this stage of the game. A hugely unorthodox map, the bull. Yeah, right? like just I like I mean, it a lot. Not, not only just the way that it looks, obviously very appropriate for a Red Bull tournament, but yeah. uh, also just the way that it plays. Like, look out. at this. ACCM passes the gold, passes the wood line, and ends up going into the farms. Mm. <laughs> but that's not intentional. It's because he's looking at all this, and was, then it, Daniel this... probably had a WTF moment of like, why are there four eagles in my farms of all things, right? Let's talk about this showdown because this was huge here. Yeah, we... this is this is massive. I mean, the the, the key here for uh, Daniel was he needed to have a few more monks, mm -hmm. right? Because the monks uh, swing when it comes to healing, and the, the conversions obviously help bring some units to your side. And he tried to snipe the monk when the fight was starting with the light cap, but it's just, again, the timing from ACCM was always so good. And now you know you're up against it. Now you know you're behind economically. So for anyone who's like, why is he taking this fight? He felt like he had to force it. And if he he's has, has a lot, oh, excuse me, a lot of stone right now, uh, he wanted to drop a forward castle like we saw mm -hmm. Hera do yesterday. And if you can't take the position, Defensive we, castle is not going to do too much for you. And we see those villagers there on the stone, like they were desperately mining yeah. that stone that was uh, going to go up. And then we saw the last ditch uh, defensive castle attempt to go up, obviously denied by the, the reinforcements yeah. that came in. And Look, you've got to give credit to Daniel. I think he came here and he, he gave it his all. And I think he's going to, you know, to come back to the, the sort of where he's at psychologically at the moment, I think he's really going to be punishing himself. And I, and I don't know that he ought to because even getting here is a monumental achievement and pitting yourself against the world's best, uh, really putting the screws on Leary, mm -hmm. right? Turning the screws on Leary yesterday, going up in a thrilling matchup against ACCM. I think Daniel can hold his head high. I think he's done well. I think he will learn, uh, we don't know what's gonna happen over the next couple of days, but mm -hmm. I genuinely think he will learn more about himself and improve more off this tournament experience than anyone else. Yeah. He was close to putting the coffin in, uh, the nails in Leary's coffin, mm -hmm. excuse me, and then, there were things in this game, like there was a moment that I highlighted and completely forgot about it. Like 15 villagers queued at one port in, yeah. in, in Feudal Age. Yeah. That's nerves, mm -hmm. right? But once you've been here, once you've experienced it, and then you also showed during those nervous moments that you can beat Leary in round one, mm -hmm. I think you, you go back home, you're like, man, those are easy things to fix. Yeah. I clearly have the talent. There's a lot of people who might have the coolness, but might not have the talent. The but talent's he the hardest part. So uh, for Daniel, obviously sad that he's going to be out, but he's going to be back. And we, we talk about this, you know, it's kind of easy for us under the bright lights, the microphones, the cameras, like it comes natural, naturally to some people. Other people, especially in their first time, it's unfamiliar. It you know, we time. talked to Valesa yesterday, he was saying, I'm, I'm feeling much better. I'm feeling like I'm much more in the thick of things here. And so look, I really hope to see Daniel on a stage like this Agreed. once again. But uh, for the moment, for now, that is his Red Bull Wallolo legacy uh, coming to an end. So, salutations, Daniel. Congratulations, mate. You've done your best, but unfortunately for him, that's all she wrote. That's that. And that's all she wrote for you, Tristan, for now. Thanks so much for your analysis. Right now, I'm going to head down and talk, uh, talk to an old mate of mine who's joining us here. Fan favourite, MVL. Mate, thanks for taking the time. Thanks for coming and chatting with us. I wanted to bring you in um, to talk to you because you're waiting in the wings, waiting for an opponent uh, out of It's Doubt and Kapoch. One of them you'll be playing against. Yep. But I wanted to sort of check in with you. Just, just give us a sense of the atmosphere here, right? Give us a sense of how the event is, is panning out and, and what's your take on it. You've been at one of these before, of course, last year. Uh, the stakes have been raised this time around. How's the weekend pan out for you so far? Well, um, it's just how I expected it to be. It's a lot of practice. Uh, practice, having a lot of fun with other players mm -hmm. and very competitive, obviously. Mm -hmm. And again, 
a very good organization and it's just amazing to be here and looking at all these people filming and doing an amazing job behind the scenes it's I don't feel like I deserve being here, you know. Oh, mate, of course you do. What are you crazy. talking about? I mean, yeah, but all this just for us. It's, it's <laughs> just insane. for you. Just for you. Not for us, but like, <laughs> it's, it's insane, you know. Like, well, look, I mean, yeah. thousands and thousands of fans around the world love watching you play. They love your attitude. They love the uh, what you bring to this game, the energy that you bring as well. And uh, it's been great to hang out with you. I mean, on the bus today, we were having a bit of fun. You were, uh, I was giving you some tips playing chess. Yeah. You were, you were, what's your ELO on chess? Uh, 1300, yeah. 1300, so I was helping him. I was telling him how, like, if you get a pawn to the end, you yeah. didn't know that. Like, if you get a pawn to the end, no, from the it's queen completely and, new for me, yeah. And then he cheated at one point on the app as well, somehow. A lot of, there's a lot of scandals yeah, in that. You moved two pieces, pieces in yeah. one app. Yeah. Did you do that? You want to talk about that? You want to address those allegations? Yeah, the, the castling, it's called. It's he moved the castle and the king in the same turn. I was, I don't know how you hacked yeah. the mainframe of the I app did, or something. I did, I did cheat, yeah. I don't know what's going on there. And yeah. he's admitting it. $400 million yeah, for, for sure, for sure, yeah. Anyway, um, there's a great spirit of competition. You right. lost one of those games on the bus and you were very, very unhappy about it. And right. you are really a competitor, right? Like, you, yes. you have a burning drive to win. And, and that can make all the difference in a tournament like this, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, if you don't, uh, if you're not competitive, you won't uh, reach very far, I believe. So it's really, uh, really important to have that mindset that you just want to win all the time. And mm -hmm. uh, if, you want, uh, if you want that, you can get really far, I believe. Well, how do you deal with the lows then? Because obviously winning, like you talked about last year, your, your win against Terra, massive, still talking about that today. And obviously those highs, you can't have them without the lows, right? When, right. when you bomb out, when there's a, a sense of pressure on you that you've really got to perform. What's your approach to dealing with that as a competitor? Well, uh, I uh, I don't like losing. Obviously, it's bothering me for a week or so, you know. But um, as the time goes by, people forget, and so do I, mm -hmm. and move on to the next and try to search for a better result. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you know, in, in searching for a good result here, you've talked about maybe you're not at your most prepared. Uh, I don't know if that's a screen. I would certainly put that, uh, you know, I think that's within your range. Talk about, oh, you know, I haven't been preparing and all of a sudden, bam, get in there with, uh, with the high level strats. But um, hey, I'm not lying when I say it though. Well, like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. You yeah, can yeah. people off. Um, but, uh, you know, after a, an incredible performance yesterday, right. Where are you at? Your confidence must be must be higher than it was at least 24 hours ago, right? Uh, well, my confidence raised a bit when I beat Jordan, but it got beaten down to the ground when I lost against Viper. So we'll see when uh, when uh, I play today how it goes. Mm. And what about going 0-8 on the chess app on the way to the... 0-8? Was it 0-8? Oh, it wasn't. Sorry. What was it? Zero, oh, zero 0-9. Um, did that batter the confidence at all? or? <laughs> I'm not going to ask you. <laughs> he doesn't have anything I don't to want to be trolled that. anymore. <laughs> Mate, you're a joy to watch. Um, yeah. Many people love watching you play just because of what you bring to the game. Uh, you know, you get characterised as, as a somewhat chaotic player. I, I don't know if you appreciate that label or not, but um, mm. certainly unorthodox, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, is that is that how you look at yourself? Like, what? How do you characterise your own play style rather than us telling you how you play? How do you uh, look at the way that you play? I'm a kind of guy that gets tries to get to clo uh, as close to meta as I can without watching any builders or uh, anything. Oh, natural. So I'm basically improvising a bit where my villagers go. Mm -hmm. uh, just because I'm a bit too lazy watching recorded games and trying to learn where to place my builds at certain times, it gets a bit chaotic at times and. Then I have to start improvising. I think so. Yeah. But, but I think there's a level of strength in that for you, right? Because if you're playing against a very cut and dried orthodox player like Jordan, who is who is very good when there's a plan to stick to, mm -hmm. you throwing that spanner in the works, I think that sometimes gets you some equity, right? It might, but it's not really on purpose. You know, I try to play the perfect game, but it doesn't end up perfect all the time. Sometimes it ends up really well. Like I think my strength is economy booming, mm -hmm. etc. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know what to say about my style. It's just, I feel like it's pretty similar to others, but I, I don't know how to perfect it, honestly. Well, I always learn a lot watching you play. Um, one of the other players, I'm not going to tell, I'm not going to say who, because I don't want to throw them under the bus, but uh, uh, one of them said that maybe I learn what not to do by watching you play. But in any case, it's always an educational experience watching you play. And it's always great fun to chat with the NBL. Thanks for being a good sport, mate. Yes. And, right. uh, and best of luck uh, in the matches that are coming your way later on today. Thank you. Well, that's it for us here at the desk for now. We're going to take a quick break and show you we've got some vision lined up for you here for you to enjoy. And on the other side of this, we will be back with more 
Age of Empires coming your way. We've got another draft. We've got another elimination match. So stick around, everyone. We'll be back live from Heidelberg Castle in just a few moments. My name is Hui and my nickname is ACCM. I come from Vietnam. I lost in the qualifier one, but on the qualifier two, I picked ducks so I can qualify to the main event now. Yeah, I prepared for World Lois playing rank, also practice with my partners a lot. My practice is pretty tough because every opponent is really strong. I think it's super tough one. My most fear opponent is not on my practice. So I'm pretty confident. I think I need to be confident versus everyone. No fear from me. We are back, we are back guys with another series in the uh, well, just about to happen, Sito Valas. What a great interview with MBL. After how many years he said, maybe I need to start to to improvise to perfection. Uh, yeah. Maybe ten years. He he is wild, <laughs> he's wild. I actually um, also watched over his shoulder yesterday when he was playing chess. Do you know his favorite strategy? Fast castle into GG. We are reading for the draft, guys, for the next series, you know? Not yet? Okay, so now we need to make you another joke, right? <laughs> because it was GG. <laughs> well, actually, when I, when I was listening to NBL, and now we will talk about Sito and Balas because they, they debuted here. We're going to see the first time on the, uh, on the main, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on the main stream, you know? And for one of them, can be the last one. That's true. It, it it's has very, to it's be. Very, it's very sad, yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's what it is. I mean, about the NBL that he it was doing the, the interview, I, I really... Do you think he's a meta player? No, no. Like, I, when he said that, I, I'm like... Felt so wrong. And if you are not checking recorded games, can you? Be, can, how can you be a meta player? Well, if, if, if you are as smart as the combined group, uh, like all sharing the information, then you can get to meta. But like that, that's not it's how I would think it would work. And like everyone is saying he's the player furthest away from meta. No one understands it. And he says he's a meta player. He couldn't define his style. So yeah. that, that is playing a lot. Guys, the draft is absolutely ready. And we're going to see Sito Valas. Civilizations, maps, and absolutely everything that they're going to pick. Sito, Higer Seed, Mr. Lulil. Yeah, he can choose there as A, and Sito did choose to go for A, therefore starts ban first, starts to go for what looks like to be outcrop, outcrop. as the first ban. Then Valas has a ban, then we go for one Civ choice each. That looks like Atacama to me as a ban. I didn't, I, I, I couldn't see it, but. I'm not sure, to be honest. Good eyes, good eyes. And the pick looks like Acclivity. Okay. Well, we have the overlay there, so we want to see now, absolutely. Yeah, it's the Wasata camera. Good eyes, man. Mm -hmm. Okay, was. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> it looks like Balas is a bit surprised by his own choice. <laughs> not really, no, no. He was thinking, okay, what am I going to ban next? And closed a uh, map that he does not want to play against Sito there. Could be wild late games for sure. Map 3 will be interesting between three of them. I could see something like Frigid Lake coming up there in the end. People might be asking a lot, like... People is not picking Arabia as a, as a whole map. Do you think that people is not picking Arabia because it seems to stand that everyone there's nothing to discover? We had Arabia multiple times yesterday, actually. I think it's a weird home map. It kind of tells the opponent, I think I'm the better player than you. Except Arabia and we will measure our pure skills, not like drafting skills, not really the skills when it comes to preparing wild strategies and Arabia banned here. Now two choices for Sito. I think it is between Frigid Lake and the bull. The bull so is gone, free? so we're gonna. Oh, now I feel smart. Lake. How did I? Oh God! I was, sometimes I surprise myself. I really like all these three maps mm -hmm. quite yeah. a lot. Uh, Frigid Lake. I don't think we cast it yesterday to, together. This map. Frigid don't. Lake. I think we didn't. Yeah, 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 we yeah. didn't cast this map yesterday. Clivity and Kewasa. And now we're gonna see the band, guys. Remember, three civilizations band per player. Yeah, uh, let's see. It's very common to see Khmer in Frigid Lake. But Jaras uh, could be an option Jaras as well there. Cavalry we have Magyars, in map, right? indeed. Yeah, that's often the case. Maps are pretty open and, well, something that's strong in Castle Edge. Berbers was an option multiple times. 
I will be curious. Yeah, remember guys that three lake have you seen the minimap, but if you don't know, it has a, a lake in the middle. Also, it's shallow under the DC, so you cannot make uh, farms. farms. So you have to expand already from the start. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you, you prefer to have probably that mobility. You know? yeah. And Khmer used to be the best one because you can't add farm around this one, and it is really tricky to farm around the mill. But new change there in the map between the qualification and the main event that the mill is a bit further away and therefore it's easier to farm around it so relatively speaking Khmer slightly nerfed on this map okay Franks is already banned so we're gonna see many cavalry saves probably bans in the in this one because Kawasan potentially has also you know similar civilization choice than free lake Bulgarians already banned Kavasan, you could play something like Aztec, something we rarely yeah. see on Frigid Lake, right? Because one dimensional push could be an option. Magia is now gone. Still, I see a lot of camels here. Wow. Hindustani is an option that we didn't mention. Eclipity, we typically see civilizations with double archer range approach. Aztecs gone. It feels like Sito is banning a bit against Kavasan. Don't yeah. you think so? Pretty Franks, much. Aztecs considered to Pre be strong Kavasan. Pretty much. It's the whole map, so maybe he wants to secure his whole map uh, and uh, try to... Uh, now Dravidians, he changed quite a lot there. Why Dravidians banned here? Is it great maybe for free the lake? Dravidians are strong on... You are gathering the... Dravidians, you can open double archery range, right? Yeah. Really good on Eclivity, maybe he wants to play more of a stable game. Yeah. Vietnamese? No. Something like... I, I see Mayans here, man. Like Ma Mayans are extremely yeah. strong against the things that we have here. Ethiopian is also an option. Still going for Khmer. Yeah, well, it is still going for Khmer. Very solid civilization, we have to say, in uh, in these maps. And uh, let's see now what Valas is going to pick. Now he has to pick two civilizations, right? That's correct. Goes for Byzantines. Good choice for Frigid Lake. And Ooh. Lithuanians can be played on all maps, kind of. Yeah. Probably Kavasan. Yeah, we have to remind to remind to the viewers we have recovered already the, those 150 foot extra in a mode like Empire Wars. Mm -hmm. If it's important in random map, in Empire mm -hmm. Wars probably even more. Absolutely, you can just go for the scouts earlier. You could go for some eco upgrades and Lithuanians. If you are up to Carthage, that like 30 seconds earlier, that means earlier monastery. And if you get to those relics, your knights are out of control. And now a civilization that is completely different. To, to any other, mm -hmm. the Saracens, that you don't know what your opponent is going to do, even if he's doing, even if you know that he's going to make the market early and going to make market abuse, but it can go arches, it can go then double stable, siege, siege forward, or whatever. And then we have Britons and Hindustanis. Oh, uh, Vala civilizations. It scares me, man. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they scares me. They're all <laughs> very, very good save. I'm surprised that we didn't see Gojaras at all. And we're going for Ethiopian. So pretty archer-heavy approach there. It's like Ethiopians could be a good one for Eclivity, running against Britons in a matchup that we have seen multiple times, like this there, and then something like Khmer. Don't really see what he wants to play on Kavasan, if it's going to be Tatars, if it's going to be Saracens. Saracens, obviously, in nice timing, but Lithuanians should have the advantage if we go for that matchup. Personally, I prefer Balasifs. Mm -hmm. I okay. like them. Yeah. I, I feel that he's more versatile. He has cavalry, he has Britons and archers. Hindustanis that can counter everything. Hindustanis, yeah. Against Khmer there. Can counter everything I, I, at some point. Mm, I'm a bit surprised by the early Khmer pick, I have to say. Well, you can pick later. By, trying to pick up something like, oh, oh, Valas? Valas looks heavy. Valas is heavy. He said, yeah, go, you're not running through the camera. <laughs> Valas was like, oh, they, they said my name a bit too often. Yeah. But he, he was, Valas likes his draft. You couldn't see. He, they were walking, and mm -hmm. we were surprised that they were walking here. Mm -hmm. And then he even stand up here. He was looking to. He was going yeah. to come. Yeah, yeah he was he going was to come. Talking about the draft a bit. Like, yeah. Did you see how I drafted him? He got Khmer. Yeah. <laughs> and people say that he's not talkative. What are you talking? Yeah, Balas. He 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 isn't acting quite a bit there. Getting in some jokes there. A really nice situation for the whole tournament. And now, guys, we're going to see how confident and happy is Sito with his draft because we're gonna see the first player. He's so focused. I know that he said yesterday that he has a good mindset, that he's not going to be um, sad if he's losing. Mm -hmm. I believe to some degree. <sighs> you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 I think he is happy for the experience. But he wants to win at least this series mm -hmm. 100%, yeah, yeah, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. And he is going into it as a favorite, right? Not a lot of sets where he goes in as the favorite. So um, I'm, I'm thinking 
it would break him a bit if he like put in all the work. Obviously, lots of discussion about him. Practice heavily with people out of Group B. Then a week ago, we had the change. Group A, B, a big mix up because of our uh, replacements. And Sito therefore was put into a group against players that he heavily practiced with. Not really happy with that. But Valas, I think something that he should consider to be one of his better matchups. I, I really don't know here. I, I, who is the favorite after the, the, these choices? But well, let's see how confident he's going to feel. Valas, the first time that we're going to see also in a, in a LAN event. Mm -hmm. And look at that walking style. I yeah. like it. He's like a tourist, right? I like it. I'm here. I'm enjoying. And you might think that I have nothing to say, but I have a lot to say. <laughs> who is the favorite for you? I think I would say Sito, but it feels not that clear anymore compared to before the tournament. It felt 51, like... 51... 55-45. 55 for Sito, That's something that I feel is absolutely reasonable, yeah. We want 2-1-1-2, one, one, two, please. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, really? yeah, okay, yeah. okay. We want that. Let's see if now I really believe Valas, for how I, I know him also from those games in BF. He's going to take some notes, okay. I think he knows exactly what he wants to do. Okay. He's doing this for the camera. You, you know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's just telling, pin, pin, pin. I got it. Really? Yeah. I think he knows what he wants to do. He's looking, he's intimidating already, Sito. Look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. He clearly looks very focused there as well. Sito already prepared his draft, kind of, it looks like. They're already typing, he's, preparing, he's really posting too. the game. And, oh, look at that. Oh, with the sword. That's a scare me, sorry. But <laughs> <laughs> Cannot comment about that. Not anymore. That doesn't scare me anymore. What a nice smile. Voila. So serious, but uh, he's smiling, I tell you. How much I like those shots. Really gives you a, a feel for them. And we see Sito's speed, absolutely crazy. One of the fastest players that we have. We have to say, though, experience, 6 out of 10 for both of them. Never had a real LAN event. I think Sito had one like French local one, but nothing comparable to the stage that we have here. I have to disagree here with you, Nelly. In Valas macro, mm -hmm. he has a very, very, very good macro. Okay. A very, very good macro. Let's see. Now, probably it's not going to make it, no. But look at the head to head 16 games in 2022. Wow. We said 55 45, but now <laughs> maybe that makes you change a little bit what you think. 50%. Mm -hmm. This is what we want. Close series. This is, it's a elimination, but we could call a decider because for them, it's a decided mm -hmm. match. Absolutely. The loser goes home. Yep. It, it is that simple. And we can say that for all the next 12 series that we are going to see in this event, because we are day two out of this four day event, obviously quarterfinals tomorrow. And it's important to remind, I don't know if we have uh, said already that after this one, after this series that is happening right now, all the cities remaining from the tournament, we're going to see now in the Red Bull main channel. Mm -hmm. We're going to see all the games. So the winner of this series will face later today, here live on Red Bull channel, Leary. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a colossal task as well. Leary. That after being that, Leary didn't want to be in this position because probably he's going to feel favorite. Probably he's going to feel favorite against yeah. any of these players. Probably, and might be the favorite, but his brackets are not as easy, in quotes, mm -hmm. as it could be before. And I feel like Sito and Daniel, obviously both in the same team, or like both, both not, not in the same team, but like practicing so much together and preparing. And I, I think actually they're they playing are in the same team. team. I was just team. surprised because no. he didn't wear, oh, he wasn't wearing yeah. his My Insanity shirt. But That's they, why they I was are the same team as yeah, well. So, yeah. And they're preparing together. And you saw how much Leary struggled against Daniel there. So I think a wild one could be upon us if it, it becomes Sito versus Leary. And Sito feel good with the Arches approach. Mm -hmm. Leary has been yeah. always loved with the Arches. Yeah. Sito too. You, you, we have seen the civilizations. If we can put the draft there again, it will be great. So we can analyze what is going to be probably the first game. Well, we have first the Khmer. No surprise. Frigid Lake. On Frigid Lake. His first pick there on the neutral map. It feels to me like, yeah, it is a really strong Civ and probably one of the best that you can pick, uh, arguably top five pick, but it is not that much better than the other picks on this map. That's why I'm really surprised that he focused on it so, so much. I believe he's going to go f aggression in few of the late, because if you go castles and you want to go also arches, Khmer don't have Thumbrin, 
so not a great one in this one. And what is what we're going to see then for for Valas in this one? You think it's gonna be uh, Hindustanis? It's Hindustanis. probably what we kind of expected, right? What about Lithuanians here? Oh, you see that in in in, in the north. Kava Kavasan, Kavasan is where I see Lithuanians, oh, right? Very good Going opening. for the and for the relics, for, for the, the relics, relics in the middle as well. As well. You take yeah, the relics yeah. and then how you stop those knights? Yeah. Those five plus six even. In <laughs> yeah, and Hindustan is indeed what we are seeing. Plus Lithuanians good if we think like Saracens could be an option on Kavasan as well because you go for those faster skirmishes to counter the crossbow lens. So could be another good option there. I think Lithuanians, it's strong choice on Kavasan. That's why we but, see. But honestly, Sito uh, uh, here has to kill early. I mean, you don't want to go late game against yeah. Lithuanians with Absolutely. Kemmer. Absolutely. I mean, tell me a counter. Even mid game. I think this uh, is going to be a pretty wild one. And I wouldn't be surprised feudal. if Sito is trying to play a feudal in here. Like double stable, double archer range, just really put on the pressure on Valas because Hindustan is like, yeah, they have a slight advantage with the cheaper villagers, but in the grand scheme of all options that you have in Fuel Age, it's not that, that big. So I think Sito, if he plays this hyper aggressively and shows how good his micro is, Balas needs to be honest. Tippy and toes. my question is, are you ready for that crazy aggression, Ellie? Really? I'm ready. I'm ready. Is the chat ready for that? Crazy aggression, I hope so. We want to see aggression. It, I mean, I don't know because he doesn't express too much. So, are they in the game? I mean, I think they are in the game, and we're gonna be in the game very, very soon. Almost in the game. Thank you, thank you. Freezy, Freezy. You guys, I said yesterday, Patrick, the production, sorry. It was Freezy. It was Freezy. He was then all the night, man. Why you call me Patrick? It was Freezy. But, ladies and gentlemen, we are in game number one. Sito, Chimera is a blue on the left. Valas. On the right, yellow, Industanis. And let's see the opening. Is stable already for Valas? Is stable for Sito? Kind of expected, Nelly. But also, we can see three villagers kept on gold. They're one building the house next to it, meaning an archer range is going to follow up here pretty damn soon. So it is the aggression from Sito. Archer range coming in right here, right now. He's already doing the archer range with no village on gold for Valas. But this is great. Not only because he's denying, he's not anymore because he sees the village on gold. But you know what is coming, mm -hmm. which is very, very important to explore. We see many times how the players are sending the scout very early. Obviously, if they can pick a village, it's great, but you have the loom already. It's not easy to pick, but you want to gather information. Right now, there's two villages, but there's two scouts as well. It's annoying, but he's still both are attacking. Mapu is going to have a really sick game here. I'm... I'm Oh my god, one village down, and the archery range is still not up, but he's another village down, both already doing the damage, Nelly. Oh, and getting some more damage on the scout, they're pretty sweet as well. And Hinostan is one of the favorite saves apparently here for Valas, pretty strong performance. And we see another villager being attacked, shouldn't really find the kill, but Sito finds quite some damage. That's the statistics, it's really, really nice to be to be there because we can also feel how the players just feel confident for whatever reason with some civilizations. And that's another villager is gonna lose. He might lose another villager. Very active, both players. He take another village, two villages down. Still is okay for for Valas because he's also putting some pressure on the left, as we can see. He's gonna take another, and there's another village down. They are doing exactly the same, nearly. Wow, Iku KD 2 2 here, not even four minutes into the game. That's a bad fight though against the Spearman. Oh, big loss here for Valas. Low HP there tries to disengage. Archer Spearman are coming in. Sito exactly going for the aggression that we kind of tried to predict. Yeah, they, they are going aggressive. Both players actually. Four scouts, three spears. Four scouts. The number of scouts with the mobility also matters a lot, nearly. And now he's getting the numbers, Valas, with those. But Fletching is there. Second archery range already. You need to wall there, Valas. He wall it. He wall it. He's on point. He's now going to try to put the village back. No, but he's ready. He's ready to rumble. There's two villages. One village more is going to be down for sure. There's another that if he check, he's low HP. And if he check, he can't take it. He didn't because there's a lot of going on right now. And villager picks are nice here, but this game could be won by military count. The Spearman gets some nice hits in. And military count right now, 12 to 8. A lot of archers already next to the wood line. This could be troublesome for Valas. But he's housed. Now Sito is housed. Not anymore. He has to be careful. He's going to send the village back. Going really, really aggressive here. Sito taking another village. But it's still 3-3. Three, three. And remember, three, three. you can be closer to town centers on this map simply because there are fewer villagers around this area and therefore the damage output is not there. But military-wise, that's a big problem. Valas late with the second archery range, first archery range behind there as well, pulled the villagers away from gold. And KD, in 
Nine to six, so kill three more military. Yeah, he has the archers there, but I really believe that here in that spot where there's not a mill, what perfect tower. A tower there to cover all that area will be good. I really think that Sito did already. I see 75 stone only for Sito, so he made the tower at home, but he keep coming. He keep attacking, and as you mentioned, those resources are far from the town center. Still, he's paying attention. The multitasking is really on point. And after all these, look at the efficiency at the bottom right corner. Pretty much the same, Nelly. Pretty much the same. Villagers back to work here. Farmers pretty exposed in the back. So much aggression that neither player really feels like they have enough time to go and wall up the map. Tower here in the woodline, as you mentioned, next to the farms as well. Vala's now trying to wall the top, but there's still so much army. I don't think this should work. Well, let's see if he's sending two villages. If he wall, he's going to be very, very, very good for his next two minutes because the amount of farming from Sito is pretty much double. It's pretty much double. He's coming. Those are so many scouts that he has bloodless or any upgrade. No, there's only fletching. Only fletching. He needs to go back. Those archers is so important to the build. But it's a lot of farming, really. And look at what Valles is doing. He's ignoring the scout, trying to pick as much as archers as possible. At all the aggression, I think this is tricky. Look at the military count. 18 to 5 now. Bloodlines coming in as well. Valles needs to wall the whole map. We need another tower. House trying to buy himself some more time at that. House is low HP. Oh, that house is down. Is going inside. It's true that those villages are gonna be safe, yes, but the problem is no, those villages is all the farmers. Where's the tower happening? I don't see any tower. He's gonna try, he's thrashing the tower. He needs that tower. He's gonna mine a stone because he see how Sito is going all in. Population 61 to 50 for Valas. This is the Sito we know, Nelly. And the Sito that we love, indeed, ma'am. And we wanted to see this aggression. Villagers could go down here. Only five villagers can fit into the tower, obviously. So really tricky here for Valas to defend this one. Also, lots of idols are just safe behind this one. Beautiful micro by Sito. Okay, he didn't lose too much according to the situation. And the KD is better for Sito, yes. But the economy Echo KD, pretty much the same right now. 4-3 only after all this. So this is supposed Ooh, to... What? Third stable. What? With 17 three. farmers. Three stables. Khmer farmer. Three stables in feudal. Archers probably have to jump into the towns, and that means yeah. everything is open for the goal. Trying to jump out of there. Nice micro there against the archers. Now it's only scouts. Amor still not in. Sitoi wants to run. Nice micro by Balas. He's a very good micro. The scouts are keep coming. He's going to try to kill now more villages, but there's quite a lot of archers. He's going to try to use all the villages. He's all in aggression. We see the minimap. is still also a lot of dot blue points. But military numbers is the same nearly. How this is possible? Because in my opinion, Valas is doing an amazing job to defend this situation. Holy moly. Three stable play, but he stopped producing now. Now he's going for archers exclusively. One archer range is thinking about castle age. If we look at the resources, both pretty much the same. Wood upgrade now for Valas. Quite interesting that he feels like, okay, let's go for the wood upgrade and not try prioritize castle age. Yeah, he's not doing. We see that there's no horse call up with Khmer can be important. It's still, it's still going aggressive. The Three stables are not producing, as you mentioned. Both players are quite close to Castle. Look at Valas. He has also good resources, and he's doing another tower, and then he can go to Castle. It's going to be slightly slower, but according to the situation, I really believe I could say that he saved a match ball. It's, it's, I think a lesser player easily dies to all this aggression out of Sito. Maybe Armor a bit earlier could have been a thing, but uh, it looks like two more villagers could be dying here. Nice pick off by Sito. Yeah, I was talking about the match ball and almost made another here, but he is Sito. The French player is on the the way to castles, but now we see a potential aggression. We see the scout, but those archers that are coming in the middle of the map can make a brutal damage. And right that's now, why, that's why we're going not. for some skirmishers here for Sito. He knows, right? Okay, wow, I did lots of damage. I have the map control. The only way I can get behind on this game is you make a massive counterattack happen. That's why we see outposts here. That's why we see the army go back, some skirmishers being added. Sito, all the right steps uh -huh. to prevent the damage. But honestly, it's a good time to go castle as well. After all this aggression, Nelly, he lost. Five is more, A3 economy, that's why he's three is behind. I see some more idle time from Sito, that's why he's not five is ahead. And uh, still going up in a very good time, and he doesn't see the archers. Those archers can now make this even. He's, no gonna be, he's gonna be 46, there's no houses there. Oh, but he's immediately, immediately, I mean, immediately he's paying attention on point, Sito. 
it, it was a second, not even half a yeah, second. Yeah, I was really fortunate for Sito. He wanted to build the mining camp, and exactly that moment he looked there. That was so, so fortunate here and unfortunate for Valas, right? Because this attack could have easily found like three, four villager kills. But like 30 villages idle, like all his economy now is idling, which is really, really nice. Valas is gonna drop a castle Ooh. and go Ooh. for ladies. Oh, I mean, Hindustan is so probably something like Gulam could be a good option, and uh, that's Hindustan pretty tricky then. Oh. And um, yeah, we, we kind of have to go mass knights against that. Is that really the late game army that Kumar wants to go for, though? Because, well, then Camels become an option for Hindustanis again. I was thinking in Lithuanians nearly. I don't know why. I next keep game, going on. Next Lithuanians. game, man. Next game. Okay, let's focus. We see now the second, the second is still. That makes even more sense because if you make that army. It's what we were talking. He has a lot of farming, but those those Gulans will take everything. I mean, it looks like he has his ahead Sito with those 75 population, but all those archers, skirmishes can just die immediately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. 25 against seven military scouts pulling the spearmen out of position. Siege workshop needs to be rushed in. That means fewer villagers on gold. We have 300 gold floating, but only six on gold right now. It's going to be tricky for Valas to weather that storm. Yeah, oh my god, he needs the castle immediately. He has the stone, yes, but he's not building. A, he's not building. He has one tower only for all these farmers. The camels are there, but there's so many crossbows. Where to, be the, where to build the castle? He might be thinking, I don't know where I'm gonna build the castle now because he really needs to do something. The siege workshop is gonna be is there. He has one scorpion coming only. This is looking rough right now for Valas. He's trying to move all the units, but he's losing now a lot nearly. And also the idle, the idle time. Yeah, work efficiency going so down, as you can see, dropping below 40%. Villagers have to run, more units are streaming in and just continuous stream of units. You see more and more blue dots, dots coming over. Farms in the back completely idle, berries pushed away. So much in the town center now. Sito relented. Relentless with his aggression. It's really crazy aggressive game by Zito. 84 population uh, still. We don't see the castle. But then I know that is difficult. Probably he's not building because he wanted to do in, in some spot that he cannot do right now. But mm -hmm. uh, if he's not building the castle, how do you stop this? Yeah, it's pretty much impossible. Right? He was really counting on getting that one up. Maybe right next to the gold could have been an option to at least zone out one area and then try to deal with this army because the next attack is already coming in. Yeah, the, the knights are there. He wallet. He wallet. He's fully walled. He has the tower like that. But those cannons are not super strong. Only bloodlines. Only bloodlines. Not even any any upgrade from the plasma. The scorpion is down. The tower is doing some job. Yes, but there's no army. 27 for 6 army. It's still no castle happening. Open on the right side. Sito is about to get the first game. I don't know how much time Valas can hold, but it doesn't look great. And I really believe that this is the GG call. And Sito, uh, what a game play, Nelly. What mm -hmm. a game play really, really quick there. Oh, yeah. And that's exactly what we were hoping to see from him, right? We felt like Hindustanis, they will dominate the game once we get to late castle age. If we go to Imperial Age, Khmer running out of options, and therefore Khmer needed to play aggressively. And now we have to think about it. If we know that Khmer is going to play stable plus archer range, only going stable here for Hindustani, was it maybe a bit too greedy from Valas? Yeah, probably. I mean, why not to go also full feudal? Like you can do yeah, it. Yeah, he wanted to go full feudal. I think he delayed the first archer range, but then he was one archer against three archers, tried to catch up in numbers, went for the second archer range, tried to defend, but Zito kind of already got the upper hand there. Obviously, those berries that far in front really hurt Valas as well. I think production also like the, 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 the elephant. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's gone now. Well, let's see what is going to be the next the next map. Game number two and Valas has to win. Yeah. It has to win. It, it, otherwise, it's over. Sito, by the way, I mean, if it can be predictable what you are going to do with Kimmer, very good execution. Yeah, absolutely. And that's where the shine, right? It just feels like, okay, you don't need to wall, you just need the houses at home. Bala still did a beautiful job finding lots and lots of villager kills at the back base of Sito. So crazy raids there, but also then took some hits against the Spearmen, while Sito did a brilliant job keeping his scouts alive. Okay, supposed to, we're going to have Kawasan there, and now it has to be Lithuanians. I was thinking of Lithuanians in the previous mm -hmm. game. It has to be Lithuanians versus what? I think because Saracens. 
Saracens or Ethiopians, one of those. Tatars, we believe, is going to be a clivity, in just in case, if it's needed that game. Mm -hmm. I think Tatars or Ethiopians are an option there on a clivity. It just feels like you can sometimes wall on Kavasan and then play some wild timings. And with those timings, you can get control over the center in Castle Age, get the relics, and from there on move on the game with nice positioning, with better economy than you normally have with Saracens. And that's why you pick them. Lithuanians, obviously, really good at denying this because they have the super strong opening. It's not only that they want to keep in the tournament. Let's just go step by step. As we mentioned, but there's many people coming into, into the stream every time. This game for Sito, if he's winning, it's worth $2,000 more. Mm -hmm. $2,000 and the opportunity to face Leary, the player that got two titles, Red Bull, another two finals, and that now he's in the decider. Uh, it's the first time for Leary as well in that situation. I think he went through it smoothly in most of the tournament. Uh, yeah, last time he was the only one undefeated in the group stage, right? He went 4 0 yeah. there, beating the Viper in, I think, day three or something. And that was already an absolute banger there. 2-1, epic one, and this time for, uh, really facing elimination that early. Very atypical for Leary. Just imagine, see Joe and Leary on him lap like frigid leg, that would be crazy. Yeah, well, the, the situation has changed a lot with the matches from yesterday, but I, I don't think even the, 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 the players that can maybe now face, uh, well, it's the Viper actually, if they if they win, the mm -hmm. Viper Leary can happen in quarterfinals. Indeed. I don't think the Viper is also really happy about that. He can't be, yeah. And we see Saracen, so very likely that Kavasan will be map two here. And now the thing, Balas, I would assume we will see Elitas on the table pretty soon. I think it's going to happen very soon, guys. They are so focused. So, well, they're not clicking too much, but uh, they're going to be there. I in think Kavasan moment. has to be the thing. Yes. Ay, 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 ay. Just so much on the line here for both Is of them. Valas, he, he looks reasonably relaxed, right? He smiled 10 seconds ago. He was smiling. Yeah. He was smiling. Ooh, Byzantines. Ooh. So, no. No Lithuanians. No Lithuanians. Are we playing Lithuanians on Eclivity then? Because I think that has to play the play. Kavasan Byzantines. So Byzantines, obviously, you can contest the pawns and your fire galley because they shoot faster. Win sure. the one we won in fire galley wars. So that's a good thing. Sometimes the faster in timing is a good thing as well. You're also healing faster. And indeed, we are seeing Kavasan. Stable opening here by Sito. We have seen some market abuse and mass scouts being played. Archer range opening by Balas. Game number two, guys. Sito as a blue in the south. Balas as a yellow in the north. As mentioned, as Nilly mentioned, the stable already there. Remember that the market is only 75 wood. Both are exploring each other. Now he knows that Valas has RG range, which is expected even more with the Byzantines. But you don't know what the, the Sarsis is going to do. Do you think that Sito is going to go now also very aggressive in Feudal Age, or he will try to, to, to go as fast as possible to Castle Age with wow. this civilization. You already see the second building here, so Archer. it's going to be Scout Archer again, has two villages on gold, so maybe mixes in some skirmishes, feels like if I go for too many archers, it's just too easy for Byzantines to counter that. And look at those walls here. Valas base, it feels like he's walling with like five villagers already? Yeah. It's pretty wild. He's walling a lot, but I'm I surprised a little bit from Sito, a tower. Usually mm -hmm. you see the market, so he's not thinking on using the market, at least not for now. And then going more aggressive. Balas with flaking Ooh -hoo -hoo. already. He's microing properly. He has now the double archer range. Let's see what happened with that little map. Okay, he's saving that one and he's still walling. But this is too much village walling in the early game, uh, Nelly. It's a lot of resources that you are not gathering. It's quite weird, right? That we're going for that many walls and Sito could see that still went for the defensive tower. So both players, ay, 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 maybe having some nerves. Now goes for some more farms. And neither player really sending a small yellow or blue dot towards the pond, which surprises me. They are not going for the water. They are not going for the water. Uh, remember that this Valas call map is scout and archers. You need to pick that skirmisher. That the scout will, can get really, really good value. But now those three scouts can as well do the damage they did. And he's going around now with the archers. Scout fletching already for Sito. Population better for Sito. And having the Saracens, if you are ahead in military with the same village number, two might be just happy. Mm -hmm. Let's see, Fletching comes in. Oh, those archers, I think they're diving in a bit too deep. Dow took the 1-0 in a really long game one there. And now looking to find a spot into the games later. And those archers, they want to have a great day. 
Now those archers are going to be gone. That scout is going to be gone as well. He's trying to make damage to the scout. Not really. He's going to lose them. And Population is still going ahead for Sito here. 38 values for both players. Double the army for Sito. Double the army market. And now finally going for the water. But this double the army? Just Saracens, remember that the archers got bonus against those buildings. He's starting to use the market. Sito is looking smooth. One more time, Mr. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looks like lots of map control there. Castle Edge will be slightly faster for him, most likely using the market. And Skirm Scout will give him that advantage. And look at how close he already is next to the center, right? He basically already has the first foot on that plateau. Yeah, he's uh, as close to the center to the going to go up to Castle Edge because his resources are used amazing. And in also with more army, how is this even possible? Well, we can ask to Sito if he's still playing like this. He's on the way to Castle H, minute six, with more army, with the same village number. Wow. We see Valas also using the market as well. It's not going to be too far, but still, he's behind Eli. Byzantines, cheaper skirmishes, spears, but he's not doing the archers, definitely not cheaper. This is looking, looking a little bit tricky now for Valas, who is going up, but his opponent is up 40 seconds faster and he's trying to get inside. He's gonna wall. Oh man, it's Saracen's bonus. It's difficult, nearly. Ah, only two archers helping out That's there, true. but yeah, still being annoying. And the most important thing here for Sito is basically no, okay, my opponent will keep his archers at home. That's the main goal of this attack. Spearman trying to scout a bit if there might be. A dock at the left hand side. Now the egg base is getting completed here by Sito. Will be fully walled at the sides there. And a bit surprised that Sito didn't go for the pawn at all. Now Archer range two. Not really producing either Archer or Skirm right now. A bit surprising to me. Yeah, well, that's what this makes that Valas is now ahead. He has now fishing ships as well. So, yeah, it's going slower to up. So you get time to make more villages. But. Let's see, KD, 5-0 to Sito, but didn't kill any villager to Valas. So Valas is still okay. And we have to remember that Byzantines, the longer the base goes, uh, they are very dangerous. You can go up to Imperial much cheaper to the next age. But what is the next following? He catch up in numbers, Nelly, and this is quite a lot of arches now for Valas. Oh, this so. double, double uh, is that a stable, double archie range, and uh, I like the composition here from, from Balas. I mean, 11 archers, he's going to have more archers than his opponent. Mm -hmm. A yep, lot more. Sure. And quite some resource there. Now we see the university. It feels like both players might be playing this one one to see for quite some time, but Balas still keeps the stone. <laughs> Spearman went down there, Ripperino against the Tiger. One HP, one kill. And yeah, earlier castle edge for Sito simply gives him this control here. Wouldn't be surprised to see Monastery pretty soon. Let's see. Is, isn't better Vicentis in a one to see approach? Dan Tarasen? Ah, uh, well, if we go crossbow, crossbow, it doesn't really make a difference, right? Uh, well, but the thing is, uh, Sito with the Saracens, he has been using the market a little bit more. Let's see now the archer is taking those scouts, the camel is going to be there, and not too many crossbows that we mentioned. All these kills has been without the average elite skirmishes as well. So, if he had now quite a lot of archers and skirmishes, what is the following here from Sito? He's gonna need some Sitor Knights in LA. Yeah, he is going for ballistics in a spot where lots of people would have thought about going for a siege workshop, right? Because mangonels are so good against all the units that we see here of Valas. Could have pressured the gold, could have pressured the woodline, could have pressured the archery ranges, but still wanted to go for the guaranteed damage. I think elite skirm is something Sito th should think about as well. Well, Leeds Kimmitsis is already there for Valas. He does have too many, but probably a note is doing the armor right now. Valistic finally kick in. And military numbers better for Sito, but he has double archery range. Range for will be good. Oh my god, that micro. And with Valistic, it helps even more. But still, the plus two here got to help a lot, Nelly. Wow, absolutely. Scum's now in the front, but without ballistics. Sito's trying to mic to the side. Look at that KD, 16 to 8 right now. It's a pretty solid job there. Villagers getting distracted a bit at the gold, but just feels like, okay, enough elite skirmishes are out there. Not really the fight Sito wants to continue taking. Now the Siege Workshop. Yeah, you need a Siege Workshop because you're not, not going to kill against Vicente like this, but Valas is going for the second TC. Four villages ahead. Military numbers is still behind, but he needs to spot it. Fog of War, please, for Valas, Mr. Mapo, to see. And he has spotted already the Siege Workshop, he can see it already. Thank you very much. And population almost the same. Monks or siege from uh, from Valas here now, Nelly. 
Mm, tricky, tricky, tricky situation. I think if we go for monks, it has to be with redemption trying to convert those mangonels. If you want to go for mangonels yourself, trying to reclaim that hill, would mean you have to fight uphill quite a bit, and that means your mangonel dies 1v1 and his lives. Okay, take that as scout. We wanted to explore this also cavalry. I don't dislike Vala's position here. Mm -hmm. Pushing away quite a bit. Crossbow's not really defending the one. And that's what we said, right? Siege Workshop a bit earlier. If he had one mangonel with all those crossbows, Vala's could not go up that hill. Because now oh, the, the, the average with him invest here, Ballistic is kind of not that great anymore. Well, that knight gonna help. He has to go back. But what is Vala's doing? What is the following? He has more knights trying to kill the Siege Workshop. I don't see any Siege or Monastery, but Two tone centers, he's killing the knight. You have to be careful, but he's fine right now. Military numbers is still ahead for Sito, but he's not pushing anymore. And then Byzantine with double TC and water. He's getting ahead in the economy, nearly. It's a bit like it. That hero knight pushed away lots of sk skirms. We're down to four skirms here. Now has to give up that till. Oh, that was a good one for Sito. Yeah. It felt like the knights needed to be at the front for Valas. Yeah, for sure he was, he was hitting the siege. I don't know why there, but now he's doing the siege war shot at third tone center. Remember, guys, that he's not going to get surprised at all. Valas has tone patrol with Byzantines. The problem is that he has a safe goal. Yeah. He has in that tone center on the right. And another TC on stone, he's having Ooh. everything he needs. Ooh. He's falling okay, but that's quite weak. He lost a villager. That is the first villager Bala lost in the game after all this aggression. That's sick, right? It's how crazy. he fitted those. Yeah, yeah, that really shows how good his defense was there next to the archer rangers. Very heavily going on stone here as Valas, right? He had like 15 villagers on stone, some at the top, some at the right here. Those, some of them might go into stone. So maybe thinking about a timing there where he fights a bit longer in Castle Age and then tries to get a castle. But up. he's coming. He's coming with the mangonel. I don't know if Sito can see that mangonel yet. Not yet. Now he can spot it and he did it. He's now trying to micro. This mangonel fight is so, so, so important. Right. Because the little number is running away. He's going away. That spot is definitely mango not the pop, best. Mango pop at the bottom. Uh oh. Could be coming out there. He's mango. coming with another. He's going to come with another. He's going to go. Oh. He's taking that one. No. He's going to be the mangonel outside from where he's going to take it. He got it. But I don't know if he lost the other in the north. Did he lose the other? They're not one for one, was it was one for one because there was another behind those houses. He's gonna try to repair, he's repairing he's so many arches, but five villages repairing. He's doing a really nice job here, Valas, who is still ahead. Ten villages. Uh, Sito keep going aggressive. He's doing a scale bar in armor, but the longer the game goes, it feels better now for, for Valas. Nelly. Yeah, I agree. And the thing is, like, Sito has the center for what feels like 10 minutes now. Not a single relic picked up, not even a monastery built now. Yeah, well, it's, it's, uh, it really is important. It's more snowball. If it was Lithuanian, it's definitely not. And with three TCs, he feels confident and know that even if he takes the relics, he say, well, I will drop a castle at some point and then maybe I can recover. We'll see. We have a lot of problems. He's now adding TCs, but the difference in village numbers is already there, Nelly. Mm -hmm. So Same workers indeed. Eco upgrade wise, we are looking at three versus two, so not the biggest difference, but. Oh, yes. Mangonel down. He's gonna take another if he's taking that one. He need to kill it. He couldn't. The knights are there. He's knifed that Mangonel and another is coming. Uh, Byzantine is one of the best civilizations to defend. Correct. More HP on their buildings. You have all the counter units cheaper with the skirms, spearmen, and camel line. So lots of options there. Also, all the upgrades there on the buildings if you want to go for towers. But for now, just uses the bonus of the more HP on the Siege Workshop. Crazy, crazy the aggression for, for Sito. It still didn't take too much village. Now I see six. I don't know why, where he took that economy. Now it was for the, for the on water, maybe? If he kills some fish. I don't know. I miss it those. Uh -huh. because I don't see quite a bit, man. Yeah. Right? We only yeah. have 21 on food. If he wants to go for some knights or camels, it's get, getting tricky there to have enough production. He's coming now. He's gonna try to snipe that one. He can. There is a lot of a lot of army from Sito who keep the pressure. Billy's number is still the same. Castle. Where is gonna make the castle Valas? He's gonna make it here just to protect the goal, because right now he's feeling the pressure. He has the stone, or just go to the left to your main goal. Ooh, Mangonel down. He's gonna take another. He move it. And is no, he's not taking this. A lot going on now. Sito took that mangonel down. He's still killing all the knights. Yeah, and really that's good move. Really nice from Valas. Valas floating quite a lot of resources. And now going TC. for TC4 Four. here. Did not go for. That was an interesting castle. Wow, how defensively he built it. Only with three villagers as well. Do Do you like that castle? 
I, I, I'm not I, sure about that castle, you know. I mean, right now, it seems all the action is here. Why you don't make the castle in between the other two goals on the left? And then you secure both. There's no action there happening. Mm -hmm. You secure your main, the second, the other second here. You make because the castle there. One Magnol could deny it, kind yeah. of. Well, we see everything. They don't. Yeah, yeah exactly. And Valas, he feels okay. I can defend with Magnols, and now he goes for the counter attack. Tries to make something happen. I think Valas might feel that he's more near timer than he actually is simply because he told only now two relics yeah that's true and uh, now we have ballistic there military numbers Sito is still ahead 13 crowds two skirmishes and i would like to see a counter-attack what is that coming from the left mapu is that a counter-attack mm -hmm. with ballistic there is, the, is he's open he's not open he's safe wow. is there any hole not at all doesn't look like it yeah not not at all there is now a knight floating there but the mangonel I don't like that castle. I mean, he took the mangle, okay, but he's not really defending properly. Now with Ballistic, he might pick some villages. And the economy difference is starting to be insane. 94 villages, Nelly. Mm -hmm. 94 villages. Doing now Wheelbarrow is having also Bozo. Valas is in a very good position, yes, but the Saracen's market, I hate the Magnus shot, man. He's gonna take it, no split in the units, but man, I cannot focus in those battles when I see that now Sito, he's selling absolutely everything. He, 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 I That's Hero Tiger from earlier, I mean, by the way. He, he's naked now, I mean, he's naked, you know, metaphorically talking, you know, because now he has nothing, but he's on the way to Imperial. This transition to Imperial with 30 villages behind, mm -hmm. it's worth it? I think Sito needs to hold the sill, and Valas knows, okay, my economy apparently is way better because I can look at the score, my fights weren't like that, that much better, so I know this has to be going pretty well for me behind all those fights, adds more archer ranges, and knows, maybe I can overwhelm you. It's going to imp, and that's oh. not too far behind, man. Yeah, Valas is going to Imperial, remember that you need exactly 660 food to go up, it's a lot less, it's like 33% less, so... Well, you can see, 30 villages more is still behind an army, but now he's gonna raid. He's also raiding here. And look, ignoring the middle. Valas is ignoring the middle right now. Not because he wanted, probably because he told force him to ignore. And it seems to be working. It's true that there's double the army there. So many crossbows, by the way. So many that he's gonna be Arvales. But with Byzantine Lily, you can spam skirmishes all, all mm -hmm. the time. And that's what he's doing now. As we can see, Skirm cross as the mix in the... Q there goes for more villagers, so economy is good. Still, the question is like, how do we get control over the center? Yeah, he has a castle, but I feel like chemistry should be our first focus, trying to get some bombard cannons because Sito will have a castle in the center pretty soon as well. Yeah, we have so many crows now coming. Uh, still, but he's house it. You don't have to be. Oh, oh no! Don't lose now! Don't lose now! Oof! He noticed. He noticed. There's two miners and skirmishes. If he lose now, just when he's going to be in oh, oh, oh boy! Optimistic castle man, right? With the two miners around there. Obviously, the outpost sees everything. Doesn't know that the castle is even greedy. Up here, I will say. Even greedy. I will say. Look at the castle. Can we see Valas' point of view right now, please? Uh, Mapo, just fog of war. Oh, he see the castle. He see the castle. He's oh. coming now with three miners. The arches. If he's not doing this castle, he's gonna be. Probably game for Valas That's because like, if he denied that, ooh, he got ballistic as well. It's so many arches, so many arches, but these three mangoes, he cannot make that castle. Oh, no. Or the mango nail. Ooh, he take one, he's gonna take another. Valas, he's losing all the mangoes. I can't believe he's losing three mangoes. He lost three mangoes for one, and now he's gonna make the castle. Oh boy, that micro, that was a hero mangoes force. He told there only send eight villagers, lots of losses there, still denying quite a bit, and skirmishes yeah. are solid. Our upgrades are coming in for those skirms and crossbows. We can go for the traps, and I think this castle won't stand long there, man. It's Suden, it's probably Suden because all the Abris are now kicking in there for Valas. Valas is having plus three, he's having chemistry. Even if he didn't have a castle himself, Bombard Cannons, remember, he's not doing... Valas is playing this really, really well. Sito is trying his best, he's trying to attack all the time, but the Byzantine's power. Byzantine power, and we see Sito. He is suffering from one of the last balance changes. Arbalest tech is more expensive now, and especially if you play low economy with only around 80 villagers, that really hurt, starts to hurt you, and he cannot afford it. But Nelly has 1,000 gold. He could balance that economy. He could probably have should, should done that. He didn't. That castle is now getting trapped, so that castle, well, because he's doing already, and he don't, doesn't want to delete, but it's gonna be gone. 
Ah, it could be tenants, ma'am. It's the hill double castle yeah. there. I think it's really tricky to protect that trap and that castle. Will lose some HP, needs to be repaired, but I think Bombard Cannon Micro might be the next step. And if Mangal Micro was any indicator, Stito looking pretty hot. Okay, let's see if it's, what is gonna happen here. Still, Arbalest is coming. Heavy blow now. But how much army? 36. Valas is ahead in military. Ahead 30 villains as well. 155 population. You still think that this is hot, but the situation, I'm not sure anymore. The Arbalest is gonna be there. The Bomber Cannon is coming. It's true that with the hill, anything can change. And maybe, maybe it's gonna happen. I don't know. Will we see these Bomber Cannons too? The castle never, never, never go down. And the population is still there. A little, a little, but with Vincent is nearly, you can spam forever. Yeah, and he's intercepting as well. So some units there next to the Arbalest traps in some problems here going under the tower. That's going to be annoying as well. Bombard Cannon's so good, but now Bombard Cannon's on the field for Valas as well. That could be deciding 15 more skirms in the queue. Macro slipped a lid and Valas, he will have lots of skirms and this will be tricky for Sito to hold. Yeah, Valas is ready now. Valas is ready now. Echo KD now 50-50, 13-13. The Bombard Cannon is still there. A lot of stone for Valas. And those castles are a lot more HP as well. Trying to keep raiding population. 20 villages is still ahead and double the army. He's now doing some autos on the left. But the raid is happening all over. And this is nearly an amazing game. Absolutely. It feels like Zito is pushing the whole time. But Valas behind the scenes is doing so much so right. And look at that big, and big the shot left. there. Yeah, intercepting there. Only four Bombard Cannons now. So Zito is still somewhat holding. But it feels like Valas is just preparing for one major push. No, no, no. He's not holding anymore. Look at that. He's balancing his economy as well. A lot of army. 46 army. 20 villains more. He's on the left. He's on the right. He's in the middle. He's all over the map. He's holding his front. But now he's getting there on top of that hill coming now probably from behind and maybe with some bombard cannon he can try to get that castle from there and now he's microing in front Balas is used to micro this a lot i have seen him with the bohemian civilization even in this red bull wall alone doing some crazy crazy micro here and still it's with a lot more villages nearly. Look at all the yellow dots on the minimap there as well. Yeah, so annoying. So many either villagers for so many villagers being pushed away. Work efficiency heavily goes down here for Sito. And now the push through the center bomber cannons have to go away. I'm really surprised that he goes that far away because now the castle is exposed, ma'am. Ma it is very exposed and this is two trebuchet, three bomber cannons. That castle is not going to survive any longer. Why? Also, no, no stone. And how many villages on goal from Sito right now, Nelly? How many villages on goal? Zero. Literally zero, exactly. Zero villains right now. Aye, aye, aye. Well, that castle is going to be down. Look at the bomber cannon. Siege Engineer is probably coming a little bit too late. Could have been a bit earlier, but also costly upgrade, right? Heavy on wood, heavy on food there, while most of our economy was on gold. Bomber cannons are going back, but now they're suffering quite a bit. Dropping below 100 population. Valas in a, dim, in a great position. And now the castle there. This is a fantastic, fantastic game from Valas. And ladies and gentlemen, we are happy to say Probably Sito is not, obviously, but we're going to have a potentially 2-1 series, 1-2 series. Mm -hmm. Finally, not a 2-0. With We were talking behind the scenes. I believe, we believe, this is JJ Cole, that this series could be a close one, and we're going to have a decider game, Mr. Nelly. Oh, yeah, and we are going to Acclivity, and look at that, Valas. He is really... He is focused. He's feeling, he's feeling it, and he's like... This was an amazing game by both, honestly. He used the Saracens, completely aggressive, Mm -hmm. And then he had to defend all the time. I told you about the macro. He didn't have a bad macro after all that aggression he got. He yeah, was getting yeah. aggressive aggro by Sito all the time. We need to add a point there for sure. Okay. Like had multiple <laughs> TCs running and... Four TCs. Yeah, that was just so sick. Also had the one pawn for himself, right? Maybe could have made an argument for Sito to get the relics a bit earlier, to maybe get the left yeah. pawn as an option as well, because he had the center so much earlier, right? And then the big question is like, Sito, when should he add? How many town centers? It's so tough to judge for, C um, for Sito being the Saracens, because this is kind of a push that you so rarely play. It is tough to know where you are in the game. And now we have a, a legendary map for mm. game three. Yeah. Because that, that map only brings good memories At for least many people. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Nelly. For maybe for many gamer legions fans, you know, mm -hmm. that series who don't remember who that who don't remember that four three with the Tars and Mayans. I remember every time that they cast a in the tournament. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, Leary just blocked me.
Yeah, Todd's like, proudest moment. Leary just blocked <laughs> all the blacklist for Memphis, you know, but wow. it, it is a great map, and now we have a really important match for them because the winner advanced, play against Leary, mm -hmm. you know, and the losers go home. Civilizations, what? Nelly. It has to be Lithuanians, I believe, and then. Not Britons? I, I, think, I think Lithuanians. Mobility. Simply, like, even if I might consider both of them relatively similar in strength, maybe Lithuania slightly better, simply it's because it's the first pick. It feels so likely that Balas wants to play them. And would you prefer the Dars or Lithuanians? If they pick that, we're going to see in a moment, guys, but uh, let's see. I'm, a, I'm a Lithuanian fan. It just helps out so much, like faster moving skirms help out. We've seen that, like how they were chase, chasing down those crossbows over and over in this game. If you get ballistics there, and obviously the faster opening scouts could help out quite a bit as well. I think the Lithuanians have a really solid shot here. Yeah, the, the level is insane, really. Like we saw the first game, how smooth he plays it all, and that can can make you think, oh, Balas is going to be intimidated. Mm -hmm. No, he not at all. Byzantines, he played his game, yeah, yeah, yeah. and look, and, and you saw how he was with his hand uh, on his face. Yeah. He's feeling it. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah, feeling yeah. it, Balas. But huh? we didn't see it in the game, right? He stayed yeah. so cool there. But, but not after the game. After the game, he just start to express, you know, and well, we what we were talking. Tatars for seat. So, Lightest, not really sure if there's an option to see them in this game. I think we will mainly see like crossbow, CA, yeah. and if we go into the very late game, obviously, Acclivity, pretty great with the massive hill in the center and the extra hill bonus there for Tatars. A pretty solid choice. Depends how they play, but obviously, if they play that aggressive, potentially to go for a late game, but this is a map that you can expand all over. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot of resources. It's, it's an aggressive map because the players play aggressive, but if you are conservative, it can be a booming map at some point. You can move really all over, and if you are going with Arch's approach, you can be fine if you put this is not close to your main base, like far yeah. away. And to task, get extra sheep there. If you have multiple TCs, you want to run around with all the CA, get more food from those sheep as well. And oh, thumbring for free, pretty lovely as well. And Valas, likely to play Lithuanians here. Let's take a look at this one. And there it there is. Oh, what beautiful, huh? Yeah, absolutely. By the way, we had the boot camp, right, with the GL boys, and we had a cook there. And Jordan asked out, um, Doubt, we, we just eat uh, salad. Do you like lettuce? And he said, I like lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Doubt. Ah, uh, Mr. Doubt. And game number three, decided game, a yellow Valas in the south, Sito Tatars in the north, opening archery range for Sito and Valas archery range as well. Oh man, so excited! Ad, ad check by Sito. I think he lost one hit there already on his scout, and yeah, 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 was not too happy with that. In between our participants, Tatas has 100% win rate versus Lithuanians. Ooh! Only four times. Okay, okay. All Record games times. 2022. Pretty interesting here for sure. Probably a lot of random map stats there in as well. We feel like Lithuanians might be even better on Empire Wars. Yeah. Well, let's see what is what is going to happen now. And the double archery range, just going back. He lost that one. One Ooh. one doubt Kapoch. Decided. One one doubt Kapoch. So this is we were talking that today we're probably going to have more of these. Yeah. Because there's no no comeback. Yeah. There's no comeback, and people has to put everything. You know, it's not that they don't put in all the days, but you know, it's it can happen. And uh, right now. It is happening, 1-1, one, one. and let's see what is going to happen here with Valas 1, Sito 1. We see already RT Reigns and Skirmishes going around a little bit, Sito, through those uh, uh, trees, but here the Skirmish is faster, Skirmish, is, as we mentioned, and Sito with the double RT Reigns, but Valas is the one who is taking the initiative now. Mm -hmm. Sito, it seems so. a bit late with his armor upgrade there, but that's simply because Lithuanians, with the more food, just so much easier for them to get to that. But now, nice chase down there. Scout still helping out against the scrums, but enough archers behind it. Yeah, he has more army now. Nine army, four army, probably need to go back. He's losing some, he's losing the scout. He lost quite a lot there. 7-2, seven 7-2 two. Seven two for Sito right now. Is the time for him to go and push? Oof. Well, he need to just go back here and mass skirmishes now. How do we get to 7-2 KD here? Sito with a beautiful micro dodged all the shots. Pretty crazy stuff there. And yeah, went for armor a bit later. But 
just having the numbers there and Valas maybe a bit over aggressive now tries to chase down as we mentioned earlier Skirm's moving a bit faster low HP Skirm there tries to get focus down finds the kill and Valas he lives yeah and now the numbers in military just equalize completely look at the KD now KD now getting closer and closer he's taking the arches he's doing a really good job he's now migrant really really good taking the arches taking the spear taking everything the KD now 50 50 what? look at the army 50 50 now he's ahead what is happening horse scholar what's going on not even upgrades for Cito. resources in the bank looks a little bit better but Valas is pu pu pushing back completely Valas seven, seven kills in a row unanswered from 7 2 to 9 7 look at that finds another yeah, kill most likely probably. here Oh God, what a great, great push by Balas. Yeah, he changed completely, completely the game there. Now he forced him to make a stable product. He was going to make it. No, he cannot. He's there with more skirmishes and denying that to stable. But he's focusing in the army. That's really great. Look at now. Valas just trying to micro all the arches, but he noticed it all. He's still doing a good job. And this is the speed of those Lithuanian skirmishes, Nelly. Mm -hmm. Absolutely crazy. Now we are transitioning into some arches to deal with those scouts here. Maybe even a stable could be an option. Valas should know. Wow, your base is really open, Sito. And indeed, he is going for the stable. He's Doing this table now, resources almost the same. The game is still pretty close. Valas with the initiative. The scores say that Valas is ahead. Oh, wow. Well, 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 he's still pushing, trying to keep going through that area. The scout is coming, but he has his spears. And the spears are also faster. Mm -hmm. Really nice zoning out the potential scout attack here. But it's just pretty much far at the front. And also with the faster moving speed, you're dodging shots a bit better there as well. So Valas trying to play the civilization to perfection. Yeah, he forced he forced him to go back with those with those scouts. Look at the KD is almost the same. But the, the good thing here is that it was 7-2. So he, he managed to equalize that one. And honestly, since he's putting all this pressure, I don't know, but this looks like the economy is slightly better now for Valas. Uh, Valas floating quite a lot of gold. Wouldn't mind to see a market. Now be one being put down by Sito. Could be a few all in. Oh, forging even coming in. I wouldn't be surprised if we soon see a second stable. I think it could really pay off against this gold. Remember, Sito was trying to build a tower, but then thought better of it. Wow, he's going aggressive. The scouts are coming, but not yet with forging. Maybe he should wait a little bit. He forced his opponent to make a tower. I think he's feeling the pressure. The score is now getting closer and closer. I don't know if he has a second stable. I think he doesn't have. Sito, it's selling a lot to go up. And I'm not sure if this is going to be a good choice because if now he keeps going really aggressive, he still have two, three minutes to stop this push. Ooh, look at that. Valas adding some more farms there in the back. And, well, it's oversold a bit, right? He was stuck at 177 gold for quite some time. Now now is by or getting some back by selling 100 wood on the way to Castle Age. At this point... Balas see the score. He know 100% that his opponent is up. Mm -hmm. Market, what do you do tower. right now? Do you keep trying to go aggressive or keep the, the dumbbell armies? You need to do some damage. You, you, you did forging, you did the upgrade. What do you do, Nelly, here? I think running around left-hand side of the gold, dodging the shots from the tower, and harassing the gold could be a good option. Because everything running around there at the top just makes it so much trickier for you. So in this area, well. exactly where he's going right mm -hmm. now, more yeah, or less, yeah, he yeah. needs to come, but it's not coming. Resources for Valas are not bad, are definitely not bad. Economy for Sito is kind of the limit. I mean, if he's going up, of course, he's going to get some more food and gold as well. But he's not doing damage here. He's smooth. I'm not sure, I'm not sure he's gonna be up to castle. If Fast is now trying to make a counter-attack, he's completely walled, he's well defended. So many villains are now not working properly. He's, he's just being idle all the time. He's trying to break in, but Valas resources are getting there, nearly. Yeah, absolutely. Still gonna be two minutes. Yeah, and it will be a second stable there, most likely. Indeed, some knights will obviously clear up the Feudal Age army quite easily. Those villagers are running away, and we are still getting food, still getting gold, and knights is the counter unit to this army, so... I think Sito should have not the biggest tr troubles clearing this one up. And that's why Valas should maybe consider moving his army away. Army away or, or try to keep on his farm. Because if he's going away, he, he has two choices. He can try to find his army or, or send to, to, to Jello's base, to Valas' economy. Right now, he's trying to deny the, the stables, which I think is a good option. Because if you don't have the stables, then the castle's transition is not going to be worth it anymore. And those scouts trying to kill the skirmishes. Nearly, he has now two minutes. Here, Sito. A little bit less, 140, to make the damage he's going to be able. Oh, well, you see, double stable now. Production is starting. Arches and skirms against unupgraded knights. Still okay, we, but we have bloodlines. We have the first armor. And Valas, oh, good that he's already fully walled up. Has a gate there as well. 
built some more house walls, but Ovat chopped at the wood line. There's a hole, there's a hole, and he need to notice because they are coming. The scouts are going to be there. I don't know if he can see that hole. We see that population, though, it's a head for Valas, but that army can die eventually. Or right now, we will see. He's gonna take those skirmishes. The spears are there. It's getting time now. I mean, he know that those skirmishes kind of lost a little bit of the value. He want to save those crossbows, potential crossbows, and this is still open. Ay, 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 nearly. Crossbow count potentially around like 18 once he arrives. Also, he's upgrading his stable a bit, and I think. Cito needs to go for the second armor upgrade or needs to add a siege workshop to deal with this massive ball of crossbows that's coming. But he did he did a monastery. He's doing now the market here. This is really good army. Now he's doing the crossbow armor, the skill bar in armor. Remember that this is Lithuanians. If he gets some nice going and couple oh, university is gonna go ballistic. He's going to go ballistic. Oh, he has a lot of crossbows. Yeah, but his opponent is starting to make a lot of knights here. He has six, two more in the queue. The monastery, if he grabs three relics, is, is so important. LA. And it's really easy to grab two on this map, right? Because two are always spawning really close to your base, one in the center there, as we can see. So the big run is who gets three. If you get four, then Often you're in a really good spot because you already had massive map control advantages. Okay, let's see what is going to be. There's a lot of troubles coming. No ballistic though. He did the university and now he's trying to sell some food to get that upgrade coming. But this is so tricky. So many knights. I don't know. He can't take those crosses with this amount of knights. Who 10 knights, yes, but we have the hill advantage here, even the Thuanians, 25%. I think two monks and then the knights can't engage anymore. Okay. Ballistic. Ballistic already there, so that's why he's not taking. Man, you can feel the pressure. That's gonna be a tone center, an amazing tone center, because now you secure the wood and the goal nearly with heavy blow. Ballistic on the way. Oof, siege is coming. Chain bard in armor with the plus two. 69 population, 79, and the units are coming. It looks a little bit similar to the previous game, like if the game keeps going longer, if this push is not working. Seems that Valas is setting up in a great economy going. Mm -hmm. Bozo, Heavy Blow, and Will Barrow. Crazy, right? All Five eco upgrades against two eco upgrades. Crossbow still at home. Just wants to grab two of those relics. Might need to go for some knights. Map! He saw it. Oui. Man, they are on point. The quality of the series mm -hmm. is really good. Really high, uh, Nelly. For both sides. They are doing what they have to do. He's going to try to pick that monk. And then that's the problem. The knights are plus one, plus one. Does have the bloodlines, but grabbing also the relic. He's gonna have a great army, and he's started to expand more his economy. I'm telling you this, Nelly. This is the gameplay that Balas feel confident, feel good with the macro approach. If this is going longer and with three TCs, also the Lithuanians are very dangerous. Oh, that knight should disengage. Monk was locking in the conversion. But he could convert. He's not converting, and now he's gonna take the mine. Gun. No, he's blocking. He's blocking, but he killed it, and now delete it. He deleted, man. Good job, conversion here at the bottom. Did not go through. Knights could go in, but only two got in there. Now trying to free two of his friends going through the gate. Won't really happen. And ballistics? No, no, he has ballistic already. He has ballistic already. He's going to convert one knight. Ooh. He's converting one knight. Valas is playing amazing. Blylas is playing amazing. 60 blitz for both. A lot more army. He has ballistic. He has all the economy upgrades. He has everything in his favor at this moment, nearly. Absolutely crazy, right? And this was starting off so, so poorly. Two relics now for him as well. I think this is the spot where you could consider adding like two or three more stables and then a Spam. massive crossbow knight all in. And Tatars, they shouldn't really have an answer to this. And he has a very good economy. Mm -hmm. Heavy blow, will borrow. Mm -hmm. It's 20 farmers, 17 on goal. Let's see if it's going to happen. Let's see if it's going to happen. There's more knights coming. He has to be careful. But the good thing is with the army he has, if he keeps coming with the boom, those knights are not going to do damage also to, to Valas anymore. He has a lot of farming at home. Mm -hmm. He can't defend properly. Let's see with the Fog of War, for Valas' point of view, if he see the knights coming. Uh, and he has Tone Watch. He did Tone Watch during, yeah. the, during Feudal Age, so he can't see it. And a second monastery nearly. Wow. Coming with the crossbows, doing wow. sanity even. Whoa. 111 population, Sito 88. This is incredible cities already with so many knights coming. Bloodlines and plus two. And the economy. Ooh, he saw it. No, he did. No, but, he? but 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 uh, he saw it. Valas saw it and he's walling. What a crazy read by Valas. Double monastery, something we very rarely see simply because 
monastery or like monks not really a unit that you can attack with that toe or like from home towards the opponent but he knows your score is so low it's impossible that you are on three tcs therefore it's more likely that you're going to try to find some damage try to go for some attacks and then monks a brilliant unit to defend yeah his economy is really now fantastic also he's not spamming a lot knights probably would be a good choice he's, he's even selling food he's gonna make a redemption Mm -hmm. He's doing redemption or wow. really. Wow. He's defending with the crossbows. He's defending with few knights. He knows that Sito is coming with a lot of farming, so he wants just to convert those mangonels. And then husbandry is going to spam. He's going all in as well. All army, bloodlines. Whoa, he's taking absolutely all the upgrades. His house at Sito, 130 population. He's going to convert in four seconds the mangonel. Damn, I wouldn't. I mean. Oh, that Bangor is shot. Be careful. You can't lose that one. He converted the Bangor already. He got a few knights as well. And how do you push now? Oh, impossible. Impossible. Mangonel here won't really help you out. And now suddenly it's only knights. And something we never talk about, Lithuanians, monasteries work 20% faster. Actually <laughs> helps them out in this spot. Yeah, very, really well. 48 military nearly. 48 military, 40 crossbows with Lithuanians. We want to see 40 knights, or do you expect to see 40 knights? No, we see 40 crossbows. And looking at the stone, we could see 40 lighters here as well pretty soon. Valas, absolutely crazy what he can muscle up. Look at all those monks, impossible to engage into this. And the boom, hand card with 15 villages more. Wow. Hand card, one point more for the macro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see now. Three tone center is going to move now with those arches uh, dropping the castle in that spot. Yeah, or maybe more maybe aggressively, even right? Because yeah. the hill, you're controlling it anyways. You can pressure this area quite nicely. You're not expecting your opponent to seven, go to him too quickly. Seven monks? If he's micro now, I don't know if he's going to micro that amount of monks. He's coming with so many knights. The monks are there. He's going to convert the key, convert the banger. And no, the knights are coming. If he's not killing, if he's not killing in this space, he's raiding. He's raiding at the back. Look at Mapu being on point. He's trying to convert the knights. When the knight has come, the, 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 everything is gone. Not anymore because he got so many monks. But with so many knights, he's converting. That banger is going to still alive. So many nice, Nelly. Yeah, Monk conversions weren't really on point there because he was distracted with his own rage. Their macro is oh, oh, killing a lot. That's quite a, some kills. Population lead now up to 50. Not the best fight ever for Valas, but behind the scenes he found so much and obviously had a massive flock of crossbows here. Oh man, that's absolutely brutal. And no army for Sito. The population is insane. And I don't know if you can call this an upset. Higher seed was Sito. Probably many people was considering him the favorite. But can you tell me, Nelly, how you come back from this when your opponent has this population also he's doing where's the castle because this don't disappear okay he, he remove again the castle well he's safe he feel confident protecting so, your two relics there makes a lot of sense as well he knows that the push is likely to come right he knew he was ahead in villagers and he also knew that he just killed like 10 so he is 30 ahead massive amount of wood maybe use the market a bit more on the way to imperial age valas is playing this one brilliantly He's playing amazing. He's playing amazing. And the Finnish players with 150 population because now he's house it. He's doing, in this game, uh, a domination. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, it's so a good. total domination here by him. He's now going to take the knight. Look at the monks here, trying to convert more. He's probably going to try to kill now. The, no, he's trying to snipe the monks all the time. But it's too many crossbows. And now just go back. He's converting again. Crazy resources. Oh, Howard Castle of Sito. Tries to go really aggressively, easily yeah. trapped, though we know that everything is already prepared. Crossbow not doing too hot, maybe Mangonel shot over the wall could be an option here. Crossbow, they need to get away. Oh, the man! Mangonel, the Mangonel, well, he's killing, but he deleted the Mangonel. I think he deleted the Mangonel because he was going to be converted. The castle is there, but this is a desperate move. In another position, I would say, wow, what a forward castle, amazing. But when your opponent is about to be in Imperial, I'm not so happy with that castle for Sito because that castle is going to be down, Eli. Thumbring now coming in and the Mangonel uh, can't make contest. It. Yeah, he cannot make it. He deleted it. He deleted it. And now another castle at home and he's winning thanks to his economy and also not letting Sito to get at home at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He can't get one billion. <laughs> in the whole game, Sito has killed one village to Valas with all this aggression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's insane. How he... 
I think like five minutes ago, the KD was still 0-0, by the way. Yeah. So like it was so much in their economies, but they were so good at defending those. Massive amount of farms now being dropped, still having lots and lots of woods here, but food will rise pretty soon as well. Crossbow's obviously not really the unit that latest, uh, that Lithuanians want to go for in the late game. Well, but now he's doing chain bar, the armor. He has two castles. He's going to be probably now finally ladies, maybe. He's doing the latest with chain bar, the armor. How many relics? Two relics, probably an old right nail. I mean, two relics. He now is getting something that is killed. Okay. Okay, but he's in Imperial, and now Sito might be thinking, I'm 2,000 score behind. How I'm going to come back from this? He's in Imperial. Obviously, he's going to keep trying, but just doing what? Barracks? Mm -hmm. Texan and Harbour Lattis. Yeah, I mean, Light Lattis Harbour here makes a lot of sense against Tatars that aren't really going for CA, can't really go into Harbour themselves right now. Yeah, we see a Kashyyyk on the field, but I don't think this will be enough. Well, amazing city so far. We see now the castle there. He's doing all the arbors. Let's see what, what is the following from Sito because he's with 95 lists, not so behind. But the problem is that the timing, the momentum is here for Valas. It's, it's in Imperial. Those ladies are going to be very, very strong really soon. He's doing the last attack upgrade. He's now going to convert more. Uh, I would love to see the conversions at the end of the game, how many conversions they are doing, man. 2,000 score difference. And the crossbows? Well, might lose the crossbows, but as you mentioned, the crossbows don't have transition in Imperial, so it's not even that important anymore. Yeah, absolutely. He's just buying time for himself here. Maybe gotta get just the latest to do the job, right? Lose every crossbow, trade them off against all the knights. Something that Valus will absolutely take. Yeah, and, and he's taking his just six villains behind. Look at those ladies. One trip is now going to take that castle. It's true that now he lost. Valus lost a lot of villains now. 18 villains is normal. He's raiding. But resources, 2,000 foot. 2,000 foot for Valas. He could sell a little bit. It's true that Sito is on the way to Imperial, but it is an oath, Nelly. It's true that he's not getting rated at home, but he has two tone centers, Sito. Pretty crazy how Sito is getting back into this game. Wasn't there 40 popula 50 population leads just some minutes ago? He doesn't see this. He doesn't see those ratings. He's now 24 villains. It was 11 villains killed to one. He has killed. 23 villains zero, but the castle is gonna be down. All those farmers are going to be bye bye. Over 2,000 foot. Obviously, Sito has to try. He really has to try. Do you think Valas is feeling the pressure? He's behind in villiers. That's pretty sick. Attacking into elite lights, though, that last armor is. upgrade, still two relics for us, right? So lots of stuff is going extremely well for our Lithuanian player here. Goes onto more stone at the front, is still going for his dream unit, but Sito putting himself into a beautiful spot to allow himself a comeback. Okay, the ladies out there, they are elite now. The plus four, they have two relics, so they are plus four already attacked too. Taking the castle, he's trying to come back, but he's really at the limit with the population. He got even more relics, but he has no army now and he's getting raided. And now how you stop those ladies? Boah, it has to be the heavy camel play, right? That's why he's setting up those stables here. Maybe go for lots of ca uh, CA and try to take some good fights, but it will be so tricky for him. Yeah, it seems a brutal macro. If you check, if we check the minimap in the south, he's all over the map. He has barely, basically all the south, 30 seconds, 30 seconds to be there. It's ready more. It's crazy how it was the Echo KD. So, so well for Valad, but now losing a lot. But when you got that economy, I mean, he has hand card, heavy plow and all the upgrades mm -hmm. for how long? Crazy. For so long. Yeah, 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 for yeah. really, really so long. While the economy for, for Zito, no Bozo, no heavy plow and no hand card. Sick. That has Sick. to matter a lot. There. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think we even saw crop rotation and then cancelled by Valas there. Maybe thinking better of it doesn't really make a lot of sense in an Empire Wars game with the time limit there, mainly for the score. And only now we see Botkin for Zito trying to deal with those rates, but so many mobiles just going down. Drops below pop 60. Oh, pop God. 80 here. He lost. Less than half he the lost. Population. He lost all the population and Zito is calling the GG. He will play. Good luck next. Valas with a little bit of an absent, we'll say, or this is what has closed that we cannot call it an absent. Nearly amazing play by Valas. The game number two and three, fantastic play. Especially after game one, right? Where we yeah. felt Sicho played so clean, so bang there in Valas. Oh, 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 smile. Look at yeah, that smile. I was smiling before. Was yeah. smiling even more for that. I was just, mm -hmm. you know, into the monitor. Oh, man. 30 conversions. The production told me he did 30 conversions in this game. Yeah. Th 30, no, 30 was looking better even. That doesn't matter, <laughs> Frizzy, you know? And imagine okay, like, 13. That 13. was all like <laughs> knights and mangonels, right? Yeah, so yeah, really yeah. expensive units there as well. Really took the steam out of Sito. Plus also put the threat into his head, right? If there was no redemption, 
Sito could have gotten that forward castle up, and yeah, he's just staring there. That yeah, that that was it, right? That's crazy. That's crazy. So we're gonna we're gonna have we're gonna have Leary versus Valas, mm -hmm. and to be honest, I want to see that. I want to see that, and I'm gonna tell you why. Valas has played those games kind of how Leary tried to play yesterday. He went for the macro approach. Remember that he was not attacking, so uh, Leary has to change something today because those series can be amazing if they played similar like he tried yesterday. But if he is trying to change it up, it's more likely that he changes up into a direction like Sito and Valas showed how good he is in defending those. So, like, Leary, he will watch those games and he has to come up with something because Valas' defense looked so good. I'm sure he watched it and I really believe that we're gonna have Valas with Mr. Riley uh, just in a moment. Take it away, right? Let's go. Yes, thanks very much, boys. Joined here by our Victor Vallis. Congratulations, mate. That was the first 2-1 that we've actually had on the stream here, and you came back to win. Well done. Uh, a big moment for you here, but your next opponent is Leary. How are you feeling about that one? Gonna be a hard one. For sure. I mean, Leary, one of the best players, not just of Age of Empires, but Empire Wars, so, uh, I mean, you've got a little bit of time to get ready for this match. What, what are you going to do? Well, let's see. Like, uh, he plays so clean that I will have to very, very, very well play my best. Mm -hmm. For sure. Let's talk about what we've just seen. I mean, talking about playing your best, we certainly saw some of it just now against uh, Sito. In game number one, we saw some signature Sito aggression, right? We've seen a lot of aggression so far uh, in this tournament. And it worked really well in beating you in game number one. Game number two, playing the Byzantines, uh, you managed to hold off that aggression. What's your approach? What's what, what's the way that you deal with huge aggressive pushes with a with a civilization like the Byzantines? Well, defending with Byzantine is so easy. You have answers to everything, and you have discount for everything. So I wasn't really feeling the pressure at that in any time because I knew that I was economically ahead. And with the Byzantines, you can always be in a good spot in Imperial Age. Mm -hmm. So you just wanted to push to the late game. Was that a reason to pick the Byzantines, knowing that you wanted to play defensively? Mm, probably, yes. So even in the draft stages, maybe you're thinking about that aggression. Let's move on, because I want to talk to you about another Civ here, the Lithuanians. We haven't seen the Lithuanians played all that much so far. Their unique unit, uh, the Lachie. Uh, Talk us through your, your pick here, because I think the other one you had was Britons, is that right? So why, why did you pick the Lithuanians on Acclivity rather than Britons? Well, I don't like Britons against Tatars, because in the later stages, Britons kind of die to them, I think. Mm -hmm. But the Lithuanian start is so good, because you have the extra food, sure. yeah, the and the good. faster skirmishers, because it usually goes to a skirmisher war, mm -hmm. so they have really good bonuses for that map, I feel like. Not sure why we haven't seen them so much yet. Well, typically we see things like Tatars on Acclivity, but do you think Lithuanians have got some unexplored potential uh, on, on maps like Acclivity? Oh, you just saw. <laughs> well, you're letting your reactions speak for themselves. Valas, one final question for you, mate. You've come in, you picked up a loss, you picked up a win. Are you finding your feet? Are you feeling more comfortable, more confident than you did? Talk us through your headspace right now. Well, definitely I'm playing better each match. Mm -hmm. Taking used to the main stage was a bit different, but mm -hmm. after a shaky start, I think I got off pretty well. Well, Valas, congratulations. A big win for you, mate. Looking forward to seeing you go up against Larry. The best of luck to you. Thank you. Thanks very much, Valas. We're going to move over now to our, uh, our uh, analysis board here. Joined by Dave. Dave, thanks for uh, coming to hang out with us over here. And let's chat about some of the stuff that we've seen there. Uh, Valas put on a clinic. Really, really mm -hmm. strong comeback from him after, a, after an early loss to Sito. Uh, talk us through some of the, the key moments for you uh, in, in this game. Well, I think the, series, I the key um, basic principle of this set is that Sato is really good at providing pressure early, mm -hmm. right? And we saw that in game number one. I mean, his build was sick, if I have to describe it any other way. Like, it's mm -hmm. sick. And he used the Khmer to their full potential on Frigid Lake. Mm -hmm. He pushed in with low numbers of archers, took a really good fight, and then he didn't let Valis close up, mm -hmm. right? He didn't let him wall. He always kept a, a way into his economy. And game two, that didn't pan out for Sato. Valis managed to close up. Valis managed to get his eco rolling. Valis managed to get 
I think it was like a 30 villager advantage mm -hmm. and uh, a similar Imperial Age time. It was really, really impressive from him. And we saw a very similar thing in game number three. I think if we go to our highlights now, we can see what I'm talking about for game number one. Mm -hmm. And this is the early fight. Right? I mean, Sato just gets the early uh, military numbers down, and he's got two archers. And we look up at the top right there. Ballas is in the process of making only his second archer. And this aggression continued the entire game for Sato. In the back there, Tristan and I were, T90 and I were talking about how Sato is looking so impressive early and how it's going to be so difficult for Valis to deal with this because he brings that army around to the farms, constantly harassing, pulls it away once again, and then uses another army to keep the base of Valis open and he's constantly distracting him at all points in this game. And we saw it carry forward. Here's the big moment, right? Valis tries to go for some quick walls. That house is never gonna, never gonna stay up. He can get the foundation down, but it's never gonna stay up. And that hole was wide open the entire game until his victory. One of the key moments, I think, or one of the key aspects I think we need to point out, point out in this series was the contrast, the comparison between game number one and game number mm -hmm. two, right? The aggression really worked for Sato. We know Sato loves to play aggressively. And here, a textbook Sato win, right? Yeah. Game number two, things change up a little bit. Yeah, I, I want to point this out because I, I labeled this as well. Sato, as soon as he takes his foot off the gas, he puts an outpost down at the at the back of his base. He puts a tower down because he knows as soon as that aggression is gone, Valis is going to be ready to mm -hmm. hit him. Mm -hmm. And Sato was ready completely. So this was incredibly uh, impressive from Sato. But like you said, game number two came along. All the highlights I think we're going to have in game number two are Sato being uh, amazing and pressuring and Valis just weathering the storm, yeah. right? Like Valis comes forward with an army, Sato defends uh, with scouts and with skirmishers. He gets himself a fantastic position, has archers all over the gold later on as we see him clearing up the first aggression and probably only early aggression uh, from the Finn in this match. And here he is. Here he is with the crossbows pressuring the gold. But somehow, some way, Valis just manages to survive throughout the ordeal. The micro from Sato here being fantastic. But the macro from Valis behind being equally as good. I think shortly after this, he adds that second TC. He was the only player with a presence on water getting those fish out there. So his priorities were completely different from the Frenchman. And Sato, well, he couldn't do enough damage. Valis carried it through to the eventual uh, villager lead that he had. I mean, holding on to the Siege Workshop, how stubborn can you be, right? He's got Mangonels coming out of here constantly, Saracen Crossbows attacking it, double Mangonels attacking it, and he just can't clear it up. Valis being so, so stubborn here, uh, getting that first Mangonel and just buying himself time. And backed up with, uh, you know, the Civ that is arguably, or just not even arguably really, the best defensive Civ in the game. Yeah. Valis yeah. himself, I mean, it's interesting questioning him during that interview. I'm not sure if you heard his response, but he said, it was easy to defend with Byzantines. And that's just the name of the game with the mm -hmm. Byzantines. And, and I think positioning himself defensively when everyone is wanting to be aggressive, particularly on a map like this, particularly with that Civ, Valis really read the room. Yeah. I mean, that's something we haven't seen so much during this tournament, no, right? We a haven't player seen holding defensive. on. Yeah. Exactly. It's usually the aggressor that has the advantage, and mm -hmm. Valis is proving that macro can be your friend as well as micro. And Sato losing a lot of villagers on this castle. I mean, it was up way too late. Valis was already in Imperial Age, already had trebs of his own mm -hmm. um, appearing, and he was ready to take it down. And here's the final blows right here. I mean, three bombard cannons from Sato and a dream. Yeah. There was nothing else here. Valis had a huge eco lead. He had a huge military lead. He even sent skirmishers in to raid. And that brings us to the game three. Valis, I know he's not showing that much expression on his face, but when he's in this position, he must have felt oh, yeah. extremely I mean, the, relieved. The Finns are known for their stoicism. They do play a very close hand. But, you know, even Valis just mentioning how he's starting to feel more comfortable under the bright lights, that mm -hmm. sort of stuff. He's warming up to this arena. Yeah, and here's the uh, early defense from Sato once again showing like he can win the battles with small amounts of units, right? Even against the Civ like Lithuanians that have the faster skirmishers, he can win those battles with his superior, well, I won't say superior, but more focus on micro. At the end of the day, though, Valis is going to come back with a, a big enough army to push you back to the gold, and he's going to take advantage with the uh, the farm count that starts to climb here. And Sato's eco 
was ragged because of all of this early pressure from him. We're used to seeing the Tatars really succeed on acclivity, and that seems to be the sort of established orthodoxy. I think we've seen Tatars on acclivity every single time. It's been on our uh, on our mm -hmm. mainstream at least. But a bit of an upset, well, not, not an upset in the sense that you know, these two players are very evenly matched. And upset in the fact that Tatars, as the more or less default pick for this map, yep. was really unseated here. Yeah, and that has to do with the early skirm pressure from Vallis, right? And behind all of this, he's walling. You can see on the minimap, he's starting to get his walls down. Mm -hmm. Sato is playing open as we see Sato now trying for some pressure. By the way, this is a this is a man who made, I think, 40 crossbows with a sieve that doesn't get the arp. It doesn't upgrade. get arps. <laughs> <laughs> it was fantastic. He's like, well, it works, so yeah. I guess I'm going to make them. And Sato's knights were just chopped liver. I mean, he had this the mangonels. Valis to counter the Mangonels, he goes and gets redemption. Mm -hmm. And suddenly Sato can't push it all. I think he tries for a forward castle later on, but the Mangonel starts getting converted and I mean, it's he just, pushed with like seven months done. at one point. Yep. Like this was yep. a really, really good decision. Here yeah, you can Valis. see this right here. Valis, he's like, as long as I take out the Knights, it doesn't matter if I lose a bunch of crossbows, because late game, I know I'm not going to be going into more crossbows. I'm going to shift into something else. Yeah. My eco is fantastic. I know his eco is certainly less than mine. Yeah. I just want to give full credit to Valis here because this was a hard-fought match. We haven't had a 2-1 on this uh, stream uh, so far all weekend. Mm -hmm. And I think Valis really put on the show of a lifetime. That's not to say that, that Sito didn't test him. I mean, this oh, was... Oh, incredibly entertaining player, Sito, yeah. And let's take a moment to acknowledge the contributions that he's made to, uh, to this event so far. It's always great fun to watch Sito, an aggressive, forthright and proactive player. Unfortunately, his road ends here, Dave. But, I mean, he played his guts out, so full credit to him. Yeah, and Valis, I mean, Valis certainly had his moments too. I mean, <laughs> some of the micro between both of these players was so intricate, right? Mm -hmm. I would love to sit here for like 10 minutes and just break down those early fights. Like T90 and I were ooing and aahing mm. in the back and uh, we really, really enjoyed this, especially game number three. It was absolutely fantastic. And it's, I think it's the most back and forth set we've for had sure. so far. Yeah, yeah, so absolutely. I would, I would agree with that. Well, Dave, thanks for your, your, uh, your words there, mate. It was, uh, it was good to check in with you. However, as I said, that is the last that we are going to see of Sito, unfortunately. So we want to take a quick moment to, uh, to get uh, this interview that we recorded with Sito uh, in front of your eyes here so we can appreciate one last time uh, our favourite Frenchman who's come here. He's given it his all, but unfortunately now bows out. So let's hear from Sito right now. So I'm Arthur and I'm from France. The fires was great. I performed pretty well and I practiced a lot for it, so I'm quite happy. Mentally, I prepared to play in LAN event because it's my first LAN event. And play-wise, I'm just practicing and thinking about the games incoming. I think my group is tough because there are some uh, big players there, uh, but obviously I'm not scared of anyone. So my, like, the opponent I fear the most is Yo because he's a really tough opponent, like, really smart and I don't know what to expect from him. I feel confident versus era, doubt, people have been prepping for, so uh, I don't mind if I play them, and I will try to play good versus anyone anyway. I'm not sure I want to reveal my strategies, but I, like I don't have any fix, anything specific for my training. I'm just playing and playing and trying to figure out what is the best on every map. Welcome back to our Caster Chamber here at Heidelberg Castle, live from the heart of Germany. You're watching Red Bull Wallolo Legacy. And what a pleasure it is to have your company for one of the biggest, no, not even one of, the biggest celebration of Age of Empires that we have yet seen. Riley Knight here, your host throughout both of our weekends here. Age of Empires 1, 2 and 4 on display here in Heidelberg as part of this uh, tournament with a prize pool of over half a million dollars. Right now, we have uh, wrapped up our elimination games and matches for the day, and some players unfortunately have bowed out, but we still have quarterfinal slots left up for grabs. And you can see here the groups as they stand right now. Two of our uh, qualified players in the quarterfinals already, uh, the Viper and Villese. And joining them very shortly will be uh, some of the other players that you can see there are on one and one. Fans of the Lord will be distraught to learn that he went down uh, to Kapoch two games to one. It was a hard fought battle, but unfortunately doubt bows out. We can have a look at group B here now and remind ourselves that of course, Hera and Tato sizzling performances from them yesterday secured their slots in the quarterfinal. 
But coming up, we have Yo, ACCM, Leary, Vallas, all facing off for those final quarterfinal slots there. And Sito and Daniel, well, salutations to them as they bow out of this tournament indeed. Let's check in with our schedule and remind ourselves of what we're going to be seeing today now that these matches are locked in, these pairings are once and, true, once and for all finalised. ACCM Daniel already in the books, Sito and Vallas, same story there. But we've coming up coming up now, we've got Dogao versus Jordan. That's the first one on the docket here. And once again, a quarterfinal slot up for grabs. MBL versus Kapoch as well a bit later on. But before that, Leary versus Vallas. We just had a chat with Vallas and he is saying that he's going to have to play his heart out in order to beat Leary, who is a multiple Red Bull champion and has really put in a good performance at these tournaments in the past. And rounding out today's coverage, Mr. Yo versus ACCM. One of those, will, uh, one of those blokes will advance through to our quarterfinals. But who will it be? You're going to have to stick around to find out. It is, your, it is our great pleasure to bring you live coverage of this magnificent event and we certainly hope you're enjoying it half as much as we are as well. Right now, however, it is time to get stuck into our first decider match. And once again, you are in the capable hands of Mem and Nilly standing by at the caster desk to take you through all the action. So let's get to it. We are getting there, guys. Now with Dogawa and Jordan and SCs, but before that, we have to talk the surprise of the tournament now. Till now, they the upset, and a lot of people are gonna be sad, I'm sure, because everyone loves doubt. Doubt is out of the tournament in the group stage, Nelly, against a player that we have also to consider a, a legend because qualified for Age of Empires 2, for Age of Empires 4, and now he's still in the tournament and will play versus MBL to be in the quarterfinals, Kapoch. That's going to be a crazy match, MBL versus Kapoch later on. And I talked to Kapoch and like when he arrived and I said, like, how. I would have never believed that he qualified for both games and I truly believe and a lot of people will hate me for that statement but I think achieving round of 12 in AOE 2 and AOE 4 is a bigger achievement than a, getting a semi-final in either one of them. He has already guaranteed $12,000. Already. Sick. Already. If he qualified against NBL to quarterfinals, I mean... <laughs> it's just, it, will be, it can be epic, absolutely epic. An, epi an absolute legend. And remember, like, Kapoch and Doubt, they have been facing each other, like, 20 years ago, right? I remember, like, casting, or, like watching their games in 2002 when they were all back in Elkland. So it, it is crazy how this guy is making it happen over so many years. Kapoch, a crazy, crazy story. Can still make something happen against MBL and obviously is going to play every 4 we definitely feel for, for doubt, we all feel for doubt because we all love doubt as a player and as a person. But now we have to keep going, we are moving and we are moving into Dogao versus Jordan draft that is going to be ready in a moment. As you can see, beautiful, all those amazing civilization, all those batch. And we have Dogao and Jordan. Dogao, impressive performing yesterday. Probably we will not expect to be here, but maybe we, we will not, not expect to be here Jordan as well. In this decider, I mean, because he lost against NBL and we were expecting him to be favorite. Mm -hmm. So, who is the favorite now, Nelly? Ah, it's a close. I think I will have to give the slight advantage to Jordan here, but I could easily see Dogao taking a 2-1, maybe even 2-0. It just feels like a high variance matchup here where no result would really surprise me. And Arabia. Mm -hmm. Arabia, he was telling all the day. I have no yeah. time to prepare. I want meta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had, I want meta. We had dinner with him yesterday, and indeed he said that he knows. Okay, the wild maps are not for me. So Arabia feels just very, very standard for him. Moras here for Jordan. I like that. I love that map. I think we didn't cast you and me at least. We Correct. didn't cast this map at all yet. We see Northern Islands now banned, and we have to remember why we see another circle extra, Mister Nelly, in the in in those overlays. Because now we are one round further, we are in the deciders, so each player gets four global bands, so he himself and his opponent cannot pick those civilizations, and then they pick four for themselves exclusively and have to play three of them if we go to distance in the best of three. I don't know what map is going to be, but I would like to see Enclose. Oh, Enclose could as be a, option. As the first one. Could be. I like that map. Yeah. I think it has a lot of potential uh, uh, the map but it's not gonna be no because it's close is bad taken away that's interesting because i Kawasan. thought dogao could have played um, enclosed as well 
better than yeah. Kawasan, no? Well, Kawasan, remember, like, yeah. Dugawa has played multiple Red Bulls as yeah. well, so he knows the map in and out as well. He trained a lot for the qualification, so uh, I think he will play Kawasan probably like we played it like two Red Bulls ago, but I don't think that much changed. Okay, I think he's happy to go with the maps. Actually, since he's Kyber seat, he had the choice to pick uh, Enclose or Kawasan. Mm -hmm. He picked that one, so it's what he wanted. We don't know about Jordan because it wasn't uh, his choice. But now civilizations, Arabia, <laughs> Arabia can be many civilizations mm -hmm. to pick. So they are going to try to probably eliminate civilizations for Kawasan and Moras. And we see already into Stannis. Mm -hmm. Taking that one away. And I also think the first picks will be for Moras and Kavasan. Like, Arabia pick will be for the third, fourth pick at six taken away. Dugao does not want to face the mess. Eagle, Saracens, kind of a ban against GL. Yeah, well, let's see. Arabia, Moras, and Saracens, bye-bye. Into Stannis. Are we going to see some Meso ban as well? Ooh. Lithuanians and Tatars. Finally, Tatars being banned. Okay, although we don't have a Clivity, kind of interesting, probably didn't want to face it on Kavasan. I didn't expect a task necessarily to be picked on those maps anyway. But, but can be picked on Arabia. On Arabia, a late pick there for sure. Very strong. Now we see Gojara's band and Cuban's band, so the Wild Sifts wow. banned by Dogao. That, that sounded like Byzantines. Byzantines, right? I, 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 I saw, like... And... Oh! <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Look how okay, he put the hand, did you see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not even the camera is going to see anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? He's hiding everything, absolutely everything. Now we're going to start with the picks in a moment. Franks, feels like Kavasan. Yeah. Sword earlier, sword being used. Jordan now with two picks in a row. Villager knows, okay. Bulgarians here, feels like potential more rust pick. Yeah, very strong for And Morales, Jordan has probably. another one. Goes for Berbers. Could be Kavasan, could be Arabia. Remember, Jordan, yes, they lost to MBL. With Berbers. On Arabia. Yeah. Don't want to repeat that one. And now let's see what he's going to pick. There is so many civilizations. I couldn't hear. Dravidians. Oh, and Dugao yesterday evening even asked me, Nelly, do you, do you really think Dravidians are that strong? Because Jordan played Dravidians on Arabia, and I told him, like, I can't talk about that. And he, <laughs> hey, he was fishing for information. That sneaky little guy. And maybe he's uh, like a pick to don't give to, to yeah. Jordan. Maybe he's not going to use it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then he's just taking it. You know? He said it's not good on Arabia, he thinks. Maybe it's a better pick for Kavasan or Moras in his eyes. Vietnamese as well, ooh. For Moraes can be very dangerous, I believe. With the short fees there, they can do double opening as well. Mm -hmm. Mayans for Mayans. Jordan, could be an easy Moraes pick, could be an easy Arabia pick as well. Well, Mayans is always dangerous, you know. It is really always dangerous. You don't that's, why, that's why I will have banned more civilization like Mayans than Tatars. I mean, Tatars is good, but uh, I mean, I don't know. But you can pick Mayans if you don't ban it. Man. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I mean to ban. Magias to close it out there. Could have been an option for Kavas and even, even Moras and Arabia. Kind of an all around civilization. It gives you quite some aggression. We didn't see the last pick of Dogao there, I believe, right? No, I, oh. I, I, I miss it, but we're now fleeing. Now. Hang on. What? God, well, he got Winchester Banner. Eh. Eh, he got Winchester Banner, you know, so. Okay. God. And Jordi smiling there. God? Jordi? <laughs> God? <laughs> and Dugao giving us the <laughs> wink. He, he was saying like, uh oh, you, you, you can watch. You okay. can watch. <laughs> and they smile. Both were smiling, guys. This was a oh. very nice one. They just crossed. They just crossed through here. Both planets. They are going to the to the to the room. And Dugao was like, huh? and we didn't wink? have time. We didn't have time to yeah. ask about Travidians. Yeah. We were having dinner last night. Mr. Yo, uh, Dugao, Nilly, and me. Be jealous, guys. Uh, be jealous because you have to be great guys. Uh, you're not jealous, right? I'm not jealous. I was there. You were there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And um, let's see because we are going to see now Mr. Dogao. How confident he is after grabbing information from Nelly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, seems like he's focused. He just thinks like GL, Dravidians. Now I played Dravidians on Arabia. 
Do I play in the one Arabia? Did I try to screw with Nilly said so that he talks to Jordan and makes my great game plan all work out? And then I pick Goth. Goth could be an option for Moras as well. He yeah, it is. Maybe go for Wild Man at Armolin. But honestly, like, I'm be playing Bulgarians then if you want to go. What about, what about Goth with Mayans? Goth with Mayans, but is, like, what? aren't you dying before that? Hmm. Oh, yeah, I need what map? It has to kind of be a rave. Yeah, it's yeah. Still, still so tricky. I think Goth is really... It could just be a throwback pick, but then why aren't you, like, throwing something at your opponent to think about? Yeah, maybe. Let's see, because now we're going to see Jordan. And Jordan, we know more or less how he's going to be exactly like this. Smiling. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Smiling. Even more now, because today is an amazing weather here in Heidelberg. Yesterday mm -hmm. was a little bit yeah. more rainy, but I think even even the Heidelberg now with uh, this great weather want to see this day, the deciders that the stop by and Jordan and now again, right? Let's go. Nice. He knows the full catwalk routine there, yeah. <laughs> and he's smiling like, wow, I'm getting paid for playing against Scott. <laughs> But he smiled too, because when he listened to us uh, talking about the uh, cat, he, he, he went around too and, uh, well, what's he, happening? Honestly, I wouldn't mind if like Dogao did it as an homage to Winchester there. Winchester obviously very famously um, picking Goth, even when they were way worse, picking them in really big tournaments. And Dogao, as we can see in the banner there in the background, the replacement for Winchester, who sadly couldn't be here. And Dogao, he's filling his shoes pretty damn well. I was so excited with, the, with this series because I, I want to tell you that after the previous series, I was thinking in these in this minutes, this is what I want to see because I don't really recall big mistakes by, by Cito. I look at this beautiful video presentation from the girl. Mm -hmm. How nice it is when people smile. How nice it is when people smile. Yeah. And now Jordan. Mayans on there, on the back of, on his back. So it makes lots of sense that he will play them. Head to head, 2020 on the ladder, 10 games. And you can see Togao pretty much through the bank. Played a lot of offline finals. Pretty identical stats. Jordan just getting one more extra point there on Macro, but those those points kind of indicating a super close set. Yeah, it's a very close set. And I don't know. For you, the favorite is slightly a little bit Jordan. Yeah, but it's it's like 50-50 sounds absolutely reasonable to me. Yeah, yeah. Two ladies of the game, two ladies of the games, and I don't want to ask. I don't want to ask to, to the chat who they want to to win because I really believe that Jordan might have more fans in the chat. But you type one in the chat, spamming for Togao. You type two, spamming for Jordan. And I'm very curious to see the reaction from the people. Sh the shouldn't it be spam one for Togao or spam seven for Jordan? <laughs> but I think that ooh. would make more sense. But okay. There, there was more. There was more ones there that I thought. Nah, but there's a lot. Okay. A lot too. A lot too. Okay, you know? okay, okay. It will be not seven seventy percent. Now you know for for Jordan. Oh man. Well, first game is gonna be. What is gonna be the first game? I forgot. Kawasan. 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 Franks sounds like pretty clear. And yeah. what about uh, Jordan? Uh, we had Mayans, right? Yeah. Could, could be an option. Maybe we can take a look at the Sift draft again. Berber's also a good option, right? Because but you I want to make that big cast edge push up. I, can, I like, I like Franks against Mayans. Franks against Mayans? I could like be. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I think like so as well. Franks, I think is good against Mayans. When Berber's can probably yeah. counter better with the Camel Cheapers Knights. Mm -hmm. I mean, are all in Mayans, you go all in with Franks, and yeah. Franks is fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, or can be fine. So where are we playing? Then it has to be Dravidians or more Rust, kind of, right? And I think we're playing so. Arabia. Vietnamese trying to counter Mayans here. Mm. Well, remember that one civilization is not going to be used. So, yeah. uh, and I don't know, maybe it's a mind, you know, mind choice, that, uh, like trying to confuse your opponent as well. It can. Like, if you have the three really secure to pick, and you pick one like God or Vietnam, you make him to think, like, he's going to pick that one, and then you debate him. Hmm. It's a possibility. I mean, you have one extra civilization. Yeah, that will be really interesting. If somehow Dogao gets in a boomy scenario where he can play Goth against Mayans and gets to Haskell, then Mayans obviously don't have a single answer. And this is uh, Bengalis, right? This is 
they are trolling us? Yeah, I think so. Maybe maybe Bengalis was the pick four and Goth was just wrong in the overlay. It may be the... Or this is... Huh? Can production tell us? Maybe they didn't have a Haskell because they thought, okay, Winchester isn't coming. <laughs> Nobody's so going to pick his God. Go, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're right. You're right. <laughs> the remove. Uh, yeah, well, that's Bengalis. So, Bengalis for Kawasan? Uh, let's it, see about that. I don't know. I think so, some heads are flying there and, and like people will be running behind the scenes and trying to figure out what really happened in Togao as we see it, replacing <laughs> Winchester there, the new challenger from Brazil, played Red Bull 5, probably the strongest player that didn't qualify. He changed to go pick Franks. Okay, so he picks Franks. Franks there for game one on Cavazan, so no big surprise there against Berber. So Jordan yeah. has to be happy with this matchup. Yeah, Berber is good. We're going to see a lot of a lot of cavalry probably. Mm -hmm. If they can go for Castle H, oh man, potentially can be an amazing game. But it's all about how the transition it is. If you're going to go feudal a lot, if you're going to transition faster to Castle, it depends who is having the economy and going there. It's, it's all, I mean, a lot of things to see right now in LA. A lot of questions that we are trying to find the answers. Mm -hmm. Berbers, if they can get to their proper setup, if they somehow, for example, get to Camel Archers, I think it gets really tricky for Franks there. Franks, they have to go aggressively in Feudalage, get the center control, and then hold that one massive initial push from Berbers. Probably have to play like a knight composition with either Monks or Pikemen. Let's see what is going to happen. We want to start the games already, right? I want that people start to write 14 in the chat because we are going to start. It looks like this is a starting. You can <laughs> see. You can see the game as you can see. You can see the game. And Mapu is about to join. We are all about to join. Ladies and gentlemen, the first decider of the day. Remember, playing right now for another $4,000. Spot in the quarterfinals, so more. much more chances. Jordan against Tukau, it's on. Jordan Berbers, yellow in the south. In the north, as a blue Dogal with Franks. And during Red Bull Legacy, Berbers has been drafted 57 times. Bengalis only once. Thank you for that information. It's very important, but Bengalis and icon was still there, you know. <laughs> and also we had Bengalis. Uh, okay, let's just continue with this. Focus uh, in the game. Yeah. And the uh, sneaky villager here by Jordan. He's going to go for the pawn at the left-hand side, still trying to find this one out. And while well, we mentioned multiple times, Franks, if it's scout v scout, they have more HP until Berbers go for bloodlines and overtake them HP-wise. It can be It can be amazing matchup. Let's see what is going to happen. We see that dog going on and Dogal opening with the scouts, both going to scouts. For now, not any kills. You have to micro properly. Do you see an easy transition here for Castle in Italy or mm -hmm. potential feudal aggression? It's not so difficult to wall in this map. Uh, yeah, especially Dogao. Feels like he already completed like 60% of his walls. Jordan, a bit more to the right-hand side, but there's like, like four more holes that I can see. Some spearmen added, and Dogao just feels very smooth how he got the scouts out on the map. Okay, for now, not too much going on. Well, not too much. They are doing army, but not kills. It's walling. It's going to be wall completely on the left. The red has to be protected. Remember that those berries are very important for Franks. It's 15% uh, faster gathering food. And those scouts that now they get the advantage. But the longer the game goes, remember bloodlines. We have mentioned many times when they are playing against Franks. Well, they don't have bloodlines, uh, Franks. And First kill there by Dogao. Need to go back because there's several spears and the population exactly the same. Ooh, he's paying oh. attention, man. They're paying attention. You see how he moved those scouts because the spears were coming. Like it. John got three hits in there. Needs to go back with his own scouts. Now takes that fight a bit too long for my test. Two of his spearmen are helping out and Dogao will likely be walled behind this one. Jordan, well, he couldn't find any damage, but as we mentioned earlier, if we get to an even castle age, probably feels like Berber should be superior. Okay, he's going back still. How many scouts he got now? Uh, five scouts, four scouts, so many spears. He has quite a lot of gold. Will you go some upgrades from the planet? The answer wow. from Jordan is clear. He will. But Dogao not doing right now. I believe as soon as he sees the upgrades, he might try to compete. Or if he's well completely, you uh, will go like, let's go up. Villagers <laughs> even Please helping do. out there. They're faster. <laughs> yeah. You know, and faster villagers. So. Moving here, left hand side scouts. A bit out of position, trying to get in there. I think Jordan should be able to quick ball this one. Good on him. Scouts ready for the defense. 
but it's going back. The walls is still happening little by little. Remember that it's not not so easy to wall if you are only with one police. It's quite a slow nowadays to wall. But resources, uh, Frank's always looks so smooth with the economy, nearly. Yeah, absolutely. Always. Both players also get one pawn, so more food is flying in. Farm setup already looking pretty good for our Frank player. Jordan still open at the bottom of the map. Now no fight is happening. Maybe we can check if Jordan knows about this one. For now, he does not. Doesn't know. And he's using already the market quite a lot. He didn't use the market with the stone, which is the invite that maybe is not going all in. Is he doing or not? Okay, still walling in. Uh, now moving around. The game is going for Castle, is nearly the Sims. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And Jordan even has a village on stone. Is that really collecting or is it just maybe collecting some? No, no, no. Camel archers, ma'am. You like it, that option? I like it. Okay. He is giving up the center, but it's so easy to micro. Defense the gold at the front. It just secures him to not die. And he sets himself up for a beautiful late game. Okay. But the problem is when you mine that many volleys on stone, then the economy is not going to be as good as the Frank player. Because look at the, his economy. 20 volleys on wood, 20 on food, 4 on gold, gold mining upgrade, Frank's economy, heavy blow. Oof. I'm, I'm not sure about... I mean, Left-hand side pawn. The scouts might find the village a pretty crucial thing here if they actually see it. Jordan, oh, look at those spiders. And such a good awareness by Jordan. Yeah, he's gonna take it. No, oh. he wall it. He wall it, and now he's gonna wall. That was an amazing reaction. And on the right, because he has to wall this on the right. If he keep going, it might find the hole. Remember that Jordan is still open at, in the south. He's still open in the south, but he's not going. It's so many spears attacking this area. Now he's doing the bloodlines. Mm. Look, look the economy for Frank Snelly, seriously. With those 21 on food, 20 on wood. Now he's having almost the, 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 the stone for the castle, as you were talking, but he's not going to make the castle in the middle. As you mentioned, he would probably do at home. Yeah. In front of his gold, uh, won't really contest the relics yeah. that easily, but it will go up a bit better than maybe delete some of your palisades there at the front. Dugao, pretty impressive Frank picker stats there. Some more harassment here, but Jordan with fire galleys should be able to defend this one quite easily. Village actually, ooh, frees himself. I believe, I mean, how he's gonna notice the, what Jordan is doing, Dugal? As soon as he doesn't see, like, spamming knights, he's gonna know that he's probably going to go, drop He can already, no, right? no, no, he can already click the um, scouts, right? And he saw bloodlines yeah. and only forging. Why, why don't you have armor? Like, yeah. either you're going camels or camel archer attack might be a thing. Yeah, also with the spears, it's working. There's a ability for Jordan that might be lost, and that's a great spot. I don't like that castle. I think it could have been more aggressive. Uh, uh, you see, mind if he see that castle, and now Dogal come with a siege war shop. Mm -hmm. He can't deny that goal. Well, like, Camel archers are really good against mangonels, uh, yeah, against mangonel pressure. I think he might be trying to hide it. But, but for what? Like you were talking about the upgrades. That that does not take. I don't like that castle personally. And uh, Dogao is gonna go. Look at the score right now. His economy looks very smooth. Why? Because this civilization is great. With the heavy plow now doing the war galley upgrade, he's gonna see the castle soon. As soon as he got close with with the shooting from that castle, he's gonna appear. And uh, pikeman upgrade. Well, the pike is not gonna work a lot if he's doing uh, camel arches, obviously. Mm -hmm. Now doing the monastery and. He's going to discover the castle in a moment. Still not. Not yet, because no, not, uh, now, now he does. Yep. Now he does. What then here? Do you think it's better to go with boom? He's doing the second TC or Siege Workshop for what? Because two tones set for both players. Isn't it? I would be surprised if Siege Workshop would achieve that much. Camel Archer is like really mobile, like short moment till they can shoot. Scouts should find the kill here. Good job for Jordan. We already are getting Botkin here as well. I think you kind of have to boom, play Knights and maybe win the trap war. Okay, but it looks like a, a, a boom approach here. It's gonna be better for who? Who's gonna have a better economy? Because right now, yes, he did the castle, but it's still Jordan 53, 54 for, for the guy. Pretty close. Frank's better economy in the long run for sure, but Camel Arts are just so, such a good unit that Jordan will be happy even with the worst economy to play and continue this game. Okay, let's see what he's going what he's going to do now. He's gonna to try to snipe some fishing ships. He's coming now with the camel archers. They are still now they are with Botkin. He's trying to kill uh, no, he didn't. He didn't kill anything. That's a good one. But they still both got the lake uh, oh, double hole. Oh. Hole here for Jordan and hole in the south. He's not gonna achieve anything because 
He got well. He got seven knights. If he's gonna be able to to go there, I don't understand why he's chasing three scout low HP with uh, with so many knights. Where else is he going? Right, fully walled. Camera archers out, yeah. and we have the castle. It, it, there, it's tricky to find good spots to attack. As you can see, if he's out on the map, they will get slaughtered regardless. As we, we have been getting quite a lot of uh, games very, very aggressive. It's not that this is not an aggressive game. It's more a, a little bit more about the macro. We might get a long game here in LA. Not impossible, right? Jordi wants to play the long game, and to Gao can't do a lot of damage. So that's kind of inviting those situations. Camarts just need to run. Knights at the right hand side. Monga, I don't think, should have enough Monk juice to go for another conversion. Yeah, I, I, I think husbandry now is crucial. Don't remember if they did the husbandry, but uh, uh, that camel is microing properly. Oh, but I like one thing a lot from Jordan here. In that spot that Mabu is right now, I can't see not so long, uh, not so late in the game, another castle. Yeah, absolutely. Keeps three on stone. A weird number, right? Kind of saying I want to focus on my economy, but also want to think about a castle pretty soon. Siege Workshop now to potentially prevent that. Scouts need to survive. And Dugao uh, seems like to have some technical issues here. Is calling someone over. Siege Workshop up there. Weird spot. I could see a mangonel being trapped there between the berry bushes. Right? Yeah, yeah, you, you yeah. See, there's no you, see that, you see that small yeah, hole yeah. there? There is the no. three ber berry bushes. Yeah. Oh, God. Just imagine a mangonel popping out there and couldn't oh, do you, a lot of stuff. You cannot kill with a with yeah. knight. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I think. Um, but camel archers can shoot over it, right? Can out micro it quite easily. Monks are trying to get the relics now. We have one already in the monastery. Second one is getting home there. And still getting those berries quite nice for Dugao. Faster for the Franks. It feels he probably loves the song. I feel, I don't know, well, there's some problem, guys. Don't the worry, it's going to be fixed it as, as quick as possible because the moment of the game is is brutal. I mean, look at the population. Mm -hmm. 66 villages, 65, so, such a close 14, game. 15, 15. The score is say that Jordan is ahead, but the, the, the game is so, so close. Yep. With something that benefits a lot to Franks, 31 farmers already. Ooh. With heavy blow. Okay. Well, maybe some are on the on the, on the berries. Doesn't oh, yeah. matter. Berries, yeah, is yeah, Frank, yeah. so is it still good as well? Yeah. Uh, gathering faster as well. Oh man, oh, man. So for you, who was Chris that? Was just by? Oh, so it was not a technical thing. No, right? it's because that is an admin. Ah. He, he stopped it because he's scared. Doubt so Crasini around and he said that I need a pause. Do you remember Red Bull Legacy 5? It was so scary, Crasini. Mm -hmm. He's now mm -hmm. completely different role now. Well, not role, just not the outfit there. Okay, so who is in a better position for you there? I mean, right now he's Kenta. I think the, it's too even. I think Jordan. Not like the game feels kind of evenish now, but just imagine the game in three, four minutes. How will Dogao deal with those cabin archers? Like, hope for Jordan making a mistake and your siege is getting some connections. Kind of the only way that I can see. Yeah, well, the game keep going. Go, go, go. Yes, Siege Workshop is there. Obviously, the way to deny the potential castle there is going Siege. Mm -hmm. It's going Siege, then, then you are not going to be able to do a castle. Do you think that should be good now for Dugao that he has three TCs, very smooth economy going, he's doing more stables? Uh, but I was going to ask, my name is Thor now, because a Frank Castle, you get there in the middle and very cheap, why not? Yeah, it's not really scaling too well, right? You don't want to go into... Oh, the scorpion! The scorpion is there! Look at the scorpion! Is in that spot? Well, it's a sneaky scorpion. You know, it's not gonna get killed by anything. Did he delete it? Did he delete it? No, 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 it's there, it's there. Oh, there. The scorpion is there, man. The scorpion is ready to dominate. The scorpion is there, a sneaky scorpion. Now he's going to go back. The knights are with the plus two already. Those camel arches, as you mentioned, very strong. One villain down. Well, that scout was worthy. And that scorpion is still there sneaky with more monks coming. But he's doing ballistic already. He's investing quite a lot in those camel archers. It's investing quite a lot in those camel archers. We'll borrow. It's still not on a stone. But the economy, I still see a great economy going from Dogao here with 40 farmers. And now he's switching on to stone, thinks about, okay, I want to click up to, to, into, well, towards Imperial Age in like two, three minutes, ideally, and then a castle and trying to get into the trap war could be really nice for me. Those fires not really helping out there. So, so close, but 
Oh. Mapo, oh. Mapo, can, can you click only one night from Dogao? I want to see if he has only one night. I want to see he has the husbandry. So he has the husbandry. I believe he has husbandry as well, uh, Jordan, because those camelizers were looking like a speedy Gonzalez, you know, so fast. They were going away. Now he's doing, he has all the upgrades, even Thumbrin. Yeah. He's, in, he's investing a lot yeah. right now. Thumbring? Well, quite an interesting thing. Double conversion here, by oh, the way. So Jordan will lose that pawned. And, well, Jordan didn't have the greatest food economy, right? Down to 18 here. Some of fights here, but uh-oh, Jordan needs to disengage. Yeah, four Scorpions that night. He's coming with the villages. He's coming uh -oh. now to uh -oh. make a castle forward. But now the knights are out of position. That's why he's committing. But he got what? He got the monks. He's not converting. Look at the monks idling. Look at the monks idling. And he's not converting the knight. And the knight is killing four Scorpions. What is he doing with the monks? He's not using the monks. Nearly use the monks. Really up by John. That's maybe not enough villagers, right? Uh, he is at 40% roughly, I would think. Still micring against all those knights. Where's the army of Togao? Why is there no knight? He's on the left. He's coming now because he's still chasing those camel arches. But look at the economy for Jordan. I don't like Jordan economy. 17 on foot, zero literally on gold. He's going to make the castle, yes. But Dogao has the relics already. Oh, still right clicking. Can we get this castle up, man? It's getting really close. It's 96%. 96 he's going to take the castle probably. But in my opinion, the price he paid for this castle is too much. Check out the Echo KD. Dogao killed 19 villains already. 4-2. 4-2 only by Jordan. And he got already the four relics. That castle is not important. Well, it anymore. gives well, you the berries, it okay. gives you the hill control, and that means it's impossible that you have to fight the trap war uphill, right? Because Dogao building the castle there in the back is going to be a risky move. So it's a strategic move there, but obviously at a high price. Yeah, a very high price. And if he's going up faster than his opponent, because I believe that Dogao Mm -hmm. Might be up to cast to, to Imperial, sorry, uh, faster than his should opponent. Be, should absolutely be the case here, man, simply because his economy is better. And Jordan just had to invest so much to get the second castle up. Still keeps three villagers, <laughs> his signature, three villagers on stone. Oh, more raiding. More raiding here with the knights. He's raiding nonstop. The, 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 the food is already 500. Gold 500 as well. Zero. Almost gold in the bank for Jordan. Not too much food either. He now has 30 farmers. Almost the same as Dogao, but he's still raiding. Mm, the fish for both players at the bottom right corner pretty much the same 69 69 for both rating those farmers is still looking good for the hell he will love those raids camel even built there for the defense makes lots of sense villagers oh at the right spot will lose some obviously forging in so villagers get four sliced by a knight those knights will die, but absolutely fine for the goal. Yeah. Well, we see that the o eight villains on stone in the middle, and more knights, a lot more knights to raid, a lot more knights to raid. He's producing even more. Five knights in the queue. He's going all in. Because if he just and queue those villains and the knights, he can go up to Imperial. Yeah, but maybe feels okay. You're still so open, and I saw so many villagers. I'm trying to find some more damage here. Jordan feels like okay, I can counter attack. Score feels misleading, right? We yep. think Togao is leading, but the score, and that's the impression that they get a lot, obviously, or that's an info that they can use pretty heavily. The saying Jordan is leading. Well, the KD is in favor to Jordan, mm. but the quality of that oh, KD is no. what we talk a lot of knights again in the economy. Well, there's few camels and camel archers and one camel. These knights are plus two, that's too many. And Dogao is on the way to Imperial right now with a stone to make a castle. You will make the castle exactly in front of the other castle in the middle and then go oh. with the traps. Camel archers need to run away. Lots of scorpion hits here. I think on the high ground could be a ballsy move. I if you see how many raids Dogao is getting in here, probably on the low ground feels a bit more reasonable, but he's building it on the high ground. He's doing that one in the high ground. As you can see, he's on the way to Imperial now. He needs to mass Knight and he's massing and probably is not going to take any more battles. He's still trying to raid. He's doing a TC. He's rushing a TC. How the score is 1,200 ahead for Jordan. 20 villains behind here because he's killing the Knights and the Knights are expensive. He's the only explanation. And also because his opponent is on the way to Imperial. But those cam Camel Arches are with Valley and with Thumbrin, they are strong, the Scorpions are coming, the Knights are coming as well, the castle is going to be up, and when he's up, probably the score is going to get 
get a lot closer, Nelly. Mm -hmm. Jordan now cancelling everything as well, using the market. See how heavily the market is used. Look at that. For 100 wood sold, you only get 41 gold in return. Initially, that starts with 70, but both players used it quite heavily already. And Jordan now clicks up to him. Wow. A window of not only two minutes. Well, the good thing is that after you do all those upgrades, the, cam the camel arches is not like the knights. They don't cost food. So obviously, you are going to be able to go up faster to, to Imperial it like it did, because it was looking too far, and then it's not that far anymore. And now in Imperial, you're going to kill those camel arches with barracks, because those are barracks, I think. Are those it has, barracks? It has to be mass cavalry, uh, cavalry. And yeah, those are barracks. Jordan was trying to take into camels now. He was going for another stable, which surprises me a bit. 18 knights. Look at all the resources that Tugao has. He can click, click pallet into it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he has to be. It has to be pallets, and then. But the thing is that Jordan can switch to ca to camels, cheaper camels, heavy camels. I don't know, but he has not a single camel. He has one. Sorry, he has only one camel. He's doing. I don't understand the barrack choice, but well, plate bard in armor, trebuchet already on the way. Mm, yes, and cavalier upgrade, and he is still going with more and more tone centers. I know that the scores say what he said, but for you, who is still have the advantage here, Mr. Nadal? I think Dogao has a really good shot of making something happen here. If he finds the timing in 70 seconds against all those camel archers, they can't take the fight. But Jordan, he can just go for camels. Cheaper camels in Imperial Age and can really muss up some numbers. Needs to squeeze through here. I, my crewing is a risky thing. I don't know if he should be here now. He's going to delete now the barrack. So you make the barrack and now he's deleting. No, he's not deleting. He's going away. He needs the plus four. Halvard Diaz. Oh, Cavaliers and Halvard Diaz is not a bad choice. It's a deadly combination here. And now he's going to try to take the castle. And the longer the game goes, for who is better? Because Dogao has four relics. Mm -hmm. But center control is so important, right? We have enough gold, we sometimes can expand. And the side goals, look at that, more likely to go into Dogao's favor as well. Jordan needs to repair this castle and arrives in without any gold, so therefore cannot afford Imperial Camel. Oh, um, I mean Imperial Camel Archer. It's fine. You, 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 make, you make, because I said lately before, you wanted to make <laughs> me feel the same. It's all good. It's all good. Let's see the camel. It's still open there. Nah, doesn't matter. Plus three. A lot of army for Jordan. Camel Archer. Oh. The camel archer's battle there is going to be, but the cavaliers is not a joke. It's not the same. You cannot find now those cavaliers or you might lose them all. That's why he's going, man, those camel archers are so fast, nearly. Mm -hmm. They are so, so fast. Whoa. They are really fast. He's still repairing the castle, and this is a problem because you are not going to have a lot of castles, and then you are now losing in the stone, he need to go back. And that's the problem here for Jordan if he's doing camel archers. Obviously, he has the camel's choice too, but he has half mm -hmm. So if you don't have castles, you cannot produce those unique units. And he has one castle only. How about still 28 left? Maybe you could even consider attacking to Magrabi camel, meaning that your camel archers are going to heal here. Oh, that gold. Ooh, yeah, he's going to he's gonna, he's gonna take it. He's not deleting that one. He's not removing, so he's losing that tone center. That's good. He's still doing another one close. He's going to mine the stone there. He can see that tone center. So let's see. Military numbers now. Amazing. Look at the score now, Nearly. Now he's not starting to lie. This is Cavaliers and a lot of Halvardis. The combination is absolutely deadly because now the Cavaliers take the Camel Archers. And those Camel Archers are not like Magundice. They don't take the Trebuchet that fast. Mm -hmm. So he has to run away and then the Halves take the Camels. I like the position for Dugao, Nelly. Feels like the army composition makes a lot of mm. sense here. That's a nice castle at the side. Jordan needs to focus down the Harbardiers with his camel archers. Then the camels take the fight. They're horrible against Harbardiers. Now the uphill fight. I think this could be good for Jordan. He has the better numbers, but could be cost efficient for Dugao at the same time. Let's see. Remember that the halves are very cheap. This is a big battle. The camels are in front. The Harbardiers are coming. The Cavaliers are dropping the number, but he's still spamming. His economy is amazing. The castle is down. There's no more castle for Dugao and for, sorry, for Jordan. But if he's doing now here a castle, Dugao, he has the stone. He'd make the castle there, and then he has all the map control. Oh, I'm oh not sure God. if I like this fight by Jordan. I think going back and forth a bit more could have been an option. He had to chase down, couldn't really expand towards the gold enough, and those harbors were just tracking. Yeah, he's taking absolutely everything. Those are amazing. Now all the villages here are getting down as well. The next step probably for Dogal going to be a castle there. The score still looks very close because the population is really, really close. Cavaliers! For the for Jordan, the desperate move because when your opponent had halberdiers and better cavaliers, what you can do with those cavaliers, Nelly? Uh, not that much. 
you they are cheaper so you're trying to play with your mobility the ideal thing to go against that is obviously how about he is not an option here for Berbers and Jordan probably doesn't know what he should go for now yeah because now he's, he's running out of options lost the castles it, it, it's an option to go cameras and hand cannoneers I didn't even know Berbers had hand cannoneers, so f I, it's they, just they, a, they do they, have. They do. They have them. Okay. They have. It, it just uh, it just takes so long to get there, right? With chemistry, with like even then against Paladin Abrid. What? Paladin Abrid by Dugao. 55 farmers. Paladin Abrid, and he does have chivalry. Men, 200 population, and this guy was not prepared for the tournament. In mind, if he was prepared, nearly. crazy, crazy, amazing performance by Dugao. Oh, yo, 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 and yeah, Cavalier's taking the full control, and we kind of saw it coming, right, that the Harbardier Cavalier spam is tough to s stop for Jordan, and he got his dream matchup, he got Berbers against Franks, but just so much control from Dogao this whole game, four relics and now the mash of raids, and Jordan running out of options. Economy for, for Dogao, I mean, Frank's economy, he got crop rotation for free as well, it's amazing. Uh, uh, civilization, very, very strong. And the, those are pines coming. GG Cole, the gal, is taking the lead. And we have to recap here that the gal, one of the day, he was 2 1 against Vilese. And now he's already 1 0 against mm -hmm. Jordan. No matter what happened, <laughs> Production. his performance is pretty sick. <laughs> And those units are still there. Okay. Production, production really wants to see Bengalis play. Red, Red Bull production <laughs> want to see Bengalis. So <laughs> Bengalis has to happen and it's going to happen uh, at some point, but not now. <laughs> anyway, uh, pretty impressive. Absolutely. And well, we still have both home maps, right? Jordan can still play whatever he prepared on Moras. Dogao still has Arabia. And Jordan, well, that was not really going to plan there. Camel Archer play and couldn't really drill down those night numbers. Great economy behind it for the Gao. I think now the Gao feel pretty well because he's thinking, okay, Arabia and got. Hey, I mean, Jordan can play in Arabia exactly. I mean, perfectly fine, you know. But feel confident now. What in Morris now then? What we are going to see from the Gao and from Jordan? I think it kind of has to be Dravidians against Bulgarians. Is what I would expect of Moras. Yeah, it's very likely. By the way, Dogao, I've been saying it for, it, it feels like four years now. Probably the player that is getting way higher ratings from other top players compared to fans. Like, if we do a ranking of the top players in the world, if we only consider, like, if we only ask, like, fans, he will get, like, 15, 16, something in the world ranking. But if we ask the top players, he often got something like around 9, 10 spot in yeah. the world. And people really fear him because he's so deadly in those macro games. Dogao told me last night uh, while we were walking the, for, to, to the dinner that he felt that he that he could have done against Velese. Mm -hmm. He felt he did some mistakes and he could have been already qualified. So, And Velese has been playing really well. So um, let's see what is, what is going to happen. Hmm. Well, let's take a look. Obviously, Jordan has the choice. Could technically go for Moras' own map. Could technically pick Arabia from Dogao. And okay. Well, um, we will see. I, I think Moras makes a lot of sense. Just take your game win there and then go into the 1-1 one -one with a lot of confidence and then play Arabia as the final decider. Could, could be something with a prepared strategy here for Jordan. I think it's just so easy for Dogao to already have confidence and then go into Arabia. Moras just feels very likely to me. It's still not working, Eli. I'm just looking at the monitor. <laughs> <laughs> it's still not working. I'm trying, guys, but it's not working. We're going to see it in a moment. In a moment. You saw the, I saw three players. It's the only thing I did, but the third player is the admin. Mm -hmm. That is, might be Crescini there. Yeah. Yeah. Checking that everything is all right, controlling absolutely everything. Mm. Well, this is, I mean, we have the Viper, Tatot, Hera, and Velese in quarterfinals. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're trying to find the other four. It can be Jordan or, or Dogao. And right now, mm, Dogao only need one victory more. Bulgarians 
it's a morass. We have Bulgarians. I think it's going to be Dravidians. I think Dravidians makes a lot of sense here. And double artillery range opening is double archery strong. range. You can defend like Bulgarians are always going to throw a lot of aggression in your face. Could be like an archery range and early fletching and early armor upgrade. Look at Jordan looking into the camera even. Could be like a man at arm opening, could be a scout opening as well. Lots of question marks there in Dravidians. If they play double archery range, they can weather this pretty easily. So then Bulgarians kind of have to play towards Castle Age. He has to go very aggressive, Jordan. Uh, it fit that to, to, to him. It's more a macro player. He likes to go more aggressive, Nelly. How do you think he's feeling more confident? I think he plays to the Sith pretty much. Yeah, I think he can like absolutely defend. And yeah, it's indeed going to be Dravidians. With Bulgarians, you kind of have to play aggressively, right? Otherwise, it gets into really weird mind games. I think like if you try to be like a Giga Brain 300 IQ, you go one archer range skirm defense against Dravidians because they basically don't have a stable and ignore most of your bonuses and then play massive castle age. That's someone that, let me think, who would be someone who would play that? Maybe like Viper could think of something like that. Someone like that would be like a Rubenstock approach to yeah. the situation. But I think Jordan is more the aggressive style. I would expect something like even double stable if he wants to go wild with one archer range scums. We're going to have all the answers very soon because the players are starting the game. As you can see, when the camera angle is going like that way, is because, no spoiler guys, but <laughs> the game is going to be there in a moment. And now it's not going to happen and then it looks very bad. <laughs> it's what it is, you know, it's what it is. But they are, they are starting. Yeah. yeah, almost there. They were just typing. That almost seems there. like go ready, go ready indeed. Yeah. And now the hand are at the right position there. Although the Gao still takes his time. We can still remind you of the great matches that are coming up later after this one. MBL versus Capot is going to be following this set. Absolutely crazy success for Capot already being this far. Same goes for MBL. Yeah. And then the highlights of the evening. Yo against ACM and Liri versus Valas closing out the night. But then you are a professional player and then you start to think, why I'm preparing? I'm not going to prepare anymore. I mean, let's just prepare a little bit less, let's relax, and then let's try to go wild in the tournament. Well, MBL's preparation was 9,000 ladder games in the last three years, right? So he, he is practicing. He's just not like practicing the last two weeks. But, but not only MBL, uh, Dogao, you know, it's. Well, like... Dogao like, played multiple hundred games to prepare for the qualification, right? That's true. He and didn't he said, really yeah. adjust to the new civilization changes that happened like three weeks ago but he obviously can easily read up on them, plays Arabia, plays Meta, and nothing new was played, for example, in game one. That's true. Well, there was a, there was a small bug in the in the game for that. It's getting a little bit delayed, guys, and we're going to, they restarted the game. So that when when you saw that moment is because they were starting, but they are restarting the game in, in just a few seconds. And we're going to see, we're going to see what uh, what is going to be the second. I want a free game. I mean, I know that you want, 2-1 for Jordan, <laughs> let's be honest, Nelly. But I want at least three games, you know. We want we want three games. Uh, everyone wants three games, I'm sure, from all the cities from now on. Like, and tomorrow, five. Yeah, yeah. Five yeah. games, tomorrow, Four. quarterfinals. We have to, to remember, tomorrow is already the quarterfinals. Not tomorrow, at the end of the night, we have the four semifinals ready. Mm-hmm. It's insane. Semi-finals and finals next Saturday in front of a live crowd here in Heidelberg in a castle. And should be like an epic atmosphere there for sure. Even more pressure on those four many players. Today they were already fans. They were already people in the in the castle. Okay, man, can we go inside? No, it's not open for the crowd. It's the next weekend. But there was a lot of people already around. And now what is around, what is already there is Bulgarians. Jordan as a yellow on the left. Dogao, Dravidians on the right. And the opening, as we expected, nearly double archery range during Red Bull Wall Alone Legacy. The Bulgarians lost more matches than they have won. Seven wins, 50 lost. <sighs> Pretty crazy, but something we didn't expect. Double barracks play here by Jordan. He goes double man at arms against someone who's playing double archer defense. This should be pretty doable for Dogao to hold. Wow, plus one armor. Can we see Mapu if he saw the second man, uh, the second barrack with the fog of war, please? He didn't. That's important. Mm -hmm. That's important because maybe, well, 
still, he's going to mass arches anyway. But he sees the armor now, right? Yeah. So he could maybe consider, wow, why did you take into armor? What's happening here? And men at arms, well, let's see how much they can overwhelm. Jordan has two villagers on gold, so production can continue and can pressure this one quite nicely. Even the stable to follow up. What is this aggression, man? Wow, he's going now with the stable, double barrack stable, but there is not too much investment then because uh, oh, you don't have food. Well, 21 on shorefish, man. Yeah, Fastest food income true. you can have in the game. Looks pretty solid to me. Yeah, well, it's quite a lot. We see Dogao with a lot of idle TC. A lot of idle TC already, almost a minute. We, we, we're into minutes. He's been idle TC all the game. <laughs> I mean, well, 34 bullets, 32, two bullets behind. And, well, maybe he's, he's surprising his opponent, but... He has a good army, Dogao, and now Jordan house it. This is exactly what you don't want. You're going double barrack, is stable. You, he's housed it for a while. Oh, man, oh, man. Now he's not housed oh, it anymore. Oh. There's another man at arm here. He's going all over, but... Quite gonna take aggression. a player. It's quite some aggression, but it's still like, okay, the... Zero, zero, didn't kill any villager. It's not working yet. And then... Man, he's killed by the number. He's doing all the upgrades. Remember, 50% cheaper. Uh, we have not seen this before. And now he's forcing to make him a tower, but those men at arms are in danger. Hit him back, hit him back, and he might kill them. Oh, it's too it's many. tricky, right? You too have many. to face like three different attacks at the same time, like men at arms at the left, men at arms at the right, and we had to fight for the, all the center shorefish there. Not easy, John expanding with the tower. Togao saved that one for now, tries to poke a bit, and well, nice quick waltz by Togao. Very nice, that men at arms is almost bye bye, he's really low HP in front. If we focus is where we see a lot of farming. What he can see, he had not seen the stable, right? Dogao doesn't know if the stable is double stable. What? Double, double, what, what, what? And we have to plus one, plus one. Double stable, double barrack. <laughs> Only one spearman, man. Oh, and an early market. Oh, this will be massive delta when it comes to castle age timing. Yeah, but, but he need to see it. He need to see it. He's doing double stable. He can have crazy amount of farming in a moment. Or, well, he's gonna see all the upgrades. And now, uh, if Jordan is doing the bloodlines, uh, then what? Well, he doesn't have yet the resources, but most likely he will go bloodlines. With all this aggression, he wants to go all in. Oh, and the scouts on the left-hand side are doing something. Right-hand side, men arms are coming in. Impossible to micro both armies at the same time. John is committing, and John is finding quite some kills. Yeah, well, he's trying to kill, but it's still the numbers from Dogao very high. 9, 12, not that high anymore. He's losing so quite some. But man, but you need to kill more. I mean, with, with all this investment, nearly, you kind of have to kill more and some economy at some point. Because right now, he's trading his skirmishers. And so arches for a scout and men at arms. Oh yeah, that's not enough. He needs to break the number there. You could maybe even think about like a skirmisher mixed in there or two. Could have helped out Jordan, but he just wanted to break Dogao. Still 28 on food here for Jordan. Bloodlines is now coming in. He's safe in the center. Jordan okay, looking okay. He's back <laughs> to go up on the way to Kaz. Because Dogao is with Dravidians, you know, with the Shorefish as well. With they, they have the bonus nearly, and then he's doing the house here. He's gonna wall it. <gasps> he's walling. He's walling everything. He's on the way to Castle. It's like he has 17 army, Jordan 7. He tried to make crazy aggression, but what he has achieved, his KD is negative. Dogao has positive KD right now. The value of his army is even higher, and he's on the way to Castle with Goldmine and Abred on the way. How he can now make damage with this amount of army, Nelly? Jordan only has one man at arms, so therefore full spearman is the way to go for Dugao. Jordan, does he try to jump onto this one? Probably not the right numbers here. Continues to go for more scouts. Look at that. Three scouts still in production. Goes for the market now, but can't really sell resources. It's incredible. A lot of scouts going around, but there's still these nine scouts. He's one in front. He's trying to probably go in at the back of Dugao base, but... He's gonna achieve something with those scouts, what he has to defend, not too much, but he's now killing a villager. First villager kill, by the way, right now after all this aggression. But that's gonna change. That's gonna change quite fast, because the scouts are coming. He's gonna snipe one, and there's a lot of his, a lot of villagers there to kill. And here, he can make a massacre, Jordan. And Jordan has the resources to go up to castle. He's gonna try to kill a lot. No, he's not killing that many. He took one and now there is five spears. Good reaction, he's gonna take two, three, but it could be much worse. Nearly. Crazy quick walls at the right hand side next to the market here where the scouts wanted to come in. They have to go the long way, but now they arrive at the wood line, right hand side of Dogao's base. Maybe we can see something there as well. Good 
great here by two spin. Now coming he over see again. It. He see it. He see it. He's, he's on point. Crossbow, Botkinaro. Nah, action all over. This map is amazing, Nelly. Oh this map boy. is great. It's really great. He's gonna go in. He needs to make damage now because those knights easily, if he's not doing damage, he's gonna be the plus two soon. That's so many scouts, man. Oh, let's take a look. Botkin now coming in. Crossbow still five seconds away. Gets a lot of damage in there, but I think Togao could clear this up. Yeah, well, he has the plus two. The crows is coming. More crows are coming now. The reinforcements are happening. And even Pike Van Arbret. Well, this is the army he has, Dravidian. Siege Workshop. Oh boy. Siege Workshop. Elephant? Instead of a mangonel? Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind that. Has the crossbow right. now got into Pikeman? I think even a second. Elephant doing? Oh, oh, armored elephant push. He's doing the armor elephant, and that's an amazing unit. Remember, much better, in my opinion, than the ram, Nelly. Oh, those th three scouts didn't find a single kill here. And Jordan, what is he going for? Maybe he needs to wall a bit more. He's now buying himself some stone. Is that for a defensive tower? Seems like it. Add the stone. Yeah, well, but. but He's coming more. With the I, elephant. I mean, those towers, is, oh. those towers are going to go down. He needs to put all the army in front. He needs really to make damage. The scouts are coming. You don't want to lose that beautiful fatty elephant, but you are not going to lose it. The pikes are coming. He still, he took, ooh, he took quite some villains. Now Jordan has killed five villains. This is, this is an amazing game already with so many units, so many action. We don't know where to look. I'm, I feel very sorry for Mapu. <laughs> he might feel sick right now. One, two, three. Oh, man. Killing a lot. Now the Echo KD, 5-5. Five, five. The KD in total almost the same. He need to focus and see that one. He's going to see it. That the scout is almost done. And he saw it. Krobos is still coming. Lightcap, the only thing that Jordan is really attacking right now, no knights in the queue. No, don't have economy. It's night, There's night a lot scouts of raid. and that's it. Yeah. Because there is no economy. Look at the food. The food is gone. That's the problem. When you have all your economy in the short face, if you are getting raided like this, what economy he has right now? Mm -hmm. Nothing. And now, that TC is going to be in time. I think he's going to be in time, but he's losing a lot. He's trying to wall. He's taking one, two villains. He's going to take more. Three, four villains. Ooh, almost. But he take a lot. It's still 44 villains for both, but look at the army number for Togao. Crazy. 29 there. Obviously, army value not that super, super high, simply because he has like cheap units, but they are so good. As you can see, Cross was doing the damage, Pikeman scaring away the cavalry, and Jordan kind of stuck on the cavalry attack against someone that's going quite a lot of pike. And you know what? We have to start to hide because we are starting to notice how the tournament is just getting into the later stage. Let's go, guys. 15,000 viewers only here in the Red Bull channel. So we are going to be getting more and more people because these games are amazing, nearly. This is what we want. The aggression that they provide in Fire Wars. And Jordan has... I have to change the topic because Jordan has no army. Double with tags now, of course, he, he cannot have economy. I mean, with all that he did, double barrack, double stable, all the upgrades. What Jordan can do at this point, I know that he has three villains more, but, but no resources in the back. He's buying resources to make chain bard in armor, mm. but he has five knights. And he's fighting before he gets it, loses quite some HP before this one. Nice positioning there by Togao. Pushed away the wood line, pushed away the berry stone. He's trying to buy himself some more time. But those raids ah, didn't find the damage that Jordan was looking for. Yeah, crazy. Well, the archers keep coming. There's still one elephant on the field. He's now going to take uh, that down. Uh, only one on center, Dogal. Remember that, well, Travini says a civilization with no mobility at all. The cavalry is just, well, there's no cavalry. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they don't have. So what now? Do you think he should boom a little bit more, keep pushing? What? Because we forgot about Bulgarians. He can drop a, a Krepos and maybe all this aggression is gone. Eight on stone. And if you have multiple Krepos, like two, three Krepos, and you're controlling the full shorefish area and then, it's pretty easy, like conic aggression, and then it gets really ugly for Dogao here. Siege Workshop, not really producing anything. Still struggling a lot with the resources. First Krepost. Let's see but if where? Jordan is trying to defend exactly. or if he's going... But probably here. He has the short in that TC in the north, right? With another goal that is very close. A, a good Krepost will be, will, be, will be there. But he's not getting attack in that area. We don't see Jet Ballistic, also no Horse Collar. Doesn't matter Horse Collar at all, because he's still Dogao taking juice the short face. Seven bullets ahead. Well, if they can keep going and not killing anymore, now the boom is gonna be... Ooh, it's a forward crepos. Whoa. That's a good one. That's a really yeah. good one. Taking the short face, man. But not a lot of villagers can work there. Like, no. how many villagers three. can you get there? Three. Something like that, right? Something like three. Let's and see. The knights are stuck behind this one as well. Full traffic jam. Yeah, but there is... But there is... Look at this! 
Two! Man, two! What is Whoa, happening? Oh, well, but there's okay. no army. He's replacing he's re it. But where is he going? What? what? Disrespectful! It's disrespectful! That that Krepus is completely disrespect. You know, it's against the rules of the tournament, Nelly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh. now this is against the rules of everything because he's taking so many villains, doesn't have any army there, and now, oh man, the knights are just coming, he's raiding the villains. The, ah, the pikes are not enough, he's doing a, a disaster, a massacre on Dogao economy. And this gives you so much control over the shortfish. Left hand side is pretty tricky as well. If Jordan somehow defends this area, he's in a brilliant position. He definitely is. He's already with 15 villains more, yes. But Dogao army, what? He has more army than villains, nearly. He has 46 army for <laughs> villains. What is this? He got so many. Sorry, guys, for crying. I'm very, very sentimental guy. And when I see this amount of army, the Krepos is up. Now you have to move. But where are you going to move? Here, there's a mangonel, and now that mangonel is gonna take the, the, the pike or not? No, it's too many crossbows. Maybe ground attack, <laughs> maybe ground attack. Oh, that's, that's the problem with this army. They have a big padaboon there, and uh, all your army is gone. But no, he defended quite well. Yeah. Where he's moving his economy? Scorpion because he needs to shoot a bit more before it dies. Could have had two or three juicy shots. That's, those are still some exposed villagers here, man. I mean, this is wild game. Four villages on foot for Jordan, <laughs> eight for Dogao. After 20 minutes, they have less villains than a few minutes ago. <laughs> you know, like, it's just crazy. Pikes and Crobos going around. Dogao is still on one TC, he's adding the second. And he's raiding all those villains that were exposed. Because I don't know why he left it there. TC is just happening. The score difference is not too much. The problem is that Jordan has no army. Uh, tries he, to defend he, with one mangonel and one scorpion. Now I think going for conic overnight makes lots of sense here. Already has and upgrades even for the oh, oh, dismounted oh, oh, ones. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry that I interrupt you. Look at the mangonel and the scorpion. The TC is going to be up. It was about a half a bada boom with the hill advantage for that mangonel. can do a lot more damage as well. He's going to take that or not. Well, one volley down, two volleys down, three volleys down. He's going to take more. Now he's going to eat the tone center. Those arches need to go away. Villis is still big difference for Jordan. So if he hold kind of and not getting a lot more damage, his boom is going to just explode in comparison. Jordan is in a good spot. Yeah, Honestly, yeah. he can build another Krepos. A Krepos where, at where? the left-hand side. Building. Left -hand side. Left He's hand building. side, further over there, indeed. Ooh. Another like traffic jam Krepos. So you can build it on open ground, Jordi. And then he's controlling all the shorefish. Yeah. He's, he's still at one. I think Jordan is at one farm this whole game. Well, the truth is that the oh, surface is not, not, is not going to last forever. He's buying the food as well, a lot of packs. I mean, with this aggression and so many arches, wouldn't be worth it. I know it's expensive, but ballistic here makes sense. I believe. Uh, helps out for the town centers as well. Pikeman is your main unit right oh. now, though. Ooh, loses quite some here. Why is he sending this army here? He probably misclick or didn't notice because that was not good. There's so Definitely much happening good. at the same yeah. time, right? Raids are coming. The next crap on the left hand side wants to deal with this. This army needs to be safe against the double mangonel. So pretty easy to look better at one of those five spots that he has to look at. He is still taking the short. Ooh. He's a spamming Armored Elephant. Let's say that with the amount of army he has, if he has like three Armored Elephant, the Krepos die. If you get like two conics in front of it, it's kind of easy okay. to defend again. But yeah, yeah I can see. Uh -oh. Also, we have some mangonels. Now, I'm not really sure where they are, but one mangonel behind this one could really help against the elephants. Yeah, we will see. The mangonel and the scorpions are coming and just behind that one. So might defend even more with that super overcrowded area. Definitely he will. What happened in the north? In the north, is the pikes going away? No, is the artist there? Oh God, he's killing now many villages. Here with ballistic, will take all the villages. And now he's missing so many shots and he's losing so many. That wasn't a good one for Dogao. It's still 20 villages behind, but all the time producing army. All the time with the, with the numbers and population is still ahead for Dogao. But at some point you will need some minimal economy. And right now it's not happening, Nelly. Jordan, after booming now for quite some time, is starting to go for some conics and might even find the kill against the mangonel. Indeed, he will 40 on food for Jordan as well. His food income is just crazy. Yeah, that's 40 on food. And and another conic probably coming. He's mining a stone there. But maybe he's not going to have a lot of time to mine a stone there because I wouldn't be surprised that the next conic is going to happen in that area. Anyway, the game keeps going. But, but Jordan, no army. Squires for what? For Villiers? <laughs> he has no infantry. Uh, well, uh, dismounted conics, maybe. Four but elephants, so but he's sending the elephants, Lonely. Can you can you go to the south, Mr. Mapu? Because those elephants is very important. He's One sending mangonel. them, Lonely. There's a mangonel. He's coming with the pikes, but the pikes will be there already. That elephant is gonna suffer. All the elephants are gonna suffer. This is not good. Wallet this is really not good. Another elephant more. He's gonna take the knives, yes, but the mangonel has to be killed. And those elephants. 
They, they destroy the crepos. It's gonna disappear. The crepos disappear. I mean, the crepos just disappear with the damn elephants. And he's taking some of them. He's gonna be able. He's killing it. He's destroying. He's trying to repair. He cannot. He cannot even send villains. The crepos is down. So many units. Oh man. This was also costly, man, right? Yeah, Six yeah, elephants. Expensive. Oh, the, there's a, those are big shots as well. Like five elephants or something that went down. Like he lost also like six pikemen with this one. Resource wise, this was a good trade for Jordan. Obviously, he wants to hold this position. Wouldn't be surprised if he tries to rebuild the Krepos at the very similar spot. But this is why Dravidians is tricky. Like, at this point, if he has a couple of knights, you can clean all that. Mm -hmm. But this, this civilization don't have the knights, don't have cavalry at all. I and mean, you're not gonna make light caps to kill that. Or you think it can be a possibility? I don't know. Population 66 villages, 95. And now Dogao doesn't have that massive advantage with the military anymore. Anyway. Jordan sees, okay, you're going mass pikeman, then let me go for last uh, mass longsword man. A unit that we barely see, but obviously in a good spot if most of the crossbows are dying here. And Jordan looking like a crazy defender. Look at the KD man. It's rolling, it's looking really, really well. The Echo KD even is ahead now. The total KD is much better. Population is definitely really really good and i really believe that we're going to see arabia jordan versus dogao because right now with almost the same amount of army and 35 villages more how you're going to recover the army is going down those crows are going to go down this is looking good oh the german is baba boom bye bye those archers is doing another tc in the south he's trying to make some echo now but now Jordan just did handcart even. Well, handcart, but not all the upgrades. <laughs> you know, he's missing the, everything else now doing the bozo. Um, he just need to spam now. And handcart or, or really do, helps with know. shawfish as well, right? Because yeah. they have to walk quite a bit and it really helps you if they are well, really overcrowded here. And they have to walk less often, even getting some relics here. Will be two against two relics for now, one still at the bottom. And Jordan, it's crazy with how little army he played for so long and barely took any damage. He did uh, in this one a really good comeback, Nelly. Mm -hmm. A really good comeback because he was in a position that it was looking rough at some point. I'm sure that even people in the stream was looking, uh oh, doubt is gone, Jordan is gonna be gone for now. He's looking pretty well in this game. He has 40 population overall more. He's now sending the carnage to clear those. And the problem is that you cannot raid nearly, and you are already behind that many bullets. How do you come back? It's really tricky. You have to kind of stabilize, try to get into him scenario, then some traps, castle. Obviously, will be an option pretty soon for Dugao, but it seems like that army is getting cleared up. A barracks now by Jordan. Longsword push there at the right hand side as well, or what? Yeah, I see a lot of stone. Uh, what is Jordan? What is Jordan's uh, face? But why he put that face? He's fine. It's like, oh, damn, I'm good. <laughs> damn, I'm good. I thought I would lose this game, but damn, yeah. my defense is solid. Okay. That doesn't look too happy. What, what, what's going on? Why he smile when he loses and he's <laughs> face when he's winning? I mean, I don't understand, man. <laughs> he, he's, guys, this, this Jordan is I mean, it's not, it's not going well, something here. He smiled when he loses and now he's sad when he's winning. What is going on? Anyway, let's see. Because he's doing now, an, is that another Krepos? Another crap post there? Yes, but now he has a stone to make a castle. The problem is Dogao need three castles in this game. Kind of, to <laughs> kind of. all sides you know? there, yeah. Because this is looking really, really, really bad. 100 population, 150. Probably the Jordan face is gonna change soon. This is so many nights. And ladies and gentlemen, we are happy to say that the previous series wasn't the last that was going to be 2-1 because this is looking nearly very, very close. Yeah, absolutely. More longswords are pushing in. Jordan gets more and more control. Dogao forced into so many more farms, while Jordan still sits on mainly shorts there, is adding some farms at home as well. Another push, and that castle, yeah, it will stop some raids, but there's such a major push still happening doing. in his face. Yeah, he's pushing a lot. He's really pushing a lot. Jordan now, look at Jordan economy. Amazing economy now, because he's about to click up to Imperial. Only need to sell 100 foot more, or not even. He's getting the goal. He has two relics, both players. He's about to click up to Imperial. And if he's not calling the DG before, I really believe that with that score, with this rating, when he reach Imperial Age, Dogao will call it. Because this is absolutely massive advantage now for the German player.
Has to be happy with this one for sure. Yeah. Now needs to make sure that he gets onto traps. So the next stone investment should not be the crab boss, but should be a castle. Could be a bit more defensively so that he can decide where to go with his traps. Just needs to clear up the Gauss castle eventually to get more rates in at the top. He could get he could get a lot more efficiency with those crepos and everything because he he's not here having fletching, you know, and he's doing all the economy upgrades, but it's still probably he doesn't feel that he's needed. He's fifty delays already now. Fifty delays ahead. Triple stable. Yeah, he can raid. I mean and uh cavalry from uh, Bulgarians is just amazing. I don't think he has a castle. And with castles you can make stirrups, thirty three percent faster attack for the cavalry. Which is amazing. He's gonna make another here. There you go, another Krepos. He has so many, but one castle will be needed at some point, or maybe not. Ballistic now on the way. I believe that Ballistic was uh, in that mo at that moment that he got like 50 army was would be brutal. Now he's taking more villages down. It's almost double like okay the in LA. It's, it's it's a great game here, but I think by both honestly, Doga was trying to use his civilization, he was doing really well, but Jordan has been moving really well as well good micro here and with little army controlling pretty well and uh, minimize the damage yep. we are re should be really impressed there for sure and at the bottom we now see some expansion to go only 21 on food even has to buy more food but look at the price already 155 gold investment to get 100 more food while jordan he's just sitting in the center gets more and more shore fish for himself Arguably over booming now. Look at that. Still 17 more villagers in the queue. That's pretty wild thing there. And barely has any units. But no, he listened. He canceled. He canceled. He listened. No, guys, we promise. He's not listening. He's not listening. We are really far. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, game number two. It's over. Jordan won. Doga won. GG call. Amazing game. I mean, I don't remember one moment that we, we are shut up. Like, what is going to happen? It was happening all the yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah all yeah. the time. This map. Absolutely beast map to see oh, yeah. this kind of aggression, honestly. One one undecided game. Yeah, so, so sick there by Jordan. And I was really scared at the opening. Remember, double stable, double barracks, and Dugao defended with all his archers. Double everything he did, yeah, yeah. <laughs> seriously. I mean, it, uh, it was crazy. It was crazy. It, it looked like he's not happy with his performance. John, well, he yeah. still knows that he look, has a look. colossal task no, no. in front of him, he, right? Maybe yeah. he still feels a bit like, oh God, game one. If I just played Berbers a bit differently there, it could have been a 2-0 for me now. Because he knows Arabia, and he has no idea if he faces Goth or Vietnamese. Oh, wow. So look at now the for? moment. He's thinking now, I mean, if you go, go still the Mayans might have a an advantage, but if the game go longer and the games are being long, mm -hmm. you don't kill the gods with the Mayans. Yeah, I think in I, the I, long game, I think I might even go Magyars. Early few late pressure, like you are, fu you are guaranteed to be really in a solid spot against gods, and you are absolutely fine against Vietnamese as well, I believe. And in the late game, Magyars yeah. with the unique units, with the yeah, cab yeah, yeah. and other greys. I yeah. mean, they, they are strong. I, I'm too scared. I'm going Magyars here, if I'm Jordan. Okay. And if I look how, I don't know how crazy I am. Like, uh, He's gonna go God, I think. Mm. No? Mm. Like, go God can do more or less similar against both. Like, better against the Mayans and against Machiars. Obviously, better is Machiars, but Vietnam is better, might be a little bit better than God against, against potentially Machiars. Did, did, did I just say something and didn't realize? Whoopsie. I don't know. Apparently. Ch Chad is going pretty wild. Um, yeah, Dogao still. Pretty confused. So against Machiars, against potential Machiars, Vietnam a little bit better than Gods. I would think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. But not against Mayans. Uh, Vietnam, well, archers. It's just like I it's don't, I don't see. Mayans I don't see Goth. Yeah. Well, I want to see Goth actually. <laughs> I want to see, but God. I want to see them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to see them, but I don't see them, especially on Arabia. Something like an enclosed. I could see some wild scenarios where you can play them. But in Arabia, it just feels like, especially like with some very open generations, you can just easily die early feudal age. As we Vietnamese. Let's see. Let's see what is going to happen. Dogo one, Jordan one. Very happy with the with the games, with the previous series, with this one decided game. It's so exciting when, mm. when this going like this, and you really don't know what, who is going to win because nobody wants to see one side of the series, you know, mm. like clear, clear series. And, and this one now. Who do you think has better safe?
for, for the last matchup. I believe it will be Jordan. I think Jordan as well, yeah, yeah. And remember, who are they going to be? That's, um, they are either going to play against Tato? No, against... Yeah. Cider Group A. So against Tato or Hera. The winner of this one is playing against Tato or Hera. It will be a draw for that one. So Jordan can play either way. We will know at the at the end of this night, I mm -hmm. believe. They will play against oof, Tato versus Jordan. Well, not Jordan. It's the winner of the set. The winner of this one, yeah. Togao or Jordan versus Tato versus Hera. Mm -hmm. And then, well, it's going to be, well, Vietnam. Vietnam, not gods. So we don't see the gods. Okay, okay. Ratan okay. Archer. Makes a bit more sense, yeah. Ratan Archer, beautiful unit. So we have Vietnam. Okay. I hope Jordan goes for Magyas. I think Mayans are still an option, but like Ratans are really good against everything archer wise, right? It, it's, uh, Imperial Skirmishers could be an option. But also, Vietnamese, like not having the craziest answers against uh, massive eagle play. Where is the? I want to see the unit. I'm just quiet now because I, I want to really see the unit. I think he's gonna go Magyars. I, I, I think Magyars makes a lot of sense here. Just go for the aggression, control the game. This is also where Jordan like really shines, right? Going for the scouts, going for the counterattacks. That's what brought him back into the game as well, right? You saw those scouts that didn't find the initial kills, but made it really weird for Dugao to control the back and the army at the front. He's going to appear in a moment. He's going to appear in a moment. It's going to be the Mahers Sar or the Blue Marcher. Come on, Frizzy. Where's the production? Oh, they, they, they don't want to, to put it there. We don't know yet, guys. We don't know yet. But we but have to the say game the draft nowadays. had to be better for a John, right? Oh, Blue and he went Marcher. Oh, I think this means that we won't see like massive, massive commitment in the Archer Castle direction, right? Castle Age, I believe. It's going to be the big battle. I think you need to go for either Eagles or you switch into Eagles early in Imperial Age. And we see, obviously, the opening here with the Archer range, regardless for Jordan and Togao going for the Archer range as well. Ladies and gentlemen, game number three, Jordan as a yellow on the left, uh, Dugao as a blue on the right, with Mayans for Jordan, Vietnam for Dugao, decided game, trying to take the hill a little bit what? and kill so that one. Yeah. Mm. Dogao has 68% win rate with Mayans in 2022 tournaments games. Yes, okay. that's Dogao. So he knows how strong they are. They know how strong they are. Yeah, but how about Vietnam and how about Jordan with the Mayans as well? Well, Mayans, Meso Sifi, are always very, very strong. He's going to wall on the right side. He's already taking the deers. And both are doing Massive the same. Balls. It's Massive Castle balls. Age. It's Castle Age approach, really, nearly. Wow. Even more being that important, like it's the third game, it seems that they are going for the Castle Age. And look, he's not going to be housed ever again in this game. Could we zoom out even a bit further here? Because, like, how many votes are we taking? This is three. This is a wall with four villagers four for Dugao. Village. And four Jordan village. on the other side, I think, is walling with four villagers as well. More. Make it two, two. three, four, four. Four as well. Yeah, four as well. Crazy. Both confident that their civilization will be stronger in the late game. And you think he's going to be stronger? I think Vietnam, well, they're dangerous civilizations, but it's about details, really detailed. Jordan is doing the market. What? He's going to sell? Market is... What? what, what, what? what? Oh. Can't be more symmetrical. I mean, it's, it's completely mirror. This is a rush for timings. And I think that kind of indicates that we are going for eagles. Jordan has three eagles soon, three archers. Could be some aggression. Gets an idea with this spearman here. Archer still at home. So no, it's okay. No aggression is coming. He sell the stone. The Gao earlier with his timing sold everything. the stone. Will be a better castage timing for him. Yeah, he sold everything. That's very, very good for the Gao. Look at their resources. A stable? Opening a stable or full archers? I think it's full crossbow. And trying to find the timing and maybe switch into something else. The moment uh, we see lots of eagles. But the Gao will have the better timing. Yeah, I mean... Really much, but wow, look at that economy. Remember that also all the economy average from uh, Vietnam don't cost wood. That's resources that you are saving already. Resources last longest for the Mayans. It's going to be like a minute probably advantage, maybe less. Well, he's not selling this stone. I find that a little bit weird from Jordan, yeah. because if you do the market at early, it's... It makes sense that you got to sell and just go up as soon as possible. Otherwise, no market at all. Second barracks there for Jordan. And Dugao did a pretty nice trick and yeah, rebuilds the barracks there. If we go to the deer spot and main gold of Dugao, he was actually at the deer, was collecting them, and then with the food in the hand, 
went for the mining camp and dropped off all the food and that's why he's up so fast. Yeah, but then why do you sell the stone that late? Do you have sell the stone at the end? Do it earlier? It's going to be a better price. He didn't. His, his and market now, well, was later than Dugao's, yeah. regardless. Right? It, it was two seconds. Yeah. Well, well, you think they didn't know. Yeah. They, well, okay. Anyway, the archers are coming here for Dugao. He's going to clean that army, probably. There is one minute difference. Exactly what we were mentioning. 48, population 47, and full arches. We are not probably going to see eagles. I think we're going to see eagles, Nelly. Look at the queue for Jordan. He's not going for the archers. Oh no, eagles. Last two archers left, and, and how he is losing them, Dugao knows how they move there and he should prepare now the big question is double archer range are we playing full crossbow how much are we trying to pressure here we will have a good timing are we adding something to buffer in front of those crossbows and nearly this is strategy for the mayans i like it when you are ahead going up but when you are behind and your opponent is going to have the crossbows before and he can go he might be able to to punish his opponent yeah Dugao might have a pretty good timing. Archers are going back. We have to wait for those upgrades. Armor is coming in here. Jordan, so 16 on wood. That's quite a lot for a 3 TC all-in. That the scout is being crucial because he see all the time what his opponent is doing. Now he see all the eagles. Not anymore the scout <laughs> crucial. And now the archers with the botkin are there. He see the barras. He know what is happening. And then the following what? Ballistic or stable? Uh, nearly. Uh, Jordan. Or Thambrin, because in those face-to-face, -face, maybe Thambrin is even better than... Uh, 13 on food, kind of tricky to afford Thambrin, will be Eagles. I think Ballistics could be a very reasonable thing here for Dogao. S14 crossbow, going out on stone feels so weird for Jordan, I don't understand that at all. And it will be Archer range number three. Wow. wow. He's going full on Arches. He's confident that with the Arches, he can micro properly and know and dominate. See, I... domination. He's switching Cap to archers. CA. More HP for Vietnamese. Yeah, need bloodlines, need husbandry, need quite some upgrades. Or it's okay, those camp archers without... Whoa. Well, they're stronger, obviously. They have more HP, they have the mobility, and he has still a lot of crossbows. He's going camp archers, man. He's going camp archers with Vietnam. We didn't see this coming, and... Well, well, well. Oh dear doubt, love it to go with the with the cap archer. Let's see how many units he's gonna kill the KD now. It's impressive, it's amazing, he's really, really good, I think. 9-4. Now if he's getting closer, he's probably gonna catch up that one. But he's doing a really, really good job with the archers, Nelly. Yeah, love that. Look at that. How the Eagles are not really getting there. Jordan also not trying to overtake and then take the fight from multiple sides. It's trying to chase down. And Tugao is beautifully using that hill and would so like terrain usage perfection daily one point more for micro for mm -hmm. for for for, for, Togao, for yeah. the next one and now the cabbages are there he need to mass the numbers he's taking a lot look at the kd he's doing absolutely amazing both with one tone center doing another barrack what is the following keep massing army because what about the siege war shop Fourth barracks. He Fourth sent barrack. a villager in the center, but got pushed away because the reinforcements were too good. Now tries uh, D to her there, goes for the crossbow. Should be an easy clear up. Right hand side, the CA numbers are looking pretty solid though. He's double the army, guys. He's double the army. Seven is more. He's playing absolutely amazing. He's going with the siege workshop, but all these are on the left. On the right is only that villager. Ooh. He's walling, and what is that? Stable. A stable. The stable might take with a couple of knights. In then he's just taking the mangonel. Mm hmm. Yeah, absolutely an option there. Villagers a bit exposed, need to move away. Jordan does exactly that. Eagle count at 14, six more in the queue. Four barrack as production. Still pretty solid, will get to reasonable numbers pretty quickly. I think he can clear up the crossbow numbers pretty easily, but CA obviously can run away. Yeah, the Cavarches can go away. Let's see what is going to happen. The numbers is increasing and increasing. The Eagles are always scary. Nearly. The Eagles, ladies and gentlemen, are always scary. The Eagles are coming. It's still Michael. It's still Michael in both. Well, the Cavarches are just running and he focus on the crossbows. On the right side, remember that the Mangor is, is going to be really soon. Doesn't have yet. He's selling some wood to get probably the mangrel or just keep the production. He's so many eagles. The mangrel also happening there. But the KD is not that big difference anymore. As you can see, 18, 14. He's doing the husbandry. We don't see yet.
the bloodlines, who is getting a better trade here? Nelly? It's so much easier to play for Jordan here, right? Because he just sends in the units and then can focus on production, can focus on something else, while Dogao constantly needs to use his units, had to micro two groups, was really pushed to the limit there, did as good of a job as he could, found lots of good kills, but soon Mangonels will be popping and then Dogao needs to be really careful. Well, now it's only one group because all the archers are in the hell. They are dead. He lost absolutely everything. Military numbers is still the same. Oh! Oh, that engagement is not the greatest. He needs to go away. And he's going away. Well, it could be worse. It definitely could be worse, but definitely not the best one here for Dogao. 14 is going to be there. The Mangrel, the Mangrel, and the Scorpion is going to see. He's going to see. But he ran away. He killed his own eagle. <laughs> yeah, he killed his own eagles almost. Ay, ay, ay. Well, Bloodlines. Not yet there. Bloodless now is also very important. Ooh. So Bloodless, maybe Knight is doing some Knights. He's doing some Knight to his Snipe. Why not an Elephant? Isn't good an point. Elephant way better? Well, well, good point. Well, he might be scared if there's a Monk coming. Okay, okay, yeah, if there's I can a see Monk that coming too. and then he's slow. Has oh. to be careful. He's gonna take the villain. No, he didn't oh. take it. That was a good one for Jordan. This is so, so good game already. Well, what a series we are watching right now with those Cavarses now holding their with the Palisade in danger, there's a Scorpion. The Siege is doing a really, really good job, Nelly, with the Siege here. Those Cav Arches are really low HP. Oh man, and Bloodlines missing there. Hurt so much now, the first Knight is coming out, but Eagles are around to defend. Can the Villager be saved? Looks like a Jordan. One and HP villain, or maybe two, I don't know, but his saving is so important because you can't repair the Magonel. And where's the army from Dogao? He's doing the Bloodlines now, but I'm trying to find the army, and I don't see the army anymore. He's gone. He lost absolutely everything. Oh. It's so difficult to play against this composition. You have to play perfect. Perfect, and it's not that he did a bad job, but it wasn't perfect at all. He's still with 11 villains more, but how do you defend now if he's breaking in? Impossible. Those, those CA, they need to micro all day long. You kind of need your own, either like some stables to snipe, or like stable units to snipe the siege, or your own manual to defend against this. It felt like Dogao asked himself, uh, too much of himself there, trying to micro three groups at three different, or like all at the same time. It's not that he's not capable, but to make this kind of micro, you need a huge APM and uh, boof. So complicated because, as you mentioned, Jordan is spamming. Mm -hmm. He just needs to spam. He, I mean, you have to micro, you don't want to lose, obviously, the eagles, but it's much more easier to micro those, eag those eagles. He's coming now in. And where's the goal now for Dogao? It is gone. He doesn't have any gold to mine. He's mining here, okay, he's mining in the south. So he's mining in this area. Oh, now tricky. he's gonna palisade that one. That's Scorpion so shots. Yeah. Awesome. Ballistic now is still doing a couple of nights, but you need to heal like three, four nights at least, nearly. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, something like that. And now the stable is gone, so not really an option. Second night should finish. Maybe just jump for the manual could be an option. Yeah, going in, trying to find some damage against the eagles here, doing a good job. But if they take two more hits. Oh, that was a lot of HP lost. Okay, the Mangrel probably is going to be down now. He has two knights. He's repairing, he's repairing, he's repairing. He's not surviving now because there's the second knight. The village is still alive. But the problem is that look at the numbers. 32 eagles and eight more in the queue. I think they're it's... in at the bottom, at the bottom of the base. And they're breaking through, man. He's breaking in, but there's so many cavarches. He can't rewall. He has to rewall. If you are not rewalling, then you don't have any goal. He's going to rewall or not. You have to. Well, he's not an old eagle there. So he has a lot of cavarches. He's fine. Ballistic and he's stabilized. Not really. He's now losing. So many villains. 16 villains lost. 16 villains lost. The score is still not to... to oh, man, well, he's not wanting here. Oh, it's tricky. getting oh. really wild now. Very, very close. It's so difficult situation here for Dogao. It was looking that he could take the game. But now Jordan is definitely taking the lead. And Jordan is like, whoa, man. GG call Jordan. It is in the quarterfinal. At the limit, Nelly. Absolutely at the limit. At the limit. He was so close to being eliminated there. Dogao takes game one, and Jordan has to be so happy, so relieved there as well. What a crazy play. And even in game three, it looked like maybe Dogao could have finished him. He's not happy. No, he's he, relieved. He's not as mad because he yeah. is really, I mean, he wants to be far in the tournament. Mm -hmm. And he's probably thinking now, if I don't improve, if I don't speed, go up my, my level, mm -hmm. In quarterfinal, it's gonna be impossible. Yeah. Jordan is going to face either Tato or Hera. We will see that tomorrow. The draw 
probably going to be live this night. What oh, exciting series. See that. Oh, what a good what set. What exciting series. Have you enjoyed? Hopefully you have enjoyed. We have enjoyed a lot. We, we, I'm sweating, literally sweating, because this game was, well, and the previous. I mean, the series uh, has been fantastic, and it was looking rough, like uh, the comeback, but Mayans are Mayans. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a simple statement. E eagles are eagles, as someone I would say as well, yeah. Oh, man, and Moras looked pretty okay. tricky for him as well, right? After the archer ball was there, so Jordan basically, like, two comebacks, game number one really shaky, crazy, crazy set. Crazy set, absolutely crazy set. Mayans are Mayans, that's absolutely truth, but how difficult are the Eagles if you really don't have the perfect micro and production? Because he was looking rough, but he added more barracks. He was spamming. Mm -hmm. Eagles non-stop. Yeah. Eagles non-stop. And ladies and gentlemen, I think they are ready. And uh, Mr. Riley is going to see what Jordan has to say about his victory. Thanks. For Welcome here back to our caster station. I'm with Jordan and Jordan, <laughs> holy moly. We got our money's worth from that series. I tell you what, congratulations on the win. What's in, what's in your head? What's in your heart right now? Uh, obviously the heart is pumping uh, very heavily right now. Um, games were super tough against the mm -hmm. Uh Yesterday after I lost against the MBL 2-0, I was very disappointed mm -hmm. because uh, I think I have prepared way more and MBL just kicking me uh, to zero was really tough for me. And obviously, I knew coming in today it was uh, going to be very tough because uh, I had to play two very good sets, mm -hmm. first against Kingston and then against Dugao. Uh, so yeah, a lot of relief is coming on right now. I mean, how do you deal with that pressure? There are some players who kind of thrive under it. What, yep. What's your approach to feeling so... Because, uh, you know, taking the early loss, having to win out, essentially. Yeah. Does that play with your head? Yeah, I think it is even more positive for me because the more pressure is on, the more I, like, feel like I'm playing better, uh -huh. so that itself is better for me. Uh, you're like um, coal, turning, exactly. it, turning into go. a diamond. Let's go. Yes, yes, and all yes. of a sudden I was green and then bam. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> um, I want to talk about these games that we've seen here. Um, yeah. Going down early uh, to the Franks mm -hmm. as the Berbers, um, yeah. pushing back the, ca uh, the, the Camel Archers. Yeah. Camel Archers can be nightmarish for the Franks, obviously. Yeah. It's good against their Halves, good against mm -hmm. their Knights. Uh, what went wrong for you with the with the, the camel archers? I think the main issue was that I was uh, losing a lot of villagers in the middle. So Dugao did a nice job sniping a lot of villagers there, and uh, also he kind of anticipated me to switch to help uh, to to camels. Therefore, mm -hmm. he then went for the halberdiers. Um, I think if I continue building camel archers and have three castles producing them, I think I should be in a good spot. Mm -hmm. But yeah, very well done by him, and uh, yeah, I felt like I should have won that game. So. I was going into game number two with a bit of an annoyed feeling of myself. Well, it's funny. We noticed that you have often a smile on your face when yeah. the ships are down and you're not yeah. feeling too good. Yeah, but yeah. then after you won game two, you looked really cranky. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, how did I win that game, right? Because I thought I was completely dead mm -hmm. after he reached Castleage. I was like, whoa, that's something I did not expect at all. Uh, usually you have a feeling if your opponent goes to cast stage or not. Mm -hmm. uh, I did not that uh, that time and I was like, whoa, what what is happening? And I think in a later game I would have just called it there. But I was like, okay, uh, biggest tournament of Age of Empires 2 history. Yeah. I want to give it all. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I, don't don't ask me how I was able to pull it off because I have no idea. <laughs> well, let, let's talk about, maybe if you don't have an idea how it ended, let's talk about how it started, game yeah. number two, the double yeah. barracks opening. Have you got anything yeah. to tell us about that? Or are you kept playing that one a bit close to your chest at the time being? <laughs> well, the, the thing is, uh, obviously one of the big heads of my team members, uh, Daud, he came up with that strategy. Now, in English, big yeah. head normally means someone who's quite arrogant or thinks oh. a lot of themselves. Okay, so Did you mean it in that no, way? No. or <laughs> uh, Like a person who is very smart. <laughs> okay, hey, look, maybe, yeah. maybe, what, maybe it works in kind of both ways sometimes. <laughs> it's out, huh? Anyway, go on, sorry. Yeah. So uh, yeah, he came up with that idea. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, let, let's try that because I think it's very, very strong. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I think Dugao played amazing uh, defense there. And mm -hmm. obviously there were some slip offs from my side, but overall uh, the early stage was definitely hugely in favor of Dugao. And I was like, okay, uh, losing game number one, uh, which I should have won, and then game number two, uh, going into the game with a very bad start. And uh, I was like, okay, Jordan, what's now? Yeah, so, yeah. time, time to, uh, to pull out Jordan's special sauce, and that's certainly yeah. what you did. Yeah. Final question here on, on game number three. 
uh, Vietnamese, uh, the the cav archers yep. there. Not not a popular choice for cav archers, but they can still obviously be deadly in in um, mass numbers. Yep. More broadly, what's the response to cav archers? What's your immediate way to deal with them? I think the most important thing in those kind of situations is, especially if you're an eagle player, uh, you have to spread the attention. So if you're fighting one on one, yep. he's always going to be outrunning and outmicroing you. So my idea was okay. I have to pull him his attention away, so I was able to do so. And I uh, had also a very fortunate uh, engagement when he had the crossbow and the CA uh, on my gold. Mm -hmm. I was able to engage there, I had the slight momentum, and if you get the momentum as the eagle player, then it's really hard to come back. And uh, also I'm very happy because I was deciding, okay, do you want to do the siege workshop forward or passively? Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, if I want to win this game with the strategy which I have committed to, I have to have it forward, like all in. And uh, yeah, that worked out pretty well for me. Worked out pretty well, and you've yeah. had an astonishing day after obviously what yeah. was probably a disappointing start yesterday. Yeah. Jordan, you've pulled it out. Well done. Can't wait to see you in the quarters, mate. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us, Jordan. We're going to jump over here now and check in with T90, who... I mean, my goodness me, we paid for the whole seat, T9, and we only, only needed the edge of it for that set there. We just, we've just seen some terrific Age of Empires, and it, it really speaks to Jordan's tenacity, his determination, and his skill as a player that he was able to turn around what at one point could have been a 2-0 sweep. Yeah, I mean, uh, both game two and game three, mm -hmm. he could have lost. In fact, there were instances where people in the back room were saying that he was going to lose game number two, right? So, I mean, Dugal played incredible. Obviously, hats off to him. But yeah, Jordan, um, like he said, there were, there were moments where he, he reminded himself, this is like the most important moment for me. Mm -hmm. Let's make it happen. He really used that extra focus. Really interesting to see his response to that because some players, and look, it's just human nature, right? Some players buckle under that. Some players... Mm -hmm. That gets in their head and they realize, no, I can't do this. I'm not this person. Jordan, I'm not surprised to see his mental fortitude enabled him to pull through that really difficult spot. So yeah, I agree. Let's have a look at some vision here. Uh, T90, you've, you've chosen some key moments from the three games that we've seen here. And I want you to give us your perspective on uh, some of the action. As soon as we've got that vision ready, we'll be able to share it with people. But once again, just a dramatic victory for, for Jordan, someone who has had an uphill battle so far. Yeah, I mean, and game one is going to be mainly about Dogal. Obviously, mm -hmm. there's a lot of different things that we could talk about in this one, but Jordan decided to go immediately in early cast late for the unit mm -hmm. that you want as the Berbers. That's what made this game so crazy. He's going for the Camel Archer. Mm -hmm. His opponent was going to play into Pikeman and Knight. Berbers are typically going to go for Camels mm -hmm. mixed in with their own Knights, and that play from Dogal would have been perfect. So, um, you know, again, you know, lots of conversations. We're all back there trying to predict how things are going. Uh, it was even hidden away. Like, he hid that castle, which led to some confusion from Dogal. And, uh, you know, Camel Archers eventually come out. Eco is going to come up behind this. But, man, Dogal's Eco in this game mm. was so good. So he's going to place a TC here. That's TC number three. Typically, you want the third TC to be on stone because you want a castle early in the middle. Mm -hmm. And that's especially if you feel like you're going to lose control. So Dal Dogal is basically like, this unit, which should massacre me is not going to be just enough, uh, quite enough for me. I, I, I guess. I mean, <laughs> it was insane. Um, lots of pressure here in the middle from Jordan as he tries to whittle his way around here with the Camel Archers. I think like the only awkward thing for Jordan, you have seven base attack on the Camel Archers. That's great, but you have to pay attention to it. And so Dogal has got 42 on food at the moment versus like 23. And that's the difference between the Knight player mm -hmm. and between the Camel Archer player, which I think is, is what kept Dogao in this game. Yeah, he did He did exceptionally well in game number one to take this out in, in what could have been very adverse circumstances. So uh, full credit to him for that. And uh, on a map where, you know, the Franks can really uh, seize advantage uh, and, and, and generate a huge amount of value, you know, mm -hmm. Middlebury's nice open map for cavalry, that sort of thing. But uh, ultimately, Jordan's Berber play didn't punish the Frank player as, as much as it could have. Well, he couldn't control the game because Dogao just insisted upon like splitting groups. Mm. Uh, again, if you listen to Jordan's interview, he said he did that later with Eagles, but you know the Knights were continuously in Jordan's economy. And even though the castle did end up going up in that all important middle area, Jordan had to, he paid the price for that. Uh, because it did reach a point, and we're pretty much getting to this right about here where those camel archers are almost one-shotting the Knights. Mm -hmm. And it's looking really difficult. And keep in mind, there's unique techs, which means they produce faster out of castles, and also uh, they heal up over time as well. So like, it, just a crazy unit 
Well, um, a crazy unit for the fact that it's completely ahistorical as well. Uh, People never show. That was my point. That's Why don't we it. talk about I mean, that? I mean, I'm a huge historian. And that's right. Horse archers perfect for that sort of thing because uh, when they gallop, they lift all four legs off the ground, a nice stable plat uh, firing platform. Camels, disaster. You'd never hear anything. People used to ride camels, get off them, shoot from the ground, get back on them like that. But I know. But as you well know, Tristan... Where's Microsoft? No, so, I mean, can we talk to someone yeah, about yeah, this? Yeah, I think we should. Yeah. yeah. Camel Archer nerf, please, now. Get them dismounted, firing like that, then we can, you know... Look on. at this, though, from the cow. He's got... So not only did he tread down the initial castle, with four, by the way, not yeah. one, not two, he committed, and then he just followed it up, and, and he had just enough to take out the next castle. So that's two castles down from the Berbers, and while Heavy Camel's in, he's already got Halberdier to counter that, and the Camel Archers are not something you have to be worried about if your opponent can't really make more of them. I mean, from the castle on the gold, he also had outposts down here and vision on a TC. I'm not sure we're going to see that, but Dogal was just everywhere. It was mm. truly, right before this, I tweeted, like, Valis just played, like, the best defensive macro play that I think I might have seen so far over the last couple of days. And then Dogal was just like, hey. <laughs> he, held onto, <laughs> he held onto that title yeah. for about 15 minutes. Exactly. Yeah. Let's move on to game number two. This was uh, Dravidians, Bulgarians on Morass. And it was here that we saw this double barrack opening from Jordan. Yeah, so I think Mapu put on Dogal's Fog of War here. Uh, Mem might have prompted him to do that, and he didn't know it was double barracks mm -hmm. originally. So you expect the one barracks because of all the, the shore fish being in the middle, and so the double range was likely to counter that, but mm -hmm. uh, double barracks was interesting. But the most exciting thing for me, I mean, we're going to see action here, but finally we got to see something that was prepared by big-headed mm. doubt, apparently. Yeah, big-headed doubt. Big-headed doubt. In, in, the, in the English and the German sense. And, and, when, and when I say, uh, you know, prepared by doubt, I meant Gamer Legion as a whole. They obviously mm -hmm. uh, talked a lot about the two weeks that they were there. And I honestly, apart from like Dravidians being used in some unique scenarios, mm -hmm. I hadn't really seen a ton from Gamer Legion yet that said they were like coming up with more unique things. Yeah. And I'm well, sure I mean, there's going to be more things out there. This is right. Like as, as, the, as the tournament develops, as we get really towards the spiky, the, the top end of town, the, the really huge matches, I think yeah. we're going to see some stuff pulled out of the back pocket. The game changer here for me, because mm -hmm. there were a lot of swings in this game, it was Jordan having three to four on stone and this counter attack. Because the towers neutralized that offensive army and he recognized ahead of time, the archers are going to show up, my towers are going to defend, he is to run back, I'm going to hit him elsewhere. And Again, the theme of the series possibly is just mobility mm. and how you can use that um, in a game mode where we still very much see a lot of infantry and archer, which is slow. Uh, it was impressive from Jordan. Also, this fight, both Tato and Viper back there were like, oh, uh, it's not, that's not good. He should go back now. He should go back now. And then the upgrades start coming in and still Jordan commits and like he killed like almost this entire army. Yeah. Uh, because of the full upgrades there on those scouts. That was a really important moment for Jordan. Well, I think what, what uh, and the mini-map kind of reflects what the point I'm wanting to make here, uh, Jordan's map control. Yeah. Uh, grabbing that center, holding onto it, defending it from the from the raids, and also still being proactive he, himself. And he's dead, he's like dead here. Look, 71 population versus 53. I think the tough thing for Dogao is he's like, I have to move around, I have to kill, mm. I have to kill. I think if he stays there, Obviously, he has an opportunity to kill some villagers. But his, pro his problem was he's going for a death ball push with Siege. His opponent doesn't have Siege yet, and he had to leave his elephants. So there's a couple moments where Jordan's able to snipe the elephants, mm. and then everything behind that is protected. I mean, I really think that if those crossbowmen and the pikemen, had they not killed those vills there, and they just would have protected that elephant, the Siege workshop, the tower, all that's down. And again, it's six military versus 28. Dogal would win this game. But I think this uh, fits into the broader picture of what we've seen here in Heidelberg so far in a really interesting way. We've characterised these games as being very aggressive. We've characterised the posture adopted by most players as proactivity, mobility, mm -hmm. getting in your opponent, up in your opponent's grill. It's nice to see that that's not necessarily how all these games are going to be won. Jordan clung onto the cliff face here and hauled himself back up slowly but steadily and, and ultimately turned this game around when he could have, as you mentioned before, very easily lost it. Yep, now is the siege out at this point. So he's, he's able to hold a little bit. I say that as he's losing siege, but obviously still is the tower, still is the potential to make more and uh, very similar to the counterattack from the scouts earlier. Mm -hmm. Uh, expanding with the Krepos. And, and the Krepos was always going to be part of the game plan for Bulgarians. Uh, you, you'll see Bulgarians used a lot on Atacama to mm. control wood. This map, I mean, Jordan barely had farms. It's about the food in the middle. Um, there, I think a big reason Dogao was actually able to stay alive for so long is because his army didn't really cost a lot of food at this stage. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, pikemen do, of course, but lots of crossbowmen were huge. But I mean, so many important moments. Elephants go for the castle here. But look, Jordan's ready. Like, the defensive... Uh, 
mindset from him was really smart. And I think even losing this castle is, is just such an expensive loss for Dogal. And, and, and this is what I'm, I'm pleased to see, right? Because we, we want a diversity of gameplay. We want yeah. different strategies coming into focus. And it can't all just be immediate, you know, throw everything you've got at the opponent and hope that it's sure. going to be enough. And, and I'm really impressed by Jordan, as, uh, as you mentioned, his de defensive mindset going into mm -hmm. this game, recognising that there still was a path to victory, holding on, keeping himself, uh, you know, bolstered against these attacks that came through. And now we move into game number three. And again, we, we're seeing a diversity of gameplay. Yeah, so uh, Vietnamese was an interesting pick. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong because there's been some B-stream action, but I think it's the first time I've seen them played so far. It's the first time we've de it's definitely the first time we've seen them on the on the mainstream. Okay. For sure. Yep. Yep. So so anyways, obviously like a new thing for a lot of our audience, and Vietnamese are known for being very good with archers, as mm -hmm. are the mines. So. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I picked this moment because both players recognized we've got to win that market race, basically. Um, and we saw quite a bit of buying and selling there. But, you know, right here it looks standard, but I think this is where Dogao's scouting and uh, recognition of what should come from this type of situation is important. So, first off, he has more archers. He also has more HP on his archers, and obviously he does a great job catching this out. And not only that, I think he loses one while killing four or, or killing five. I mean, it's a great exchange. Yeah, great exchange. You just saw that scout there, though. So we've also obviously fast forwarded ahead. I think he had to sense eagle. And most people, if they sense eagle, are going to go uh, like double barracks uh, long swordsman, mm -hmm. or they at least add a stable. Uh, because I really felt like he had a, a position here. Even these crossbows did ama an amazing job. Imagine if there was a meat shield there. There, I think Dogal's in a better position. You can see it could have had a few knights potentially. Mm -hmm. um, he chose to go to Cav Archery, which I actually love. But well, not something we always say in Vietnam. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. people forget the foot archers have more HP, mm -hmm. but so do the Cav Archers. So they, they, like, I think they have 80 HP on their Cav Archers with full upgrades and cast legs. Nilly's like very emphatically shaking his head <laughs> up and down behind Riley there. So, but yeah, um, you know, and then Jordan kind of again said it in his interview. He got gotten in at this point and done a lot of damage, but he split focus. And when you've got one ball of cab archers, you can't deal. You can't put out every fire. Yeah, and and I think that's the important thing to note, uh, on a, in a general sense, right? Dealing with the big ball of, of CA, Jordan gave us that advice: zoom yep. out, take a bigger picture, because you're going to lose those individual <clears throat> engagements with such an overwhelming force. So, look, full credit to Jordan here. It he, was it, incredible. He, he played his guts out. He was he was down, but not out, and he has found his way. I, I would say deservedly so through to the quarterfinals. Yeah, and he lost the first game, mm -hmm. came back 1-2. I don't know if we've seen a lot of that yet. No. Uh, granted, it's just best of threes. And he was losing every game, at least partially at some mm -hmm. point. That last one, you know, it would depend, obviously, on a few factors. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what Jordan will do yeah. going forward. Really thrilling stuff from him. Thanks so much, T90. We're going to move back over now to the other casting area here. We've got Nilly standing by, and, mate, I guess you've had a second or two to sort of just whew, decompress a little bit after what we've seen. Uh, I, I want your take. I want your take on Jordan, his performance yesterday, a little lackluster, sort of had his pants pulled down by MBL a little bit, but he came back today and he fought so hard to get to where he is now. Yeah, yeah, especially like for him, like so much was on the line, right? We saw him struggling in the first qualifier, right? Mm -hmm. And now he kind of had to live through that again. Mm against MBL yesterday, right, where we had like great expectations already, like envisioning being in Heidelberg and suddenly like, no, you're not even going through in the first qualifier. Mm. And now we put him into the same spot. MBL probably like considered to be unprepared mm. and suddenly Jordan loses 2-0 in like not very stylish fashion. That's, that's some mental strength to come back like this. How he did today. I spoke to Jordan about the qualifiers. For those of you who don't know, Jordan had a very, very rough go of things in the qualifiers to actually get here. There were two rounds of qualifiers. He was a clear favourite, probably number one, number two, mm -hmm. right up there, right? And uh, he bombed out pretty spectacularly against Ganji. Correct. Uh, and who, uh, to full credit to Ganji, played an absolute yeah. blinder against yeah. him, right, before, uh, before ultimately not... Uh, he didn't obviously convert on that uh, all the way, but still, Ganji put in the clinic. And I spoke to Jordan about how he recovered from that because he'd been streaming, he'd been putting out his preparation and showing how hard uh, the hard work that he was putting in and nearly, he just stopped. He stepped back. He told me he went down to the mountains. He lives in Bavaria, so he went and walked through the Alps to try to recenter himself. And he came back without the scrutiny of the stream, without the pressure. This guy knows how to center himself when it counts and play to those big moments. Yeah, and that's what we saw after game one as well, right? He, he like, was so... In, like it feels weird to say but like inner peace mm. and accepted the situation and he knew if i just play to my very best mm -hmm. 
I can win two games against Ogao. And that he did. It was still a shaky game too, right? Yeah. And game three was shaky as well. Like, honestly, like, it could have been a 3-0 for Ogao in a best of three. But, like, Jordan made it happen. Yeah. And I want to talk quickly about Dogao as well, because that is the end of the road for him mm. here at Red Bull mm. Wallalo Legacy. But uh, this bloke has done really well, uh, yeah. particularly under the circumstances. Um, Neely, I'm sure you've got a perspective on uh, on how he played and how he's conducted himself. I think we can all look at Dogao and, uh, and, and and really, I mean, he should be proud of what he's achieved. Yeah, absolutely. Like crazy performance, obviously stepping in very, very late notice, right? And like basically Monday, he was told, um, get over here, like very short. And he obviously, he played the qualification, knew about this, mm -hmm. but it was tough for him to adjust to the new balance changes that we had like three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Some civilizations are way stronger, some civilizations a bit weaker. And to adjust to that, he picked the Raver because he felt he was so strong on it and put on a great performance. Could have been a top eight in the biggest Age of Empires tournament ever. Yeah. And would have been deserved. Very, very close to it. And on such short notice, I think uh, I think he can walk away with his head held high. Congratulations to Gowan getting as far as you did. but commiserations uh, in that this is the end of the road for you. We've still got plenty of quarterfinal slots to give away, of course, and one of the people that will be contesting them very, very heavily is the two-time Red Bull champion, Leary. This bloke largely considered to be one of the best, if not the best, when it comes to the Empire Wars format that we're playing here in Heidelberg. We got the chance to catch up with Leary, get his thoughts and perspectives on this tournament, on the format, and everything else to do with Red Bull Wallalo. So we're going to hear from Leary right now. On the other side of that, we've got more Age of Empires coming your way. I'm Liri, I'm 20 years old and I'm from Austria. I kind of feel good about not having to play qualifiers, you know. Obviously it gives you some practice and some preparation for the tournament itself, but at the same time it's easy to pick up wrong things as well. Wrong strategies, wrong metas, wrong things where you think it works out and then the main event doesn't work out. I prepared, well mentally, the casual routines, you know. Living my life basically and, uh, well, age-wise, I just practice some sets here and there, you know, some different players. Took a different approach this time and see, let's see how it works out. So I know my matchups and the players I'm going to face, but I feel like I have the tougher group, in my opinion. Um, I feel like it was tougher before already and now it's even more tougher. But, you know, like, if I want to win the whole event, I have to beat everyone anyway, so it doesn't matter. I don't have a feared opponent. There are people who are obviously harder to beat for me, like for everyone else. There are people who I think match better up against, but there's no one I fear. I feel confident in myself, you know, like confident against everyone. If I have a good day, if I perform, I can beat everyone. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Well, I guess you've stayed tuned, but we have Valis versus Leary coming right up, and it is me, Dave, and... Tristan, T90 official over here that will be taking you through the rest of the matches tonight. I mean, Vallis put on a show earlier, right? Big time. Defensive show, especially that hold, that incredible hold with Byzantines, and then the, the hold as well with 30 or 40 crossbows, whatever he had with Lithuanians. But Daniel is not leery. I think it's going to be more interesting than people think. You're spot on. We're going to send it to the draft here yeah. and see what these civilizations are going to be. Man, I mean, so you got to remember, guys, I think Sato was up 1-0. Oh, Sato. Sorry, sorry. I said Daniel. Same team, different person. They're, they're basically the same yeah, team, a different yeah. country. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, guys. They, they like us. We're good. Uh, we're going to start the draft here. We've got Valis, the, I think, 20 or 21-year-old Finn who has some crazy confidence and macro, as you saw in the gameplay, and he's going to ban out Atacama from Leary. Mm -hmm. I don't blame him at all. Yeah, Atacama is one of Leary's favorite maps. I would put, I would say Leary and Kapach. Yep. <laughs> they both yep, love that map. And we see a ban now from Leary of Northern Isles, so he doesn't want any of the water shenanigans. He wants Valis, I think, as close to him as possible, where he Look can get him right away. Look at this. You say, don't want water shenanigans? Guess what? There's another water map. Yep. We have not seen this picked, at least on the main channel. So, Shoal's getting picked up, and then Leary wasted no time with Arabia. 
Yeah, I don't even know if it's the water element. It might just be the fact that Valis wants to be far away from Leary, right? Yeah, he doesn't want that him. pressure coming into him. I mean, Leary is one of the best players in the world when it comes to just micro, uh, getting value out of low numbers of units and getting that momentum. And uh, he is a Red Bull Wallalo, two-time Red Bull Wallalo champion, four-time Red Bull Wallalo finalist. Valis, <laughs> well, this is, uh, this is his first time at a LAN event, so. It's a big task in front of him. Yeah, but but he's already on like borrowed time. He's already passed his possible dream. He has made it here. Now he's two wins away mm -hmm. from going into a quarterfinal. And look at it this way. If he can beat Leary, he can beat anybody, right? That's got to be your approach. So imagine the confidence that you could have after the reverse sweep going in here against Leary, who's looked a little shaky by his lofty standards. Yeah, I was talking to Leary yesterday and he said uh, he said he didn't feel great yesterday. Mm -hmm. So hopefully he's feeling better today. I mean, some uh, shaky results in the first set against Daniel. Uh, Daniel may be throwing his opportunity away yeah. a little bit yeah. in that. And then of course, uh, we saw the set against uh, Tato where he kind of, well, Tato played really he well. Got, he got, yeah, Tato wiped the floor with him, quite honestly. Mm -hmm. Now, now Valis is a different type of player. Uh, while he did have quite a few crossbows in that game that we mentioned earlier, Dave, he's not the in-your-face crossbow player. Yeah. He's more the player who prefers to have three town centers behind, and he'll defend, and then suddenly his economy will be greater than you and push out. So if you like stylistic matchups, you probably want someone like Leary up against a player like Valis. And we were kind of going nuts about it in the back room. It's not something we can share on the highlights, yeah, really, because exactly. it's not, it, you know, it's not a sexy thing. But the farm placement from Valis, that man can drop 40 farms in two seconds, all yep. perfectly placed. You and must, you are just full of envy and right that's now. coming that's <laughs> i was gonna say that's coming from you not me right yeah. obviously that comes from me uh, people aren't going to be so impressed with this his statement. macro is amazing yeah it is and uh you know his prioritization uh, i mean we can go on and on about it but we can also go on and on about how we will probably never see aztecs played mm -hmm. they were so good in previous empire war events they got they, they became excuse me a little bit stronger with recent balance changes and so that's i think like 20 out of 20 bands Right there. And arrested. really good on Kawasan and, uh, and Arabia. I mean, unlikely to be picked on Shoals, but Kawasan and Arabia, yep. Aztecs, top tier civilization. So that's probably just a good ban from Leary to get a really overpowered or OP Civ out of the yep. way. I think we have a bit of a bug with uh, what's being shown on the graphic, uh, as it was Dravidia, uh, sorry, Gurjaros that was bit. Wait, now Dravidians is being banned anyway, so okay, Can well... Can I need blind? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, they really did me dirty there. Uh, we, but, uh, you know, we'll go back and we'll see if uh, Valis banned Britons or Bengalis in a moment. Mm -hmm. uh, I do want to say, though, as obviously we're talking about Sivs, uh, I feel like so little has been said about Valis's name, which means whale in Finnish, and, and that awesome banner. That's such a cool banner. I think it might be my favorite. Yep. That's all you have to say is yep. Hashtag free Velas. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was hoping I'd get a lot more than a yup, but okay, that's, that's fine. Vietnamese band. Interesting. It's, I guess, an archer sieve you might not want to play with, and an yeah, archer well, sieve that he might take. So. I mean, he's banned Britons, Ethiopians, Vietnamese, and Tatars. I love it. So there's definitely it. there's definitely a theme starting to take place here from Valis's bands, and he gets Franks as well as his first pick. Meanwhile, Leary has banned, as you said, Dravidians, Gujars, Aztecs that we talked about, and Lithuanians. Maybe he was watching this the is, previous set. This is so important, because remember how Leary drafted against Tato? He tried the mind games. He tried Kumi first did he gave up his tatars and now he goes byzantine saracens i i wasn't expecting it but i like the picks i mean archer civilizations yeah and byzantines also is yeah. the civilization think... that valis used earlier in the day and everyone's been using really mm -hmm. well and you can just go you can go archers into crossbows yeah. and that is leary's comfort zone into arbalist with bomber cannons and it's it's very very nice you can do that with both saracens and byzantines as we see bohemians i think that's, that's the first. first time we've seen that on the uh, the draft but we haven't seen shoals yet and bohemians i know is a very popular pick mm. through the qualifiers with shoals larry's pick uh, leary excuse me picking cumans again i, I i'm again I, a little shocked i like cumans if you play them the aggression route, right? Because yeah, your archer ranges, ranges are cheaper. Yep. I think you can get a fantastic opening and then 
if you're staying in Feudal Age with your opponent, you just add that second TC somewhere along the line and start building up an eco. But I mean, Kawasan in Arabia, Shoals, I don't know, maybe Cummins is is just his fourth pick. It could be. General. I mean, you know, he certainly, when I talk to him, as we see the fist bump there and we see the magnificent trophy, we certainly, based on what he told me, he wished he would have gone aggressive. Mm -hmm. uh, sitting back with two town centers is just yeah, how Leary plays. I don't think Cummins is a bad map on a close. I think it's quite, or a bad sieve on a You're close. Good. It's good. definitely not a bad map, but I think it's quite good, even for Leary's style, if you go aggressive first, yeah. right? You can't yeah. just sit yeah. behind that TC. Tato punished that so badly. Last sieve we have to talk about was Sicilians being picked there from Valis. Another mm -hmm. Civ we haven't seen yet. Very, very strong in the previous iteration of Red Bull. Obviously, they've been nerfed a little bit with they the have. bonus damage uh, reduction being reduced. So it was a double, <laughs> it was a double reduction <laughs> on that as the players walk on by to the, uh, the main stage. Sicilians, though, an excellent counter to Byzantines. Possibly the only counter Civ to Byzantines. A little bit. <sighs> I, I've had some, it's hard for me because there's a certain player who was on the B stream earlier who plays Byzantines all the time. And let mm -hmm. me tell you, I, I've had some rough run-ins <laughs> playing as the Sicilians against Byzantines. I, I don't try that anymore, but um, you know, maybe, you know, maybe yeah. it's, it's something certainly to keep in mind. Uh, and it is cool to see a couple of these civilizations v finally feature. Yep. Uh, as I, I didn't really think we would see much new in the best of threes. Obviously, we'll see a lot of different things. We in might best of five. see, uh, I think we're going to see Bohemians on Shoals, but I don't know. And here comes Valis. He's making his grand entrance into the main stage for the second time today. Yeah, second time. I mean, remember, he got completely stomped in the first game and then won two incredible games against Sato, sending him out of the tournament. And here he comes, and man, is he ready. Again, he has come so far, but he has so much left to accomplish. I, you know, the other thing is too, I mean, yes, he's good. Yes, he's been in that top 20 conversation, but when they bring up the data and the stats on, on Leary and Vallis, I wouldn't be surprised if they played less than five games together or against each other in 2022. It might be a similar thing to, well, it's not gonna be similar to Kingston No, it won't Viper, be like that, it won't be like that. It will like be that. a low sample size, that's for sure. I'm sure they've met on the ladder before, I'm sure they've met in team games before, but in sure. tournament exactly. games, we don't know. I mean, we'll have to find out, hopefully our production crew can grab those numbers for us as we have Leary now making his entrance onto the main stage. And Leary, I mean, like every time you watch this guy make an entrance, he just, Seems like it's a walk in the park for him. A walk it's, in the park, yeah. walk in the castle. What's the difference? Exactly. What's the difference? He's got a little bit of swagger, a little bit of confidence, and why wouldn't you? Four-time Red Bull Wallolo final, finalist and two-time champion. He did not feel good or look great yesterday. So will he be able to turn it around here? Is it just a day thing? Is it, you know, are you acclimating to the weather here or is it? that you're just not in as good a shape as some of the other competitors. These are the questions that you have to ask yourself, or actually, you should probably just forget all those details and just do your best. Don't think about it too much. I, I think if you're Leary, the key to a matchup like this, when you go in favored against Valis, is not to overthink it. Yeah. You just, you play the way that you know you can and the way that you've played in the past, and I think your skill will be enough to overcome <clears throat> uh, someone who might be a lower seed. Yeah. I'm excited for Shoals. Now, Ideally, for Valis' sake, I suppose we'll never see Schultz because clearly he's got a strategy saved. And obviously, if he wins game one and then he wins on Leary's home map, he's through and everyone in Finland screams and rejoices. But I think we're going to see it, Dave. Like, I feel like we've got a bank on Schultz coming in. So you said Bohemians on Schultz. It was very popular. Yeah, okay. it's, a, it's basically a fast castle map because yeah. you can't get to your opponent fast enough to do damage in Feudal Age. Uh, I think people generally realize that the water isn't really that valuable early in terms of the fish because it's all shore fish. The water can be valuable late for map control, but what they're really going to be fighting over are those gold piles on the uh, the sides of the map. Okay, yeah. And Bohemians, well, they have a lot of options, right? They can mine stone faster to get that castle up faster. They can mine that gold Ooh, there faster it is. to get to Imperial Age. There's the stats there for you. Now, there funnily enough, that was just probably on the ladder and it was probably two Arabia two games. Two games. Yeah. So, like I said, small sample size. Yeah, and, and Leary's at 100%. Look at huh. Leary's stat thing, too. He's like, he's a broken character in a video game. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but if you were to compare Valis' scorecard, you could call it, to some of the other players who have already been knocked out, mm -hmm. 
we had we had him lower. Yes, we, we have did. experience all the way down there at six. I can count today. Yeah. And then we've got macro at seven. That's got to be higher. He, oh, he yeah. really deserves more points on those cards. A hundred percent. His macro. I think this performance in this tournament already is going to bump that up at least by one point, if Definitely. not two. I mean, his macro is insane and. As long as he, it feels like as long as he can get into the, his comfort zone, he can just start trucking, you know, he yeah. can start um, turning out those TCs, the villagers, the farms, like we said, uh, getting the food count up and then late game military push back the aggression. I saw a little smile there. I wonder if they're in the lobby. It is possible that the admin is speaking to them as well. Uh, Leary didn't think the joke was as funny, I guess. But they'll, they'll be preparing here to start on game number one, which is Arabia. Alice probably got in and then 14 spammed. <laughs> <laughs> There's no admin rule against that. <laughs> He's one of those. <laughs> All hail king of the losers. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> That'd be so sick. That would be so sick. Oh, man. Well, I have to imagine that's not happening at the moment. We do have uh, an interesting interview here set up as we have... Leary getting prepared. Uh, earlier, Riley was able to pick Vallis's mind a little bit. My name is Juho, known as Vallas, and I come from Finland. I qualified through the second open qualifier for Red Bull Wololo Legacy. Most of my preparation to Red Bull Wololo was through the qualifier phase, so I played a lot of games before that. Afterwards, I've been mostly keeping up my form by playing against opponents that are playing in the tournament as well. My group is not an easy one, but I think I have a decent chance of making it through. My most feared opponent has to be one of the highly skilled, so I would say Leary Hera or Viper, because there is no aspect in the game that I can outplay them. I feel more confident against players who like to take it a bit slower, so it gives me more control of the game. Well, well we heard him there. Also, I feel like that last part mm -hmm. is is the same with everybody. It yeah. feels comfortable with someone who's slower. Uh, but yeah, he did say Leary, Hera, and Viper. Viper. Those not the players yeah. he wanted to face up against. Yeah, and, and interesting point there. He said, I don't feel like I can beat them at any specific element sure. of the game. Sure. But that, a lot of times, that isn't what you need to win in a setting like this. You just have to be a little bit better on that day and they have to be a little bit worse on that day or maybe your nerves are better than their nerves That's or true. maybe you're more prepared coming in it's not always about those baseline stats you know that we show there sometimes it's about the preparation heading in your mindset and i think that's where valis can take advantage think about who's in his group right you've got leary tato yo and i'm missing one hera excuse me he said, I've got a fairly decent chance to get out of the group yep. with those players in that group. I mean, that's insane. Yep. Um, it looks like Hindustanis for game number one on Arabia. Excited to talk about that, but let's see what Leary's thinking, or what he's chosen anyway. Oh, we can't see his mouse pad from here, can we? I, can I think he's that the white on that mouse pad blinds me. I think he's superstitious because that mouse pad <laughs> is it's just it's a theoretical mouse pad at the moment. I asked him about it. He's like, well, it won KOTD and it won Red Bull and it won all these things. He's like, we've been through a lot together. I can't give it up. <laughs> so he definitely can't hear us right now, by the way. Yeah, he's probably listening to Krasini speak as that is a that is a cataphract there, it my friend. Yep. All right. I, you know, the Cataphract, the Latis, they look somewhat similar, but I'm loving the fact we're seeing more Cataphract than Latis so far. I think that how you differentiate them is like the horse has little armor eyes with armor the Cataphract. Eyes. Yeah, I, okay, I don't know how to explain armor it. Armor eyes. Armor latis, eyes. Armor, do the horses not see for the Latis? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe there's not armor around the eyes. <laughs> okay, all right. I got you. Well, so, okay, Arabia, you have to expect, is going to be more within the wheelhouse for Leary. And I only say that because it's easier for him to play into those archers. There's not as many water factors as we might see in the rest of the games. But 
what a statement it would be for Valis to open it up. And if mm -hmm. you'd be looking for a civilization that has a lot of options because you're up against Byzantines, which are like the Civ, the king of options, yep. Hindustanis are pretty good there, Dave. And I think we're about to get into the game here. Byzantines, if Leary plays it Leary style, I think Valis is going to have a lot of trouble coping with that early pressure. Yep. Because Leary's not going to be the guy like Valis was with Byzantines to maybe send just a few archers forward, wall up, and then 3TC boom. Leary's going to be in your face the entire time. And, and that's the expectation. That is the expectation we have for him. That is the expectation we had when he lost to Tato 2-0. So we are closer, ladies and gents. Keep in mind, we have two more big best of threes, all crazy storylines throughout the rest of the day today after this. Yeah, and it looks like maybe the players are having a little bit of issues getting the lobby going, but uh, we will get you in there shortly with game number one here on Arabia. Hindustanis, if they can get into Ghulam, maybe some potential there, maybe if they can go camel v camel, but all of those options. I mean, Byzantines have an answer for that. Honestly, I think the biggest thing, though, is the boom potential for Hindustanis. Yeah. The cheaper villagers is the thing that stands out to me. Because mm -hmm. you are right, Byzantines can, can theoretically counter pretty much any Civ. Uh, but if this becomes a 3TC game, we saw what Valdis could do with no vi vill discount earlier. Yeah. Uh, even when he had to make all that army as well. I think that's going to be the key. But obviously, you know, Leary's the type of guy who should be forwarded in your face. Yeah. And he's not going to make life easy. I, I really don't like the matchup for Valis to start it all off, though, because it's going to be so straightforward for Leary. The yep. map and the civilization, so and I think I think Byzantines are so good. Like, I, I think I said it to you before we came into this tournament, or maybe I was talking to Tato or someone. He was asking me what my favorite Civ was coming in here, and I said, Byzantines, I don't think they'll be picked all that often, but I think their win rate is going to be insane. Because with Empire Wars, basically, as we're being told that uh, they're restarting the lobby. So it's just one more one more second here until we get into the game. But Byz Byzantines with Empire Wars, essentially, in RM, they don't have an eco bonus in Dark Age, right? You go through 10 minutes or whatever yep. of the pre-build up and you're not getting advantage from that eco bonus. Empire Wars, you start in feudal with the ability to make army. So those other civilizations that had that eco bonus lose that advantage. Exactly. Yeah, so it throws Byzantines up there and yeah. obviously, you know, you, you can, you just get closer to the situation where Byzantines thrive and Byzantines thrive the longer the game goes on, so. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, even with Dark Age starts, Byzantines have always been a civilization that players necessarily don't, uh, that don't like to play, they don't like to play against Byzantines, excuse me, and they don't necessarily want to pick them first either. So it's always been really interesting. Uh, even on Arabia, I basically the same Civ things. balance from when this game released what, 23 years ago now, yeah, Age of I, Kings. I, and uh, you know, maybe my memory fails me, but I don't think there were many balance patches back then. The Byzantines of all things, right? And man, are they still so well balanced? I love it. Yeah. Obviously, you know, in recent years they did receive uh, a slight water buff as well. Yeah, Cataphracts which... got a little bit cheaper. I yeah, that's the true. Upgrade, that's and true. then uh, they got Town Patrol. But Actually, like, they, yeah, they that, got, that's a, they lot got of a few. Stuff. I think that's the fewest changes out of the original civs, though. I think it, yeah. it honestly is. It, in my opinion, it's the most well-designed civ in the game. But this isn't just us, you know, commentating on our on the changes to the Byzantines. We're waiting here for Leary to get in, and it looks like he's ready. And uh, I expect, I expect big things. I don't think Valis should hope to win this Arabia. I think it would be a, a surprise if he did. Um, but definitely, I'm looking forward to Shoals. Well, here, here's what's interesting, right? The way this map was determined was after a long back and forth of bans. Mm -hmm. So if he didn't have the confidence that he could play Leary on Arabia... Yeah, I guess he would have banned He would have banned Arabia. Yeah. yeah. Um, here's something I want to see. I want to see a scout opening. Uh, a lot of players are going for ranged opening, forcing the opponent into some skirms, and then going maybe into scouts. But I think if you try and mirror Leary with the opening, which would be Archers, mm -hmm. the Civ matchup and the, the player styles go against you. And per his interview, he said, I, I can't beat Leary outplaying him in any specific thing. Yep. So I think you go for a different unit type. I mean, we're about to see right now as we head into game number one here, and we have Valis playing as the Hindustanis, Leary playing as the Byzantines, and it looks like Valis has actually opened archery range, and Leary has done the same thing. Also, it's it's very much not Arabia. It is Kawasan, so oh. uh, forgive me and forgive the graphics on your screen, and that changes things, right? Byzantines obviously still very good with some fish, 
And that is the one thing you're going to have to look for on that mini-map. You're going to see a villager usually head out with the spear if the players are being safe to go for one of these pawns. But both players with an archer range, like you said, Dave. Yes, opening scout for Leary. You always got to be watching out for that because if he can pick off a few units with it, he will, and he's going to be as annoying as possible. He's hanging out near that archer range, trying to track where the army is going to go from Valis. As you can see, him just stop there, and he's just waiting for the army to appear. Meanwhile, at home, he's got a couple archers already out with a spearman on the way, and he was thinking about a second <laughs> range, and he waited until the Did, scout left. I actually think he command queued it to go back to the berries after building the range, mm -hmm. and it didn't build the range because of the scout. Let's see if he realized. There he goes. Yep. Or he was waiting for the scout to leave. Or, or that. he's big braining it. Yeah, or big heading it. Either either one. I Doesn't guess sound I, as I, Yeah, I never want to use that Jordan quote again. But uh, great micro here so far from Valis. It looks like it'll be a fairly even trade overall. Definitely the trade that you would want to start off against Leary, right? You don't want to fall yeah, too far. Yeah, Leary's still got quite a bit of scout HP Ooh, left, though. And yeah. this is a really good engagement. He's taking the hill. Leary is going to get as many hits as possible with that scout before it goes down. And he's tracking with two archers. I was talking earlier about how much value he gets with small amounts of units. And this is what we're talking about. I mean, the KD right now is only five to three in favor of Leary, but he suddenly has all of the map control in the middle. And Valis is late with that second range. Leary is killing the Ibex. You see Valis already taking advantage of the other Ibex for extra food. And it's just all these little things that he does, and they add up. Now, you do save quite a bit of food in Feudal Age when you're making villagers and skirmishers, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, so both players have a little bonuses, which will help them with the food count. But again, we have Valis just taking it to Leary at the start of the series. Range unit v. Range unit, not really what we thought he'd do. It just seems like every time one of Valis' units shoots, <laughs> Leary has enough micro to pull individual units yep. away from that projectile, yep. right? And he's got so much value out of the Spearman, just even getting extra damage against the Skirmishers, takes out a Villager there, continuing to hit these Skirmishers, and now that the armor is in and realize, Leary realizes the armor is in, he pulls back with his Archers. He might even think about placing a Dock now. I know neither player has done that as of yet, but I think Leary might be... Uh, might be feeling a little bit more secure after the early engagements. Yeah, uh, you're making skirms now against skirmishers. Byzantines have cheaper skirmishers, most definitely. And the, the fun thing about Byzantines, too, is because of free town watch, if you lose track of someone's army, it's usually pretty easy to find out where it is. Uh, we saw Valis research town watch there. He actually was housed for a moment, so he has been struggling with the pace of the Look game. Look at the so split far. from those archers. Those archers are off to the left. He's only got his skirmishers forward. He knows where the army from Valis is, and the archers are going around to the left side. Leary. He deliberately distracted Valis, and I think Valis kind of senses that the he archers should. aren't he there. He should sense this, yeah. He's going to pull the skirmishers back, and I don't think he's going to lose a villager, but now the skirmishers can come in on the other side, and they're not doing too much damage, but in the hands of the Austrian, they're going to be extremely annoying. It's just production right yeah. now. It's 12 army versus 6. Leary is just simply the better two-range player. There's no other way to say it right now, and so it's going to be really hard to catch up. We do see a stable for Valis as he clicks up at a time that's way faster than I expected. But when, when cheap spearmen could come forward, when Leary can also mix in archers, this is going to be so difficult yeah. to push back. I mean, he was, he was on that second range so much faster, right? So he got the archers out first, and then he just full production of skirmishers. Look at the military count right now, 14 to 4 in favor of Leary. And Valis' main gold right now is under fire. Leary doesn't even care about the villagers attacking his skirms. He is wiping up the army, and then he can switch back into some more archers that can actually kill those villagers. Valis is under so much pressure, and the archers are at the back, of course. Why wouldn't they be? It's the worst possible start to a series. You put Leary in his sweet spot, the player who has been kind of in a funk, if you could say, by his high standards, of course. And I think this is going to be over potentially before Castlage even hits. Or we might have the Castlage in the GG here. Leary's just everywhere. Look, and he's going to the berries now that he's being chased by one skirmisher. Still attacking with skirms on the main gold. Has the archers there. Is in Castlage in 40 seconds. And it just doesn't, it doesn't seem fair, does it? it? It's not. But also, I, I got a question going into this. You don't want to give Leary confidence. Mm -hmm. Opening double range against Byzantines, and Leary is crazy, man. Where's the tower? Yeah, could have been helpful. Where's the tower from Valis, right? When there was only skirmishers there, you can tank some of the fire from the skirms. I feel like you need to protect that gold, but... I mean, Valis is going to go up to the Castle Age at a very similar time. He's getting the armor now, so he's definitely thinking about transition, 
transitioning into some cavalry as he has the stable. But that's in full view of Leary. And if he sees significant numbers, he just goes into uh, spearmen and pikemen of his own or camels of his also, own. Also, his opponent can't make knights. Mm -hmm. So uh, camels are not really the best unit pushing back range units in the first place. Lovely stuff from Leary, how the archers and spears wait for whatever's in that stable. Yep. And then he just micros the skirmishers on the front. He makes this look very easy as his macro will, of course, be insane behind. And there's a, a, a camel. And now the archers and skirmishers come yeah, in. A but camel he's, still, and a scout. he's still focusing down the skirmishers from behind because he doesn't want them to kill the spearmen. Leary, I think that TC is in the perfect center of the map. That's very it satisfying to yeah. see it on the main map there as Leary is taking control of the center. And he'll likely get a monastery there, get five relics. And this is just going to snowball out of control. I mean, that's a lot of camels, though. I am very impressed with Valus' macro in terms of his idle TC time. He is the same amount as Leary, and he's been under pressure the entire time. Mm -hmm. He also didn't lose as many villagers as he could have. He doesn't have elite skirmisher and doesn't even have bodkin and doesn't have the gold really to get any upgrades. And that small number of crossbowmen is all Leary's going to need here as he pushes this all back. Beautiful. And there's that monastery, Dave. Beautiful. I think he lost two crossbowmen from that, and Valus... Well, he wasn't expecting to kill the entire army, but he got what he wanted. He pushed the army off of his gold, and he's going for another TC on the secondary goal. But Leary also has middle control here. He's got the relics coming in shortly once he gets a monk out of that monastery, and he's going for university. This is the Leary we wanted to see against Tato, exactly. right? Yeah, this is awesome. This is also going to bring him so much more comfort, assuming he closes this out mm -hmm. in the future games. But, you know, you've got... Four skirms with two more on the way. Elite skirms nowhere in sight. Camels have done nothing for you. I respect Valis playing on here, right? He might want to warm up into the series, like work his way past some of the jitters. Mm -hmm. um, but he will know that he has less than 1% chance in this game. And Valis goes over to Leary's base in his first counter raid, counter attack, and he finds Leary's fully walled. Yep. And... Leary's repairing behind there. So he can't even get into the with the camels to kill a few villagers. Incredibly demoralizing for him. But he fights on. I mean, he has two TCs right now. He's trying to claw back in terms of villager numbers. Leary is still all over his gold. But remember, the second TC was on the secondary gold for Valis. So he does have another option now. Leary's going to... His gold count's really going to start to spike. Mm -hmm. And he's going to have the siege now. Because at the moment, Leary's not really killing any villagers. He's controlling the game but he has yet to kill any villagers. And the elite skirm upgrade is on the way. Leary's gonna see that now, but remember no bodkin arrow and the final armor isn't in either. So still just unfortunately two or three steps behind here, the fin. Uh, those camels, kind of forgot about them myself. Spearman gonna go over there, mop those things up. And here comes that siege on the front for the Austrian. Yeah, and Leary, once he gets this mangonel over here, I. Not sure there's much that can keep that TC alive, especially if his second one comes out. Leary's going to get the gold from the relics, like you were saying, and his resources are starting to climb. And if there's one thing that we know about Leary, it's that he always likes to be in the next age first. Great Ooh. shot there from the Mangonel on the Skirmishers. Valis took his eyes off that for one second. Also, Byzantines, cheaper Imperial Age. I do want to point this out. I, I understand that Valis is a dead man walking at the moment. But he's only nine vills behind. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a crazy thing, right? Like, there were situations in his set against Sato where it felt like he would have died to the pressure. And then his eco was good enough later on and he came back. So definitely something to keep in mind here. I mean, if Leary's not paying attention to his crossbowman, the elite skirm's still a good counter unit. It's just, how is he going to miss it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's going to see everything. Oh, these, these outposts. outposts. Oh, my goodness. These outposts are going to be like a satellite in space, right? Yep. There's Google Maps over here in Valis's base as the skirmishers from Valis just desperately looking for some form of counter. Maybe I can kill a monk. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, oh, nope. Oh, not going to happen. no. You can't kill anything, not bro. You're going to need happen. to leave. Oh, and, boy. Oh, oh, God. Just... Don't do it to him. <laughs> Oh, man, Leary's, oh. Leary's just like, well, okay. I mean, I'm not sure what he has. He did scout some of the shorelines there, uh, looking for some fishing ships. That TC's going to go down. I actually begin to, like, I, I don't know. Okay, there's the GG yep. there. I was going to say, I don't know what Valis was, was hoping for there, but I really do feel like he just said, okay, we're dead. I mean, but let's just let's just give it a second. The, impressive, it a the impressive aspect of that game for me is that he 
only lost, you know, 46 units. Yeah. He only lost six villagers, and he only had a minute of idle TC time. That is impressive, considering the pressure that Leary was putting down. I don't think there's, like, a player in the world that doesn't get completely smothered by that pressure from Leary. Okay, here's the thing, though. I hated that choice. I hated everything about it. I hated the Hindustanis. I hated the double range. I hated no attempt to dock. Two range versus two range. No one wants to do that against Leary, and you yeah. certainly don't want to give him that confidence boost, give him that feeling of, oh, yeah, I own this guy. And, like, not even at, a at tower the there either. You're trying yeah, to defend yeah, yeah. with just military against Leary. Against Byzantines, you're trying to defend with skirms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not, there's no shame in losing two range versus two range up against Leary. It is just the choice that bothered me there. But we should have Shoals coming up. I got that one right. Shoals is on the left side of your screens there. And I, we've got Franks, Bohemian, Sicilians, three very different choices there. Yeah, I don't know what Leary's going to go for. It could be Cumans here. It could be Saracens here. It could be Bulgarians as well. Like, it could be all three. I didn't really see any of those in the qualifiers mm -hmm. as a popular pick. I definitely saw Sicilians and Bohemians. And I believe maybe Franks on Shoals, but Bohemians was definitely a super popular pick. Okay, so uh, just to, you know, rewind here a little bit in terms of the series. Shoals, obviously, home map coming up next for Valis. Mm -hmm. It is Arabia home map for Leary. So the Arabia we talked about earlier will will come later on. You, potentially. Can, you got confused and then you confused me. Well, they should. A, I blame them. <laughs> I think you just have Arabia on your mind, bro. You played I, it too many I times. I swear to God it was on screen, but it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. I blame you. Well, okay, so so Saracens, Cumans, Bulgarians. I think Saracens is an Arabia pick for Leary. Mm -hmm. So is Shoals? Look it, at that. Hufnitsa. They don't even have the Hussite wagon. Oh. They've got the Hufnitsa. That might be my favorite so far. Wow. Yeah. All right. Exciting to see that. That's cool. I would have liked to see the Hussite wagon, but I guess it doesn't have, like, much. <laughs> I bet you the It's the just, guy... like, a big wooden yeah. box. <laughs> the, guy, the guy who was making the graphic was, it's like, like trolling, right? This exciting, yeah. <laughs> also, the guns are, like, it's not even, like, symmetrical. Yeah, it's, it's all like, these random are we playing Oregon the... Trail? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. Well, it is pretty cool to see. And we'll see what Leary's choice will be in a moment. He's thinking. I don't think he's selected it yet. He's, like, he, what he's thinking right now is... God, Cummins feels really good, but it looked so bad yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, no, I, I, I think like Saracens might be a decent pick, um, just so you can get that early imperial pressure. But like, usually the way it plays out is there's castles from both people on either side. Yeah. And Which when you're thinking for Bohemians, Bohemians against Cummins, like Cummins don't really have that many options late game against Bohemians. Yeah, but Saracens, if you get a boom going in feudal, maybe. Because then it changes. No, the game but a Bohe bit. Bohemians are going to get up super fast anyway. Mm, Trudel boom on Empire Wars when you're just walled off completely. Yeah, I don't think it's no, something. No, it doesn't. No, and it's going to be Cumans. Oh, all so right. So he's thought it through and he's going to go for Cumans. Now, I don't think there's much potential to get early pressure here. So he is going to have to pressure down one of those sides um, and into the base from Valis, which is going to be incredibly difficult if Valis manages to get a castle up mm -hmm. or manages to get some fortifications around the gold spots. You know, a lot of people watching don't know this, but uh, five or six years ago, this is actually precisely what Dave looked like. Things are a little different now, but he was rocking it. With the ponytail? <laughs> What? what? Did I? Was that the wrong person's Facebook? I'm sorry. I, I thought that was you, man. I thought you were raiding Canadian villages. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Halloween's coming up. That's all I'm saying, all right? I'm not going to be a Kipchak for <laughs> Halloween. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not even fond of the unit. <laughs> it's it's my right. least favorite unit. Sorry, it's just my brain took me there. Had to speak my mind. I'd have to rent a horse. I don't even know if you If I rent the horse, will you do it? <laughs> no. <laughs> ah, man. Okay. Okay. Here well, we, we give up on yeah. that. Anyway, so, so okay, humans, though. So it's a boomy map. It's got to be two TCs, right? Or, or do, can you go? It's not, I don't, I, I don't. <sighs> I think he's going to try it. I think he's going to try it again. I, I think there is a world in which you can go two TC and still get up to Castle Age at a relatively quick time. So you're going to have like a 10 villager advantage mm. or something like that. Maybe use the market a little bit. But the problem with humans against Bohemians is like Halb Ufnitsa. 
I know. It's just like, it, and how there, do you stop choke that combination? Points. There's choke points on this map too, and there's water in the middle. And also, it's notoriously not very good water civilization. Okay, so let's let's say that Leary played 100 practice games. I'm going to assume is probably less than that, but for easy math, okay? Yeah. How many of them, or what percentage, would have been played on Shoals, if you had to guess? Oh, I mean, single digits. I, I would say like two. Both. I feel like at the end of the second game, he, he resigns and he says, ah, I'll just ban that map. I realistically think that that might be... I actually, actually, now that I'm thinking about the qualifiers, I think I saw a Bohemians versus Cumans matchup. It was very tough for the Cumans, but the Cumans ended up winning with Paladin, just Paladin against Hal. Well, I that's think, got me excited. Yeah. We'll have to we'll have to see. I mean, my memory is spotty and it's getting worse every day. So hopefully we can just get into this match before you ask me any more difficult questions. <laughs> hey, they just got to keep throwing new units up on the screen yeah. this week. All right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, Leary uh, took his time to get into the lobby, we've been told. So I think his brain is still churning on what he will do with his civilization. But I was back there with his older brother mm -hmm. yesterday. And when he saw Cumin's first pick, he shook his head and I said, I said, that doesn't really fit Leary's style, does it? And he said yeah. no and sunk lower and lower into his chair as Leary lost that series against Tato. That's so cool, by the way, having your older bro here cheering you on. He's like yep. fist pumping back there. I love that. And yeah, we got friends, we got family here and we're into the map. We've got Leary playing as the Cumans and Valis playing as the Bohemians. And it looks like Leary was opening with a stable there. He's got a scout coming out. So this is kind of rare to see the early pressure. Usually this map is very wallable. Leary is fortunate that Valis's map is super open at the front. I feel like in theory, state scouts shouldn't do a ton if Bohemians make one or two spearmen. But there is a lot to wall, mm -hmm. and one scout is all you need to kill one villager, mm -hmm. and Leary is going to find that villager. Yeah, and the scouts also have utility later on if you don't lose them. They can prevent villagers from just YOLO going out to the, the gold and the stone on the sides, as you see those big gold oh, piles there. look at the and blocks. Leary, Leary is just going to dodge around that spearman. He's going to take a couple hits from it, but he's going to take out the villager, and this is a little bit of momentum. It doesn't mean all that much in the grand scheme of the game, but it makes you feel good as a player when you know you've already killed a villager from your opponent. Okay, so there was a time where I hadn't seen any games on this map. I went to you and said, hey, what are people doing? I was like, full galleys? And you said, no, that sea tower is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Yeah, and we've got, we're going to see it because Leary's making navy mm -hmm. and that scout, how is that scout alive? He's oh probably, he's probably going to make three galleys here as he continues to be annoying with not one, but two scouts. Um, he's probably going to make three galleys, try and snipe the fish without getting hit by that tower, yeah. but he won't really go with more water pressure, I think, although he's getting fletching right now and he's adding more galleys behind this. Unfortunately for Valis, his fish are in a really rough position. They're really far away from his dock. Sometimes they can spawn right next to it. I, I really like how Leary's opened this. If he follows this up with the second town center, mm -hmm. he's killed a villager, he has the potential to kill fish. I, I think I like his position off that 2TC boom, but he's got the wood for it, hasn't placed it yet. Double archer Dude, range? He's done. He's done with the 2TC. He's like, what? eco, I don't need eco. <laughs> I don't need eco. All I need are units. And units he has as he loses that galley to the tower. And if we click on the tower there, we can see the, um, the damage. It's seven damage, and it gets um, bonus damage, nine bonus damage against the ship. So. Wow. It's it's quite ridiculous, and Valis is now just hanging out underneath. He's I, very comfortable there. I really like the patience, though, from Leary, because those three fishing ships are essentially useless at the moment. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure the archers can Look at Leary just him. camping. He's on the stand yep. ground with those galleys. Yep. He's like, yep, yep. Yep, okay, well, your fishing ships aren't working, so that's perfect for me. All right, well, there goes Valis. He's on the way up. He did sell 100 stones, so if he needs to tower, he won't be able to. And, uh, you know, the double range is going to come up hot and heavy here and there's no water control right now mm -hmm. for Valis, so he is making a fire galley Valis being off that gold out there is kind of unfortunate for him and leary adding the archers on that side means that he wants to prevent Valis from moving out to the left he does have that other gold uh near where the market is oh that okay scout goes down okay so he's got some okay and with bohemians he's bringing in a lot of gold Bohemians getting automatically the Feudal Age uh, Golden Stone upgrade and the Castle Age Golden Stone upgrade. Absolutely ridiculous of bonus. Yeah, someone's crying in Malian right now. 
Give it back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, I like the scouting here. As I say that, the scout will probably die, but no, it doesn't. It's going to move on. And I also like the fire galley. Now the fishing ships, which have been saved, yeah. are going to move out to the I, I feel like it's perceived safety, though, because Leary with three galleys is going to be incredibly annoying. But Valis will get some value from that. Now, shore fish collect incredibly slow, if you're not familiar here in the chat. They collect incredibly sh slow with uh, fishing ships. With villagers, it's very fast. Which makes total sense. You know, a, yeah. a ship designed to well, collect. Well, I mean, they, you spend all your time getting stuck in the sand. <laughs> oh, that, that's true. I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, it's shallow water, right? So they're, they're having some issues there as the galleys come forward once again. Leary a minute away from Castle Age as Valis is already there and he gets both of the Castle Age eco upgrades, and the drops wood it. and the farm Great upgrade. Great TC, wow. Goes under the stone and I think he's going to pressure because he probably suspects that Leary has army out there. He's mm. probably going to push out towards the golds with a castle in advance. Can we, after this little engagement here, nice snipe there from Leary, can we see the point of view from Valis? I want to see his scout's still out there. Did he see the ranges at all? He saw the stable. Okay, so he doesn't actually know there's going to be ranged army out but there. But the TC is going to be so valuable on that side. Both TCs are so good. And yeah. all he really will need, as he isn't going to add a knight, wow. Is he sneaking a vil? No, no, no. Never, and never mind. Sorry, I'm getting too excited. But, I mean, defensive siege and those crossbows do nothing. Mm -hmm. I know it's Leary and everything, but still. Yeah, Valis is just going to slowly bring, or quickly bring in that stone with the Bohemians and then attempt to lock down the sides later on in the game. He's gonna use all of his gold and stone in his main base and boom up behind. And here he is with the oh, knight near. Leary needs to go, stop go, that. Go, 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 Just go, a house go. or a wall or something. He's in. Oh, oh that's, that hurts so much because you get so much damage from one unit. I, technically it's two. Let's not forget about the scout, but. He's trying. Yeah, that's that's just incredible. Uh, even with just that, you're going to love life. But now you see a crossbow, too. So now you're like, wait a second, and here come the crossbows. He needs that Siege Workshop. Needs the Siege Workshop. He also might think about even a fourth TC somewhere around that area, maybe on the gold up there to the north as the crossbows are trying to come in. But all you can... All, all you need to do there, I think, is wall in that little gap in the woodland. That could be annoying. He, he doesn't know it's there. Around. I bet you he doesn't know it's there. He would have placed oh, a house if he knew. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Does Valis know about He's gonna this? He's going to check it he out. He He's going to check it out. Oh, he my has to know. goodness. He knows. But it's too late. That's such an annoying army there, Dave. And of course, Leary finds that tiny little hole, and he's going to be in on the farms there. Ballas is going to have to wait forever for that Manganel. It's only at 20% right now. So a lot of his food eco is being denied currently. And he's got three TCs. He wants to boom up as Leary goes now for that, finally for that second TC in Castle Age on that gold area. I, I love... Even though it's still, I it's think, out of Leary's comfort zone, this whole map and yeah. possibly the Civ on the map, I love how he at least went army here, right? Like, he, he stuck to his identity. Let's see how he can micro, because we know Leary can take out Siege. This is supposed to be a counter. Yep. And it's going to get to a point where he will try and snipe the repair village. It's actually highly complex. Average player can't really play the game like this, but these guys make it look easy. And there he goes, trying his best. There he sees the repair He's villager. not even Split hitting the Mangadol. <laughs> he's hitting a farmer and, like, the repair villager. And he's dodging all these shots. And he knows the longer he dodges, like, this army's dead. And I think even Leary knows that. I think with a scorpion out here now from Valis, this army is not long for this world. <laughs> but he's distracting his opponent oh, so man. much. Now and his he's opponent has the garrison, too. Giving us entertainment, I yeah. guess. Now, the beautiful thing about Leary is that he can actually macro behind this. This is disgusting. Can you? Bro. <laughs> Bro! Stop! What is this? <laughs> this is amazing. Like, I feel like with Leary, uh, the crossbow should be like 300 food, 300 gold or something. Yeah. But yeah, look at the idle TC time for Valis. This yeah. has really had an effect on his boom, and it has kept Leary in the game despite being late on the TCs. I think Valis has gotten to the point where he's just kind of ignoring this army too. He was just letting his scorpion and his mangonel do what they do best, and Valis has now taken off his headset. He's put it back on. Maybe it was a little bit uncomfortable there. He paused the game for a second. We're going to get right back into this. Yeah, I think it was just something was itching on his head or something he, like that. Imagine how how much that itched, though. Yep. He, he, the crossbows were there. The crossbows were preventing the scratch of the itch. 
That's yeah, my hottest take. The crossbows oh. were the itch. They, were, they weren't an itch. <laughs> Dude, that was a rash <laughs> yes, that wouldn't go away. It didn't Ooh. matter what ointment he put on that That's one. true. <laughs> I, I, wish, I wish everyone could have saw Dave's thought process for a second. Like, he, his eyes went from, what a ridiculous take, and then, oh, I can work with this. <laughs> so Leary is controlling the left with the TC, right? And he's got the forward siege workshop monastery, and he's got his crossbows on the right side patrolling around. Mm. This it's is so, so beautiful from Leary because the Bohemian the way they play <gasps> this, they boom up, and Leary knew exactly what Valis was going to try. The only question uh -oh. is whether he catches it, because Valis could go all the way around, sneaky ninja style. Oh, just passing, man. Now, Valis has the right idea, but he has so little control to be able to execute his plan. So it is, he is going to need a little bit of good fortune. And as he's trying to get that castle up, he might need to consider a castle. Whoa, a lot of crossbows died there. Um, this is so good from Valis. This is, and he's oh. using that knight to kill the crossbow so it doesn't see the villagers. His gold's gonna be hit at the same time. Everything's happening at the same time. Wow. Fantastic for Valis to get the villagers out there, but Leary is still providing pressure and he's killing the farmers. He's killing the gold villagers. And what's happening over on that other TC? We got uh -oh. three mangonels. Valis could get some good shots. That's a good opening. And Leary's so, not paying attention. Yeah, and he was looking the other way, and earlier Valis was as well. And wow, look at the dodge Dude, there. Valis, that was disgusting. Valis, Mangonel, and Bombard Cannon Micro is actually insane. Yeah, uh, the only problem is that side, of course. But he gets a knight, but Leary's going to try and convert it back. That needs yeah. to be deleted. Yeah, deleted. D perfect timing. I mean, maybe a little bit too late if it was the fastest conversion yeah. to war. He's already still, been oh under my Leary's God. control. Yeah, this is ridiculous. It's a close game though, Dave. And one Scorpion over there should deal with those crossbows. Still obviously has to pay very close attention to all of this. And uh, Leary's gonna, is he gonna try? Cause it's close. Oh man. Valis can repair that. He's still holding on and he's got the TC up there. He snuck it past Leary and Leary's gotta be feeling confident right now. Like there's no way he has a TC over on that side. Leary's only two town centers, but he also has 46 seconds of TC idle time. So this is the beauty of having fewer TCs and maxing out on that aggression. This is kind of crazy because Leary has a sick push over here, but we know that Valis' goal oh. is to get into the late game. And that was a sick attack round there from Leary. Valis knew it was coming, tried to turn back, not enough time. Oh boy. And Leary has just- Oh boy. Push down that TC. Valis now going for a panic defensive castle. Meanwhile, on the other side, Leary's just full map control over those farms. It, it is so interesting, though, because this castle's going up, right? Yeah. It, it just yeah. how many villagers goes down, or go down, excuse me, and then will that town center in the north ever be spotted? Mm -hmm. The castle's up. Now, what do you make out of the castle? You probably don't want to make the, the wag. Okay, hello, villager. He's like, we fight for freedom. He's kind of... He made progress. He made progress until the other monks decided to heal their compatriot. And the knight <laughs> is now Can standing. we see the stats on that knight? Okay, five kills. It could turn into a lot more here. That's the same knight and that Leary, killed those villagers. Leary's coming back with the crossbows. Leary's coming back with the crossbows to defend that TC placement because he knows the knight is out there. It had previously killed a unit, and these crossbows might find this TC. And if they find this TC, I wonder what the response from Leary is going to be. Those mangonels are a long way away, but if they skirt past oh, Valis's base, they could go right to this TC. Over I'm here. so sad there's not a demo right there. Oh, that demo would be so sick. Yeah. Oh, okay. Leary crossbows. doesn't it, see the knight. He doesn't know about the TC either. Yeah. Oh, for the love of God, make a demo. I don't think it's getting much value. Oh. And I'm a demo kind of guy. I, I mean, <gasps> he saw a villager and he sees the TC. He knows. Okay, so he's aware. Now he also needs to protect the other side. Uh, sea Tower. This is the first time you're going to see a Sea Tower attacked by Siege. Sea Knights get killed by Own Mangonel. Oh, God. Now the monks are going to die as well. Oh, my God. And now he's losing the Siege to a fire ship. Oh, that was so bad for Leary. Oh, jeez. And also, I think he lost a villager or two to the knight. The fallen soldier is Demo down. Demo is coming, by the way. Yeah? But it's not going to get any value now. It's a little bit too late. Maybe it might be able to oh, snipe oh, a Mangonel oh, as oh, the, the monks. monks come out, and the monks all die. I think maybe one of those hopped inside the TC. So great technique there from Valis to save at least one of those holy men as Leary now goes for a siege workshop. I was wondering what he makes over here, but Valis preemptively made a siege workshop as soon as he saw those crossbows. He's adding in more barracks. And like I said, Halb Hufnitsa with Bohemians is just so difficult. Even just Pikeman right now. Itself. How yeah. does Valis, how did he go from 13 farms last yeah. time I looked when he built the castle to 38? 
is crazy. That's Actually, insane. He just filled up I, every I, single available spot right there. I have not seen anyone be able to expand macro with so little free time in the event so far. That is a statement I'm willing to stand by. He covered so much real estate. Yeah, he's got like no space for any more farms. And I'm now sure the castle is coming up. And this is, it. oh man, those villagers sneaking around the wood line while Leary went to the left huge. side. So good from Vallis, and I'm sure it was intentional to go around the outside of the map from him. He wanted to be as sneaky as possible. So that was a great play, and you can see all of the doors that it opened up. Leary's win condition was keeping Vallis off the sides here. Now he's going to have to play the game that he didn't want to play. He is on the way to Imperial Age, but Vallis, with a lot of food in the bank, may be thinking about it himself. Let's see if he senses that Leary's up. Because it's a little... It, it, normally, you're not going fast imp off of two stable, two range. But what Leary wants is a castle. And with a castle, he can get to trebuchets. And yeah, the bomber cannons can become an issue earlier for Bohemians, uh, or later for Bohemians. But if you can tread them back before that becomes a problem, then maybe you've got some potential here. Is what Leary going to go, like, what is he going to make with that Siege Workshop? I guess he's done with that. He placed it and then realized this is going to be an Imperial Age yep. game. Yep. You could make an argument for some sort of ram pressure, but I think it's tough in these choke points. Yeah, I agree with you. It really it's depends on, okay. yeah, okay, so so this is my question. But only two vills there at the moment. Will Valis see that castle? Because even if he doesn't know Leary's up, oh, seeing that so castle close, tells bro. me. It's so close. Yeah. It's like one tile away, he sees it almost. Also, he's prioritizing a lot more pikes, but chemistry would be a really important thing to click right now as we see the def defense. Yeah, you can research chemistry in Castle Age if anyone isn't familiar with the Bohemians, which means you get those cannons out right we away. We called it. Imperial. Look at that. And actually, it's very well yeah. timed, right? Because you can't make bomber cannons until you're an imp, so. Yeah. Well, this is where we're going to focus for now. Leary has had to give up on the other side. Leary is behind by 10 villagers. I mean, he's up a game in this best of three. Yep. And he's looking to finish off the Finn. Vallis has found that castle, and it's not many oh, villagers. He God. can deny this for the time being until the knights get involved. Like, the crossbows aren't going to be able to take out that mangonel for free. It seems a little unnecessary, but as long as okay, the castle goes up, away. yeah, he pulls it away. Okay, so he's okay with that. So it is still in a, a decent position this game for Leary because he controls one of those gold piles completely, and he's also contesting the other one. So it's going to be difficult for Valis to continue pulling in gold. But then you look at Valis's resources: it's twelve hundred stone in the bank, twelve hundred gold in the bank, and now he's buying wood because he probably wants bombard cannons mm -hmm. as soon as he hits Imperial Age, and he's going to have enough wood for two immediate bombard cannons up there on the top side he as also, Leary goes for a second castle. He also, man, monks just die in that area. Yeah. Don't go there if you're a holy yeah. man. But he can get Hufnitsa as well. Mm -hmm. That's ab that's insane. That's disgusting. I mean, I, I would normally suggest... He goes for hell, but... Yeah, that's smart. First, yeah. I like that decision. I also love the decision from Leary to dive here. This is not something... This is not an area that Valis is prioritizing right yeah. now. And Cavalier might actually work out. There's no pikemen here. Like I said, the one game that I saw humans find success against Bohemians, they just had an insane eco, and they went into Paladin with big numbers. Wow. But... Valis, if he manages to clear up the stuff in the north, could be in a position to start pushing Leary's base mm -hmm. as well. And Leary is starting to sense that. He brings the crossbows back. He brings the knights back. He's got a few trebs attacking, but he doesn't have bombard cannons, and Valis does. And the, and the halbs do additional bonus damage. So the name of the game right now is protect those bombard cannons with your halberdiers. At home, you're, you're relatively OK at the moment. Leary's sending everything he's got at this. He can't make Bombard Cannons. Can he snipe the Bombard Cannons from Valis? I think something you said in the previous set with Valis, you're like, this guy really loves mining stone. And I agree, because he's <laughs> got 1,800 well, stone. He's Bohemians. He's probably only had, I know he's got 21, but he probably doesn't even need that much. I mean, I saw some people making Black Forest player jokes, but truthfully, when it comes to like his, his boom, mm -hmm. it is insane. It really yeah. shows that he plays a lot of that map. And I feel like he's just holding off on that stone because he wants all of his villagers repairing the castle rather than building a new castle. Yep. He should have actually allocated maybe some more villagers to repair that with that much stone in the bank. This is this is a bit worrying. He lost both Bombard Cannons Both there. of them to the castle, I believe. Yeah, and he, he realizes if he doesn't have this gold, it's over. Yeah. He's got three on gold. Yep. Can Leary hold this? Leary has a lot of military right now, Dave. Who needs Bracer, I guess? He's got Skirms, he's got Crossbows. And the Bomber Cannons aren't finding the value that Valis needs them to find. Lyria just has too many Trebs. How many Trebs does he have here? He has six 
over on this side, and that castle is not long for this world if Leary chooses to attack it, but I think he's attacking the Trebs instead at long range, and he's... Oh, uh, look at all the Treb balls flying yeah. as well. He takes out one of the Trebuchets. Leary knows that if he Goes can after win the bomber this... Cannon. Oh, oh no! Dumb. Come on! <laughs> Give the man a chance! Life is not fair! He did not deserve that, but that's what six Trebs do, right? There's always a little bit of unpredictability with Trebuchets and their accuracy, and can he get the last one? He does! Against the early chemistry, against the Bomber Cannons, Against Halbs, mm -hmm. Leary is doing this. This is crazy. This is sick, man. Villager count is exactly the same. Leary has caught up on Eco officially. I think Vallis is now trying to go for the other side, which I like because I like against lot. six Trebs, you're never getting another castle in that yeah. general vicinity. I also love the YOLO-ness of it. Like, yeah. no protection. Oh, look at how many Vills, too. Here we and go. They're fast, too. <laughs> Bohemian Vills, they're quick. They're going like, to get there. But if you, I think if you lose that other side, it's so easy for Leary with the more mobile civilization to just switch back and forth. Mm -hmm. And you really needed that that death ball to to push Leary back there. I, I think there's gonna be I think Leary's seen this. I think there's gonna be so many big problems for Vallis, but he yeah. should not give up. What is he doing? Leary is buying stone. Mm -hmm. So Leary is buying stone and he's making a counter castle. And oh my goodness, what a counter castle it is. As Vallis needs to abandon this attempt. And look at the gold in the bank for Vallis. He's got 10. He's got nothing left. Now he can sell some of his stone because, you know, Leary is buying stone for such ridiculous prices at the market. But Vallis needs that for future castles. And Leary's going to have a treb there, right? Mm -hmm. So he can now make a treb instantly. Yeah. And the even Cumin Imperial Age skirmishers are pushing back the helps. This is really bad for Valus at the moment. I, I also am shocked because it just felt inevitable that the Bohemian composition would be enough. And Leary just tossing the units in constantly, being in the right positions and not hesitating for attack. He, he cleaned up that position, and yeah. here he is already. I think Vallis, uh, he was banking a lot of stone when he was repairing it. He didn't need a second castle, but maybe a little bit earlier he needed yeah. a second castle on the other side. Even just to buy himself enough time to get more bomber cannons as he attempts uh, to go for the this gold. This is awkward. Guys, he we're working to go here. For the gold. We're working here. Come on, get out of here. That one villager, when it goes back to drop <laughs> off that gold, will make that castle position viable. And Leary says, screw that. He's just going to make the castle anyway as the Halberdiers are dealing with the Skirmishers demo even out there to try and get some value. Oh, there we go. <laughs> there we Finally. Go. <laughs> uh, it tried. You know, it is kind of funny how Valus had 2,000 stone and yet now Leary's got all the castles. You know, it's like the timing of when the castles were placed, the ability to protect the castle. It's 180 pop for Leary. His eco is only getting better, and Valis has no gold access. Yeah. If you can't make gold, even Cumans can beat you with the range. Look units. at his stone starting to drain as he's repairing that castle, but he needs bombard cannons over here. He doesn't have them. Leary's still running around with the cavalier. Is he going to come in here and snipe this one trebuchet from Valis? Valis is trying to prevent that with some house walls as Leary continues to loop around, but Leary right now with 75% of the map control and 100% of the gold control as the Trebs have they finally made their cross, way. I they think. Their way across, yeah. <laughs> oh man. I, also, saddest thing to say right now is that Vallis completed Hufnitze about two minutes ago. Oh no. He hasn't been able to make one. He's what fighting a sad on feeling. though. He is fighting on. Like he refuses to give in. He knows that there's a high likelihood, a very high likelihood, that he can't come back in this game, especially against a player like Leary. But he refuses to give in. And uh, he's taken down one castle, now pushing out with the Halbs. <laughs> if he manages to take down the other castle, maybe he can get some gold access. Leary's making crossbows with cumins. <laughs> he just can't stay away from the unit line. Yep. Even with one of the worst civilizations for that unit line. But now he's, hey, he's gonna go for man at arms, maybe. I like that choice. Yeah, I mean, I, he knows that Valis is probably hard stuck on Halberdiers, yep. right? And Bohemian Halbs get extra bonus damage against the Cavalry. Leary obviously doesn't want to continue making Cavalier into a composition like that. He has no further use for the Trebs. There's no more castles to attack. Forget so about the Trebs. He simply doesn't care about them now. <laughs> he adds another castle in the center here, though. Yeah, I mean, it, it, again, it feels like that right side's really important right now for Leary. He's obviously very tunnel vision, but just a couple stables there, or even just Cav raiding would find a very exposed side of Valis's eco, but 53 halberdiers, soon fully upgraded. 
and he's gonna have one Hoofnito on the way. So that's something here for Valis. Yeah, maybe he can maybe he can sell some more wood, maybe sell some more food. <laughs> he doesn't really have any <laughs> he doesn't really have any left to, to produce more Hoofnits. I mean it's an yeah. incredibly powerful unit. Only takes a few shots for that entire ball of range units from Leary to go down as another Hoofnitsa is on the way. Halbadir is 61. This might be the first time I've ever seen Leary go champion, legitimately. Oh. I, I do not recall a moment where he has. Now it fits the situation, right? It's a unit that's good against counter units like skirmishers and like halberdiers. Yep. Um, and again, certainly he's not going to want to make needs no a... bracer ranged units. Valis knows exactly what he needs. He to can do push here. this. Yeah, he this needs is to taking just too get long a, for Leary. He needs to get a big ball of Hufnitsa and some halberdiers in the traps. Look at them clump up those trebuchets. Leary, yeah. get them out of there, man. Well, Leary, knowing Leary is probably going to unpack them and then snipe that uh. Hufnitsa from, from downtown. <laughs> True. Yeah. Well, there is a big raid on the right-hand side. It's been in the eco for a couple minutes, but the halves are there. Alice and is dealing with yeah, it. Yeah, it's also gold units, so yeah. wasn't well, like Hussar or anything that Leary's happy to throw away. And I wonder, I, I see units from Valis moving on the right side too, near the gold, and I wonder what that is. Oh. He's taking some gold. No way, Sneaky dude. Sneaky boy. Man, there's something about him and sneaking villagers to that area. Yeah. If he wins this game, first off, it'd be incredible because he's been down bad over the last couple minutes, but both of those sneaks to that area will have been the key. Yep. Oh, okay. Leary sees it. Well, it's short-lived. It, it will be short-lived, yep. but I think Leary could lose this gold now. How do you stop this? I don't think you can stop this. I think you got to get some great snipes with the traps yeah. on those. And that's exactly what Leary is going to try and do. And this is going to become so important. It's so tough with the champions coming through these choke points with the Hoof needs it behind because it's they're one attack oh. round away from dying. Oh, dude, I, I, it's nothing more tilting than watching Here we go again. Hit Bomber huh? Yeah, Watch, he microed it. Okay. No. Okay. That castle went down fast, Dave, yep. and champions almost in. But, you know, yep. that's going to be a lot of champions. There's 18 of them now. It'll probably rise to 30. And also, even more if Leary gets rid of his wasted units, like skirmishers and crossbows. Yep. As we see Leary now coming in with the Cavalier once again, he dodged those same Halberdiers before, and he's going to come into the farming eco again as he's trying to snipe the Hufnitsa. Valis has to keep pulling them back. Great attack round there <laughs> on the uh, two-handed swordsman, soon to be champion from Leary. And another great attack round, but Leary using his mobility on those Cavalier to take out some of the farmers. The good thing here for Valis is you don't need that many hand cannons mm -hmm. because champions are pretty slow and it takes them a long time to get into your help. So yep. if you get like, I, I feel like I'm lowballing it, but maybe even just 10 hand cannons, yeah, yeah. I think you can still take these I fights. think I think what Leary needs to do is just control the wood lines on the right now. You keep, keep throwing units into the meat grinder. Yeah. You have the gold yeah. access. I think with 56 on wood and Valis using wood as the primary gold source, just selling it at the market, Leary should consider controlling those wood lines as Valis snipes one of those traps and continues to run away with those Hufnitsa. Yeah, let's see. Let's see how many halbs actually go down here. There's 50 halbs. Obviously, not all of them are here. Leary's using uh, one of the weakest post-him skirms in the game <laughs> to try and take out the hand cannons because he knows how important it is. But the population's even, people. Look at, look at. The population is even here. Look at Le uh, Valis just sell wood for gold for the last like five minutes to try and get these hoof needs yeah. up here. And the trebs are all clumped up again. Oh no, Leary, please don't lose the trebs. They've been so valuable. All Valis needs is a little bit of an invitation for this gold. Oh, and if he can take gold for just a minute or two, suddenly yeah. he's got 30 hand cannons. Yeah, and I love the fact he's kept that treb alive. It can attack that castle from max range even longer away than the hoof needs it, And it's incredibly safe behind these halberdiers. Kipchak's now Kip being Jax, added from what? Leary. I mean, it's a, it's uh, it's a, a decent unit, unit against the Halbs, but I've seen too many Kipchak die to um, Hufnitsa yeah. over the last few months, and well, I am not a fan. I think in his mind, I need a ranged unit that's actually worth it. That's actually good, yeah. And, and he thought he could get by with the archer range units, but it hasn't worked out. Look at the, look at the castle stack from Leary. He's got three castles on that side. Yeah. He's adding two more castles behind, so... He just wants to kind of mine as much gold here. He's basically already given up this gold. <laughs> That's all so cool, man. Yeah. Also, and he's going to turn it. I think he's going to try and turn it into a wood game. 
Uh, maybe, but but he needs to raid the right as he loses the left because I don't think this is going to get any better. It's going to be possible for Valis to make more Hoofnitsa now. Yeah. Let's see, though. I mean, if he snipes those Bomber Cannons, suddenly champions could possibly hold. Actually, it won't be a wood game. We would get to the time limit, wouldn't we? Oh, that's true. That is what? One hour. And then we would judge by score. And right now, Leary is, is very far ahead in score. Maybe he just wants to keep getting a positive KD here with these Kipchaks. I Run wonder back I, and forth, get the kills. I feel like the score thing has not entered their minds yet, but it will. Mm -hmm. it, it will, because I don't think this game ends anytime soon. Oh, they're, those Kipchaks, I've seen this before. They are one attack ground away from that entire group just folding. You just don't want to have them as a Halloween costume, let's be honest. <laughs> I could pull it off. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm just waiting. <laughs> Like you said, one attack round, and okay. They have no They're HP. They're so fragile. Yeah, man. they are so frail. And the as good as champions are against Halbs, it's the perfect oh, God, number oh, of hand God, Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Okay. I, I, he has to pay so much attention to that yeah. right now. I mean, they're a fun unit to micro. They have very little attack delay. They're very fast, oh, right? Oh, oh, and he's coming oh. in now. He's going to try and snipe these. It'd be worth it. It would be worth it Valis if he needs can to repair. Valis needs to repair. Valis needs to repair. And Leary is doing work with these Kipchak. Wow. I, I mean, look I, at him. Look this at him is split awesome. around the Halbs. He splits around the Halbs so he can continue sniping them down. Only Leary would go in like that. He manages to lose quite a few of those. But Valis losing two Hufnitsa still. Valis has access to gold now. And he's got 12 so he on more. gold on yeah. that left-hand side. Honestly, Kipchak has impressed me here, Dave. It really has impressed me. The Halb number is way down. Kipchak champion could maybe do this. And look at the production from Leary. It's just a constant wave. Yep. As Valis is just constantly trying to attack around these Kipchak. And I feel like you got to go for the weird attack rounds that Leary would never predict. And then he just accidentally runs into. That's why I'm so good with Bomber Cannons, because oh. all, my, all my attempts are weird. It never works as I want. Oh! It's also very weird to cast this at the moment because it's not like there's there's not hand cannons there, but the hand cannons aren't yep. really doing enough. Yep. Valis taking out quite a few Kipchaks though. Leary now getting elite Kipchak and he's down to 13 at the moment with a few more in the queue. He does have plenty of castles as we mentioned and I think he's building up over on the right hand side. I wouldn't be surprised to see stables or something like that yep. in the corner he's, and there they are. He's really starting to think about things now. Yeah. The Kipchaks have done enough here, Dave, and his eco has been untouched. This He's had 30 more bills. For them. This is very dangerous territory for those units. Man, is he able to use the oh, speed of them. Oh, only Leary would feel confident in this situation. Yeah, they clump so much, right? You'd, yep. you'd expect that at least one time Valis would have killed 10 All it takes is one misclick and your entire army is gone. But Leary is coming in once again. Okay, and yeah, the attack rounds are not really finding their yep. spot. It is 50 army versus 50 army at the moment, but again, yeah. Valis really just can't expand. Valis is still selling wood. Let's. Uh, I, I want to take, well, we can't take our eyes off this as Leary comes in with those Kipchaks once again. I want to take a look at his wood lines in the south there, just a little bit south of this battle. I really, He's yeah, you're running not wrong. out, man. He is running and out. And the right side's being hit as well. Yeah. Honestly, the killer blow for Leary could be a Capdram or Siege Ram push on the right side. Yeah. Um, I, I love how he's not hesitating to just send the units in, but if you can start to take out the building... There's no wood collection over yeah, there. There's, there's no, wood. no wood collection. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see um, or to hear that Leary had identified that too. Yeah, he's just been... He's had basically 70% of the map. The problem is he's fighting with more awkward units, but... Here he comes again, oh, and that's what happens. there we go. That, I've been waiting for that for a while. That's what happens. Yeah. It only takes one or two. There we go. And what's oh their boy. elite HP? Is their elite HP like it's, 70 it's or 65? Like, it's like 65. Yeah, five base yeah. attack as well. What makes the unit good, though, is that it's very cheap. And it's very easy to make, and Leary finally constricts Valis enough. That was incredible. And Valis calls the GG. Yeah. What a game from Leary, and what a statement. I mean, and that shows the strengths of Valis, right? He played into his full wall, into his boom, and it shows the strength of Leary to just overcome that with military pressure. Going Cumans. And not making that second TC on what is traditionally a fast castle map. Yeah, I loved it. And he was a, a bit unlucky at times if you think about the sneak villagers finding that gold. So pretty well executed to lock down that map. Yep. Leary wins with Cumans. Leary shows everybody what many expected. And Leary, he will move on to this that was, quarterfinal. This was a different beast today than what we saw yesterday. Yeah. Like this is the Leary of old. And 
some of his unit control here. I mean, we thought, we, we questioned the practice Leary put in prior to this event. We get to this event, we talk to the pro players and they say, Leary's been practicing more than the others. So this is Looks what like I expected to see. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I really hope we see more of that map, by the way. I felt like that map was really entertaining. Oh, that was, yeah. Um, so uh, well done. And also, as Vallis, you know, loses that game, I have to say that second mm -hmm. game really showed what he's capable yeah. of. Yeah. Uh, first game, not so much, but man, did he turn that around. I mean, just the little things, right? Sneaking the villagers around uh, the wood line to get to that goal because he knew he needed it. You know, going even after he's run out of gold, just selling everything to get yeah, the hoop so needs. It's a 61 halberdiers, and uh, the amount of farms that he put down there in the mid game was insane. His macro is on another level. We're gonna be seeing a lot more of this player. Unfortunately, Ballas has been eliminated. Yeah, he's been eliminated, but man, did he play good. Yeah. He, he played so good. And also, I mean, I don't think he expected to play Leary in that position. You know, yeah. Tato sending Leary there. Yeah. Uh, that's gonna be something Ballas might have to say something about to Tato later on, but uh, Man, I'm excited to hear from Leary, especially yeah. uh, because I don't think we've heard from him in a in a real winner's interview yet. Uh, the first series he played was on the B stream, and then he lost that second series to Tata. So we'll get to hear his current and up-to-date thoughts on what he thinks about everything. Uh, yeah, it was certainly amazing. I mean, the first game, typical Leary. Second game, Vallis defense. Uh, we should have Riley and Leary here shortly with you folks. I'm sure Riley has a lot of questions and Leary has a lot of thoughts on his performance there. Well, thanks very much. Yes, here with Leary. Finally, Leary, we haven't had the chance to catch up yet, mate. Uh, after your loss to Tato yesterday, we, uh, we saw you on the B stream uh, beating Daniel. But finally, you're here and it's great to have you. Congratulations on the win, mate. Yeah, I could get used to this. <laughs> <laughs> you look very at ease, my friend. As one of the Red Bull Waterloo champions, a, a, a two-time champion, in fact, you're probably the, the player who has uh, enjoyed the most success at this tournament series. You must feel very at home playing Empire Wars, Heidelberg Castle amongst these, uh, you know, the, the, the game's great. So you're very familiar with this format and uh, now a result that sort of, you know, reflects what you've got to offer in, in Empire Wars. Yeah, you know, still a lot of new things. Uh, so much happened the last couple of months, years with Age of Empires, with the castle, with the whole scene. So there's always something new in, in the back, like in the game itself. Well, let's talk about some of the stuff that we've just seen uh, against Valas, who, who really turned the screws in, in, uh, in game number two. We'll get to that. But um, let's let's talk about game number one. Some early aggression from you with the Byzantines, a typically very defensive civilization, pushing um, uh, pushing Valas off gold with the, uh, with the archers and the skirms. What's your take on, we've, we've sort of characterized a lot of the gameplay we've seen as be, being very aggressive, players have been quite proactive. What's your take on, on Empire Wars as, as a format where you do want to be aggressive? Is that, is that what, would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, it has a lot of pros and cons. I like being aggressive and, uh, you know, we all saw what happened yesterday. I wasn't aggressive <laughs> and today I was, so, you know, it kind of worked out. Um, I don't believe it's always right to be aggressive. Mm -hmm. There are certainly scenarios where it's better to be defensive or have a more defensive sieve. But uh, generally speaking, there are pros and cons, but I prefer to be the aggressor, obviously. Well, that's, you know, in contrast to game number one, game number two, obviously very long, uh, a post-imp affair. There's a lot going on on that battlefield. Um, uh, there was a sense that Valas sort of seized the initiative in the castle age, uh, maybe wasn't patient enough in trying to uh, get to where he needed to be to win that. When did you feel you were up against it in the castle age? And if you did, what was what was the just decision you made to turn it around? Uh, honestly, I made like a hundred decisions during the game. I had no clue what I was doing. No, like... well, I need you to pick one. Okay, okay one decision. Or, or how much time we got? We're going to do all a hundred. Okay, all a hundred. Number one, go. Okay, number one. Uh, I didn't know if knights were correct. I didn't know if crossbows were correct. You know, the siege push was <laughs> spontaneously. So you know, uh, tried to take control of both gold sides, and you know, it worked out somehow. Pushing the trebs across the lake was certainly yeah. a lot of a lot of yeah, fun to watch. First time I saw that as well. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Um, well, let's talk about the you know late post-imperial long games. There, what are some of your keys to success, particularly as the gold starts to dry up? When you're thinking about uh, you know trash wars, that sort of stuff. What are your priorities um, as we head into that really really late stage of the game? It depends. As always, it depends. Uh, obviously, on this map, it's important to focus on the golds because there's endless amount of gold, and Bohemians thrive of gold. And you know, humans, I don't like them in post imp <laughs> for various reasons, for reasons you actually saw. And uh, so I tried to finish the game early, so I tried to get a lead before that, and it worked out somehow. 
I want to talk to you about your pick uh, for Cummins. We didn't see you drop the second TC. We didn't really see you take advantage of their sieve bonuses uh, to the full extent. Uh, was this, you know, it, it sort of felt like you weren't making the most of the of the pick with the Cummins. Do you have anything to say about that? Yeah, I had no clue what I was doing, and I knew Vilas was had no clue what, he, what I was doing as well, so he couldn't counter it. So it just became a messy game, and that's what was my way of thinking. Actually, the game, a little bit so, of yeah. a, a little bit of that NBL energy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. You think I had yeah. I have this strategy from NBL? Yeah, like yeah. just improvise. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, makes sense. It's worked really well for you so far, Leary. We've already mentioned one of the most decorated players in Empire Wars. You've locked up your spot in the quarterfinals. You've got to be feeling good about yourself right now. Yeah, I mean, you know, after such a game, <laughs> the mixed feelings, obviously, but I'm happy to be in the quarterfinals. Um, you know, rough start, but uh, I'm getting there slowly. Well, my friends, I've got one last question to ask Leary. It is his favourite question to be asked in, in, in an interview. He cannot wait. He said, Riley, make sure you ask him this question. Leary, how do you feel? Amazing. All right, well, there we go. Now, a textbook interview with Leary. Congratulations, mate. Looking forward to seeing you in the quarters. We're going to jump over here now and have a chat with Nilly, who, uh, like me, was glued to the screen for that incredible series 2 and 0 to Leary. But uh, Vallis, holy moly, did he put up a fight, particularly in that incredibly entertaining game with the Bohemians. Nilly, talk us through, uh, first of all, you know, just a bigger picture view of what we've just seen, and then I'm sure we're going to have, get to some of the, the, uh, the highlights for you as well. Yeah, obviously, bigger picture was like Vallas' incredible defense against Cito earlier today. And we know Leary, typically an aggressive player, similar mm -hmm. maybe to Cito, and therefore we wanted to see how Vallas could defend. And he defended really well in game two. He did indeed, and uh, I, I want to give credit to this bloke. Of course, we have to, we have said goodbye to uh, a fair few people today, and that's just the nature of the business. It's a cutthroat game when uh, when it comes down to it. But uh, I think Vallas, uh, like I've said about other players, can walk away feeling pretty good about the performance he put on. I mean, I think standing up to Leary, picking up some wins against other players, where uh, you know against a toe, where. The scales, were, the, balance, uh, the scales were quite evenly balanced there. Mm -hmm. I think he's done really well for himself. Absolutely. Top 12 in the world. Like, biggest Age of Empires tournament ever. Like, he has to be proud. Like, and this one, game two, maybe one, two different steps, and he could have taken that one as well, then pushed Leary to game three. Mm -hmm. Would have been another big success. Like, crazy good performance by Balas. Yeah. Standing up amongst the, be uh, the best and really acquitting himself well. Well, if we've got some highlights to look at, Leary, uh, uh, Nilly, we'll chuck him up on the screen and, uh, and, and, and walk through some of the biggest moments uh, yeah. from so starting I have to game quickly jump into here. this one. So basically, this is the moment where the game is already over. We have 4 minutes 30 seconds into this game. Military count is 8 to 3, and I had no idea why. Because KD was relatively even going into this fight before. It was 5 to 4, and suddenly, well, Leary is getting pushed back, but he already is sneaking around with archers uh, pretty soon here, and I wanted to figure out why. So actually, I forwarded, like, or I went back, and found out that Larry added his archery range around the 2 minute 10 second mark. Villager is now being sent. On the other side, Vallas wasn't able to do that. He actually was floating 400 wood at one point, and only a bit later we see that he added that second archery range. Now, as you can see, now he's rushing it, still 200 wood in the bank, and that's why Larry got so out of control in his archer count. And like it's so weird that that one little moment, mm. floating 200 wood, delaying the archer range for a minute, actually cost him the game. The game was over here, as I said, 4 minutes 30. It felt like, yeah, the game was going on for a bit more, but gold control forced into lots of skirm war, and Leary took it from there. Crazy how smallest mistakes are punished here. It's interesting to see that in the early stages of any game, whether it's mm -hmm. Empire Wars, whether it's Random Map, just tiny decisions, tiny edges can have a yeah. huge snowball effect in this game. Game. Yeah, absolutely. And oh, I see we're already jumping into game two. Not a lot of stuff happened before all those aggression here. Nice defense by Vallas. And he's holding quite nicely. Going into the mid game, as we can see ahead here in villagers, and fought all that off pretty nicely for sure. Then again, what? Oh, those crossbows, they were annoying quite a bit. Mangonel struggling a bit as well. Maybe one, two monks could have made life a bit easier there for Vallas with the defense and had to give up that TC, had to build the more defensive castle. Obviously, losing that gold and stone those crossbows just so so annoying as you can see finding quite some villager kills here but at this point Vallis is still sitting on four tcs before this one goes down he's mm -hmm. made a good he's made a good amount of progress into the gold at the top and even though there's this sort of pincer like attack from leary i don't think he made as much out of this as uh, as he was perhaps hoping to particularly as, as the conflict shifted now up into uh, contesting this area which obviously leary won but i think this was the point where Vallis kind of lost the lead yeah, well, it, it is still a relatively stable game, I feel, right? He got the sneaky town center, which he 
maybe should have never gotten, right? Mm. Liri with interesting army choices here for sure, getting pushed away. Monk now finally coming in for the conversion here. Castle is up, and Valas, he knows. If he gets to with Nietzsche and Harbard is, mm. he has a really good chance to beat Cumans, even if Liri is playing them. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting to see the way the Bohemians are, uh, are leveraged early gunpowder, or sorry, early chemistry mm -hmm. uh, in the Castle Age, allowing them to uh, churn out gunpowder units much faster than many other sieves. Uh, but here we see the sea tower being taken down. I know, I know and the sea damaging his own knights with the mangonalty as well. And you see the monks are going down. That was actually a really good spot for Ballas. He bought himself lots of time. And I felt after Liri lost this attack, or at least lost a lot of units, mm. that Ballas would be winning. Well, that's what I was uh, uh, alluding to earlier. You can see a very different affair now with all these castles being put up in some real, uh, the, the, this area under very, very stiff competition. But. Uh, I think it was in this zone that, as I mentioned before, Valis kind of started to fall behind a bit. It felt a bit like it, right? Traps are going down here, and we have four traps. It felt a bit like Valas was fighting for this area a bit too much. And it feels so weird to say it, because it is the most important area at this moment. Mm. But I felt going back, giving it up, getting to six of Nietzsche, mm. and try to play an all-in from there, trying to reclaim the gold could have been an option here. Lots of gold invested into those traps. Bombard cannons couldn't really be defended. It, it feels so unnatural to give this area up and try to reclaim it, but I think it could have been the right spot because Liri, a bit faster imp and massive trap production. Yeah, and we saw how devastating those Hoof Nietzsche were when the fight moved down to this area here. Once they finally rolled in, you can see them over there next to Nilly. These units are just devastating. Yeah, like massive splash damage, and you see how good Harbardiers are at protecting those as well, trying to reclaim the right-hand side. Not really an option, simply because, well, you are not really mobile. Trap there to help it out, but with shifting the attention from the top to the left, well, Leary had enough time to take into champions, a good counter there to the Halberdiers. Then also, as we mentioned, Bohemian army really immobile. So raids at the side made it really easy for Leary to punish Valas there. Now even splitting the Kipchaks, we see some good shots against them. Really enjoying that. As you can see there, left hand side, bam, big connections, but not enough. Valas couldn't deal with all around the map, Leary. And we saw Leary's un uncontested mastery of Micro yeah. here with these yeah. Kipchaks. He's making them dance along mm -hmm. like you wouldn't believe, right? Mm -hmm. Like just dancing to his fiddle and, and ultimately winning the game because at this point, Valis had just kind of been outmaneuvered. Yeah. And yeah, beautiful, beautiful game there. Mm -hmm. It just felt like ah, walling off is obviously not really an option on this map, right? Then Cumans can always run in with some sea trams, can mm -hmm. push with champions, hussars. It's tough to have a good army there against Bohemians. They really want to have the one-dimensional push. And Leary, just a bit tiny, a uh, slight imp advantage. I'd have won him the game. And yes, indeed, and it's good. It's great. I mean, it's great to see Leary in the quarters. Nelly, we're looking forward to seeing what he can pull out, of course, as we head towards the, uh, the top end of town here. But once again, one final congratulations to Valis because uh, he's done very well for himself, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Certainly increased in his market value after this tournament. Yes, just a little bit. Nelly, thanks so much. We're going to, uh, to move on now. We've got our next match coming up very shortly. But there's something I wanted to chat to you about because one of my great passions in life, of course, is history and being able to compare that, or sorry, uh, combine that with coming and talking about video games. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that for me. And, and I was reminded while we were watching that game of the Bohemians, right? The Bohemian civilization based on uh, uh, the civilization that was uh, roughly came to its apex uh, in, the four, in, the, in the early 15th century under the leadership of Jan Zizka. And you may have played the campaign around this bloke. I want to tell you about him because he's absolutely incredible. And it will help you understand why the Bohemians have the play style they do and the technologies that, that, that they do. Zizka was essentially a bloke and born into the mind and ability who led a, a for want of a better term, a, a peasant uprising. He fought a religious war, the Hussite Wars, as a, a proto-Protestant uh, movement that followed Jan Hus after he had been executed, uh, burned at the stake as a heretic. Throughout Bohemia, or the modern-day Czech Republic, Slovakia, people rose up against the Catholic Church and a crusade was called. The Holy Roman Empire, the Kingdom of Hungary, moved in to take the fight to these, uh, these uh, perceived heretics in, in Bohemia. And Jan Hus rose to, Hus, he rose, oh, sorry, Jan Zizka, he rose to the occasion. He rallied a peasant army and armed them with a marvel of the age, something that would propel Europe into the early modern period gunpowder. And that's why the Bohemians have chemistry one age earlier, because it represents, at least in Europe, obviously gunpowder been around for a long time in China and East Asia already, but in Europe it was the Bohemians that were one of the first adopters of this incredible uh, technology. 
And we see that, that is reflected today, even in, in English, the language I'm speaking right now. The word howitzer, right? These massive guns that were made famous during the world wars in the 20th century. Uh, howitzer comes from this old Bohemian Czech word, hufnice. Pistol comes from a Czech word, pistala. And these weapons were wielded by, to, to great effect by untrained, inexperienced peasants on the battlefield of the Hussite Wars. Hidden behind farm wagons that had been turned into mobile tanks, these peasants shot the horses from under heavily armoured. The, the heavily armoured knights, the premium military technology, the dominant military force of the medieval era cut to pieces as they marched over muddy fields towards these Hussite war wagons. They were cut down and the knights who were lucky enough to survive being shot at then had to trudge through the mud in full plate armour only to be torn down by the Bohemian cavalry that was waiting within these war wagons. And what for me is fascinating is to see the way that the gameplay of Age of Empires, games like Age of Empires, invokes these historical concepts, these historical technologies, these historical units. It's really just a beautiful marriage of gameplay and flavour when we look at things like the Hufnitsche in Age of Empires 2, when we look at things like the War Wagon and, of course, the early access to chemistry. And I think, you know, even as fans of this game, it's a great opportunity to, for us to step back and learn a little bit about where we've come from with the, the, the vast scope of human history and look at Age of Empires, of course, as a learning tool. And the reason I'm saying that is because I still remember being 12 years old and convincing mum that no, 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 this is educational, as I triple walled with the Byzantines and, you know, had a great time building bombard cannons. Anyway, that's that, my friends. We're going to uh, chuck it over now to MBL. We, we caught up with MBL earlier on. We've got an interview lined up with him, get his thoughts and perspectives on the event, because we're going to be seeing him play in the feature match area before very much longer. So stick around. We're going to check in with MBL. On the other side of that, more Age of Empires 2 coming your way. Hello, I'm MBL and I'm from uh, Norway. My qualifier was uh, pretty good, went pretty smooth. I don't think I lost a single game. Qualified the first weekend and I prepared for it, so everything went perfect. After I qualified, I kind of got a little bit burned out. I had been playing a lot, so I, I took a good break. Uh, I was full-time working. After that, I started thinking that, yeah, I can prepare a little bit, did some games on the ladder. Yeah, it hasn't been a lot to say like that, but I'll try my best. First, I was in the group at B, which is a little bit hard because it's against my teammates who are quite strong and also they know my style pretty well and everything. And then I got moved to group A because of some complications, so now it's looking a bit better for me, I have to say. I don't really fear uh, opponents that much. The only players I do bad against is Leary and Viper for the most part and Hera. But yeah, I, I'll take any challenge as they come and I'll just play my style and see what happens. I feel more confident against players that aren't insanely fast uh, so that uh, I can kind of get to their level a bit. Everyone's really good and I don't really have that many thoughts about the, those kind of things, but we'll see anyway. I just play my style and I don't really think about it. That is his style, isn't it? And it works so yeah. well. <laughs> it worked yeah. for Leary. He said himself that he kind of played like MBL there, just kind of mm -hmm. played, didn't think too much, and got that win. <laughs> Only Leary would come into an interview. <laughs> that was the strategy, though. I mean, you do, you do a strat that you don't even know where it's going to go, and your opponent definitely doesn't know where it's going to go, and you just do what <laughs> feels right, and you rely on your experience, you rely on your skill, which is exactly yeah. what Leary displayed there, and I think we're going to see a lot of that from MBL as well. Now, he's matching up against Kapoch coming up, and these are two of the greatest survivors, I would say, in, especially in the late game Age of Empires in our game. The determination from both of these players is something that stands out. And MBL's style, well, getting there is a little bit different from Capwatch's. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they both tend to, there's nothing really flashy about the early game, but they mm. both tend to thrive with a messy mid games. And there was one game and one series, which I'm sure we're gonna spend the next five to 10 minutes talking about, that really comes to mind. And I would think it was Red Bull 3, when Capwatch had just returned, ended up qualifying to get into Red Bull, and they faced each other. 
and it was one of the sets of Red Bull Wololo history. I think it might have actually been Red Bull too. I think we might maybe, even go maybe. farther back than that. I yeah, mean, yeah. maybe we could get a fact check on that. I'm sure they'll have the historic matchup, sure. but that was one of the greatest games, especially on Atacama. We talked about it earlier um, yesterday where MBL was way behind and then Capwatch was way behind and then MBL was way behind and <laughs> Capwatch ended up taking it. And that was kind of like his comeback game, right? Like that was a statement, like I'm here. And I know yep. MBL was uh, super disappointed with himself about that. He wants to avenge himself. He does. For that today. And uh, I think he has a good chance to do it because I think right now his execution is pretty good. Um, the strategy, like we were talking about before, he more relies on his instincts. So maybe that element and the training element isn't as much needed with him as it is For with sure. more players. So as long as his execution is good, um, we are expecting to see huge things from him. Definitely. Well, we're going to hear from Kapoch. We just heard from MBL. Kapoch flew a long way to get here, and he's been playing Amazing Age of Empires. Let's see what he has to say. My name is Patricio Del Olmo. My gamer tag is Capoch, and I'm from Argentina. My qualifier was uh, kind of weird because I didn't expect to qualify right away at the first qualifier. But after some stuff that happened during the bracket, uh, Jordan losing against Ganji, I felt quite good and I, I could qualify. I started training one month before the qualifier for AOE2 and I started playing and thinking about like first qualifier was more of a tra training and I was expecting to qualify on the second qualifier but I was lucky enough to, to get it on the first qualifier. I, I, I feel like my group is uh, kind of hard but it's, uh, it's possible if I play uh, correct and well I, I think I can advance a bit further. I'm actually afraid of playing against uh, several opponents. Luckily, they are not in my bracket, but there are a lot of great players anyway, so and anyone can, can be really hard. I would actually love to play against Doubt, but I am not sure if that's going to happen. Probably just because I, I like playing against him. Uh, we got very different play styles, and he's an old friend, so I would love to play him again. Well, you heard it there. He loves to play against out. We have the draft ready with both of our players here. MBL, always uh, always good for some surprising picks, I believe, <laughs> uh, in the drafts. We've seen it here in these Red Bull events before. We've seen it in other tournaments. And there he is on the right, Capoch on the left. And we're about to get stuck in here as Capoch has the first ban there. And I believe that is Outcrop is a map that MBL would thrive on, is a map that he has thrived on. And what do we see here as a ban? Kawasan, you know, these guys have done their homework. If I would have said home map picks, mm -hmm. I would have probably guessed those maps right there. Yeah, and MBL, I mean, I spoke to him before the sets, um, and basically he just asked for a pep talk. <laughs> like he didn't, he didn't come up. He never comes up to me and says, "What do you think I should do?" Because sure, that, the MBL would never say that to a cast. Nor would I. He's like, "Dave, give me a pep talk." <laughs> he just wanted energy, and I think that's a good strategy for him. He just wants confidence. He knows if he has confidence in himself, he can carry that forward into the game. And we see the second ban there for Atacama. That was the piece of advice that gave. Him, yeah, I and said. actually, you know, as ban good that. as that ban was with Kawasan, I'm very surprised that. When Kapoch had the opportunity, he didn't pick Atacama. Mm -hmm. He actually had picked Frigid Lake. I think that was unexpected for MBL. Yeah, maybe maybe Kapoch thinking that MBL would let At Atacama go to the end. I don't know why, but mm -hmm. maybe MBL wanted, thinking MBL wanted something to prove there as Enclosed is now banned from Kapoch as well. I've seen MBL play Enclosed so many times on the Empire Wars ladder. He's very good. Yeah, and very good. I, I think Kapoch wants to avoid anything that MBL has significant experience with, and MBL wants to avoid the ones he's inexperienced at, and Bull is probably one of those maps. This is, 
This is interesting though, Dave, sorry. Uh, we're gonna have a water map or some map with water if Northern my Isles. brain is working properly. Northern yeah, Isles, right? Shoals was the final ban. The only remaining map is Northern Isles. So that'll be our game is one. MBL just gonna land on Northern Isles? I could see that happening. I could see it. I mean, we gotta see the sieves yeah. first, obviously, but uh, he's probably not quite as experienced on water as Catwatch is. Man, our villager is just really good at waiting for orders. Yeah. My villagers are <laughs> just, not, man. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. I haven't been clicked yet. <laughs> <laughs> Someone needs to hit the idle villager hotkey. Oh, man. And now he seems confused. See, that's see, that's the type of villager that I know. Yep. Those are the ones working for my and MBL, MBL looks, looks confused. confused. <laughs> <laughs> I think I hope he wasn't surprised with the order. Mm. He might have just said, hey, who picks first here? How does that work exactly? And that is obviously something you should know. So I assume maybe he's got that one. But Dave, let's talk about this. Obviously, the loser goes home here, right? Two massive names. Yeah. Kapoch to stay alive earlier today, he played up against Dow and beat him. It was an awesome performance from him. It was on our B stream. He won 2-1 there. I got to see the big embrace between two players who are so fond of each other at the end of it. And MBL, he beat Jordan mm -hmm. yesterday and then uh, did lose to the Viper, which you know you might expect with how good Viper is in these settings. Lithuanian's banned. I like that. Lithuanians are good, I think, on every single map in Empire Wars. I agree. We've seen enough instances of them being good on this in this setting and frigid lake i think they could be quite good arabia they could be good northern isles i could see potential for them so i like that ban from uh from mbl and capwatch banning the mayans yep as the mayans not the uh, uh bengalis excuse me <laughs> as we see the hindustanis so um they're gonna ban away here obviously go towards the picks a lot of these should be unexpected uh, no one wants to be the one to ban Aztecs, but they know they have to ban Aztecs, so MBL mm -hmm. just sucks it up and bans Aztecs. You don't want that one in there. Okay, MBL now banning uh, Magyars as well, which is another great, like, it feels like he's not putting a super amount of thought into the strategies. He's just saying, like, these are really good civs. Yeah. I don't want to play against them. I'm just going to ban them. Yeah. No, and I, that, I think that, perfect. you know what, I think it... it plays into his strengths as well. I think MBL has done a lot of soul searching over the last couple of years and has come to the realization that like, he's he's just not that type of guy to be going into circumstances with like set strategies and stuff. He relies on himself. He reached this point. Now I think that will change going into the series as we see the final ban in Cumans. He reached this, I just don't give a crap mode. You and know, like, he's better I just when he's not, like that. Yeah. He's better as a player when he's like that. It's not fun to play up against no. a player like that. And every player, except maybe Viper, who has tons of experience against NBL, doesn't want to play against no. NBL. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cumans ban now from uh, Capuch and Byzantine's ban from NBL as well. And that Byzantine pick is good on Arabian Northern Isles and Frigid Lake as well. All right, so NBL will get two picks now. I believe he said one, and he goes Italians. Okay. And he goes for the Berbers. Okay. Uh, that that Berber pick feels a little early for me. A lot of people have been picking Berbers in like third or fourth. It picks, seems like so. a Frigid Lake kind of pick to counter maybe Tataris yeah, as well. I actually, and I, think you're spot I mean, on. look at look at what he did with the Genitors. It's true. I mean, how can you not <laughs> like, love the Berbers? If the after Tataris are going into Cav Archers, yeah. maybe we'll see the Genitors again for the second time this Actually, tournament. Actually, Berbers is looking even that much brighter now because Tataris and Franks could struggle against yep, that Civ. Exactly. I, I, I like the Civ for Emil. I'm not sure about Italians. I mean, we see that on Northern Isles. We don't usually think of him as a water player, though. Yeah. I mean, he can do it. It's just a preference thing in most cases. So we have Kamur which is normally top three on Frigid Lake. Uh -huh. We've got Tatars and Franks, which I also- Chinese, that's the end. first time we've seen Chinese. That's gotta be Frigid Lake pick. I think that's Frigid Lake pick because remember they have zero food at yeah, the start. Yeah, yeah, but you, you have the food from the fish immediately exactly. nearby and then Dravidians as well. MBL with a very unorthodox style of Civ draft. I, I don't mind it. I just want to see where he's going. I, yeah, I mean, there will be a lot to talk about for us. Let's mm -hmm. put it that way. That is officially, I think, the first time Chinese have been picked. They do have three additional villagers, but that zero food has made them a no-go for strategies like scouts and made them far too predictable at times. Yeah, and Capwatch is working on his final Civ pick. And is that the... That's the Bengalis. That is the Bengalis right there we see. Okay. 
Okay, so that is another time we've seen that Bengali civilization pop up. There's the beautiful trophy we have here, and here's the not-so-beautiful casters. But we are back, and I'm just speaking about myself, by the way. I know you are. Uh, okay, all right. Players are about to be heading into uh, the Grand Hall soon, the main stage. NBL and Catwatch making their way from the draft. Interesting drafts for both of them. I like it. Uh, NBL, what, don't look at... He's looking at me. I don't talk to I don't I don't talk to yeah, people I know. as they walk by I, anymore. But he looked at he he smiled did at he me. Did he give you a little wink? Yeah, he did, I think. He's full of confidence. He is full of confidence here and I love to see it. He is, but but let's 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 bring this up a little bit. So obviously when MBL got beat by Catwatch, he was on the opposite mm -hmm. end of what was considered a big upset. And he was on the opposite end of just massive waves of celebration yep. from Argentinians, and some of which I believe went a little too far towards him yeah. and that affected him a little bit. You know, he got a little frustrated. He had already lost and then he got a little frustrated. And so for MBL, you know, he has something to prove here. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of passionate people out there. And I heard him say to Catwatch back there, he said, you are, this is your home map. Yeah. Like this is your, you are at home. He's, a, he's like, I don't think I have that many people rooting for me mm -hmm. as Catwatch. And I can already see with like the chat and whatnot, people are going crazy for Catwatch. So like for MBL, he might actually feel more nerves here than compared to a set against Doubt, had Doubt beat Catwatch. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, I, I think you make a good argument too. Catwatch as well is a tough customer. Like Catwatch, I, I talked to Valesa after um, his matches against Catwatch, and he told me he's like, never stop playing. He's like, I've made that mistake before. <laughs> never stop playing against that guy. Even if you think you've won, just don't. Just yeah. keep piling on the pressure. We saw him do it so um, amazingly well in his set. And Capoch is a guy that you cannot take lightly. We were talking about his comeback to the game and he is just a grinder. He is a guy that has gotten incredibly skilled. He's got a great tactical mind and the determination, the fighting spirit is off the charts with this Argentine and he's got a lot of fans like you were mentioning to back him up. Yeah, and, and of course, uh, you know, as we're gonna have the players walk in here in a second, he has already probably surpassed possible expectations because he put time into a week four as well which you're also going to see this week yeah. this guy's here all week there's no broke breaks for him obviously he's got a few moments here or there is he coming from the dungeon now he's coming from the dungeon <laughs> oh <no. laughs> uh, man well he will make his way out of that yeah. dungeon and into the player room and here he is and he gives that camera a quick little stare a little, little smirk. smile yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and there he goes over to his computer red bull ready and not too far away now from him loading up that lobby. Let's, I can't wait for MBL's look here. What's he going to do? Is he going to be super serious? Or are we going to see a little smirk no, he's gonna, and a he's smile gonna from him? He's going to skip down the steps and then smirk at the camera I, and then go to the PC. Well, we, I thought of Jordan when you said that, but yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Jordan had a little pep in his step earlier. And MBL. here comes MBL. We've been notified that he's on the way through the tunnels, through the labyrinths of the castle. There he is. Look at that swagger, oh, dude. That's that's some swagger. swagger. Seven out of 10 for yeah. swagger. Let's go. All right. He's going to head in here. Unorthodox Civ draft a little bit, like we said. He avoided Atacama, that famous map that he had against Catfush, kind of skipping down the steps, little smirk, little wink maybe, and then onto the desk. It's gamer time, yep. man, it's gamer time. This is gonna be an amazing series. Reminder that the winner of this will move on to a quarterfinal tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I actually forget the the minimum jump because I know that at this point, I believe the loser of this will receive $6,000. But think about this, you're gonna have thousands of dollars more if you win two games here. Yep. And then the potential to go on for the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be, I mean, if, if you lose here, you miss out on the semis or the uh, quarterfinals of the, uh, like the biggest Age of Empires 2 tournament of all time. Yep. And biggest of, of their careers, regardless yep. of how successful their careers would have been up to this point. So most certainly. So it's like you, you got to give it your all. You got to go all in here. Any strategies you were hiding or maybe thinking about if you're Catwatch or NBL, any energy that you can scrape together to put into this match, you need to do that right now. Yeah. And especially because they they've known about this matchup for I want to say about two hours now and they both they've all just been sitting around waiting mm -hmm. and they're trying to watch these games they're trying to get as excited as we are but you know it's just been going through their mind what yeah. maps what civilizations it's been a big build up 
and we are close. We're very close to a series that I'm happy is like right here in the middle. We're, we're a little tired. We're going to carry through, but like this is going to give us all the yep. energy we need. And here we are with the uh, the player stats brought to you by all the other players and casters in the building as we have MBL with his micro score pretty high. Now, not really known for like crossbow micro or whatever. He can do it with the best of them, but the mangonels, the monks, just... The pikemen, the skirmishers. Yeah, if there's 15 different types of unit on one screen, MBL will somehow manage to get full value out of all of those. Capwatch, a little bit lower there, but I think, and I've been saying it uh, since we've been here, I think we need another stat there for Capuch, and I think it needs to be grit and determination and mm. fighting spirit all yep. mixed into one, maybe just like fight. <laughs> and then he's, like, <laughs> fight. he's like 10 out of 10 or like 11 out of 10, like he surpassed the limitations, because yeah. when that guy gets locked in, he is a force of nature. And honestly, on that note, I, b I think there should be a category for MBL, chaos. Oh, hey, yeah. He'd be 10 out of 10 on chaos, right? Yeah. It's crazy, you know, the games he played against Jordan, particularly the, the outcrop one, mm -hmm. he did such an amazing job of, of controlling the map with random units. And like some of, some of the things on paper might not have made sense. We yeah. saw a siege workshop that was on fire making ramps, all these things, but he just, whatever order of events that you have in your brain on how yep. a game should play out, he never brings you those situations. No, he subverts it. Yeah. He brings you something different and like, he is the one player where if he plays a set, best of three, best of five, whatever it is, at least one moment in that set, you're going to be saying, how is this working? Yeah. <laughs> and then well, you're like, oh, my God. No, it's either, it's either how is this working or how did he think this would work? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. there's two sides to the coin there for sure. But, you know, and that that's their amazing thing about MPL. Mm -hmm. And remember last year he had... I don't want to say the best set because the final was extraordinary. I think it might be the greatest comeback in Age but of Empires. But it is it, I've probably seen. the greatest yeah. comeback in Age of Empires 2 ever. And so he went from those those awkward things that just mm -hmm. to just like, okay, well, that's why that's not meta. And then all of a sudden, three games in a row versus yeah. Hera. Now, I believe the winner of this plays, I think there's a 50% chance they would play Hera in the quarterfinals tomorrow. I think uh, you're asking questions that I don't yeah, know the answer to Yeah, but to I yet. think it's because this is this group's winner here would yeah. go on to face the other group's winners. They're in separate groups. So oh, because MBL got shifted into the other group. Correct. Ah, yeah, because, yeah. you know, so... Okay. So, yeah, again, uh, forgive me. It's probably just making things more confusing by saying things I'm not sure on, but I think that's something you've got to keep in mind. Uh, I did hear Harris say something along the lines back there when he's sitting next to MBL. He's like, I'm rooting for you. He's like, for you, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Harris, uh, knowing Harris, though, he'd probably want some revenge for that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's like, that. he is such a competitor that Harris would definitely want to answer that. And I think... yeah. Even though MBL said he was nervous to face Kapoch, I think deep down inside, he probably wants some, you know, revenge for that uh, that series. We're not saying that they're, you know, they hate each other, that all the players here get along, but sure. definitely that competitive edge starts to sneak its way in as soon as they're in the game, right? And Kapoch, probably on the another, another token, he wants to prove that he can do it again. Yeah, against exactly. MBL. And he's already proven so much. He's one of the oldest competitors here, and he, maybe wasn't someone you would have predicted to be in the top 16 if we would have made predictions three months ago. Yeah. And and then at the same token, and you tell us on he's, one game, he's on another one. He's on another game too, yeah. yeah. He's insane. on another level, this guy. I mean, he's a true gamer. Yeah, look at that MBL. I don't know if this is like the thinking, the focus mode MBL, mm -hmm. but he's certainly getting himself ready. He's in the process of deleting all thoughts from his mind, probably. <laughs> he's, it's Maybe. at 60% right No, now. he's at a system wipe right yeah, now. Yeah, it's yeah, it's at 60%. Exactly. It'll get there. Exactly, because he knows that's that's where he could be most efficient. But let, I want to bring something else up here, and I think we, we touched on it more so when MBL was up against Jordan. But remember, afterwards, uh, prior to that, I said, how do you think you're going to do? He just kept saying, uh, I'm, I'm probably going to lose. Next time I asked him, after the win, how are you going to do next series? Oh, I'm going to lose. And you and I said, he doesn't want to put expectations on himself mm -hmm. because that's where the nerves come in. But here's the thing, 78% win rate against Capwatch over the last 35 games. He has the more successful Age of Empires 2 career. Mm -hmm. The expectations are there now. The expectations have to be there because he is the favorite in this series. Oh boy, we saw them loading into the lobby there. They're just getting ready to go. Our admins are, are working on the details behind the scenes and uh, we can't wait until we get into this match here. Remember, this is a best of three. 
to determine which one of these players will go home. So this is going to be very tense. The trip back to the hotel this evening is going to oh, be, man. oh, man, you're going to be walking on <laughs> eggshells. I know Delt was already eliminated. We all felt bad for him. Daniel was eliminated. We felt terrible for him. Kingston was eliminated. I mean, Vallis is eliminated. We just... There's so many emotions right now as players are celebrating after their victories and then just kind of commiserating with yeah. the others after their defeats, right? It is, you know, as as casters who typically cast online, it is a bit different. You know, you, you cast some players online, they lose. Mm -hmm. Oh, I feel bad for them. But you don't have them walk right next to you yeah. two minutes later, yeah. right? But everyone's been very respectful. There's been no rubbing it in. Everyone understands that there's a very good chance that they could be the ones that join the losers. So there's that lobby. And I'm sure MBL's coordinating there with his uh, with the admin. Shout out to Grazini, by the way. Yeah, Grazini has been behind the scenes. He said he very firmly that he did not wish to be on camera. That's <laughs> a, he, he said he said that's not the job I signed up for. He was very uncomfortable last year. That's funny. Maybe we'll bring him out again. Maybe, he, maybe we'll get a Grazini cam. You down know, there. it's it's funny because he is also very well dressed. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. Also, shout out to our observer who has done a fantastic job. You know, Mapu is good when, like, um, I think it was a, a newcomer here uh, saying, "Who is the observer?" And Tato turns around. And he's like, uh, "It's Mapu." And they said, uh, "Is he an Age of Empires player?" It's like, "No, not really." <laughs> is he good? And Tato's like, "Yeah, he's really good. Yeah, like yeah. really, really good." Also, I probably made this joke last year, mm -hmm. but he looks at the map, Mapu. That's like, did he? Which came name the? Observing or the name? I, I just clapu for Cla mapu. Mm. Yeah. Uh, well, could Here you we turn go. it into a rapu? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Come on, I had like five more stacked up. All right, all right, that's fine. You um, deserve a slapu. <laughs> <laughs> You'd make me tapu. Joke, <laughs> jokes like this, about to go for a nap. Okay. <laughs> Crap, I wasn't ready. You mean uh, crap, I wasn't ah! ready. <laughs> uh, keep, keep us off camera for the time being, all right? I'm yeah. getting a little hot over here with all the laughter, but, you know, we're going to focus. And we're ready, everybody. We're all ready. We're not even finished after this one, man. We no, we're not. No, up. we're not. Oh, boy. All right. MBL Capodge getting locked in here, and that's a guy we know can get locked in. When the game phase comes out, things start to get dangerous for his enemies. When this guy is locked in, it is crazy what he can accomplish. I I imagine Capodge is not the type of individual to play any game that is casual. However, oh no. It is I am curious. Does he make that face in the What casual like in games? the Sims? Like imagine him playing solitaire. <laughs> <laughs> just staring at the computer, just like spam clicking. Like, I just, I need to know, you know? <laughs> His computer's like calling 911. <laughs> I'm in danger. Oh, man. Yeah. I mean, well, we're going to see that game face pretty soon. And he embraces that. And, ooh, Bengalis, which was a pick, is going to be the first civilization for Capwatch. I'm excited to see Bengali's yet what, again. What We've the, seen mixed results. The opening map. I think he had Kawasan. Northern Isles is the opening it map. Is. That's right. And we're into the action right away. Northern Isles here. We've got Bengali's for Capwatch. That was a... This is a mirror uh, matchup from what we saw Hera versus Yo. Yeah, Hera going is. Bengali's and winning and Yo going Italians and not quite having enough to fight up against that. Now, Bengali's are fantastic on the water battle because their fire ships always win the 1v1 with that um, health regen. And if you can save them like Hera did, you can build up quite a force. Yeah, so um, it says this is the first time we see Bengali's being played in Red Bull Wolo Legacy, which I believe is not correct because we saw that <laughs> <laughs> from <laughs> yesterday. Right. But we're just keeping yeah. you guys on your toes yep. out there, all yep. right? So you got you can't just listen. You got to make sure you pay attention. You um, got to fact check too. Yeah, seriously, we can't be trusted. But um, I'll tell you this much: there's a lot of relevant bonuses at play beyond the ship regenerating. Uh, having two additional villagers when your villagers are gonna be untouched yep. usually is amazing. And then Italians, it's cheaper for them to go up to each age and their is, doc texts are Is Emil like just has his transport there to tell Capuch that he's not trying to land or what's I, going on? I'm not he had sure. A next to the dock, like, don't worry, bro. He got. <laughs> I'm not coming over. You, can, you wrong, don't need to wall. They gave yeah. him the wrong coordinate on his GPS that, when he went to go pick up something. You know, that honestly might be a strategy. If you have a dock, you make a second transport ship and then you keep the first one within view to, of your enemy. Your brain's working way too hard right now. <laughs> <laughs> but think about this, though. Like, so far, it's been very passive. 
We did have MBL nice add wall, additional MBL. fishing. Okay, that's a little embarrassing, but he doesn't know. Speaking of Mapu, thank you for yeah, the great. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mapu, for making MBL skills. look foolish. Um, I like the approach from both players so far. They both realize that with the dock starting on the backside, that they can get away with a few more fishing ships, and now they're starting to make the navy. Good stuff. Yeah, and Capwatch is searching for that forward dock. He's coming back to. Uh, the back side here where MBL already has seven fishing ships and MBL has managed to avoid the patrolling fire galley at the front. So Capwatch is going to be maybe lured into another false sense of security as he has avoided that. And he's sending a villager and I a think, scout across. Already. Also, I think Capwatch missed a building because remember, usually you make an archery range right away or something. Yeah, he was waiting for the market. market yeah. So he was delayed because he's yeah. had the resources for a bit. Well, I mean, he's it. Uptimes are cheaper for MBL anyway. True. That, so he's always going to probably be up faster. As uh, MBL with two fire galleys, it won't matter about the uh, the HP regeneration here. He is going to push that fire galley away. And I wonder if Capwatch actually st saw the forward dock from MBL. Because we Ooh. saw the fire ship attacking the transport. He did see that. Okay. As the villager now lands on MBL's economy. And Capwatch might be thinking about going for... You know what, Bengali like monk siege push. It'd be Bengali really good. monks are are disgustingly good. I guess the problem is if someone has food from fishing ships. I feel like light cav is a possibility there, but we'll see. I think it's tough though for MBL to keep these fishing ships alive, as MBL now has archers against a fire galley. He does have the scout there, so once again, overwhelming units, and he's even blocking he's, he's with the transport ship. Yeah. <laughs> Also, could be a demo or something back here. I mean, just having that regen is yeah. good enough. It there, means I you think. can always win equal fight, equal number of fights. It's it's fantastic. And now Capwatch is doing exactly what Hera did. He just pulls them away. Maybe MBL will pull his fire galleys away, or maybe he can lose them, and uh, he'll keep that for later, and it will heal up. If I know MBL, okay, important thing to pay attention to here. Will the transport go down? Please, it can unload if MBL notices. Yeah. It can he unload if fine. he notices. I he's don't know fine. if he just clicked this forward, though, or if it's he's going to unload. There we go. Okay, so he they never wanted to come back anyways. They didn't like it over there. Yeah. And so that's nice. Also, MBL's building a town center in the perfect position to siege push if you're Capwatch. Mm -hmm. So uh, we don't know if Capwatch will notice that, but his scout is over there. Now, one thing, one common thing we've talked to players about, it's like, and they agree with us, don't make your win condition winning a Mangonel War against MBL. So yeah, that's if, true. If, if MBL sees that quickly and gets a Siege Workshop of his own down, it could be problems, but it looks like Capuch is gonna open up with a Monastery over there, and he's gonna go for those Bengali Monks that have three Pierce Armor, three Melee Armor. It makes them incredibly difficult to clear up. Let's see if Capuch can get away with some of these weak ones. I think we really have to pay attention to that. Yeah. He's just gonna add a Skirm or two for those Archers. That's not really that big a talking point at the moment. But yeah, that one's gotten away. MBL might have a demo coming from this forward dock. Oh, wow, as well. he's got a lot of fire galleys. He really does. I mean, Italians are pretty good on water. And they save so much, mm -hmm. right? They just do not have to spend the same amount. Keep in mind, the Bengali villagers are out there. Yep. He received plus two more when he made it to Castle Age Capodge. And there's the monastery. Still kind of underwhelming to see. Monastery well, I mean, opening. he's he's spending all his wood on water, yeah, right? Actually. He didn't quite kill the amount of fish that maybe he thought he would from MBL. As the <gasps> demo comes in here, it's going to be a good one. Ooh. No, MBL notices it right away. That's he's... actually a really good avoid there from yep. MBL. Yeah, but MBL has more fire following this up, and Capwatch is outnumbered, and Capwatch needs wood for a siege workshop. He needs wood for um, the ships at the same time. MBL still being annoying with those archers on annoying. land. And I think Capwatch is now going for that siege workshop forward. Oh, man, that demo also was horrible. Yeah, he loses his fish. That was horrible. Now, this push has to work. There's the siege workshop. That's what MBL can see. Mm -hmm. He might start to get a little suspicious if he doesn't see more on water from Capwatch. I think it's enough on water from Capwatch to, to lull MBL in. Now when Capwatch is taking... Outpost, maybe. Yeah. I think he's going to like outpost the side, because you got to think, what could he do to me right now that could win him this game? And that's oh, he might area. see it when he goes out, out there. He goes for an outpost. This is MBL it's Game perfect. Sense coming in here, and he's going to discover that monastery, and where there's a monastery, there's a siege workshop. Always. Now, what do you do, right? You know there's going to be monks. Now he sees as there's at least two. I think what you should want to do here is go for your own siege uh, with some light cap. Um, but we'll see. I mean, it, it's killing obviously going to take huge. things away from the water as well. Honestly, killing that scout is huge because now you can go for your own siege. Italians have a decent monk tech tree of their own as well. So yep. maybe you could go for atonement. <laughs> you want to find an atonement <laughs> well, transport, war? Transport ship. Is he patrolling there? No, just passing. 
Monks are also really great against fire ships. It's such a huge block it, swing. Catwatch. Block it, block it, block it. Oh, he doesn't quite get it. He's not going to quite get that fire ship. MBL still has seven fish alive. We have to point that out. I'm really surprised MBL didn't add a stable. Mm -hmm. Instead, he's going to try and drop a castle there, Dave, which is going to be so risky. Yep. Wow, what an awkward Second TC spot TC that is. For Capwatch, villager count, I mean, 56 vills for MBL, 48 for Capwatch. The macro from Capwatch has been really good, only 28 seconds of idle TC time. Plus, he got those extra vills from aging up. But MBL with those three town centers quite early, even though one of those is likely to go down shortly. How, how did he come? How did he have a demo there? It's, it's like he had a dock there. Or I something. think he's got another demo on the way. That's too. impressive. Like, that is really difficult oh, to have the patience ship. there. Okay. All right, so MBL is pushing in the dock in the middle. A demo, good demo from Capwatch. Doesn't quite finish off those fires. And now Capwatch continues to Jeez. push against that TC, but still no second Mangonel yet. It's only in production right now. So maybe he stalled that out to get a few more ships on the uh, on the water. I mean, should we remind people of the Bengali bonus here with the monks? Mm -hmm. I think it's really important. They can take basically an extra hit compared to what normal monks would with the upgrades they have at the time. And MBL only now getting to his second scout. He's going scouts, yeah. Like, these monks against scouts are surprisingly effective. MBL is going to need light cav, I think, if he wants to take them out. Yeah. But is that is that his plan? Maybe in an ideal world, he clears out the monks, and then he drops a castle where all those buildings are. Or he, yeah. But that could lose him the game if the conversions work. I wonder, I wonder if there's a world in which he can just simply continue to control water here and then maybe take gold in the middle while yeah. having a defensive castle behind the gold like that. Well, that, this is actually kind of good for Catwatch, though, because even if this castle goes up, this is not the type of castle MBL would ever want to place for the long term. And it's giving him a lot of time to add villagers on his island. Continuing to get value with his fire ships, too. Catwatch is producing into the enemy. Yeah. I think he's very distracted with the forward push. Yep. He's not really looking at where his waypoints are going. But he did survive with that ship, and it's going to be healing up over time as Sanctity is now coming in for those monks. The monk push is basically stalled out once that TC is gone from MBL because there's a castle yeah. there, and he did get Light Cav. He's very much aware of the Megali monks. Patience, right? Oh, the demo over here, if the Light Cav come around <laughs> along the... Oh, man. <laughs> Light Cav on the shoreline? That wouldn't be too good. Ah, yeah, well, it was only a dream. Well, I, I, I think... I know it's going to look bad for Catwatch in a second, but if he can get a few more farms up at home, I actually think it's manageable. He's got three TCs right now. And MBL, he struggled to keep all of his working the entire time. But he's being patient. The light cap are just waiting. Yeah. The light cap are waiting. He's, he's repairing with four villagers, but he does have oh, the villager man. lead here this it is, Here time. it is. Here he comes from two different directions at the same time. Capoch has so much to focus on. He was charging up a little bit against that uh, fire ship, but he's not even going to get a single light cap. OK, three light cap get converted. Not worth it from him, I think. Yeah, that's why MBL needed to be patient. He still will have to make a few more units here, but he's just kind of stopped this entire push. Yep. A had he engaged, though, with scouts or with only three or four light yeah, caps? Light cap was that. necessary. Yep. Absolutely necessary. And MBL is so good at judging those sorts of things. As Capoch loses one Mangonel, he's going to lose another wow. Mangonel here. He loses the forward villager. There are no more villagers to build anything on that area. He's got three monks still queued in that monastery. Maybe. Actually, no, Monastery at home as well, grabbing relics. Look, so. at, the, look at the eco difference. MBL, 91. Yep. It is 68 for Capwatch. I mean, Capwatch is 33 on wood, only 17 on food at the moment. And when you're doing a build like this with the Monk Siege forward, you put all of your villagers on gold because that's what you need for that push. Yep. And Capwatch now with 800 gold because he's not, he's simply just not using it on yeah. uh, that push anymore. He can't. This becomes so tricky now, right? The right move for MBL is the move he's doing right now. Win water, win this game. Also, would love to see that castle that he's saving up for go in the middle area there. I think that'd be the next move, too. MBL's making this all look so easy. Yeah. It's unbelievable. I mean, the KD is relatively easy. And it's great, too, because it's on a water map, which we don't traditionally think of, you know, MBL. Yeah, I agree with you. I thought he would be scared of Northern Isles. I thought he would have banned Northern Isles. This is great, though. I, I, I agree with you that he should go to the middle there with a the castle. If he really wants to win the game fast, he could earn even more respect from some of our viewers if he dropped it on Catwatch's face. 
I don't think that's I the think smartest that's, play. Yeah, because you, <laughs> you you don't really have an idea of how good your enemy's eco is. You haven't been over there for a while. You don't know if he's on 3TC, if he's on 1TC. You, yeah. you don't know how many resources he has in the bank. When we look at Capwatch's resources, he's flirting with the idea of Imperial Age. And if he gets a castle of his own, exactly. he's on stone right now. He could just take yours out as an excellent demo comes in. You can't outheal that one from Ooh. MBL. Interesting demo there as well. So. More docks for Capwatch. I mean, Capwatch, 82 villagers, Transport MBL 103. MBL. So he's thinking about it. An awkward thing for MBL, though, is he's still producing from a lot of those back docks. Yep. So he needs to make sure that he gets more forward docks here. But here come the villagers. Here he doesn't have careening, so you can only fit five in each uh, train. He's track. getting careening right now. All right. I mean, it's 45 seconds away, so I think he's just going to ferry them one at a time. But careening, maybe the transport reminded him he didn't have it, and that's going to be very valuable for his ships because it looks like we're going for a naval battle. Naval set up from both players in the middle as Capoch adds docks in that middle area, and MBL is as well. But one of the most important things to look out for at these middle battles in Northern Isles is whether the people have castles in the center, because yep. that will help so much when you're fighting, especially with galleons a little bit later. Capwatch is still alive in this game. MBL's trying to go for war galleys, but look where they're coming from. They're looping from the backside, yep. and Bengalis receive plus two villagers out of each town center when and they MBL's arrive to the next up. age. So but his Capwatch is build count there. could be insane. Yep, Capwatch is already there on the way up to Imperial Age. I think we saw Yo try and make that uh, War Galley switch a little bit too soon yeah. uh, against Hera, and maybe MBL falling into the same trap. Uh, but he's still queuing up some fire ships, so maybe he realizes, I'm just going to queue them up slowly behind. I'll keep the fire ships in front. I'll get my castle down in the center there. I do have careening, which he doesn't have as of yet, and I'll just slowly build my mass. It's going to be tough, though. Capwatch. Uh, Capuch has a lot of docks in the center. Yeah, I mean, traditionally, and this is maybe where we're seeing some of MBL's water inexperience come in, it's always fast fire in early Imperial Age mm -hmm. into Galleon. Uh, again, you can do other things, but when you have the lead, that's what players tend to do. So we'll see. Uh, MBL's castle is going to be so important, though, and of course he can take all that stone and gold if he wishes to. Yeah, great demo shots there, I believe, from Capwatch as he's searching for some more value against MBL, and MBL Trying to push in here. War Galley number, though, still at eight. Capwatch is doing a good job whittling those down, and War Galley is in low numbers. Really struggle to find value against the fire ships, especially with careening in. Mapu, can we see how many docks MBO has in the front for a second? Because it doesn't seem like it's three. enough. He's got That's three. Not I no. think Capwatch is more along the lines of like, like seven. Five or six. Probably. Yeah, five yeah, or six. And, six. and so that's double the production and faster to the Imperial Age. Yep. Like, MBL's military number is extremely deceiving. I know he still is lead, but a lot of that's still in the north and not in the middle area. Mm -hmm. MBL, though, still with a slight villager lead. I mean, Capwatch is really caught up. He just got six more villagers mm -hmm. as he got to the Imperial Age, and Capwatch is now Ooh. going for a castle on MBL's island. MBL does see that. He's got an outpost right within view, and he's got his navy right there, so he's definitely aware of the of what's happening over there in the north he's also building an another navy from the north that's coming in at the moment mbl he could lose those war galleys to the south if he doesn't pull back but he's got the massive navy as you said dave he's going to get both fast fire and maybe only, in, though, for only the Italians this is horrible this. for mbl this is horrible and the fast castle. fire ship just went up Capwatch is still very well alive in this game he yep. will pressure mbl's island from the other side that he chose to pressure in castle age He's got 19 on water, MBL is 28, and I think MBL just has the wrong army right now. MBL or Navy, excuse only me. has one demo in that dock. Now, heavy demo, not accessible for either of these civilizations, which makes it really tough to fight against the fast fires. You need a big mass of galleons. Fast fires looking so strong right now, but that's only because MBL has nine galleons. If yeah. he had, if he ever gets up to like 29 galleons, then you're going to have an issue. Man, fast fire has swung this so much. Those galleys have done so little for MBL, and now like this is what normal players do. They have all their docks in their control group. They set a gather point. Now, if MBL does that, the ships are going to run into these fire ships in the north. He split with his production. Yeah, and but Capwatch has everything in the middle. He also kind of uses single queue a lot. That, that's true. <laughs> so, that's a fair point. More than so anyone it, it else. It might probably. actually, yeah, it might actually help him in this instance as Capwatch now has a treb from that ca castle in the north, and that's one of MBL's golds behind that wood line. He's also going for a siege workshop. MBL knows about the villagers here. He just doesn't have a response as of yet. He does have three trebs. 
I wonder if those trebs are in the middle. Yeah, they're, they're well, uh, two one of them must be at home. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you there can see go. how much work he has to do. Yeah. If we can't find this, how awkward that is, right? You're making light cap yep. and Genoese crossbowmen simply to defend an area that water could Armored have done elephants, for you. Ratha is coming out now from Kapach from that Whoa, forward position. Man. Kapach is going to make things very messy. If there's one thing we say about MBL, though, he's one of the best defenders in the game. Hera does it very calmly and very orderly. MBL just makes units. Yeah. <laughs> you can't get through it. So. We'll see if he can manage to defend against this. Kapoch has completely swung this game around. Well, Kapoch has a, it, it sh probably is going to have a heavier focus on lands now because I'm just not seeing the Navy in Q. He is getting Galleon, I guess, but he stopped at 16 fires and left it at that. MBL's about to get to 20 ga uh, Galleons, which is when they start to become more dangerous. And he's he's fighting back the Trebs as well. I mean, Kapoch Ooh. needs to run away. What? He manages to dodge <laughs> that. Wow, it was on both sides. That's funny. Well, here come the Ratha. I mean, that could be an annoying unit to deal with. I love this, I, though, from I MBL. really like oh, that. Oh, also, he might actually Galleon kill dock. the Galleon Dock. Galleon dock. He might actually Galleon kill dock. the Galleon Dock in the center there. <gasps> Galleon is almost it's in the dock. It's a Dow Galleon! Is... Oh, the dock is dead, and Kapoch won't realize for a oh. while that the Galleon Dock has actually gone down. Unintentional clutch moment there from MBL, killing that with five seconds he, left. He's going to say, wow, my resources shot up. And Why now did that he, happen? Yeah, he clicks it again, and MBL is all over his docks. That is unfortunate for Kapoch. MBL, of course finding his own luck by targeting the dock in the middle. And the other Galleon dock is even a <laughs> no little way. bit close, no but way. I don't think there's any way that, uh, oh, that goes down. Well, you can see the Galleon mass is finally doing wonders here. And the yeah. middle is just offering so much control for MBL. Yeah. I can see why Catwatch wanted to place the castle he placed on the shoreline. But unfortunately, it's a bit of a trap, that one there. I He's love the fact that there. MBL went for Trebs in the center, too, to take out the docks, to take out the castles. It's so important, right? Capwatch is just going to be searching for real estate to put those docks in. And finally, Galleon comes in here. Masonry on the way at the same time. MBL. Right now, he's controlling the center, and he's going for some cannon, cannon galleons in addition to his Trebs and Bomber Cannons, but Kapoch is still holding that position in the north of MBL's island. Yeah, MBL is very patient, though, right? Like, yeah. he didn't really go for this castle immediately. He waited till he had the three Trebs, and now he's going to make another castle in the middle. MBL doesn't have Bracer. <gasps> he doesn't huh? have the food for it either. Oh my God, he doesn't. He won't never remember. Realize. That, the thing is, you'll that. never realize he'll at this never stage. He'll never realize that. Unless he has to make a tech switch and go to the, the also, blacksmith for something. Go elephant, go. Elephant MVP. Go elephant, go. Go elephant, go. There's more elephants. Okay, elephant couldn't go. I what? just assumed that Emil would have Bracer there. I mean, he's going to assume it too, because he's yeah. going to win this fight. Yeah, he's doing he's doing quite well here, and he's going for another castle, and Kapoch really needs to stop that castle. He's in no position to do so, and he's holding the Trebs. He's still keeping them alive. Never mind, the elephants are here. They have something to say about the matter, but Kapoch <laughs> just losing his entire navy there. MBL is on the warpath, and MBL is now taking the pikeman, which tells me he's going to go to the blacksmith and realize he doesn't have Bracer. True! <laughs> Any second now, True. he's going to go to the blacksmith smith realized he doesn't have bracer he'll probably sell wood to buy food i was to gonna say bracer. he's he's yeah. got 89 on wood so a market would be really helpful right about now yeah. any second now i'm predicting about uh well we'll see uh, we'll see if he wants he's gonna farm first we'll see if he wants to land first of all does he want to go over to Capoch's island as those elephants just kind of browse their way through that wood line okay there's the market okay bought some food bracer, there, bracer. and there did he go. shake his head at all no he didn't that's disappointing but you have to it think it was about 30 seconds yeah you have to think that in his mind he's like what yeah well he's had he had a couple shaky moments in this game he brought he allowed Capwatch to come back into it look at that tech from Capwatch. he's going for shipwright dave shipwright i mean it's your way back right you got to win water you're not going to win it with that landing in the top nbl reacted really well to that um, you're going to have to win via superior naval numbers. And I love the fact that MBL has these five cannon galleons. And it just keep taking out the docks. This mm -hmm. is perfect. Yeah. Just keep taking out the docks. A cap watch is going to struggle to produce. He's going to have to keep spending wood to make more of those. Also, I'd love to see him maybe with Italians 
If he's going to tech into the, the infantry armor, get some condos on the, uh, the yeah. south of Capuch's island. Yeah, I really think Pikeman is something that he's going to think better of. Because, oh, well, Genoese okay. crossbow. I, I mean, was just about freeing, to say that Freeing Genoese... up pop space, he was, he was two out of 200, so <laughs> on, like maybe that helps him. You don't need Genoese crossbowmen if you have Pikeman. <laughs> exactly. You don't need them at all at this rate. I mean, Capuch is going for an archer range at the top there, but... Uh, the Genoese crossbow kind of just taking up space. They're lingerers in the uh, in the economy from MBL as he goes there's for the barracks, and there's the Condottieros. They're going to be heading onto Capoch's eco, and Capoch is all in on the navy currently. How is he going to respond? I'll be curious to see what the vill count looks like for MBL here. If he wants to go for the kill, it's a risk. You could maybe delete a couple eco or a couple extra units that might be out there. <laughs> Elephants as <they're laughs> from the siege <laughs> workshop. That's the original siege Go workshop. Go for the houses. <laughs> <laughs> and a castle from MEL, but Capoch has a lot of navy and he's got a big group of uh, fast fires in front, which means popped. it's very tanky. Capoch also getting cannon gal or elite cannon galley and he's getting heated shot as well. It, unique tech, is that Pavise coming in for MBL? Uh, I think I it think is. That, that is, well, uh, it's a weird tech for me. I mean, it, it yeah. gives your archers additional armor. Archers is not what you're making right now, MBL. He's making it, one. Well, actually, what's funny is losing villagers here is, is actually kind of yeah, good. It's good. If he, wait, he might not have the gold to make more ships. Look at his cube. He's got 90 gold here. He can sell some wood, maybe sell some stone. He's got still got villagers in the center there. He is raiding as well on Capwatch's island. Yeah, that castle, is. That that, castle is going to go up, and now Capwatch needs to um, back away from that. But meanwhile, in Capwatch's eco, we see all those blue dots flashing there as Mapu heads on over, and the Condotieros are just man. doing work, and that is very valuable real estate for Capwatch now being taken away. Well, I mean, Capwatch has put up a crazy fight, but I, I don't know if he can deal with those raids now. Mm -hmm. um, Bengalis, we haven't talked about it a lot because it's a water map, but they just don't really have the best land options. And when you're surprised like this, it makes it even more awkward. Does Pavise also affect Condotiero? I, feel I don't like it might. think so. I think it does. I we'll have to double check. I think so. We'll have to double check. I. It wouldn't surprise me if MBL thought it did. But I, okay, people are saying yes. Well, we this won't is, focus on that, I would folks. like to we say, won't yeah, focus uh, what on a great fight. that. It was a fantastic fight for MBL, and he <laughs> is taking out the docks here, as he has a TC going up on the wood line, and Capwatch is still trying to force his way through this choke point. MBL says, no, 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 and MBL is still harassing Capwatch's eco with those forward barracks. This might be the first time MBL knows something that I don't. Okay. But we move along because the condos are into... Look at this confidence. Trebuchets. Yep. Bombard cannons. Yeah, cannon galleons. But the cannon galleons are being sniped. That's a great Ooh. pick from Capwatch. He added those docks a couple minutes ago on the south of his island, and uh, he's making use of them now. And now he's killing bombard cannons too. Oh, uh, he just took the population lead for a moment yep. there. I hope MBL remembers uh, the one piece of advice I gave him, which is... If you think you're winning and you think Capoch is dead, do not give up. Yeah, Because he will not. I mean, yes, MBL has way more access to resources, but that could all change if Capoch can gain a foothold on the water here. It still feels like those castles, Dave, are just the most important aspect for MBL. We also have a countdown. It's worth pointing out. 400 years takes us to And the score is so close. An hour. The uh, score five is minutes, so I close. Think. Yeah. But, I mean, we're a long way away from that, and Capwatch is now using the remainder of his stone to repair after after three trebs are shooting that castle. MBL has taken the farms from Capwatch. <laughs> yes. He made a mill. <laughs> or did he place those farms? Because no, he... He, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, it doesn't I'm, matter. Instructions unclear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, he also has ejected the monastery, so the relics aren't there for Capwatch. Is that castle is, is that castle alive? Is it going to stay up? The castle to the north, and it looks like it is. Capwatch has made his way through here. Is starting to take out those trebuchet, and there is a lot of cannon Whoa. galleons now working away on that castle. But there's a lot of galleons trying to snipe them. No, they will not find a way. We have seven cannon galleons, and Capwatch is now basically out of stone to repair. So. What an amazing game. The population's still close. Capwatch, he's got stables here as well, so he's going to try and get some raids in. Yep. He has a few galleons also looped around MBL's island, which I'm sure many people have seen. But still, MBL has the middle. MBL has the relics. 
MBL has what I consider to be the, the better position in almost every single way. Yeah. And we see MBL now just kind of retreating, just kind of, you know, gathering his thoughts together as uh, the Condo Tieros are coming in here against the TC. Speaking of TCs on fire, the fire galleys are working away at that one, and that castle is getting ultimate value. I wonder how many ca kills that castle actually has. That's though. a good point. And castle has 11 kills. That one has 13, so not as many as I might think. But a lot of assists, too, you have to yeah, imagine, right? A lot of assists. Yeah. I was talking to the Capture Age guys today as they were visiting, and I was saying, wouldn't it be nice to see the total damage a unit has done? Yeah. Just to see the team players, you know? Yeah, exactly. That'd well, fantastic. it's been awesome having them here. Obviously, there's been so many people in the city, uh, so many people who will show up for the viewing on the final weekend. Thank you, everyone, for watching as well, of course. I, I, I'm living the dream right now, but Ooh. Capwatch certainly, at least in this game, is not yeah, because I think he's dead. This is good attention to detail from both players. Capwatch looping in with the, the Galleons, trying to snipe the Cannon Galleons. He realizes how valuable they are. And be out constantly with a meat shield in front of that. As Capwatch begins to sell wood. Now, selling wood on a map like this isn't always mm -hmm. the best thing. Nope. Sometimes you want to start buying the wood. We see MBL with 42 on gold somehow. Oh my goodness, Capwatch with zero on gold, and he's making gold units. I think these moments are really important for MBL. He knows he has this one. Mm -hmm. He knows that there were also some some things that he could have brushed up on. Yep. Um, and so, he, he I don't want to say gets away with it because he earned that lead, but he's learned some lessons here he can take to the next game. And for Capwatch, I think he's just like, you know what? I'm going to play on. We're going to yep. see what happens. And, and then I'm going to call the GG. I think he's called it now. It I think MBL is going to go up one to nothing over Capwatch on a map where Northern Isles. Okay, MBL takes the victory. I wouldn't have expected that one. Yeah, seriously. I mean, we thought landing. We thought almost instant landing could come from MBL. He attempted it. He did have the couple archers there. There he is. Almost looks like he lost that game. But I think, again, he's like trying to block out everything yeah. so he can focus on his game Yeah, he's, he's got a defrag going on right now yep. in his brain. And I think that's a good thing. And you know what? You, you were saying he maybe made some mistakes there. I think Capwatch just, just I think Capwatch just really had a lot of fight in that, it. That's that's true. Yeah. That's true. Like yeah. MBL maybe tried to switch to the war galleys a little bit earlier. Obviously Bracer missing. We didn't see a ton of effect from that, but maybe he would have won it a little bit sooner than he did. MBL played that pretty solid. Like, all these transitions were basically on point. The defense from the Siege Workshop and the Monks getting light cap, being so patient and waiting with those light cap to engage. That was I, a great I was game. impressed. Yeah, that was it was a really, really, impressed. really good game. I mean, when Capwatch looks like he's dead in the water, suddenly he's back. When MBO looks like he could be surprised by something, that outpost, yep. he knew and lovely stuff. And also, if you wanted a really competitive series, I think that's a good sign. Also, if you like the longer games, that one was, what, 50 minutes? Yep. So we could always have more with Frigid Lake coming up for Catbots, you would think. Uh, I believe that is MBL taking a quick the bathroom washroom. break. Yep. Yes. Catbots saying, well, if you do, I guess I will too. What type of conversation is that going to be there? They're going to talk strats. <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> They're going to talk strats uh, together, just, yeah. There's only two urinals in there, that's all I'm saying. So they're yeah, just side like... by side, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Listen, if one of them comes back and the other doesn't, we're going to have to send in a crew. <laughs> oh, we're going to send in some people, yeah. Well, investigate. I mean, obviously, you got to 100% focus on the game, so go. they can go take their time. Yeah. But, uh, okay, so... Again, it is possible for Capwatch, if he wishes to, to pick Arabia. I think that would be a big mistake for a home map. So we have to assume Frigid Lake. If we could have the draft up so we can all remember what the sieves are, we can start to speculate, Dave. Uh, because I think there's quite a few out there that can work mm -hmm. particularly for Capwatch. And I think he has to really work around that Berber's pick, right? Like, Tatar's was his very first pick. Does he yeah. want to play that, on, play that on Arabia? Does he want to play that on Frigid Lake? He does have Khmer for Frigid Lake. Berbers kind of feel like a sieve that might do well against Tatars. I agree. I mean, you know? I think he has Tatars, Com Khmer, Franks, and Khmer. Franks. Yeah. All three of those Berbers can be awkward are, against yeah, Berbers. Yeah, exa exactly. Yeah. And it's like, when do you think MBL is going to pick the Berbers? When do you think, um, or which sieve do you think is going to do best out of those three against them here's, on which map? Here's something that's interesting, though. So Dravidians have a pretty weak win rate. Yeah. Okay. MBL's got Dravidians, he's got Berbers, but he's got Chinese. And Chinese, I think, 
are at the very least untested because they start with zero food. Yeah. Which means if you go archers on Arabia, you're not going to have fletching as fast. Mm -hmm. Or you idle your TC. If you go scouts, well, you're not going to make a scout for a solid two minutes. So, like, if he goes Berbers on Frigid Lake and doesn't win, he's got a very awkward Chinese and a low win rate Dravidians for Arabia. Yeah, I mean, but if he wants to play Arabia a little bit Wally with Chinese, it could work. It could right? work, yeah. And I think we have, uh, I believe we have Riley over here with, is that Hera across the room that I see? It is indeed, yes, very handsome face of Hera here, mate. We've just watched your teammate MBL take out game number one, the, qu the players in a quick break. So I wanted to check in with you, get your thoughts on what we've just seen. Northern Isles, more, one of the more unique maps in the pool in that it is a hybrid water map. Um, uh, give us your analysis of what we've seen and how it went for, he for, how it went for MBL. Um, well, the funny thing is that was actually the exact same matchup that I was playing earlier as well in my set, uh, Bengali's Italians. Uh, it was quite interesting that Kapash decided to go for the landing uh, with Bengali's. Usually, you know, when you go for a landing, you probably want to have access to strong units and Bengali's not having access to stables mm -hmm. do leave them a little bit limited. So I feel like he was a bit, you know, one dimensional with his landing. Uh, but, you know, he made the game messy. And I think that the turning point for me uh, was when MBL was able to, you know, secure the land mm. a little bit and then make his way onto, you know, back onto the water. And onto the center aisle in particular. Oh, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll come to that in a second. I, I want to focus on uh, the response to that, that Monk Siege push there uh, in the south. Uh, MBL is very patient with that. You know, he actually chose his moment really well. And, you know, we talk about MBL being chaotic and improvisational and all that, but that was a very calculated response. He kept his TC alive, he waited for the light cap to come in, and then sort of uh, in a bit of a pincer movement came in to make sure he could clean up the monks and the siege. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if there's one thing I know from playing NBL thousands of games, the viewers know how much we've played. Uh, you know, Siege pushing him is extremely challenging. He's mm -hmm. one of the best defensive players when it comes to Siege. Mm -hmm. He knows the ins and outs of Mangano and Monks. As, and, you know, picking his timing is key. And I think that the pincer move was kind of like the cherry on top to make it extremely hard for Kapoch to react and to maybe even land some attack grounds with the Mangano. So, uh, yeah, it was really beautifully played by NBL there. And I think... If you ask me, um, you know, picking the right moments can make the difference between winning and losing the game. Well, let's talk about one more key moment before we let you go, Hera, and that is seizing the center aisle. I was asking some of the other, uh, the casters, Mem, and that sort of stuff about how key that center island can be, shoring up those resources, a castle to defend what you've got there. And do you think that was decisive? Did that make the difference in this game? Um, I mean, that's a great question. First of all, let's tackle like what, what controlling the center means, okay. obviously. So like even on other maps, right, the middle of the map mm -hmm. is absolutely key. Even if we're talking on Arabia, guys, like having the middle is really important because, you know, to attack, the units have to go either through the middle or along the sides. If you control the middle on Northern Isles, you know, that whole middle ring of water is kind of yours and it makes it very awkward for Kapach to maneuver around mm -hmm. it. But then obviously having golden stone access, that's, you know, kind of infinite because you know of just how much there is uh, i wouldn't say it was necessarily the absolutely decisive move because i feel like kapoch did have a chance to kind of mm -hmm. you know snowball the water but mbl held beautifully waited till the center kind of kicked in and it was just a slow and painful death for kapoch after that well played to mbl yeah mbl did really really well and thanks so much Hera, for your expert analysis there mate it's always great to get your insight we're going to head you. back to the cast uh, that now they're standing over there ready to go so right now it's back to t90 and dave all right, well, that was good Good insight there from Hera, breaking down a water map, as we all know he loves water maps. Yep. But he did make that water map look fantastic. Uh, yes, yesterday, I almost said last week. It's been a it long... It feels like last week. <laughs> In it, a good it, way. <laughs> we've had a lot of games. Like, we've yeah. been watching some of the B-Stream games while we're watching the uh, the main games, and it's just been so much Age of Empires as we see Kamur, that wonderful Ballista Elephant. I think that might be my favorite. Yeah, I, I, Ballista Elephant, also shout out to the Hyofnitze, Yep. and then also oh, the really Genisari. liked the Dismounted Conic. Oh, with the menacing, like, chain ball, the mace? Oh, yeah. Or whatever it is. I, I, I think the That's mace, a mace. Is, no, the mace is the one that I think that is just like a club. A spiky militia thing? Yeah. Like the militia yeah, has a mace? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I th and it's very small, actually. Maces are very... Well, maces... Riley... Is it, my, mice? My, what's the plural of maces? <laughs> I don't think oh, it's no, mice. not this again. Oh, no, well, not the I mice. Mean, oh. Right now, Riley is just shaking his head. Is he? Super SMH back there. I, I imagine he is. I don't okay. see him right now, but uh, he's ashamed to know us as we don't know the proper weaponry. And here's the Berbers, and Berbers 
certainly have answers to Kimura. That that camel archer looks pretty awesome. It looks it? amazing. Look at that. Even the camel looks menacing. Yeah, but... even though even though it, according to Ry according to Riley, it never existed. So yeah, well. It is a rather ironic how Riley stood up here maybe 45 minutes ago and talked about the historical accuracy of Age of Empires 2. But if everything was historically accurate, we would not have well-balanced civilization. He's not historically accurate. <laughs> here we go into game number two, MBL and Capwatch. Capwatch playing as Kamur on his home map, Frigid Lake. Kamur, I mean, they're one of the best civs on this map because you can't make farms around your TC. And with Kamur, you can basically make farms on the moon wherever you want to make them. And the villagers don't have to drop off to a gather point. NBL playing as the Berbers, though, which is kind of a little bit of a counter pick to Kamur. Yeah, I mean, Kamur, typically it's fast farms, fast up, make a lot of knights. There are other things you can talk about, but forget about the elephants in most cases. Berbers, cheaper knights, and also cheaper camels. What is that wood line, by the way? It's so, it's, no, dude, it's I a thought literal it was a, wood line. I thought it was a wall for a second. <laughs> <laughs> like, it took me aback. I wow. mean, he's got the lumber camp there, so he's going to chop through it sooner rather than later. And this is, oh, this is the MBL that we know and love. I mean, walls down in the second minute in. But, like, did he go to the back room to, like, Pay, pay the admins or something? Because that that's an amazing wood line. Wood that line. is a crazy wood line. Also, the cheekiness there to yep. attack the villager yep. when he knew that his, his scout could die was yeah, yeah. interesting. Also, Capwatch pre-walling in his villagers. Uh, scout goes down. That is actually very important because it looks like MBL is going to have more than enough time to get that wall complete as Capwatch is coming across with, I believe, three or four units. And the archers and the spearmen are going to hit these walls and they're not going to be able to do anything, Tristan. This looks like MBL is going to be really safe against this early pressure. Yeah, that Spearman will find it. Of course, the Spearman's not really needed now, so he knows. And this is a lovely move from him. He actually will not fight this. Yep. He's going to go sneak archers. So now Capwatch will be confused, though, because Capwatch will see that the archer range doesn't have a flag on it. I think I think Capwatch should now, seeing the full walls, he should go and add a dock. I think he should take advantage of the map control that oh, MBL is giving here's him. Here's MBL. MBL just completes fletching. And here he goes. Let's see how the micro goes here. Keep in mind that Capwatch is not full walled, so he needs to make sure the yep. micro is Good right Good micro here. so far by Capwatch. Really, really nice on those engagements. I mean, he's got a skirmisher in there too. MBL is driving back those archers and Capwatch. I think should be happy that he actually gets away with anything from there because that was risky business. But now the pressure that Kamur are supposed to have early is gone and you are not fully walled. MBL is completely fully walled and safe. Yeah, the, the positive thing here is that you both had one range. Mm -hmm. So at this level, you should be producing out of your range all the time, which as I say that MBL actually, oh, there he is. Um, and so if you just track the army, you're actually fine. And what a good job from Capwatch. Not only will yep. he take out the ranged army, but if MBL doesn't leave, the scout will go down as well. So who needs walls, I guess, right? Do you think we'll see a janitor this game? It's it's building up towards that potential <laughs> right really now. <laughs> but, you know, I think while that potential is there, it's unlikely we're going to see heavy archer play from Capwatch. I think if both players are making this many skirms, it's probably going to be nights for both. Okay, MBL, 12 farms, Capwatch. I mean, look at that food and co coming in. That'll tell you why Kamur is so good on this map. He's already got wow. 16 on food right now. It is wow. just drip feeding straight into uh, his resource bank as MBL tries to deal with the archers in the center. MBL now spending food on that armor, and this is just Capwatch being up to the castle age so much faster than MBL. It does come at a bit of a cost, so that was a great moment for MBL's micro. He's able to use that weak scout to kill the skirmishers with their minimum range. So Capwatch is going to have to get those walls down. Look at all those farms, ladies and gents. They're perfectly efficient with the Khmer. And yeah, he's going to click up. I mean, MBL, remember that game where he played with this civilization against Jordan? Mm -hmm. He was up like three minutes after. Yeah, but this he had his weakness. He had a really nice eco. He did. Right? Like he took the time to stabilize his eco. I love those one palisades. That well, he Cap doesn't watches. have a wood line. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's filling the gaps with as MBL tries to find... Um, some opening there, but Capwatch is ready. I believe he doesn't have a hole in the front. He's going to tap that one palisade, and yeah, MBL will be kept out for the time being. Capwatch is going to be slightly ahead to the Castle Age. I mean, 40 seconds ahead, and he's going to uh, patch up that hole at the back, too. So 
Things are looking decent for the Argentinian. Okay, so <clears throat> Kamur just, they lack the tech tree. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important that Kapoch recognizes what the next move is for MBL. It is extremely hard, however, to know what MBL is going to do because MBL is on stone right now, which is completely hidden. He also went for walls. a dock, by the way. He's making fish. I like that. Yeah. Even just like two fishing ships. Yeah. And the potential of a demo later on could be really strong. Did he spot the sables there? I mean, he has to suspect see one. that it is going to be a night switch for Capwatch, but it's nice to get confirmation. Also, I would really like to see... Well, he's banking a gate. Some players, you know how they don't make gates? It just mm -hmm. it bothers me. I think it's three stables. Does he not have a stable to the left of all this at his base? I think he's got another... Yep, yep. So three stable knights for Capwatch. So you're judging people on whether they make a gate or not? Well, the amount of time someone deletes a palisade wall and then they've got like full map control and then two knights run into the base. Yeah, I'm judging. Sounds like gatekeeping to me. <laughs> oh, I see what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, wow, like, <laughs> why is this an issue for Dave? I see now. Well, the resources are insane for Capwatch. If he wants to boom, he can do it. He can make knights out of three stables, though. He can do two stables into like one stable because he's going full eco. But another time where we get to see Camel Archers in this event as Cap Watch goes for three town centers. And Cam Camel Archers are a very powerful unit once we get the mass. We didn't full, we didn't see the full power, Jordan versus, uh, versus Dogao because Dogao had such great macro so behind good. it. It, yeah. it was amazing. Um, but they are crazy once you get them in mass as MBL finally reaches the castle age and he begins to go into Camels. MBL is fully walled, but Capwatch is already working on TC number two and number three. And I wonder, MBL, is he going to drop extra TCs or is he going to save that stone for the castle right away? You know, if this was all if this was all visible mm -hmm. and MBL could see what we could see, he would be able to recognize my camels will match those knights. My opponent won't be able to make a lot more knights because he's making vills and he could place that castle forward. Yeah. He's going to have full map control, but at the same time, he doesn't know those things and he might want to place a defensive might, castle for Camel He Camelers. might sense it. Though. Let's see. Like, yeah. He has a weird spidey sense. He's played thousands of games. I know. Thousands of games. And sometimes he gets this weird game sense. And I see a bunch of things moving Ooh. across the map. Are those villagers? Oh, yeah. There they go. <laughs> Look at the spidey sense. The spidey sense. <laughs> That's so good. That it is really so good, is. guys. Like, he. I, I know it, it doesn't seem like the craziest thing. Like, a oh, castle at home, still great. I can make yeah. camel archers, but my God. And also that night, let's see if that gets some uh, some kills there if MBL turns around with the Oh villagers. boy, yeah, he needs to notice the HP on that. I don't think he's looking at it. Monks now converting the camels. I mean, MBL needs to keep those camels distracting. <laughs> Capwatch at home as the night kills another <laughs> villager. And MBL just apparently just clicked those in as far as possible. He's looking <laughs> potentially for a hill. Don't put it right up against the Palisade Wall. I mean, this is going to be tricky. This is going to be tricky, T90. He does put it right up against the Palisade Wall because Capwatch still has two monks. He's got five yeah. knights and a camel. And MBL only has nine camels right now. Half of them are at home. Yeah, the half at home is a problem at the moment. Uh, and that knight might actually have been the MVP there. He also only sent like six bills. So he was so confident with those yep. spidey And senses. the monks, the monks can convert camels. They can stall Ooh. out the villagers building. This is going to be really bad for MBL, I feel like. Oh, MBL, like, again, we said it was risky, right? Yep. And he's taking that why risk. why here, though? Like, why right up against the palisade wall, letting him know exactly where it is? Well, in theory, if you have map control, you can kind of let him know what's happening. But he's not going to give up on that. Mm -hmm. Capwatch has the Ville lead, though, and Capwatch needs to win this game. Otherwise, he's going home. And Miel's trying to draw him out. He's trying to draw him out. He still has the villagers out there. He's kind of forced Capwatch over in this direction. Capwatch is still on three TCs. You can see 63 villagers versus 49. MBL does have six fishing ships. Yeah, he does. Which will compensate a little bit. But he is definitely not getting that castle up anytime soon. He goes for another stable. Capwatch, he knows exactly what he needs to do. And by the way, his macro has been so good here. The three TCs have been pumping, but he also recognized that he needed as, as many monks as he has here. Monks are the difference makers here, and MBL is very late to those monks. He wants he that does castle. Have the camels. He definitely wants that castle. There's four monks converting. You are going to lose four camels and give four camels to your enemy right away. He is very confident he can take this battle. He's going to take out the converted camels first. The villagers are on the run, and I think MBL is just going to continue to struggle here as Capwatch has monks behind. Ooh, but it's the camels, so close. It's so close, it's guys. So close.
close. And I think go the healing. Go. I honestly think the healing rate of the monks on those knights yeah. turned the tide in that battle. But MBL has more camels on the way. Berbers with the cheaper stables. Still, the villagers are going down. How many is he going to have left alive to finish that castle? That's the question right now. Yeah. Oh, that is just a game-changing moment right there, but I'm not sure for who. Yeah, well, if the castle goes up, then MBO still has a chance There's no bills left. But the clock is ticking. He doesn't have the eco of There's Cap no Watch. bills left. Yeah, and those monks are going to get to convert again once they get their fate. So I think I think Cap Watch is going to take us to the final game with this ridiculous micro, or macro, excuse There's me. more bills on the and way. And all the monks that he had in. And yeah. also, I think... He converted a different camel with every single monk there. I yeah, don't yeah. think he used more than uh, more than he needed. To. I honestly would love. I, I don't know how you analyze the head or anything, but I think the monks with the healing turned the tide in that yeah. battle. It was so close as the villagers loop around this way, and it's getting to the point where even if MBL gets that castle up, it's not going to make that big of a difference. But now MBL is the one with two monks, and he's got enough camels to push this back. This castle will likely likely complete yeah now here's the thing i would have loved to see pikeman a bit earlier oh don't make a barracks there yeah that's also true <laughs> don't make a barracks there <laughs> that, that what is... if that castle goes up make it somewhere else a little bit <laughs> he's more putting safe, all of his, potentially. his eggs in one basket yeah here. yeah well the knights are blocked off from attacking the bills both players are getting conversions it's a 65%, and MBL needs to get this castle up. It's it's going up. I mean, there's more camels on the way. The production from MBL has been really, really good. Capwatch is now going to shift over and try and kill those villagers. Maybe they if gotta take kill out the, the bills. They got to take out the knight, but there's the monk there. Okay. Oh, is, oh, come on, conversion. Is, get in faster. There we go. The spearman, the other knight, there's just one villager Whoa, there. The villager. <laughs> oh no, and she's dead. There's two villagers working away at the castle, and the castle Dave, finally it goes, goes up. up. But Capwatch has 89 villagers, 91 now, and MBL only at 49 of his own, although MBL is pushing in here, and Capwatch is getting pikemen. His barracks are both underneath that castle. Yeah, and his gold is right there. Why and do you make that second barracks? <laughs> it's actually a he's, huge he's, mistake. He, he, MBL could do this. Also, camel archers are the perfect answer to pikemen. And the efficiency for Catwatch has to be going down. Yeah. And we know how good MBL is with map control. He's behind by almost like 35 villagers. Catwatch is running with everything. And he's going out to wow. the gold there. And if MBL senses this, that Catwatch is running away, eventually he's going to send some cavalry over there. Yep. That's going to be completely exposed. I mean, Catwatch, the fact he's teching into pikemen from the barracks like within the army of MBL as he now is killing all the pikemen coming out. That was, that barracks location was not really well thought out for his text wave. Yeah, or just the timing, right? Yep. Could have maybe had the pikemen too, yeah. a little bit earlier, but yep. that's the thing, this this position, it was so important because it completely disrupts a 3TC boom. Yep. There were lumberjacks and farmers and gold miners all in this part of the screen. You're also still trying to create villagers from two out of the three TCs around this castle, so. I don't see the fights going all that well for Catwatch if MBL continues to mass the Camel Archers. And MBL is still still producing Camels. He's still got seven Camels in the queue. It's only a matter of time, like I said, before he uh, he goes over to the gold on the left. Is that Knight still? Okay, it's a, <laughs> I, thank God. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking, if that's that same Knight, Yeah, it we're didn't actually kill problems. anything either. Uh, Catwatch's Monk Micro has been really good. I, I think he's converted a little bit of everything, as you can kind of see there in his army. Mm -hmm. You know, if MBL sees that gold is forward, yep. he might send more bills for another castle if he sees there's villagers there. Yeah, I mean, he has camels at home at his base, and I think he's going to send them to the gold yeah. right now. I think they're on their way. So he might get some really good damage there against Capwatch. I mean, Capwatch is using gold now to buy food because yeah. he had so much in the bank. He has 35 on gold, but gold will start to become an issue for him as MBL controls that one on the right side, especially if he spends it all on the food. Capwatch now coming out with the pikes, with the knights. He sends the same thing. MBL maybe some demos for those pikes. He does have the dock. Yep, and he, he adds it, Dave. Good call there. Uh, second town center for MBL. It's about time for him, but the importance of Catpod shifting over here and just ignoring the castle is huge. He should be able to secure those resources on the front, no problem. Though. I wonder if one pikeman has made it out of that barracks alive. I'm I sure. Mean, like the, maybe it, two. Yeah, maybe maybe a couple. There's no ballistics, so. We'll see, yeah. I, I, right out the gate, they're getting scared of the world, which I think you need a healthy fear if you're in war. Mm -hmm. 
Here's the demo. Demo there. And I think what you do with this demo is you bait the yep. pikemen into what they think is a good fight. Yep. Unfortunately, Catwatch wasn't born yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to have to be pretty clever about it. MBL trying to go in. Yeah, he knows. And uh, Catwatch definitely oh! knows. Oh! That was decent. That's that was okay. decent. That's it was right. okay. It was only a demo That's raft, you know? Well, look at Capwatch, man. He's he's had to deal with so much this game. NBL would just yeah. not go away, and yet he still counterattacks. Love the counterattack. Love the pike and pokes and farm pike there. Yeah. Yeah. As the knights are now under the TC once again, MBL trying to defend with one camel, but those other two knights are going to be extremely annoying at the back. And Capwatch is coming in through that hole. MBL is on the run to the left side, and he's going to make a TC, his third TC of the game. He's at 69 villagers. We got 106, or sorry, 65 villagers still has fishing ships alive and 106 vills for Capwatch. Capwatch is just booming right now. Ooh. Boom! Oh, <laughs> come on! Boom! <laughs> Oh man, all right. Well, at the same time, Catpatch is all over MBL's economy. Yeah. Guy yep. Also, ladies and gents, I, forgive me for not saying this earlier. This is so poor of me, but we should welcome the gamer face to the series because oh Catpatch's gamer face it's, is out. It's been a while since I've looked down it's there out. and Catpatch is just grinding right now. I mean, I would be frightened if that was that monitor looking back into his eyes. He is in gamer mode, he's in focus mode, he's totally locked in right now as MBL tries to just catch up in this game. The castle, it took so long to go up, and now it's Catpatch's turn to make a castle, and MBL, there's no way he's going to be able to and, deny And this. like, that castle should completely end the game. He protects his economy, he's now safely on his way to the Imperial Age, MBL has five on food. Mm -hmm. And actually, I think that's the fishing ships. I'm not even kidding. He sent more back to food, I guess, because he had vills inside of his TC, but that was just the fishing ships. I mean, Berber fishing ships are faster. That's true. So slightly more efficient. we think of all the time as the camel archers come in. They're going to find the pikemen, but at this point, he's going to have to kill 40 villagers, 50 villagers. Yeah, it's just too much. Yeah. And, and Catwatch can, honestly, he could pick one unit. Ooh. It doesn't even have to be a good unit, and he could win the game from here. <laughs> I was he... hoping for another demo moment into oh, okay. the castle. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we both need to make the sound effect to, to give it power. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think those demos will have any power. The Camel Archers, that's a good pick, finding those villagers. But like I said, he's got to kill a lot, and he somehow has to have a competitive Imperial Age time, which I just don't think is possible at this point. No, I mean, I'd say Halb Knight is completely fine for Catwatch. And we have seen this situation before with the Camel Archers. When they get to above 10, it becomes a problem, but mm -hmm. not when someone's 60 seconds away from big upgrades. Yeah, Look at Cap how Arch many camels just... he has in there, too. He really. I mean, he doesn't even need things. to kill the Camel Archers. Just push him away. Yeah. He knows he's ahead in Eco. And then once he's in Imperial Age, he can clear that castle with some treads, take control of that gold again, the, all the wood lines over there and everything like that, and he should be fine. Remember in the previous game, MBL had may maybe not a lead similar to this, but he did have a lead, and then Capwatch just kept fighting and, and stayed in that game until post Imperial Age. As we see the demo waiting. Mapu is already like, <laughs> Mapu is locked in on the same emotional level as us. <laughs> like he didn't even look at any of the other stuff. <laughs> oh, and here comes the demo, and Capwatch sees it. And Capwatch just, eh, let's take a fight over here, please. He's still, I mean, he's taking fights against camels and camel archers. And now he hits the Imperial Age. Yep. MBL should fight here. I'm sure he realizes that this is probably lost. Poor Pikeman has to die like that. As the Camel That's Archers. actually not bad. <laughs> the Camel Archers. I, he was building those up for a while, I guess. You should just <laughs> stop there. Just don't even patrol. Just stop like that. And just don't move. Yeah. So he doesn't notice oh, it. Oh, Castle over there. And that is so many villagers that need to run away. That's like half of the food eco for Catwatch. But like I was saying before, it's just simply not going to be enough as MBL will try and continue Castle Age unit production. Catwatch is going to be an Imperial Age. Yeah, and, and Cavalier yeah. can't be stopped, even nope. with Camels. And if you make enough camels that can stop Cavalier, you never go imp. And if you never go imp, you die. That's like all of MBL's gold resources at the back there being raided by the knights. MBL's running away. Even Berber villagers aren't going to be fast enough to escape that as MBL attempts to counter this. But I think he's going to start to realize that it's 
likely over. And a lot of things are going to go through his head. Mm. I lost to this guy in the past. I, I placed a dumb castle. I should have just gone safe. A lot of things will happen. Obviously, they're going to have to regroup. Yep. But Capoch responds, and what a great castle. I, I, I think, like, the castle wasn't even that bad. I think it was just the fact that at the same time he was coming forward with the castle, he lost the camels in the back of Capoch's base. There's no distraction there, so Capoch can send everything over to deal with that. Yep. And, like, his reinforcements weren't there yet. Yeah, and so, I, I and, and it. it's, like, way over on the right side. Why didn't he just make it a little bit for, further forward or on that secondary gold at the front, right? I think it would have been easier for him to take that, that front area where the yeah. house wall was. Yeah. Um, but you remember, like, we talked about it just before he sent the villagers forward. Normally in those moments, the 3TC boomer is not able to get that much army out. And mm -hmm. so Capwatch said, you know what I can do? I can convert your army. Exactly. And that monastery was out there perfectly. At 22 conversions in that game, by the way, and the yeah. crucial ones delayed the castle. Yeah. And I mean, it's it was just it was kind of strange from MBL because it felt like he didn't send enough villagers forward. He didn't put the castle in the right spot. Maybe he went for it a little bit too late and he threw away his army. Yeah. They could have protected it. I like the idea of it. The execution maybe wasn't there, but Capwatch, I mean, Capwatch forced him into that because he was up so fast, he took basically uh, traded off fights against MBL early, and then he was up so quickly with the Khmer, with his impressive macro, that MBL needed to do something ridiculous. There's yeah. there's a lot of things in this game that if you're gonna do, you have to commit to it. Yep. Walling, if you start to, to wall and you have a, a two tile gap, guess what? It was all useless. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Castle Drop. You've gotta commit more villagers to that. You've gotta make sure you get it up. And Capwatch getting up for a little walk arounds here. MBL. Assessing the situation and says, okay, well, I get a break. Okay, I'll step away for a minute or two as well. I mean, this is just a massive game for these two. The loser goes home, the winner stays alive to move on to the quarterfinals. Yep. And both of them want to take their time. I think they're players that need to kind of reset. Actually, maybe MBL isn't, but uh, maybe in this circumstance for once. Yep. He What's wants up to with take this? a breath. This is like fresh air. Okay, that looks a little better. Thank God they. I noticed that. What, there's something wrong with your face? There's a lot wrong with my face, but it was the headset. Oh, okay. Oh, and now the micro... Thank you, yeah. production, for it's letting like, me... Okay. It's like he's never been here before. I mean, you know, it's my second time. Yeah. Sorry, so... So we're waiting for Capwatch and MBL to get back there. We still have another set after this, another best of three. And <laughs> who who is playing after this? Is it... Uh, it should be Yo ACCM. Yo ACCM after this. Oh, my goodness. I mean, we have more Age of Empires to go. It's getting late here, but I'm definitely excited for that. And I'm excited for the third game in this series. It's going to be Arabia. I think MBL has... Well, I know what Capwatch has. He has Franks and he has Tatars left over. MBL with Chinese and... Dravidians. Dravidians. And, okay. and like, we talked about it prior to... Both of these feel a little awkward to me. Dravidians, yeah. you have the good start, but then the mid game, they have no knights, and a lot of times people are dying with Dravidians. And then Chinese, you just straight up can't go scouts. And I don't know, I truthfully don't know what the fletching timing is on Archer plays. Mm -hmm. And I think MBL, like he did say, I'm kind of just like winging it. Uh, and he's obviously winged it quite well to get here. Does he know? Because the instinct is to keep the Vil production rolling. Yeah. You have zero food at the start. Yeah. It's tough. Well, it's definitely going to be tough for MBL. It's going to be tough for Capwatch. I think MBL will likely pick Chinese here. I would guess and so as well. And then go for a more Wally approach. Um, just try and get his eco advantage. I mean, starting with three villagers is probably pretty good. Also, cheaper researches, as long as you can keep yourself safe. That's yep. the only if, right? Well, I think this is where it gets interesting because I would MBL is going to wall like a madman, most likely if he feels he's going to have any issues with military. He's, he's joining the lobby on Capwatch's <laughs> computer. He's like, come on, man, get in the lobby. That was... Capwatch is laughing. He's like, bro. Man, MBL's ready to go. Except my he's friend like, invite. I think he's like, what? He's Except... like, you couldn't have waited five seconds. Except my friend invite, dude. <laughs> That's the most MBL thing. Oh my god. I've never seen. I was. <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> well, I mean, they, they are very much locked in at the moment. Yeah. Uh, MBL clearly ready to go. But no, I, if I'm Capwatch, I go Franks, dude. I go Franks, 
You, you don't have to worry about early fletching on archers. You know yeah. your opponent can't go scouts. Yeah, yeah. And try and get in those walls. Yeah. I, I, that's me. I am not Catpotch. Catpotch is an incredible player with in, in, insane tenacity and probably a different outlook on strategy. You know, we could also see, we were talking about Chinese, we could also see Dravidians with some form of pike siege push That's from true. MBL. Yeah, Incredibly strong, getting the extra wood. I mean, you open archers or something like that, yep. and then you take map control. You get that forward position, cheaper upgrades for your infantry, into siege with that extra wood. I mean, MBL, it would suit his style. Yeah, I mean, when I think about the two sieves, Dravidians feels like they have to kill fast. Chinese better as the game goes on. When I think MBL, I think slightly better as the game goes on. So it's a very big decision to make. And it is going to be Franks mm -hmm. for the Argentinian. Okay. That was expected. I mean, Franks are just such a solid sieve, right? Yep. You have to go with them. It's it's a very easy sieve to play. And I don't think the Although he did pick Tatars first. Yeah, true. He did. Which is kind of weird. Yeah, I mean, maybe just denying it from MBL, it but MBL. Part of that. Is he really a Tatars kind of guy? He doesn't feel yeah, like it. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, hopefully that's not, you know, something he'll look back to and question. Yeah. I don't think having Franks for game three, though, is ever a draft failure. No, <laughs> you no. Know? I mean, Franks are just solid all the way around as MBL thinks about what sieve he's going to select, and we should be notified shortly. He's ready to go. Yeah. He's ready to go. He's, he's probably thinking, hopefully he's not, but he probably is thinking about that set he had it's against Capoch, and it is Chinese. That's the first time, and maybe the only time we're going to see this two canoe here. This thing, it, that's actually one of my favorites, That's I think. awesome. That's amazing. But, you know, as you admire the two canoe, remember, yeah. typically you rush eco upgrades at the start of uh, these games. Can't do that with Chinese because of no food. Typically you're going scouts, can't do that. Mm -hmm. Fletching should be delayed, even though it's cheaper. Does he have a build order down, or is he just going to be sitting there like, I can't push out and I can't make anything? Yeah. No one else has picked Chinese yet. No dude. one else has picked no Chinese. One. Not since the uh, the new patches, right? Yeah, it's true. And MBL, as you can see there, we're getting into game number three, our deciding game. MBL, look at the food in the bank. It's, it's simply not... Really there for him. Capoch is already starting with the military production. He's got the archer coming out. He's got the spearman coming out. MBL with one spearman so far, and he's already starting the wall. Personally, not the biggest fan of the archer opening. We will, of course, have to see how it goes. Uh, it should be possible for Fletching to be at a better timing, but a Capoch goes for the archer opening with the Franks that are known for stables. And MBL trying for the big think, wall on the backside. I think MBL's got to be really active with his scout forward. He's got to delay those archers as long as possible, yep. uh, denying his walls. He's actually sending the scout back because he saw the scout from Capwatch. Those are really big hits. Like, normally that wouldn't be massive, but with Chinese where you just have to buy yourself a few minutes, getting yep. any damage against the early um, military from Capwatch is going to be extremely valuable. MBL has his wood upgrade now. Yep. He has army now. However, he's going to be on one ranged unit. Capwatch is going to be on three. He's trying to get himself to that stage where that extra vil start is going to pay off for him. And truthfully, He's already walled He's at the front. He's already doing a really and, good job. And those two spearman hits, like <gasps> I said, it was huge. Oh, no, there's a there's a hole there. Oh, no, he's got a scout nearby. He's got an oh. archer there, and he sees the archers coming in. I oh. think he's going to realize. Yeah, he realizes. At least he's aware. Oh, man. Yeah, at least he's aware is right. And he, he, the villagers are actually getting some decent hits yeah. in here. And Capwatch didn't. Capwatch goes for the vill. MBL will take that. Yeah. MBL will be very happy. That he started he with three extra vills. Space. If yeah. he loses one, he's still two vills ahead. It's like, that's hilarious. Yeah. So funny. All right. Well, now you start to, you know, regret possibly the ranged opening, but Frank still have an incredible economy. Mm -hmm. And Capwatch, I mean, behind this is walling too, yeah. right? So Capwatch is buying himself some time with that forward pressure. Obviously, he doesn't need to get horse collars, so he can just start adding farms right away, which is, makes the Frank transition so easy yeah it does to make and as mbl comes forward now it's his turn to be the aggressor capwatch already has units there to defend and even managed to save some of those units he in initially sent forward so capwatch is eco looking quite strong look at that food count right now 530 impressive stuff from capwatch yeah and he also falls back in defense as gold uh the only area that really seems open at the moment mm -hmm. and also his hunt so let's talk long term in terms of the sieve so franks it's typically just knights and then they can switch into infantry later. Chinese can kind of do everything. They can go knights, they can go camels, they can go crossbowmen, they yep. can go infantry. But I think, the more I think about it, 
If Capwatch continues to make crossbows and combines it with knights, it would make any camel play from MBL a little awkward. Yeah. So maybe that's what he's thinking here. And I think MBL, as we see, is adding that second range. Capwatch didn't patrol. He's not paying attention. He loses a unit right away. I think he's going to lose another archer here, although great job escaping with what he did as he was in a terrible position still. By all, by all rights, he should have been able to win that fight with superior military numbers, just caught off guard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm surprised he got away with what he did. Mm -hmm. um, MBL adding the second range at home, so he's not going to go for the stable, at least just yet. And there's the stable from Capwatch, but Capwatch is already on the way up. Holy. Yeah, like I said, Capwatch, uh, just really impressive build there with the Franks, taking full advantage. MBL still a little bit away from clicking up he maybe needs to idle a little bit his tc or just maybe garrison his farm villagers but he should be up to castle Age shortly he will have the military advantage as he's going into what looks to be crossbows and capwatch is now adding that yep. second stable this is such an interesting moment um for those of you that just saw that scout run across the screen that was like the third time capwatch has sent the scout across the middle just to see what's coming and i think he will be able to pick up on the fact that his opponent's too ranged now because he saw two archers kind of in a different area of the map running to the middle. Uh, he's not going to go range units though, Dave. He's just going to give, not, not give up on it, but he's not going to upgrade any of these yeah. things. Which means that now the Chinese, as we were saying, can think about adding a stable of their own, maybe yep. going some and camels. You called it. Yep. And uh, there's the stable for MBL. He's going to have a decent amount of archers here as he's on the way to ca Castle Age. He's going to be a minute and a half behind to Castle Age. Um, further than Kapach, but he does have full walls, and the full walls, even though they're only Palisade walls, will protect him for that minute and a half against the Knights. Is he going to go siege forward? He just snuck a vill out. Nah, he might be thinking about it. MBL is kind of pulling back. Is MBL going to... Yeah, he's splitting his skirmishers off, Tristan. He's, he's, looking, looking. he's looking for it, because he realizes the skirmishers have, like, zero value at the moment. Yeah, that's so smart. I think, you know, it might be wise to maybe hide the archers just in case. He sends them forward to scout, though. So he sees the second TC, valuable piece of information. He sees that knight heading that way, another valuable piece of information, but he does not notice the villager. Capwatch is, is trying to do everything. <laughs> He's going to go two stable knights, three town centers, and whatever that villager is going to build. Yep. So I, I'm going to say the same thing that I said in the previous game. Normally, it's not possible to keep the stables and the TCs running and then whatever else, but MBL might find it, actually. Look at that. Look at that villager again. Yeah. Oh, he does. oh, that's so, that's, that's so interesting. That, that's so nice from MBL to spread out those uh, less valuable units, the skirmishers, to scout. Now he's going for a monastery in the middle. And this is like last game where you were saying 3TC boom, can't really produce. Capoch only has 13, 14 now on food. He's trying to produce from 3TCs at the same time. He's trying to keep this villager alive. He's trying to make knights. He can't, he can't do, do even all. two of those things at no. the same time, let alone three. I, I think in an ideal world, if you were just like a robot or something, right? So otherwise the Viper, um, you would have two TCs right now. Your night production would be there. Mm -hmm. You'd have a couple monks. Yep. And then you transition to that third TC. But I've always described Capoch as a player of commitment. Um, when he's going to full wall, those walls are down, right? Yep. Uh, whatever it may be, he just he just likes to really go for the craziness. And, and that, that monastery that for Capoch is going to help him a whole lot less than the monastery for MBL. But at least he'll get some value. Uh, via healing his knights and maybe yeah, yeah. grabbing a few relics. But still, the monastery from MBL it looks really nice at this stage. And MBL adds two TCs behind this. So he's going to have forward pressure with a siege workshop, with a monastery, with crossbows. And he's going to be producing eco uh, in the shadows in his base. So Capoch, he knows, dude. Look how much yeah. he has on stone. Yeah. <laughs> he's played MBL in enough games to know that if you give him map control, castles are going to come. And those knights could be really good. That, that's one thing Capwatch does so well, and the old players like Doubt do so well, where they're under pressure here, and then they sneak a couple knights to the side. MBL notices that right away, goes for a stone gate this time. And they're just trying to divide the attention of their enemy, right? Just trying to pick off two or three villagers here, and that'll add up over the course of the game. But MBL, like Capwatch, wasn't born yesterday. He's going to defend against that. The army count is still worrying for Capwatch, but he's got the old, trusty, reliable monks. Mm -hmm. And he's making those. If MBL dives at all, the camels could get converted. Yep. And, and there's, there's now a castle. castle, which isn't the best castle I've ever seen, but it's also not the worst. It does protect him on that side. It, it, it doesn't fail to go up. 
So <laughs> it's True. not the worst. Yeah. I mean, you're not really protecting this gold over here, but you're, yeah. you're protecting that area and the TC on the stone over there. So you can always make more castles. Castles are cheaper with the Franks as MBL now tries to push in through the side towards Capwatch. Capwatch trying to take advantage of the fact that MBL's walls are very long and hard to defend. Yeah, and, and that, on that hill, I don't think you can ever get there in House Wallet. I could be proven wrong here, but MBL is going to have knights in his base. Oh, no, Capwatch Cap is coming back. Got to keep in mind back that with his knights. Capwatch could assume that's fully House Wallet at this yeah, point. Yeah, That was an important moment. He does uh, run in with I, those knights. I, I like how he sneaks in. He's just kind of distracting. Like, he's already given up these knights for dead, but he wants to pull the camels away so his other knights can attack that gate, potentially. Okay, so Chinese on Arabia. Now, yeah, now they're coming to the gate. Yeah. It would have been so much better if he would have broken in the palisade. MBL still has a hole next to the, uh, the, house the stable there. in the house, yeah. Uh, well, how's there the we push go. going? Uh, MBL just lost a camel to the TC, I believe. Does he know about that castle yet? No, he doesn't, but I don't think I'd be too worried about anything else if I'm hitting the TC here. You'd be worried that Siege might show up. And now he's, like, annoyed. He's like, okay, I'm going to bring yep. my camels home. And good... Good idea to house wall behind that gate. I mean, Capwatch, you could see the thought process, right? He was going to go in with the knights, and he was going to sneak in with the five knights behind that. Yep. But MBL gets the houses down behind, and MBL is still pressuring for it. And this is a situation MBL wants to be in with Maginal Wars. And this is, like, this is what we've been saying all weekend. It's like, if you're playing oh, MBL... Oh, 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 Here come the knights. Sorry, Dave. This, this could swing so many different ways. Big shots all around. I think, though, MBL still gets the I think he's fine. Better. I think he's fine, but he's going to lose both Mangonels. I, I actually don't think that's fine for him. No. No, he, it was a really tough call, but Capwatch sits back with 83 villagers. He won't lose his town center. My question is, where wow. were those camels before? Because they were tracking the knights at, at MBL's chasing. base, and Capwatch sent them back, and the camels yeah, didn't immediately true. follow. That's true. That You would think they'd be right behind Those knights that. came out from, from nowhere, and I was about to say, like, don't make your win condition getting into an, a Mangonel war with MBL, and yeah. Capwatch used the Knights. Wow. He didn't want to go Mangonel v Mangonel, now he's going for another castle there, and he's going to secure the gold. So really impressive stuff from Capwatch to bring those Knights back, and MBL a little bit slow with the Camel reinforcement. Yeah, there's a bunch of, like, 900 ELO, 1,000 ELO players getting PTSD right now because of all the castles starting to go up. It is so difficult to stop this civilization. Even if you have the Camels and the Arbalest and the Halps and the cheap techs like Chinese, how are you going to raid somebody when they can protect everything with castles like that? Also, MBL only feudal age uh, eco upgrades with the Chinese. It's a sieve that you really want to try and get your eco upgrades oh. with. And Capwatch tries to go for another Lady castle move. there. Oh, God. Oh, and the Manganel is oh, blocking God. it now. And Capwatch is like, I'll just do it again somewhere else. Uh. There's, there's more villagers blocking this time. MBL trying to snipe that Manganel from Capwatch. He gets oh, it and he manages to save it. This is huge. The crossbows and the siege could deny the castle, but MBL just doesn't quite believe he can do it. Yep. Capwatch has commitment. Look at that. 20 some bills. Yep. And he pulls away, knowing pulls the shot away. would go there as well. If there was two Mangonels, maybe this castle gets denied with one Mangonel. I, I don't see it happening. And now Capwatch is going to take out that Mangonel. And MBL with this castle up is going to be in a rough position where he has all these crossbows, but he has nothing to do with them. Oh, As man. he runs away, and if he doesn't see that castle on the left-hand side, he might actually run his Mangonel into that, because I don't know if he has vision on that yet. Neither of oh, them. This yeah, is he's going to be... waste another Mangonel, and he might even lose some crossbows here. This is amazing for Capwatch. Yep, there we go. This is huge. He, he can't be hit at all. MBL only has 17 farms, because, of course, he was focusing on all the fighting. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure MBL's farm count's going to go up, but you can't compete with a 4TC boom off 30 farms right now if you're MBL. And you also can't do any damage to it. This is crazy. So what are you thinking right now if you're MBL? I mean, he's making another Mangonel there. I don't know what he can push exactly. Yeah. He still has kind of map control in the middle and he's still safe at home, but he's down 14 villagers right now. Granted, he does have handcart, which Capwatch doesn't have. That's kind true. of mitigated by the fact that Capwatch has both the uh, Castle Age Eco upgrades. Yeah, I mean, here's what I think. I think you hold that middle hill, you never leave it. Mm -hmm. Your castle goes up there in a second. You sell wood and buy food and go imp. Yep. That's what you have to do. Because if you try and turn this into a normal game, you will be out boomed. But if you can get to the trebuchets with your camels and with whatever army you accompany that with, you've yep. got a chance. Yep. But the market's huge. Like, if he doesn't have a market already, 
He's going to need it. And yeah, there's, and there's the, market. the market right there. So we got the university going up. We also have the market going up. MEL can buy some food. It looks like Capwatch is buying wood currently. He's thinking about Imperial Age as well, but I think MBO will have the advantage as we see him buy food and Capwatch now buying oh, food. Man. They're thinking about exactly the same thing. Capwatch will have three castles to produce trebs from. Yeah. So there's... And, oh, that's going to be a good raid if he manages to get in, but I think it's housewalled, right? So you've got the castles, right? And he could have four soon, which is obnoxious. Maybe five and six. Um, but also, knights do a lot better job diving to hit trebs than camels do. And crossbows do. So MBL, he's going to have to pull his camels away now. Great job from MBL to make sure he hasn't overchopped that. Another castle there on two neutral goals. <laughs> like, that's MBL's got to finish location. this yeah. fast, man. Yeah, Capwatch is locking it down. I I just, I'm so in love with how crazy Capwatch is in tournaments. Mm -hmm. uh, he beat Dell earlier. He's in a position to beat MBL, even though the population has it at 134 apiece. This is a close one. This is a close one for sure, because MBL still has that crossbow mass, right? And we're looking at the army from Capwatch, and we're thinking he's going to be an Imperial Age. He's going to win the Treb War. But can he push past that Treb War, right? Yep, yep it's true. MBL is is still going to have the camels. He's still going to have the crossbows. He doesn't have the map control now with that castle up, the fourth wow. castle of the game for He's Capo. still got 700 stone. He has had 23 villagers on stone. Yeah. And that can't even be his main and secondary. I bet you there's a neutral stone he's taking. He's all over the map with stone. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Right there. Huh. And MBL is buying stone now. He's thinking about a castle of his own. Maybe he wants to contest... Uh, that one on the right as well. Now, where is he going here? He's coming forward for another one. <gasps> okay, saved. He needs to build that faster. I mean, he's only 22 seconds away from Imp, and it looks like he's sending more villagers there. He needs Trebs out right away. I don't mind that castle because you can set up on that hill and Treb yep. there maybe, but it's awfully exposed. But uh, anyone who's thinking uh, tech switches, late game things for the Chinese, that's just not going to happen. When you're behind in relics, neutral gold control, and then also pretty exposed to raids, it looks like you have to push up the middle here. MBL will likely be fine. Yep. He's going to kill these knights. He'll be happy to do that and finish his castle, but it's got to be all in on trebs and camels right now. Okay, castle will go up. MBL is already in Imperial Age. He's got one treb in the queue. He doesn't have gold for the other treb, and there you go. He's now selling stone for gold. Look at the castle from Capwatch. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That is actually so good. Yeah, it is really good. Taking full advantage of the cheap Frank castles. The only thing that's bad is if he can't repair his castle, mm -hmm. um, and he starts to lose all that ground, and that can get out of hand really quick, but... MBL is going into more stables, so more camels while he has gold. Yeah. And he's going to discover Ooh. this castle here. Ooh, okay. They can't, does he have enough camels to pull over there? Does he notice this? Well, that Capwatch wants him to go over there. That's what's yeah. tricky. He cannot leave. He almost has to let that castle go up if he knows about it. Yeah, I don't think he knows about it yet. He would have pulled villagers away from that wood line. He does Ooh. have the hill advantage Ooh. against this, and Capwatch is coming in with those knights, and that castle... Against the trebuchet from MBL, downhill is not going to survive for very long. I mean, he's got three trebs attacking, and Capwatch yeah. only repairing with, what, seven villagers there? Capwatch, do you maybe want to save some stone for your base, bro? Look at this. Look at this. Second castle. He wants to break into MBL's eco, and he wants to make sure camels can never defend from that. Yep. That's Another crazy. treb out from MBL. He's got four trebs now. Capwatch also with four, but he's shooting uphill, and he can't really engage here with the Cavalier. MBL wants him to come in there with the Cavalier. Capwatch wants MBL to react to those castles in the north with this the camels. Is, this is a disgusting game, and I mean that posititively, because MBL still staying put, and he can win this fight. He's going to have he's still heavy repairing camels. The castle. He's still repairing the castle. He's somehow keeping it alive, but he has to buy stone to do so. He's now targeting the trebs from Capwatch. He's just hoping he can take these trebs out before the castle goes down. But the castle is down now, and Capwatch has completed the castle in the north. He's Ooh. even raiding with a random <laughs> throwing, throwing axeman. <laughs> and uh, MBL has managed to take out two of those trebs, and MBL is pushing down this hill. MBL controls the center of the map. Capwatch controls literally everything yeah, else. Yeah, but, but he's going he's gonna to take all the sides, and he's going to lose his heart, right? Like, this is horrible. He also has not made any tech switch to Halb or anything that counters Heavy Camel. What Capwatch needs to do is he needs to, like, get more units yeah. into MBL's farming eco. Yeah. But 
I don't think needs to ignore it. He can't. NBL cannot go after any of that. Kapoch can't allocate any attention to that right now, though. Yeah, true. He needs to be controlling his army. He needs to be thinking about how he stops this wave of military. 60 military from NBL pushing him with trebuchet behind. He's got even more trebs in the queue. Uh, and the thing is, you've got 12 crossbows with ballistics, with bodkin. That's going to do a moderately good job at dealing with any early help numbers. MBL's base is still wide open. We're going to have Cavalier running in. This is going to get crazy, but again, MBL's got to push the middle, only the middle. This game is nuts. It's nuts. Also, how many houses did Capwatch make this game? Because this could get really awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Usually it's MBL with that. <laughs> I'm Bro. just saying, if you had eight castles, you might not have made that many houses. Oh, throwing Axeman raid. See, that's what he needs to do. This is what he needs to do, and I think so MBL's going to struggle against us. Look at him pull all those away. He does have hand so they're going to be quite quick. But MBL is just like base trade. Let's go. <laughs> and he's go. making a TC in the middle and he's of the map. Taking Capwatch's gold right now. Look, two TCs. He's like, screw my base. I, I need to stay here next to my army because nowhere else is safe. Oh no! Grow the castles. Okay, no! he noticed, but no ballistics. He noticed no ballistics. This is insane. This is the best game so far of this event. There's no doubt. And it's a game number three. It's a deciding yeah. game. Which thousands one goes home? Which one goes through? This game alone is worth thousands. As we said, what? the camels are raiding. The axemen are raiding. <laughs> a unit we thought we'd never see. As NBL, though, both players struggle to keep their farms alive. NBL's got to... Okay, I was going to say, he's got to get his camels back. He still has them protecting the trebs, but you do not want to take small groups at this point. Yeah. Catwatch can do that. You need your main army to be together the whole time. Catwatch has 15 helps. He's got 42 cavalier. He still has the little slight lead in this game, I think. MBL is adding another TC downtown in the middle. Okay, that's one of that's one of the two TCs we saw as he continues to push with Trebs. He's now farming where there used to be a blue and, castle. And you know, like Capoch actually doesn't have new TCs. He's yep. got castles. He's got like one TC on the side. Yep. Wow, what a ridiculous game right now. This is unbelievable. And MBL is buying food and selling wood at this stage of the game as he retreats with the Trebs. Capoch really wants to take care of those Trebs, but look at how many camels. 59 camels on the field as Capoch mixes in the helps, and MBL still has those crossbows around. He's, he does. He's, he's kept those around, and they're going to be very valuable here. He's even getting Bracer. That's a lot of helps, though. So I think the patience from MBL is is spot on. Is it, Are they just going to have a straight-up Treb war over nothing? Uh, why not at this point? <laughs> For nothing in the middle? Well for nothing, but like for everything at the yep. same time. Uh, this is an amazing engagement. MBL's trebuchets are on the hill. I'm not sure if Capwatch gets any hill bonus on this, but we have the massive engagement, Dave. And, yeah, I, and honestly, there's so many halbs. There's so many halbs there. I, there's I so many camels. It. There's so many halbs, but MBL has the hill. He kept those crossbows alive for so long. They weren't getting much value against the Cavalier. They're getting value against the halbs, and now the heavy camels are being pulled back. Capwatch is throwing everything he has at this position from MBL, but MBL is somehow surviving. Capwatch with more halbs on the way. Numbers are dwindling for both. I can't tell what's happening. I mean, there's a better queue right now now for Capwatch, but MBL has the better units, I think. And those crossbows, those so lovely, much value. lovely so crossbows much value. have brought so much value here. He did get Bracer for that, Dave. He also has gold income. He has food. They have everything. Can we just get a quick look back at MBL's starting eco? That's what I expected. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, we can go back to the Everything but a home. <laughs> <laughs> we can go back to what is his new eco now, which is soon going to be Capwatch's base. Dave, they went from 200 pop to 130 both. It's ridiculous. And now they're both in recovery mode. Yeah, they They're are. both in recovery mode, and, and primary recovery mode for MBL should be the farms. Capot should be recovering his military here as he stretches out for some more gold. On the edges, MBL is running out of gold. I think MBL just really needs to get his farm set up all clear at the back there, and maybe even think, ah, do you pull those tribes back to deal with those castles? I don't think it's worth no, it. No, I, I actually, it sounds stupid, but I actually think Take, taking any side control right now <gasps> is good for Catbutch. Yeah, but, NBL is not protecting again, those trebs. Okay, Camel's coming over, and okay. this castle is just going to absolutely well, be eviscerated. How sick is this, though? He, he gets the timing right, and look at the main battle. He's there and ready. Yep. Like, he's always going to be there, 
and he's waiting for his moment. Also, what he doesn't have is food. Yeah. All he needs is wood and gold for crossbows because Capuch has 33 helps and five Cavalier. MBL's got the lead right now. Yeah, Capuch is trying to snipe those tribes. Capuch has kept his farm count going though. Yeah. Like, and he's, he's producing more villagers. 60. I mean, he's he's up to 112 villagers. MBL's at 82. So yeah. Capuch's eco is carrying him through here. MBL's army is carrying him. And this is just a classic matchup here as Capuch has all the farm set up behind. That is the bread basket Look at of his eco. efforts. <laughs> yeah, what? MBL's eco is just. I, <laughs> oh, I love it. He's so taking much. into like cabin he's getting more farms and if, if we know something oh it's this goes to a trash war yeah capo just got to be worried 85 is... farms yep but like what does he make with food i guess that's the issue this is why you wanted the chinese you wanted the chinese because of their never ending yep. options and there go the camels into the eco i don't think there's a hole there but nbl with those crossbows so much value on those crossbows at 55 kills tristan yeah and those are like 55 crucial help kills, yep. which set up the camels to crucially kill the Cavalier. Relics are now on Garrison for Capoch, so he's not even getting that passive income there. Worker efficiency is higher for MBL, but Capoch does have more villagers. As Capoch is now trying to catch those trebs, he can. I think MBL is just going to retreat to the castle. He could retreat to the TC as well, and Capoch might lose those units. I think this is swinging in favor of MBL, but it's still so tough to call. MBL has Arbalest now. If he has Arbalest, yeah. he, he almost cannot be stopped if the Trebs are with the push. There is just simply not enough Cavalier for Capodge, and that farming eco is all behind this. It's not in the corners. It's all right behind this town center that MBL is approaching. What an insane swing. Yeah, just, I mean, insane. and one of those castles in the north has been cleared. Can we have, uh, can we make this a best of 11 right now? Because these two, they always have one game that we'll remember forever. They're just crazy, like. man. Yeah. Both of these guys are, are so incredibly talented. And then you add to that the determination, right? Like, Capoch is not giving up here. He has the population. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right I know. Now. And like, he's got to make more houses now. Because <laughs> oh. he lost all the castles. Oh, I man. mean, he's got 58. Halberdiers, he's still producing villagers. 14 in the queue, goes for more stables. Still has four, 57 <laughs> farms somehow, and is taking back the gold again. Oh, man. Again, such great patience from MBL, though, because there's been opportunities to spread out here. Yep. And if he does that, I think it, it gives him advantage this is a, to uh, I think Capwatch has been saving up for Blast Furnace, and this is a Blast Furnace denial on that Blacksmith, because it oh, takes yep. a very long time to come in. Well... How fast does the light cap kill a blacksmith <laughs> is the question, I suppose. Still really curious what's going on back at MBL starting. Eco and the Trebs He's are here. He's taking it out. He's taking it out. Oh, he timed that and perfectly, he has the orbs didn't there he? Too. He timed wow. that perfectly, didn't he? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like this isn't even Capwatch making mistakes. This is just this is just MBL forcing his hand. They both played this so well. It's like it's incredible. Capay Capwatch has played this good enough to have won this game 15 minutes ago against right? many other opponents. Against many other yeah. opponents. Yeah. 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 Exactly. He, he is. What I've seen from Capwatch and like you said before, in tournaments he just shows up and he's unbelievable. MBL though, once you get him in the flow in the rhythm, he is damn near unstoppable. I feel like you know the emotions of the set. They might still be there, but this is just like, you don't have time to think about anything. Yeah. You're doing a lot of doing, not thinking, as you said, Dave, but like, how many Messi Arabia games have we seen MBL play yeah. where he has TCs in the middle and things like that? I've never seen one quite like this. Though. And we've seen thousands of games from the guy, so. Yeah, Blast Burnus was denied, by the way. Oh, Capwatch spent a lot of time saving up for that, too. I think. <laughs> <laughs> that is just unfortunate. But now these farms are being denied. Capwatch is struggling to find space. He's spreading his wings. He's still spreading out over the map. He's going for some counter raids with the Cavalier. Capwatch will not give up. That is and something is we so know good. about his character. This is so good. MBL's using that TC solely to send villagers back to farms. Yep. The Cavalier are waiting, but the Arbalest, Dave. I, I just don't know how you kill the so Arbs. So much value. 81 kills now on those. And he saved those crossbows when a lot of players, I think, would have just thrown them away against the Cavalier, assuming they wouldn't have much value. The KD is insane. The population is still 160 the eco for both KD. of them. <laughs> what a one to one fifteen! I mean, oh the castle God. count will be 44 insane. Forty-four minutes into the game, I, it's like when MBL kills things, Capoch kills things. Yeah, and it is just they're just forever existing Back within the forth. same ten population. Yep, it's like they've set some type of a rule. It's just that arbalist mass. As long as MBL keeps some of those camels alive, he can just keep pushing with the arbalist yep. mass. 
He can think about, I think he's thinking about snagging those relics. And look at the, the farms <laughs> in the middle of the map. Cowpunch's farms are all Get nicely the placed. Go. No! So close. Why did you throw it the opposite way? Yeah, I think what a dumb monk. Yeah. Well, listen, I think MBL just sent something. That's the first time he's seen more than 10 Cavalier. And so he correctly is, is assessed the situation. Mm -hmm. He's going to fall back and he's going to try and stabilize. I think what you do if you're Cap Watch is you have to, <laughs> as stupid as this sounds, pull Cavalier to the left, pull Cavalier to the right, and try and raid, yeah. forcing a reaction from MBL. Because yeah. if you just wait, it could become a problem here. I wonder how many Trebs MBL has left. I think he's maybe heading for that final castle from Capwatch over on the left side. No, they're still, they're, okay, they're, they're clearing yeah. up the stables there. There's one more castle from Capwatch, kind of locking down that left side as MBL and him are duking it out over that gold. What like a helpless feeling you have if you're Oh, Cap it's Watch, a big though. fight coming up here, no. Nah, Capwatch he... was protecting his monk to get the it's relic such back. such a rough, it's such a rough situation to be in as Franks. MBL kills the villager up there. That's really, really nice from him. He also snagged both those rel uh, one of those one relics. One of those I relics. Think, really Capwatch quick. pushed forward with the the army oh, so the he other could one. get yep. the other. Yep. Why not make the monastery a little bit further back? <laughs> well, this well, time, the thing because if he loses that position, yeah, he's I guess dead, it's right? done. Yeah, he needs the gold right away. And MBL maybe should have thought about. I guess he just wanted I, to get the relic into safe hands, but yeah. maybe should have thought about. I mean, as it's well. now at a point where MBL is raiding with light cav, yeah. so he has the ability to raid. So he doesn't have to preserve his units quite as much. And Capwatch has not been able to expand much. Do you think, just three light cap in the back. Do you think he thinks he has Blast Furnace? I, dude, that's the last thing on his mind <laughs> right now. He's like, I make units, I fight with units, I hope the fight works. Oh, okay. That's a lot of dead helps. And the Arbalists keep racking up the kills. We got 94 kills on those Arbalists. Capwatch is adding another TC, though. And he's still raiding what? in <laughs> MBL's base. I mean, he's so good, but he's losing. MBL just got the second gold mining upgrade because he knows he probably won't be on that gold for very long. Yeah, he's long. like, I gotta get and this. And he's while like, I, I can. gotta get this in. Yeah, I just gotta steal this. Capwatch making TC as Mem would say on the edge on of the, the edge map. Of the map. <laughs> that's the safest town center he has, though. That's that's legitimately great. The, everything about this game has been beautiful. I hope that people watching feel special, especially those that have been here live. We will be looking back on this one when we're old and gray. But I don't think Capwatch has a chance anymore. To come up with a game like this, in this stage, at this moment, this late at night, and Capwatch says GG well played, and MBL with a fist bump, and MBL is through. Capwatch unfortunately is out after he took out Doubt earlier today. Capwatch, what a warrior. MBL making it through in one of the, the probably the best game of the tournament for me no so doubt. far. No doubt. I mean, good luck everybody else who's going to play because you're you're just not going to be able to beat that. Yeah. Holy crap! And I'm sure there was a mutual respect there as they are both are talking to each other. We'll get MBL in an interview eventually. Yeah. But I mean, what is it up with MBL with these close sets in these crucial moments? He moves on to the quarterfinal. No one will want to face that guy. What's up with these two facing against each other? It needs to happen more. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it needs does. to happen more. It does. Oh, my goodness. Incredible. Uh, shakes. Yeah, my hands shakes. coming in a little bit. Uh, shakes for him, too. I mean, MBL has got to be so happy with that. Capwatch obviously disappointed, but I think he can be happy with his performance. And yeah. he has another yeah. game to focus on, too. That's how much of a gamer he is. He almost made it through, and he's got another different game that he's competing in this week. Yeah, I think Age of Empires yeah. 4 in a few days. MBL has given nightmares to everyone he's played against. Yeah. Uh, but man, has it been fun to watch. I'm so glad I got to play a part in that one, Dave. Yeah. Um, can't wait to hear his his thoughts on the Chinese pick, a pick that no one else went for. You know, some of the struggles he maybe had in that game. And but the Northern Isles win, too. How can you hear about that as well? True. But like, think about this j just for a moment. Capwatch had eight castles, I believe. Mm -hmm. He resigned right before he lost his final castle. Yep. Every single castle went down. MBL started with the middle. And I think we have the interview with MBL lined up. We're gonna toss you over to Riley now. I'm here once again with a very emotional MBL. My goodness me, mate. The energy that you brought to that game, the tenacity you showed. I mean, I wanna take viewers back to how you were feeling before that. We had a chat about it. You said you were feeling nervous. Yep. What a performance you put on. Talk us through how you're feeling at the moment. Uh, I'm feeling great. I mean, that was such a tougher series than I thought. Uh, he put on a real good performance. Uh, he played so solid overall. He, like, that's what, the thing with Capacci makes me panic a bit. You know, mm -hmm. I never expect, or I never know where I have him. 
Either Titanic or he plays so well, and today he really put or gave it all. So yeah, I mean that game, that last game was. With, I mean everyone already identifying it so far as the game of the tournament. What an incredible, an incredible performance! Yeah. Uh, I want to know, what do you do? How do you, how do you lock a game like that down when it goes on for so long? The endurance you show, the tenacity. How do you keep the energy up? Um, how, do you, how do you stay in the game? I, I don't know, I had to collect myself because there was ratings going on everywhere. He had castles on the both sides of my map. And the only control I had was the middle. There was a goal there. Um, I don't know, It's uh, it was tough to, to decide what to do. I just moved my whole economy to the middle and stayed there. <laughs> It was incredible. Yeah, man. I don't know. It's crazy. <laughs> Watching you converge on the center of the map, build those farms, nick the nick the wood lines, the gold. NBL, there's one thing we know when it comes to you, win, lose or draw, we know you're going to put on a hell of a show. Thank you for what you've given us here. It was a gift to watch you play that game and we are so excited to see you in the semifinals. NBL, congratulations on the, on the win. Thank and you. now you get some well-deserved rest. Well done, mate. Thank you. Excellent to talk to MBL. My goodness me, this bloke, I mean, you can tell he is bushed. And for good reason, Mem, he has just played his guts out in, against Kapochi in what is definitely, I mean, maybe the series, but certainly that last game, the game of the tournament so far. I mean, so far, the, the best game for sure. I mean, we have been watching the, the, the game together. He got eight castles at some point. Yeah. Eight castles. Most of them, I'm talking about Capuch, most of them, the castles are around all the TCs, around all the, all, all the map, mm -hmm. and then the TCs, why I say around the TCs, because the TC was in the middle. In the middle. In the middle, like T90, and they were pointing out with all the farmers there. I really believe that the, the big thing here is how he controlled the camels and those crossbows. Well, that's what they were saying, right? That crossbow, I mean, that poor crossbows, you know, a lot of people would have given that up for dead. Don't need these, chuck them away, get some value, whatever. But they were critical. That massive, that massive battle on the hill that could have gone either way, and those crossbows were critical in, in holding off the uh, the Franks. It's amazing how he keeps the performance because the second game wasn't the best game for for MBL. Yeah. He went sending those villages forward. Mm -hmm. He failed there with the with the villages, and then he fell behind in economy. Like you, you feel like he even said himself, "Can the Titanic at some point?" Because he didn't expect that serious. But he kept calm, and and then. I don't know how he won that last game. Yeah, I don't. I think, thought I don't think he knows that he was going to to lose it. You know, because yeah. at some point the economy with so many castles all over, Franks is very very smooth. Well, let's bring it up on the bring bring some of these moments up on the screen uh, as we go back all the way to game number one, Northern Isles. Now, two key moments you identified in this game for us, men. We can sort of uh, have a chat about that. The two things taking the center, right? But early it was pu it was uh, pushing back that monk and siege uh, yeah. landing. We want to see in a moment Donald, that he's building already the monastery. When he saw the monastery, he know that he's going to go on the siege because also they don't have knights, that civilization. Then he cleaned it pretty well with the, with the light caps. And uh, MBL was going water all the time. He has Italians, a very strong civilization. He was having pretty much the control all the time in, the, in, the, in this game, I believe. Mm -hmm. I don't think that he was... As you can see, the economy was already 20 bullets ahead and we're in 16 minutes. And this is the moment where the lights have come one in f uh, forward, the other from behind, and then he's cleaning absolutely everything. And that's a lot of investment by, by Capoche. Capoche, even like that, he managed to somehow recover and he take too long. But very soon we're going to see how he, he get the middle. And yeah. when he get the middle, it's so complicated because uh, the game, the longer the, 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 it goes, it's going to be better and better for MBL. And you can see he has a castle, second castle doing... He was trying. Capote was doing a lot of farming. At this point, 180 population and MBL 200 probably. It was so intense, the whole series. Exactly right. But that center island being held by MBL for so long, not only providing him the, the material advantage of those resources, yeah. but also the area of control around the center island. Look, you can see. This. Can I tell you, like, he was really nervous right heading into this series he he really needed to uh to to calm himself down give himself a pep talk and believe that he could do it and it's incredible that he got there let's move on to game number two now this one on frigid lake here berbers versus khmer well, uh, talk through what we're seeing here i mean uh, free lake i think berbers is very strong mm -hmm. but khmer can have probably a little advantage for the location of those shallows also it makes that the, the farms bonus we were talking we loud a little bit we saw the lambert come in the middle of the farm so it's so funny but doesn't matter with the civilization yeah it give a, a good advantage i don't know i think mbl was reading the game properly because he he noticed that his opponent was going to be ahead mm -hmm. that's why he went forward with that castle all those villages there but 
how many villages he lost at that point. And, and that was the point that you made to me when we, when we saw this play. The castle went up, right? Like, yeah. NBL managed to get the castle up, but, but he paid too high a cost for it and wasn't able to capitalise on that. And, and really, uh, Kapoche did a very good job of manoeuvring himself away from this position, uh, took the gold down here, and, uh, and this just didn't get the value that NBL was hoping for. It did, and if, even if the Berbers are, mm, camels are cheaper, you can see at this point how, how big advantage he was getting Kapoch. It, it was looking a good battle, but it was losing too much, NBL. Yeah. The castle is still not up, and we're talking about three, four minutes after all this. And the monks also were really... Yeah. the monks conversions as well, and uh, well, as you can see, it was really, really, really strong. Yeah, indeed. So uh, Kapoch dug in really deep here and did a great job of, uh, of adapting to this situation. You were talking about how NBL ne then needed to move in here right, after ranging all of these villages off the eco, getting these barracks down, you said push, right? Yeah. Drop a castle here, range them off this TC, get them off these farms, but that's not the, the route of the NBL didn't chose. We, we saw a, a town centre down here. Yeah, it didn't happen. I think he will continue the push, but we go for the game of the tournament. The right game now. of the tournament yeah, so I mean, far, for sure. There, there's a hole. He make some damage, he killed one village, but still. China civilization, he might expect the, the, the arches, but, well, uh, even like this, we know NBL. I mean, he was behind, like, 20, 30 villages at some point, mm -hmm. but he keep the army all the time. We want to see soon, already is starting to push, mm, trying to push against NBA. I mean, Mangonauts is going to be complicated, but already Kapoch one castle on the left. He was already trying to, to cover all his economy. He was ahead right now in 16 minutes, 15 villages already. I think Kapoch, I think Kapoch had the eco lead for the majority of the opening part of the game. He, he was ahead in TCs, he was ahead in villages, uh, he certainly ahead in castles. Yeah, <laughs> but, but, but NBL got better efficiency. Why? He was attacking also all the time. Well, he, so. he had the advantage in army numbers almost the entire time as well. Yeah, and look at here. We are jumping now really ahead in the game because if we make highlights for, for doing all the game, we are here <laughs> We're watch the whole game again. So many castles, but NBL never lost this army. Those camels and crossbows mm. stay alive forever. Yeah. I mean, Mapo was pointed out the amount of units those crossbows killed. They took almost 100 units, mm. the same amount of group. It, it was insane. Was having good army. I was talking with Tato. Let's give some information. And maybe here, instead of cavaliers, onegers, halberdiers, and cannons, yeah. probably was the choice here. You know, that's information from Tatito that he was thinking that that probably was better because those camels are very strong. And how you kill the crossbows? With the honors. And that's what I was going to say. The value that was ta this is this ball of crossbows we were talking yeah. about. He kept alive. They ended up to, ended up in uh, turning into arbs. And the value that was gotten off of these. Do we see here? Impressive. We see here. Yeah. Point yeah, out one hundred oh, over hundred units. Yeah. One hundred three three units. Those arbalists. In the meanwhile, while he's attacking, NBL is killing all the castles, and we can see his reaction. It was. It was incredible game. I mean, I don't think he can quite believe it. Even yet, he's probably just processing that win. But, uh, you know, we have done this with all the people who have been knocked out of the tournament so far, and I'm going to do it again for Kapoch. A great performance from him. He's given us such, such wonderful entertainment. And for a lot of the people that we've said goodbye to today, that's it for them in Red Bull yeah. Wallalo Legacy. Not so for Kapoch, because, of course, we're going to be seeing him later on in Age of Empires 4. So really excited to see what he can bring to the Kapoch table. Kapoch's performance is incredible. Yeah. I mean, he could have won today. He's... Top 12, uh, Age of Empires 4 is still going. Mm -hmm. The performance he's, uh, he's getting this, this man is in another level, guys. Yeah. And it's not over just yet. Mem, thank you so much for your analysis there, my friends. We're going to move on very quickly here. We're going to check in with the Viper. We've got a video that we prepared with the Viper uh, earlier on. So after hearing from the Snake himself, my friends, we're going to be back with our next match, Live Age of Empires, coming up very shortly as coverage of Red Bull Wallalo continues. So stay with us. It's time to check in now with the Viper. I'm here with the Viper, the reigning Red Bull champion, and arguably, if, if not the best, certainly one of the best players of this game the world has ever seen. Thanks for taking the time to chat with us, Viper. I want to talk to you about what this tournament series means to you. It took a while for you to actually finally seal the deal and win one of these, you did so last year. Now you're at the top of the heap. What's it like defending the crown? Yeah, I would say this tournament is a bit special to me because everyone always has expectations that I will do well and when I went four editions without me winning one, um, there was a lot of pressure on myself, or from myself on myself to actually find a win one. And I was able to do so last year, obviously. And this year entering now, obviously I feel pretty confident. Uh, I am, as you said, reigning champion, so I'm looking to defend my crown, but obviously everyone around me is stepping it up all the time. 
So um, it's going to be really tough, but obviously my, my goal is to defend the crown. Well, I mean, now that you're in that position to defend the crown, how do you look back on those previous tournaments where you didn't have the success that maybe people anticipated? Was Red Bull something of a white whale for you? Was it something that, you know, felt elusive? Something you were really motivated to get your hands on finally? Yeah, for sure. Obviously, um, I, I aim for winning every tournament mm -hmm. I play. And uh, when it eludes you that long, it becomes, it, you kind of feel like maybe it ne it's never going to happen, right? Uh, Fortunately, it did. I think maybe the fact that it was a LAN event actually helped me because I have a fair bit of experience there. And uh, I feel very comfortable and love playing these LAN events because uh, it's just so much uh, just adrenaline seeing your opponent right across the board and everything. It's, uh, it's something special and uh, yeah, I just love it. I think being one of those players that almost has a natural advantage or an affinity for um, the, the bright lights of the feature match area, the, the ex extra added pressure seems to make you thrive in highly competitive events. But now, as I say, you're defending your title and while you have that confidence, uh, what are you doing to make sure that you give yourself every possible chance to make sure that you're not unseated as, as the King of Wallama? Yeah, so first of all, it's obviously preparation. You want to put in the work before the tournament. Um, I did also participate a bit in AW4 before this AW2 event. And, but yeah, the most recent months, it's been mostly AW2. And then we have the two-week boot camp with the Game Legion uh, team, which helps a lot because that just, everything gets kind of, you get tunnel vision towards the tournament. You block out every surrounding information and possible distractions. So you just fine tune the strategies, the execution, and I think that's the best way. That's what we did last year as well, and it worked then, so why not again, right? Run it back. Preparation exactly. and focus. The, exactly. uh, the, the Viper two steps uh, program to success. <laughs> exactly. Viper, thanks for your time. Thanks for joining no us, mate. And look, I'm hoping you hoist that trophy. You do. Well, it's hard to uh, it's hard to eclipse that one. I mean, that was an incredible set. Unfortunately, we had to have a loser and we had to have a winner there. But MBL making it through, and now we go. Uh, to our next and final set of the day, and like, wow. We have Mr. Yo and we have ACCM here. Two massive names. Mm -hmm. Biggest set of the day for me, I think. I, I think in terms of star power, names, yeah. all those things, certainly. Um, you know, if you would have made a list, you would have probably put Yo in that top five prior to the, his arrival. Yep. Has won Red Bull Wall low before, but if you were to make a, a slightly longer list, he might find ACCM at six yep. or seven there. ACCM is Mr. Consistent, and what has astounded me is that this is his first LAN event. He doesn't have multi-LANs over yep. the past five or six years like so many of these people. And he's cool, and he's calm, and just the way he looked... Smiling. Smiling? And then, well, well until second. he's not. Until he's yeah. not, right? But just the way he looked and the way he, he acts himself is so professional and so focused. Um, and, and you, you can see... He's ready. Yeah, and you can see that we're ready. Uh, obviously, it's late in the day, so we want to speed things up for you guys at home. and. And us here in the production staff. So we already have our save draft done. Well, uh, we were wrapping up the final series and our players are already sitting here in their offices on the main stage. Yo is going to be playing over there as Italians. I'd love to see the save draft come up so we can uh, we can examine it. And there we go, Tristan. It's time for our, uh, our brains to start working here as we see ACCM with Vikings. I haven't seen that Civ pick yet. True. Britons, Dravidians, and Hindustanis against Cumans, Italians, Berbers, and Poles. Another civilization we haven't seen. Look, so that's the seriousness I'm talking about. Oh. Okay, he can pull out the grin, but that's like, that might even beat Catpatch's gamer face. I don't know. Maybe it's too soon for he's that focused. one. But he's ready, man. And like, think of how, how far these players traveled and yeah. what they've had to go through. They have traveled further than most, and they also were denied the opportunity to come last year. So yep. I, I'm really happy for these two that they've made it here. But the sad reality is only one of them gets to stay, and this set decides it. Yeah, and these are probably the two guys that have traveled the farthest. Mm -hmm. I, I think so. um, ACCM from Vietnam, Mr. Yo from China, and neither of them. This is the match. Oh, this is heartbreaking. This is the match of both the players that couldn't make it last year. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we want them to stay. <laughs> oh, oh that's unfortunate. We're going to have Dravidians as well for ACCM. And the first map is Northern Isles. I didn't. I, I, I've never seen that Yurumi swordsman so so real like yeah a lot more terrifying than the actual unit uh, like 
I think if I was an Arumi swordsman, I would do more damage to myself with <laughs> that whip. Like it is, it is a sharpened metal whip. Yeah, I'd lose like, an ankle. I'd, I'd swing and I'd lose an ankle. That's how I lost my hair. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it just never came back. <laughs> Makes sense. Well, take a look at Yo as he strolls through Heidelberg Castle. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's got a sword as well. That's some a of them first. have. That was a that was an impressive face. It, it, I mean. Some of them have swords, right? I, I've seen some of those on the intro and ACCM. There's that smile, that damn smile. <laughs> It'll melt your heart for sure. ACCM, what? you can see with the stat line here. And Doubt said this before we even, um, I heard him there when they were practicing, when they were going around with the sheet. He's like, ACCM, eight out of 10 on everything. <laughs> <laughs> like that was the only player he had locked down. Yeah. He looked at ACCM. He's like eight out of ten, everything. But like, yeah, and experience only wasn't higher because he could not physically yeah. make it last year. Of course, yeah. look at that. Thirty-two games between these two oh, in 2022. It is 50-50. That is mm. very hard to plan. That is definitely something that shows and how strong they are. Yo, a little bit more experience, a little bit more on strategy. I think a little bit more on macro there. Yo is just one of the legends of the game. If I had to make a top five Age of Empires players all time, Yo is in there. He's easy. Oh, yeah. yes, easily in there. Yeah, ACCM. Uh, he, he it's, it's interesting, like, I don't want to say the shoes that he had to fill because he didn't have shoes to fill in Vietnam. But there's a lot of good players in Vietnam. And mm -hmm. for years, there was there was backed. And he was the clear number one. And then, like, not so suddenly, ACCM is, like, just going deep into everything. Yeah. And all of a sudden, he is Mr. Vietnam. Yo is Mr. China. And here we are. We've got Italians in the blue for Yo. We have Dravidians for ACCM in the yellow. And we have scouts just switching islands. I asked Yo about that match yesterday against the Bengalis. His first response was, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Which he gave to about 10 different people. And I heard I heard like so many players saying, oh, only one person's lost the Bengalis today. And Yo's like, I don't want to talk about it. Um, but the second response was, I should have just, I should have just landed. Mm. Like, Yo is very comfortable causing chaos. He'll fight the water battle, whatever. He's not a known water player. He's a known sneak base, forward Mangonel, yeah. tower rush, making it messy, and then finding his way through type of player. So we saw him bring the scout over immediately, and... Uh, well, he's adding in a fire galley, so he's going to continue to go water, but he's got the archer range ready. Yeah, both players did add a few additional fishing ships. Yo going up to six, possibly because it's a bit cheaper for him. And Yo now going for a second dock in the back, which will allow him to focus more on water. But we actually have ACCM with the two archer, two spearman play. I mean, if you don't have any archers at home, it's very hard to stop that. And oh, let's see, Yo. Can he get the quick walls down ACCM's on the big stage? never going to let him. ACCM. Well, it's a. Oh! mind wow i mean accm did everything you have to try and block the tile and now you've got archers and you've got a spearman coming in on this side and yo says yeah denied get out of here yo is bringing it today his his confidence uh -oh. level was not very high that's for sure coming into uh coming into today after the performance yesterday against against uh hera but this is extremely awkward for that villager Choose, oh. choose your way of death. <laughs> I mean, he can get out right now. He can get out right now, and he's going to run away. The scout might loop back, but the spearman is there to protect. Oh. If Yo can save this villager, he's going to feel very Yoink. good about himself, and he doesn't. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. This is absolutely horrible right now for Yo. I know he got the highlight there, but he's got archers. His skirm won't do anything here, and I'm not seeing anything good happening for Yo. Let me put it that way. Mm -hmm. This is extremely awkward. What is that from Yo? There's another production. Oh, it's a market going down now from him. As he's thinking about clicking up to the next stage, I mean, he hasn't lost any fish yet. He hasn't lost um, anything more than that one villager, really. Yeah. But ACCM is putting the pressure on. And he can do that with Dravidian, starting with that extra 200 wood. You know, the good news here is that ACCM won't do any more damage. And Yo did prioritize water a little bit more, which is why some of these things were delayed. But, I mean, this is frustrating, man. Mm -hmm. And ACCM has used the starting scout and two archers to maximum effect here. What a start in this series. Yeah, ACCM is on fire right now as he tries to kill that villager, and he successfully does. That dock is still denied over there. Mr. Yo is going to manage to defend his fish for the time being. ACCM being such a nuisance with just like three units. And again, look at the KD. It's eight to three, eight yeah. to four now. Naturally, he's going to lose something eventually. Yo 
however, does have the fire ship advantage currently or fire galley advantage currently, and he's going to be first one to the castle age. So if he manages to get that dock up, which ACCM is now adding additional docks of his own, maybe he can get the advantage on water. And once you're, you have the advantage on water with Italians, it's hard to take it back. So ACCM, I know we couldn't show it, added a forward dock and made four fishing ships while all that fight was happening on top of villagers and everything else, because, you know, let's just do that too. Um, and now his docks are kind of split, but I kind of like it because if he loses the fish in the back, he's got the fish safe in the front. Yeah, docks... He's, he's going for a heavy water priority here. In dock Kansas. split isn't the worst thing if you're going fires, right? If you're going war galleys, then it might become some of an somewhat of an issue, but with yeah. fires, you can mix it up. And Yo is going to save both of those fire ships on like one HP. <gasps> he's not playing no way. as the Bengalis. Oh, oh no! Well, there should be repair there, you'd think, for ACCM, uh, assuming everything's going according to plan. He's going to yeah. try. The Looks reeds like are he's blocking. Gonna repair, but yeah, the, the reeds. reeds. Yep, but now Yo is attacking the dock instead of the fire galley there, and Yo loses another fire galley in the front. He's going for war galley research here. He is in the castle age faster and immediately adds that second TC. ACCM's an animal right now. This is an amazing start against Yo. Again, Yo has been to so many LAN events, is in everyone's top five. And ACCM is like, okay, that's cool. Uh, ACCM hits the next stage, obviously needs to get his upgrades, but look at him now. He saw the archers for Yo, and he's gonna sneak anyways on the left side of Yo's island there. It just a little bit, Mapu, yep, right there. You've got some army yep. coming over. And those archers, I mean, it's a good TC placement for Yo. It's going to defend himself over on that side. And the archers are just going to loop around the wood line as he gets a great demo there on the fire galleys before war galley upgrade comes in. Also a fire sneaking in the back. That's going to be dealt with, however, from ACCM. And Yo sees this no right way. away. Yo notices no these way. yellow dots <laughs> right away. And he's going to respond with a siege workshop, which acts doubly as a siege workshop and as a wall to push those crossbows into the TC fight. The awareness is so crazy. And if you look away at any moment from your ships, it could all yeah. go down to a demo, which makes this all the more complicated. But that's the thing. ACCM is not going to win the game with those crossbows. He can win the water, though, if he has that distraction. And look at Yo. He's been producing from the back oh, docks a lot. This is such a, like, nomad play from yeah. Mr. Yo. You yep. know, sneaking it right along the edge of the map into the fish. The fires are trying to intercept those crossbows. He's got a scorpion. I'd like the scorpion here. It's not too big of an investment. It's only four crossbows. Yep. And they can't dodge the shots quite as conveniently as they can with a mangonel. Oh, man. But that's still a problem, right? He continues to move. He, hits, he gets hit by a demo, but he's taking out that dock. Mm -hmm. And Yo is to leave there. There's also a hole, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he just patched that okay, right there. Yeah. And I don't think ACCM is going to get those villagers still. ACCM is working on getting his third TC up. And uh, Yo hasn't managed to kill any of his 10 fishing ships. So Yo is behind right now. And ACCM's resources look like he's flirting with the idea of even going Imperial Age. This is the second time now that he has landed, Yo has seen him, and he just gets insane value. But this, this crossbow army has forced a siege workshop, a scorpion, and made a bunch of villagers run around, and a TC go up in a spot that you probably didn't even want in the first place. This is so sick. We also have to start thinking, if this goes late game, the Dravidians have access to a unit that no other Civ has access to, the Thericidae on water. I'm glad you said it. I, I wasn't going to bring it up ever. Oh, okay. I haven't practiced my pronunciation there, and I'm big on pronunciations. But it is a unit you can only make an imp. So we should probably expect some fire ships and, and, and galleys like every other civilization. Mm -hmm. uh, ACCM's thinking about Imperial Age, though. Like, he's definitely banking res for Imperial Age. He's still got villagers queued because he has seven fishing ships still alive. Oh, that's a Great nice demo. demo from Mr. Yo. And uh, ACCM is now building a siege workshop on Yo's island. He's just trying to do the Yo thing right now to Mr. Yo. Yeah, it's so good how he's playing this game. The crossbows are still alive, and he just adds one more layer of difficulty here mm -hmm. to Yo's plans. Another demo coming out from Mr. Yo, and they've been good demos. Just not quite enough, and ACCM... He pulled them back to repair them, Yeah, Both ACCM of them. decides to have demos of his own. <laughs> no, that's that's where the Scorpion is. Ooh, Ooh! Take that, yo! Left one villager behind in the dust as well. 
as ACCM continues to make demos. Yo is looping around with, I think, the remainder of his fish to the middle, and now there's a new dog coming up. Yep. So he's going to try and be sneaky over there. He did get the third TC up, but still ACCM with the villager lead. 63 to 58 for Mr. Yo. Traveled halfway across the world, up against a former Red Bull Wolo champion. Yep. Biggest moment of his career. ACCM is playing better than I thought possible. Mm -hmm. And not by his standards, like anyone's standards. The sneaking the fishing ships, the constant micro, the, the adding extra levels of complexity to this with the siege. This is beautiful from ACCM. Absolutely beautiful. Yo converts that fire ship, but it was already weak from before. As Yo continues to repair that dock, he refuses to get that position up. And Mr. Yo, as soon as he saw that siege workshop, so he good. added in the stables, and now he's basically stranded that mangonel inside. So he knows how to deal with the with the messiness that he often forces people into. But it looks like ACCM is transported to that middle island, and he's going to take control of that area first, potentially a TC and potentially later a mm -hmm. castle. Well, at the moment, he's got about, oh, well, he's got one ship? Oh, nine ships, excuse me. There's so many things that both players have, it's hard to see on Capture Age. He's on his way to Imp, I think like a full four minutes faster than Italians, which have a cheaper Imperial. Yeah. And Italians have the cheaper dock decks and have been known as one of, if not the best water I wonder how many farms ACCM has, though, because if those fishing ships ever get cleared up, he's got nine farms right now, and Yo is primarily adding farms. Okay, so there's some more on the side. Yep. Yo has got uh, a more, I, I would say, stable eco. Yeah, I, I could see it. I, I mean, and also these games can tend to drag on for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. So Yo definitely ha is going to have his chances here. He finally will deal with these crossbowmen. But I think early fast fire into a galleon switch. There's just so much time here from ACCM. I, I think Yo's in big trouble. You sure it's going to be galleon? It could be Thurisidae. It could okay, be. Okay, so, so what's the... I, I would have to compare the cost and whatnot because you don't need to upgrade. You don't oh, need don't to ask for the cost. Upgrade. I no, know that's the name. Fine. That's my job. Okay, well, okay, well. You don't yeah. need to upgrade to Galleon. That's that's my point, yeah. exactly. So I'm trying to weigh the pros and cons. I mean, you're right. You can instantly I go mean, into them. It's definitely going to be fast fire. Yes, we know that. If they get fast fire. I, I, <laughs> See, now we're, now we're questioning. <laughs> what have you done to now me? Now we're questioning too many things. It's still a relatively <laughs> new sim. Why have we done this? <laughs> uh, why are players playing the new sims? Why have we done this? Uh, this is the only way we learn, actually. Uh, we have gone years in the past. It not really is. Things, it really so. is. You should study the check tree. Well, we do, and then we forget yeah. promptly. If it's not applicable, why should a caster know it? I like these monks from Yo. He tried this uh, approach yesterday against Hera. And monks are oftentimes the best defense against fire ships if you can't get back onto the water. And there's heavy demo, what? fast fire ship <laughs> chemistry. <laughs> Everything is coming in here for ACCM. And this is impressive because Yo is still two minutes and 20 seconds away from the Imperial Age. Yo at 78 villagers, ACCM at 85 right now. Yo is still very much in this. Italians on water as he adds in more docks at the front, but ACCM with all of the initiative. Well, what do you go for? You go for fast fire ship. And there's a castle. Go. You go for fast fire ship, which ACCM already has more of. Yep. And he can just bada boom everything with a demo. Because he has heavy demo and you yeah. don't. And conversions can help hold, and I agree with you. It's an awesome move. But, yo, I don't know if you want to go there right now, my friends. No, that's danger on that island. That is danger. <laughs> and there's about to be more danger as ACCM sees this. He goes for that stone wall to prevent the castle from being denied. And he's not worried at all about just five villagers. Uh-oh. And yo, yo decides that he definitely doesn't want to go there as he gets back into the transfer chip and makes a castle of his own. I love the placement from ACCM's castle because it's kind of out of the way, although yo does have an angle from his island that he can trap that from. He, But he instantly makes a trap. I don't even know if he saw it. Uh, yeah. Maybe Mapu could show. Because, yeah, he didn't even know, but he, he just, knew. You knew. He didn't see it, but he knew. Yeah, and he, the trebs help against the dogs, too. That's the production building for the unit that your opponent is going to be going this into. This is disgusting, right? man. This is disgusting. really good, yeah. He, he is playing so good right now. And I still am struggling to see a way back for Yo. He just now hits the Imperial Age. He will be able to get fast fire. That'll take another minute. But ACCM already has heavy demo. Yeah, it, it, he's at a step of the game. The only thing he hasn't made is the Teresa die. But who needs that when you have this big of a lead? 
and then you can make cannon galleons. Yep, there's the cannon galleon right there for ACCM. Yo is now selling food. He's getting ship right. Yeah, it's smart. Which is great. I mean, and that's easier with Italians as well. Um, but right now, he's just losing momentum in the middle as he gets a university. Trying to fight off, I mean, his, his Mangonel's actually getting value it, against yeah, how, many kills, how many kills does that have, if we could maybe see? Because that has a few. Six! six. <laughs> <laughs> and the monks also probably have like five or six conversions in total. So. Oh, is Shipwright coming in in that dock? Okay, it completes. It completes. It was in the front dock there. It was being attacked by the Cannon Galleon, and here are the fast fire ships. Where's the demo? When you from Yo. The demos will be added, likely, from ACCM, but he's got a pincer move going on from both sides. Yeah, he does. Now, no heavy demo means these fires are going to be doing a pretty good job. And he simply just doesn't need the demos right now. But he seven. queues up seven of them. Seven heavy demos. He is not taking any chances. He's got those trebs, too, and they're already working away on that castle. He just goes right under the castle for the time being. I hope the there's a demo The fast fires coming. are trying to take out those cannon galleons. It looks like Yo will get both of them. But, but then you lose everything. It, it, yep. This is, again, just domination from ACCM. He's been one or two steps ahead the entire game. There's a heavy demo for you. I mean, right now, your most effective unit against ACCM is that Mangonel yeah. that just keeps on giving, I guess. Well, Italians do get Onager, so maybe an option to consider, Dave. But I maybe. think Yo is, Yo is not only coming to grips with the fact that he's lost this game, He's coming to grips with the fact that he played good yep. and ACCM just still outplayed him. Yeah, and here come the demos and Yo just can't compete with that. I wonder what the next the next attempt is from him. Does he make one? I mean, there's a second castle oh. on the middle there from ACCM as the demo connects. And once that second castle is up, Yo just simply cannot use any docks nope. in the center. I would really like to see a, some type of ranged dock play right now from ACCM, whether it be the Galleon Choice or the Teresa Die. I think they could do either. Um, obviously, this is perfect, but to start ranging the villagers and the buildings would make a lot of sense here. And I think ACCM's almost even in a position where he, once those docks are down, he can transport the Trebs over and start just killing buildings. I agree. Within range of his, uh, of his ships. But like you said, I want to see a range option. He's making his third transport ship. Maybe you forgot where the first two were. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's got another he transport ship. He also doesn't have careening. Here. Careening's yeah. actually the only mistake he's made in this game, because that is something you would actually want. Yep. Uh, as I say it, of course, he clicks it. And there we go. There's a the castle. Yeah, now, if he brought the trebs with that, it's perfect. I, I think he will. I think he will. He's packed them up. He's going to load them into that transport ship. Yo can see that castle. Yo almost has enough for a castle of his own, and Yo is redocking at the back here. So maybe it could be an overextension from ACCM, but I think it's a natural progression yeah, to go I for agree. that. If he didn't have the trebs, it's different. If that demo gets converted, that'd be kind of fun. Yeah, it could go after the transport ship, potentially. Uh... And he got it. <laughs> well, okay. The trebs will be on the way. Obviously, he's got a lot of transports to work with. And Yo research ship right, so it's... It's a bit easier for him to produce now, even if he starts to lack resources. More demos on the way from ACCM. He's also got more fires on the way. So it hasn't made that switch at all into some range units, uh, or range ships, rather, as he adds archer ranges on the base from Mr. Yo. Yeah, I mean... Elephant even, archers? Even just... I mean, that would... That would he's got Bracer. Us. He's got Bracer in the second armor upgrade already. How about, like, two elephant archers and then the rest skirms? Yeah. Just, like, have a tank in there. I mean, Yo doesn't have anything and this is back to what we've said ACCM is always one step ahead skirms yeah it's gonna be skirms they I mean they fire, fire faster, faster so. with uh, with Dravidians he's got a lot of skirms queued up there you're ACCM. not gonna go nights that's for sure going for another Ooh, siege those, workshop those there is that <sighs> uh, no not the trebs is that the same Mangano? I think it is. <laughs> Not the trip. Oh, it no! went down. It got shot. No, we didn't. We'll never know. <laughs> it got shot. <laughs> we'll never know. Oh, man. I know it survived the fire ship earlier. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Such a team effort there from that Mangano. I mean, Yo's at 135 population. He's he, What a fight this is from him, right? Mm -hmm. It's late here in Germany. Mm -hmm. It's very late. He doesn't care about that. Yo is all in on repairing that treb. He needs to take out that castle. He needs to take out those forward buildings. The skirms are here making things interesting. Hand cannons on the way for ACCM. He's got bombard cannon. He's got two trebs in the queue. Look at the amount of units, the variety of units that he has on the map. And Yo is going for some condottiero. 
which we saw work well for MBL, but are they enough to push this back for Mr. Yo? I, I mean, not uh, hand cannons is not the choice, <laughs> as we see the bomber cannons face off. Uh, hand cannons actually get countered. Look at that! Bit. Look at that bomber cannon just being Yo. repaired. Oh boy! And ACCM almost loses his. He kills one of the repairers as Yo continues to chase after that. I think, still think we should see some galleon here, possibly, as, oh, that, oh my god, that's on 2 HP. Get him, skirmishers! <laughs> nice job. It's yeah, just like a couple, couple galleons as well. Would be so nice here. ACCM just has all the control. I don't even see, I don't see the w win condition for Mr. Yo here. No, I agree. He's got nothing. He can't take the middle stone and gold. He doesn't actually have any relics. He obviously is going to fight because this is the first game and what yep. will be a really grueling set, but... And like this is awesome. Hand cannons sense. are countered by the Condottiero, but the Condottiero don't even have the second armor upgrade. It's just coming in now, so the skirms are actually probably doing decent damage to them. True. And it costs you're spending gold. Yep. And now it's Arbalist. You need gold for navy. Yeah. Now it's Arbalist, which absolutely shred those units. So yep. the castle will fall. Yo will likely call it once that castle is dead and he has no defense. I mean, he's picking up the relics for now. <laughs> Monk's just going to do monk things regardless yeah. of what's going on in the town. Yep. And he's trying to build up enough Condottiero to push this back. But even if he pushes, even if he clears it, ACCM still has full water control in the middle. Yep. Full resource control. As Yo takes out another bomber cannon. Well, let's see how these condos do. Again, they did cost quite a bit of gold to make. They're takes not the most expensive unit cannon. ever. He also he takes, takes the, the castle. castle. Oh no, ACCM. Oh, he has 2,000 stone. <laughs> <laughs> you really know it. <laughs> also, he just I, he just took out another bomber cannon. Yeah. And finally, Yo calls it. But guys, I don't want to jump to conclusions, but I'm going to jump to conclusions. With Yo being top five and everything you have to say about him and how he's looked, yep. ACCM's looking top five right now. In this event, that that performance was sick. Mm -hmm. I, I love the 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 hiding of the additional fishing ships, the proper timing on the docks, the value he got from the two archers and the spearmen, then the five crossbows later on. He had proper micro, had proper macro, had proper decision making up until well, the end of the game, it was so so good from him. ACCM is absolutely incredible. We've known this for the past two years, throughout his three years now since Definitive Edition came out. His rise has been incredible. He's balanced out all those areas of his game that were maybe not up to the other top players, and he is tournament ready. We can see it right here. So we're going to be going to uh, either Shoals or Acclivity here, as uh, Yo has the pick, and we've got Cumans, which we saw in Shoals before from Leary. Poles, which are more likely. Yep. I think Poles are the are the Shoals pick. Poles, Poles for Shoals. Hashtag Poles, Poles for Shoals. For Shoals. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're doing it live. <laughs> and then we have um, Berbers and Cumans for Acclivity. Likely Berbers there. Other yep. Cumans can be Cumans can be good with early pressure. Well, here's my thing. Spot on with everything you just said. If you're Yo. Before that game, you probably say, hmm, okay, he goes Acclivity. I know he's amazing on, on land. Mm -hmm. We've got Northern Isles game one, has some water. That's great for me. And then after I win that game, I'm going to go to Shoals. It has a bit more water. Granted, it's different. That's going to be good for me. I wouldn't be feeling so good about going into a map that had any water on it after that game. Yep. I mean, ACCM also, we look at his Civ draft and he had Vikings there. And he didn't use it on Northern Isles. That is unique, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Is he gonna play? Is he gonna play Acclivity the way it used to be played in the older? Because it's been around in the Wall of Low tournaments for a very long time in Empire Wars, and people used to just wall up on this map. Yeah. And if they were allowed to use Vikings, they use Vikings. Okay, hear me out. This is just the dreamer in me. It probably won't happen. You go Vikings on Shoals. You also, open... I we did see that in the qualifiers okay. a few times too. So Vikings on Shoals. Yeah. Snipe the fish, full wall, boom. Your opponent goes tons of cav, and you say, hey, welcome to Elite Berserk Land, and just destroy the map. Well, it's more like welcome to Elite Longboat Land, and then my cannon galleons will kill everything they Well, can. okay, well, okay, fine. Yeah. If you want to, you know, just yeah. let, just just push the Berserks back down. Yeah. I want to see Berserks. To Valhalla. I, I don't, I don't, <laughs> at Longboats, we know about Longboats. I want to see Berserks. Chieftains? The new and improved Berserks, Castle Age Berserks, are stronger. Mm -hmm. 
Anyways, let, let's wait. I also have never seen a Berserk uh, graphic yet. I don't think it was shown at all yet, so it would look pretty freaking cool. Yeah, as we see ACCM, I think, coordinating the game ID there with Mr. Yo. And uh, he is in right oh, now. Click it. Yes! Yes! It's happening. Yes. I'm it's so happening. excited. That was the Viking uh, Civ Emblem. By the way. Oh yeah, for those that can't, you yeah, know, we just want to fill you in. Yeah, or maybe maybe you're on your phone, maybe, and we we've got hashtag polls for shoals. Hashtag so polls for shoals. Now we've got, um, I don't know, the berserk hashtag. Listen, if you don't want to be the Kipchak, and I understand it, yeah, you could pull that guy off with the hood. I know. No one knows how much hair he's got under. But it, I mean, that's a big weapon. Where how am I going to get that shipped in? <laughs> you're right. You couldn't carry that. You got. <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh look at the seriousness man he brought it in game one like it. and it's so it's so opposite to his persona too because like every single time you meet him he's hugging you he's smiling yep he's friends with everybody i think like the every time accm is on the screen everyone is kind of like cheering for him a little bit just because of how nice of a person he is oh i mean he gave one of my favorite red bull wolo interviews ever as well so I've been really pleased with how things have been going with ACCM so far. He certainly deserves it, right? Yeah. Uh, he is a true professional, not to imply others or not, but he is a true professional practicing all the time. There it is. Talking strategies. And look at that guy. Oh, my goodness. It, does he have like, it's not like a fake beard. I, it looks like it looks like yarn or something. Hey, <laughs> today I learned that there are two backup knives or swords for the Berserk. I did not know that, so yeah, well, thank you, Red Bull. you need a backup, you know? Yeah. Well, okay, so we see Galley opening for both players here. Great for the Vikings, but it's important to remind people that Sea Tower, I know it looks pretty minuscule and Nine weak. bonus damage for ships. It's also, insane. I think it fires multiple arrows. I, I, I'm fairly certain we'll have to take a look. Yes, it does. I mean, it's, it's extremely strong, and that's why having fish right underneath it, like Mr. Yo has, is very, very valuable. Yo has gone for poles here, and Yo is probably going to play this a more fast castle approach. He's going to make a few galleys to defend his fish, though, because he knows the Viking player will likely go into galleys to snipe those, and he doesn't want to give up the water control right away. He doesn't want to give up that food income. Let's see how greedy Yo is here, because when you pick poles, you want walls and you want economy. Um, I also am curious on how, oh, oh, there's a scout. Oh, oh, oh that's sick. God. That's sick from ACCM. He blocks oh the scout with his galley so the T sea tower can wipe it up. What? That is just super clever. And is ACCM going to kill a walling villager? It looks like Yo is going to get that spearman over in time. ACCM is on top of everything, bro. Yeah, he is. And, oh, okay, jinxed him. Uh, the wall must have been up at that time. But if he can get out of there with that scout, He'll be able to use that on the rest of the map, and yeah, he will get out of there. He also has been able to see Yo's walling and adding a market. Yo's just going to try and get to Castle Age. Yeah, and ACCM is just going to try. I think the um, the galleys are kind of to deal with the fish, but the galleys are more to secure map control, Yeah, honestly, because they, they give an impact later on in the game if your opponent tries to go over these shallows, or if your opponent's trying to take gold uh, on the sides, the galleys can also range part of that. So we see Mapo scrolling over there for us. Galley's coming in now. Sea Tower does a lot of damage, and ACCM is just going to try and kill these fish without losing a galley. He's managed to get two. And he might lose this ship if he's not careful. Yeah, let's see if he wishes to, to remain around here. <gasps> Uh-oh, misclick. Oh, uh, he's getting hit at his base at the moment, and he actually defends from that yep. nicely as well. But honestly, if your poles... I think you would still be quite happy if the Viking player goes two docks against you. Mm -hmm. Because you just want farms and TCs. You don't want water. Um, and I don't think that adding additional fishing ships, granted we do see that now from ACCM, I just don't think that's going to have the same effect on it's, this. Map. It's not huge. It's honestly not huge. It's only shore fish, right? They collect very slowly. But if you gain the water control, if you've invested into it, you might as well do it as ACCM yeah. has done. He noticed that ship was very weak, managed to take that out with one shot, and effectively... I mean, the, the ships aren't dead. The fishing ships aren't dead, but he's stalling them out. They're not collecting, so yep. it's all the same to ACCM. Well, it's, it's also important that you do have a few more galleys, too, because Yo might have a temptation to make a couple fires. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're not going to commit to water long term, I'd like to see the fires if you're Yo. But let's just look at that vision right now for ACCM if we could, Mapu. Yeah, so he, not only is the score going to rise up like crazy because you get 100 points per 10% of the map scouted, but he'll be able to see if Yo is sneaking out there. And I yep. wouldn't normally say that, but we did see that earlier today. 
and it almost won Dallas that one game. Yeah, and Yo's got a Spearman out there, so he's looking around as well to see if ACCM is in that area. Also, we have to point out that we haven't done yet, Vikings automatically starting Empire Wars with like 20 plus villagers with the wheelbarrow. Yep, exactly. At wheelbarrow, then handcart could come in as well. ACCM was thinking about a stable. I think that's a misclick right there. I think he yeah, no. lost track of those vills. Okay. But you, I, I thought you meant the stable was a misclick. No, no, no. Like, but no, the, the stable's vills leaving probably wasn't intended. Yeah. And look at Yo. Like, Yo says, I'm not going to let you free fish boom. And so he shows up here and he gets a snipe. Probably worth it. All right. Yo will also see the ACCM is adding a ton of fish. Yeah, he will. So I don't know if he's going to be happy about that. He adds a fire galley. I I wouldn't mind a second dock here from Yo. I think it would have so much. It would do so much damage. There's only four galleys. I don't think you need ACCM. to like. It, you've already made the decision that water doesn't matter all that much. Maybe just keep making the occasional ship here and trying yep. to snipe uh, some of those fish. Well, you know, if you ha if it takes away from your boom to add the second dock right now, which it probably would, probably a mistake. But if you're right, if you keep that one dock working, uh -huh. and that tower pretty much ensures that dock will stay alive, that could work wonders for you. Yo, we're still exploring ACC. I'm still looking around, and War Galley's on the way, and I think he's going to get a couple fire ships. I don't think ACCM is going to invest in the war galley, so these galleys are going to be incredibly yeah. weak. They're now dying to this, and I think Yo is taking a calculated risk. The ACCM is not going to, or is going to get greedy, yep. basically. And uh, ACCM is adding, well, he's adding a couple longboats, so those should be able to take care of the fires. Could we see the stats on the sea tower for a second here? I'm really curious on this. So, stats for the sea tower. Okay, it doesn't track. Oh, no, 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 no. Not, not the damage, sorry. The, the damage output uh, next to the skull, by chance. Yeah, okay, I thought it gave more data. I thought it was like damage dealt, and it gave an HP number. But we're gonna just say 387. And like I said, I was talking to the Capture Age guys today. He thought it was in the program as well, and I'm Aha. like, I don't know where it is. So <laughs> maybe they have that in the feed, you know? I think it is for some things, not all things, but hey, that Spearman goes down, sad times for him. Uh, that is an area that Yo and really wants to And this something that ACCM down. does not want to happen. He's just lost his galleys. He's now losing his longboats. And those fire ships can take out the fishing ships quite quickly. But ACCM has a few <laughs> longboats behind that. And Yo is adding a fourth PC. Dude, I, I've seen this one too many times over the last six months. The Polish eco, when left untouched. Yep. I, I don't think anyone can really compete, honestly. Maybe the Burgundians. But ACCM needs to break in somehow. He needs to somehow stop Yo because if Yo can get a castle up with four yep. TCs, it's almost impossible to stop. And now ACCM's losing fish, right? Mr. Yo goes for that War Galley upgrade and it's it's serving him well. Fire Galleys would never get this much damage. ACCM is going to win water, but Yo just killed some of the fishing ships he invested into. Not for a big investment of his own either. How much gold do you have left at home right now if you're Yo? That's the big concern. He's well, got you've got gold and then you have tiles, stone as well. And then, okay, so the stone, because he's poles, will give him 50%. some gold as well. Yeah. yeah. Which is good. In fact, that's actually needed here because I think 4TC booming with any other sieve would be too risky. Mm -hmm. As we see ACCM still contesting, Yo is still making the uh, occasional fire ship and he's trying to bait these longboats back into that sea tower once again that sea tower bothers me like i it, it's good for the map probably because it would be all in water but yo's being so stubborn I with know, that thing I know. <laughs> it's really frustrating for me so villager count is 53 for accm it's 59 for yo but accm has had handcart look at that time. look at this guy man he's gonna go sneak around with yep. that one fire he's gonna show up at the fish Wow. All while camping underneath that sea tower. He gets 10% of his farm's food instantly when he builds And he's going to sneak this way, too. <laughs> <laughs> I am not here. <laughs> I am one with the shoal. ACCM knows this. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Perfect timing. Uh, it still will be awkward because he doesn't have Bodkin Arrow. But he should be fine. And then that should be the end of it as well, which means he has a little bit more comfort. I really hope that ACCM hides that demo raft behind one of these rocks just because in honor of me. Because I mentioned it to him. <laughs> just because in honor of me. That's it. <laughs> That's it. 
So you can hide ships behind those rocks, actually. There is no outline when you when you put them behind there. So a demo behind there probably won't ever come into play, but I've been waiting for it ever since um, this map was released. In the north right now, there is something from ACCM, and that's so smart. So he's got the Spearman. He knows there's no town center yet, and now he's just going to go build buildings there, just like he is on the other side. Yo, somehow magically got that relic mm -hmm. uh, from under ACCM's nose, and now we see the stables. Oh man, the familiar stables of the poles. Yep. Conversion should come in, possibly. Scout. Oh, the scout will kill the monk. But nice conversion there. From yeah, Mo. and the knights are chasing after there. ACCM is taking control of both the gold areas here. Mr. Yo is banking on the fact that uh, he has enough at his own base between the gold and the stone and the relics that he can get the castle down, he can get the um, Slata privileges. Yep. I believe that's how it's pronounced. I mean, we're in front of thousands of people now, so <laughs> it better be. It is Sriracha. now. Sriracha privilege. And uh, he's going to try and produce an unstoppable wave of knights or cavaliers to push ACCM back from those positions that he has secured with the castle. Here's the thing. ACCM is going to go in, I think. And he's going to aim for Treps. And in most cases, having, you know, a few pikemen or whatever and trebuchets to push someone booming is awesome. These knights are so cheap. 60% off knights with the civilization that gets 10% of their farm's food immediately upon building the farm. It's probably the best untouched eco in the game, you could argue. And certainly the, the best knight spam civilization at this stage. I just, I don't even think imp helps ACCM. I think if he has treps, he'll just die. Yeah, and that's why poles are so good on this map, They're right? Insane, yeah. Feels like any kind of fast castle-ish map, poles are just gonna be nuts. Yeah, it's just and I, I, crazy. I guess Empire Wars kind of mitigates that a little bit, and it that's does. why we haven't seen them so far in the tournament, but I feel like we will see them again as Yo starts to stretch out his legs over here towards this area on the, the top of the map. ACCM does have the longboats, so Yo canceled that TC, and ACCM has vision on everything that Yo is doing over there because he built those houses previously. Hmm. Okay, so what do you do about it? Well, he doesn't have Town Watch, so he kind of has yeah. vision, I guess. <laughs> but, like, can you do anything if you've got pikemen? I'm not so sure. Uh, the castle is so far, well, up until now, hidden from Yo's view. So Yo's going to know that castle's there now. Castle does have fletching, which helps a little bit. But Yo is going to add a Siege Workshop now. Now, keep in mind, he is kind of on the gold clock. Yep. But with the TC in the north, he will have more gold there. And plus, th he gets some from this. I think the idea with uh, with ACCM is he's going to go Pikeman Chieftains. Pikeman, yeah. And uh, Yo, I mean, only has so much gold, right? And right now, he has no options to take out the castle on the left side. So yep. that's effectively protecting that gold. And the secondary gold in front of Yo's base, there was two tiles in front of that castle that Yo can't take either. And now Yo is going for a castle in the north as ACCM pushes in the south. ACCM attempting to take out the main base for Mr. Yo. I mean, a great idea from Yo to counter attack here. Can he deny that castle? I personally believe he can. I also don't think there's any holes there. But ACCM is going to stonewall anyways. Yeah. You're trying to break in on both sides. Great heads up play there from ACCM to just stonewall behind yeah. the houses. Because you're, you're not always going to be able to pay attention over there. Sometimes you will... Oh, denied. Sometimes you will actually forget to react to one of the sides because you they, they came in at the same time. Mm -hmm. And he's got a cast to worry about. So those knights might actually break in, but no. no. He's, he's on it. He's too good. He's too good. And he's going for a barracks over there. He's about to be an Imperial Age. Yo will see that. And I wonder what the decision making is here from Yo. He queues all up in. more knights. Yeah, just he go all in. He queues up more knights, and that's perfect, I this think. This is awesome. Yep. Yeah, I mean, pikemen do have bonus damage against knights. But a part of why you would want to go pikemen against knights is because you're also not spending gold. Yep. And the poles, they don't need the gold, or they don't need very much gold. We have a Castle Age player with 36 knights with 13 more in queue, and it's probably going to be up to 20 soon. ACCM needs to be everywhere right now with his pikemen, which prevents him from getting a treb push. This is so complicated for him. Yeah, now Yo is trying to push out here against this castle from ACCM. He's got the ram, he's got the knights dealing with the berserks and the villagers. <laughs> he are uh, repairing that ram from behind and ACCM's castle is up 500 HP as Yo is now Pushing through with those knights, and he's got ramps to potentially deal with that castle. Still can't get in at the top side, although there will likely be a hole shortly. 
This and is Yo goes for a castle now. Now this is the Yo we know yeah, and love this right is here. Insane man. This yeah. is. I feel like what we're watching. And I know it's become pretty common. I feel like it shouldn't be a thing. Like it's unbelievable what Castle Age against Pikeman with a civilization. Forty-five that gets extra HP on their I mean, Pikeman. To be fair, Yo does have gold control in the north. It's not like he's doing this all about, through his gold control Fair. just in the base, right? Fair. He does have gold control he here. He has Obuk up there. He's gotten the infantry upgrades, and he's getting more because he sees so many pikemen. But at this point, I mean, knights counter pikes, Tristan, yeah. as they're ripping through them. He's got 44 knights here, 15 Obuk on the field, 10 in the queue, and ra more rams coming. Mr. Yo, classic example of just going all in Castle Age you've against got, an Imperial opponent. You, you've got a unique unit out of the castles you just built that have 90 HP and shred pikemen, even if pikemen are a problem. Mm -hmm. This is, the, the civilization has everything. It is maybe unbeatable, and ACCM has tried everything here. He's still making pikemen, Dave. Yeah. I don't know what else he can try. I think the only thing would to have would be to have more longboats to, <laughs> to like to like kill the knights or something oh, like man. that. But now the knights are coming across that middle area, and there's a castle from Mr. Yo forward. ACCM just keeps falling back. He's got 30 pikemen, but I mean, uh, Mr. Yo has 36 knights and 27 obuk. Yeah, I mean, this is getting unbelievably difficult. Yeah, I mean. And now, again, we haven't even seen a trip, right? The forward castles have gone down. ACCM is falling back. ACCM can find no answers to this. He's got the only other thing he could really try is maybe Arbalest, and I don't think he has the gold now. Look how this is flipped. He had the TCs on gold, mm -hmm. and oh, this is interesting. This is very interesting. But he's not going to have TCs on gold anymore, and Yo is going to have full control. He yep. went from the corner to being everywhere in the map. ACCM, maybe a different approach needed. Vikings against Poles. I think Vo Vikings are always going to be on the back foot. And ACCM calls the GG, and Mr. Yo <laughs> evens it up there. I mean, we knew what we were going to see. Oh, my God. And we saw it. You know, it's tricky. So I honestly don't know if ACCM, if that game goes like that to Castle Age, I don't know what in the world you do, truthfully. I think the, the forward uh, in play mm. always loses. Because uh, you can't get enough pikemen, you get overwhelmed. The other option would be defensive castles, and you try and get to like 40, 50 berserks. Yeah. But I think even then, you don't have the map control. I it's think, tricky. Yeah, I, I think poles even have the options in late game. Yeah. And you don't even have to rely on the cavalier at that point. You could go Obuk, Arba, Ar Arbalest, yep, Bomber Cannon, right? All with perfect execution from the poles, yep. of course, which Yo responds with an ACCM. He's going to ask for some uh, Surely some he's, feedback he's waving to me, right? He's hey. waving to the viewers. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised. He well, obviously has an issue. Mr. Yo is looking a little bit stressed out here. Both players know that this match is not only stay or go home, but it's that it's the difference in prize pool, like thousands of dollars for this game number three. Thousands of dollars, but also like it's pretty fitting with it being Red Bull World Low Legacy, and Legacy will be something we talk about a lot more. Yeah. But like this is, a legacy. this is a legacy tournament, this is a legacy all time. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. like Yo, top five player, former Red Bull champion, ACCM. He wants to be in that top five, top six conversation, and again, couldn't show what he was capable of last year because he couldn't make it. Hindustanis, Britons, Cumans, Berbers. Well, do you go Britons or Hind Hindustanis? I've seen both on this map. I. Hmm. I. I really like the Britons. Yeah. Because when I see the Hindu standings, I, I see too many players making skirms. I see too many situations where you need to open up an early castle age with a stable and you can't make knights. Mm -hmm. And so as good as that civilization is, I think on acclivity where the players are so close, you've got to go Britons. I feel like I've, I've seen so often recently, ever since they lost Halbadir, you know, players not being able to switch. Once they, once they go into Ghulam and then the other player makes cavalry, they yep. can't switch into camels fast enough yep. to counter it. And camels are a gold unit. Halberdier used to be such an easy switch to make to defend yourself, but Hindustanis seem a little bit weaker than they were previously, too. So I agree with you on the Britons. Cumans are Berbers on Mr. Yo's side. Uh, Cumans feel not too bad for the I, early pressure. Yeah, I think it's a close game. Uh, sorry, a very short game. I think that 
Cummins and their ability to go double range. Yeah. The only way you surpass the Britons is if you just have more archer ranges from them. And I think Yo just plays kind of all in skirmisher archer play. Yeah. Um, but alternatively, if he is Berbers, all in knights is so good. Uh, and then the Genitor could be the best answer for the Britons. Oh boy. This is gonna be this is gonna be very very stressful for both of the players. It's stressful for me because I like both of these guys I know, a lot. They're so, they're so awesome. Yeah. First time, obviously, second time seeing Mr. Yo. First time seeing ACCM ever. And uh, what an incredible personality from both of them. Mr. Yo just calmly. He's been here before. He's calmly writing things down. Which Civ do I pick? Hmm, there's two of them. Takes a lot of thought. What if he goes this, then I go this? But mm -hmm. if he goes that, I go this, and that's basically <laughs> yep, essentially. <laughs> it. But you know, the approach thing is so tricky here for me because I don't see Acclivity as a good map for Yo. Mm -hmm. I, I can't remember a situation where Yo has thrived on that map. Typically, you're seeing early crossbowmen play. I don't recall that from Yo. He likes his knights and skirms. Yeah. So I, I, there's a chance here that Yo does something radical in the first couple of minutes. And it might even be perceived as like too ridiculous at times, but forward tower, even if you spot the gold, like if you deny that gold, wouldn't, I wouldn't, it wouldn't, wouldn't put it past Mr. Yo. Yeah. Even on Empire Wars forward towers, I see, I feel like we don't see forwards enough, but I guess these players are at such a high level that if you are even one second too late with your forward, you yep. can be super punished. You know, the other interesting thing here, I mean, really trying to dive deep here. So if you guys don't like complex details, then maybe just mute for five seconds. But the starting scout, mm -hmm. that Spearman hit that sometimes happens, that Spearman hit can be the difference between someone being able to mix in skirms right away or not. Yep. So you really got to keep that scout alive as well. Oh, God, this is... Uh, they need to start, man. I, I need to, like, jump up and down or something. This is... This is amazing. And hey, there's Dave. Humans, why do you do this? Dude, I I would be honored to be called a Kipchak. Okay. All right. Well, Cumans for Mr. Yo and uh, ACCM. If Mr. Yo is going Cumans, I think Britain's is just the play here yeah. for ACCM. Also, this might be the first time we've seen Britain's played on Acclivity. At least I, I might not have witnessed it. I think this it. might be the first time I've seen Britain's in this tournament. Play. Yeah. Because they've been banned a lot, and then there was one other instance where I think they were picked and not played. Was there? I can't remember one. Not many instances, anyways. I can't remember one. I know they were banned against Leary. Makes sense, which right? Which is probably pretty smart. <laughs> 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 Valis had that one on lockdown. <laughs> oh, man. I, it was so funny how, like, Leary ended up having that amazing performance and yeah. literally just said, I didn't know what to make, so I just made everything, you know? Yeah, but that's a strength in and of itself, right? You just trust yourself. Yep. You don't get too deep in the strategies, especially when you're the favorite going into a set. Just don't get too deep. Just yeah. do what feels right. Yo is one of those players too, right? Yeah. He might oh, not have that archer meta, but he can make it wacky, definitely. man. Definitely. I mean, he does, he does everything by feel, I think, once he gets in the game. The initial strategy is something, but... His his game sense, his map awareness is second to none. The and it is Hindustanis. Hindustanis. It's not Britons. It's Hindustanis. Wow. Okay. Well, you know. Still a good. I mean, it's a fantastic. It's, sit. It, you're right. Yeah. You got the Ghulams to counter the archers. You got the camels um, to counter the cavalry. You've got the cheaper Vils as well. I mean, Hindustanis have a lot of options. And then if you get into the super late game, you got those that hand cannon death ball, which is just so frustrating to fight against. Okay, so Yo had Cumans, and, and what am I missing now? Because I thought it was going to be Cumans, Britons, and now my um, brain's all over the place. It was Cumans, and why are you doing this to me, Tristan? Okay. I, see, see, I can't remember now. <laughs> well, it's okay. That's why we have the production team. They're going to put it up on screen. How can I not remember seconds. this? I just said it. Well, I, that's, yeah, it's your job, honestly. Berbers. Berbers. Oh, Berbers, of course. Berbers. Yes, of course. Yeah, we, we don't need... We, we don't, did talk about that. We yeah. no longer require the Civ draft. <laughs> <laughs> I have a mental image now, and here we go. Oh, Game my God, he's going for three. a TC? He's going for a TC right away. This, he's going this for a TC right never away. This happens on Acclivity. Now, that TC spot, 
is like the mother of all TC spots. Yep. Because it's on a, a wood line and, and a gold. if ACCM finds this, that's huge information. Where's for it him. going? He doesn't see any production <gasps> buildings. <gasps> he doesn't see the he town center. He doesn't see the town center. I mean, humans, they get cheaper uh, stables and archer ranges, right? So they can get that forward oh! pressure so early, but Mr. Yo just got <laughs> In absolutely world wow. start there by ACCM <laughs> against the wood line. Dude, <laughs> the level here is nuts. <laughs> but what do you do with no army if you're yo? I don't like it. I don't like it a lot. I would have preferred opening aggressively, but that's not always yo's play. Okay, here comes the second TC for Mr. Yo, and ACCM doesn't quite know what he's matching up no, against he doesn't. yet. I mean, he's killed the scout. He has to feel good about that. He's looking at walls, and his archer, unfortunately for him, I think it's just going to run into that second town center. Yeah, he should be paying really close attention to that, so I think he... It's not like he should lose it. Mm -hmm. um, like, here he should back up, I think. Yep. Yo, someone. This is him. Okay, there okay. we go. Well, he didn't back up. Oh, and, and he might dead. lose the spearman, too. No, he does not, but not the biggest deal in the world. For Mr. Yo not getting that one, as Mr. Yo has a ton on wood. He's trying to wow. get his farms down, and he's trying to get that food eco set up. And now if you're a ACCM, you're kind of panicking a little yeah. bit. You just lost yeah. an archer. Like, you're going to the food on the outside because you're like, I need to get up to Castle Age yesterday to start fighting this. Mr. Yo is going to start climbing in the villager lead. Wow. This is something that is usually punished. But ACCM didn't see it early enough and maybe wasn't prepared for this 2TC strategy. He was prepared to be the defender against the Cubans. Mm -hmm. I mean, and honestly, Yo picked the perfect spot for everything. Yep. Right? And he's fortunate his berries are on the back, too. He, he needs wood and food eco right now for skirms. That's it. He has all that locked down. ACCM, however, he's going to go to the next level with this, and he's going to try and go up to Castle Age. And Dave, I, I still feel like Yo is forever futile here. So even if he gets the 10 or 15 villager lead, a couple mangonels with crawls pose can finish his day pretty quickly. Yep. Of course, Yo can always make that siege workshop. Uh, what I like to see with Cumans a lot of time, making the siege workshop in feudal so you have mangonels ready right away. Yep. A lot of people forget lunch. about that, but I don't think yep. Yo ever would. No. Also, lots of idle time for Yo. He's got like three, four, five idols all the time. Really hard to put out all these fires. Very easy for someone like ACCM to focus yeah, and on the micro. One dead already. Yo is trying to deal with these archers. That should be two. With the skirmishers. That should be two. <gasps> got it. And it is. It is. And ACCM clicks up the castle age. He's only two villagers behind. Yeah. He will probably be around 12 vills behind by the time he reaches there. So we'll see what that number is exactly. The only thing that's kind of weird here, like if he had Britons, this would be so much better. But the only thing that's kind of weird is you don't get Knight. Mm -hmm. And so typically you have Knight Siege. Camel Siege isn't really the most exciting thing in the world with killing Vils and taking out TCs and whatnot. But I mean, it's still something that can't be stopped right now in Siege. Yep. As Mr. Yo continues to boom his economy. If Mr. Yo ever actually does get to the castle age, though, with that amount of farms, his eco is going to be insane. If ACCM can't do the damage early, you yep. look at the farm count 27 farms right now. Yep. Mr. Yo is very, very impressive. He's actually getting town watch, so he's going to stall at the villager lead a little bit as he's at 48 villagers, still 50 seconds to go for ACCM. He's eight villagers behind right now, and that will continue to grow. So a trap you can fall into here with humans is continuing to produce vills because players think if I have a town center, I want to produce all the oh, time. Lost nice snipe. One. Great snipe. Those archers have just um, gotten value. I think Yo is experienced enough to market an idol here. Like, stop producing vills. You know you have a lead. Drop a market. Just click up in one of those TCs before you mm -hmm. produce more. ACCM already has the villager coming across, too. We can see it right there. And that's going to drop a siege workshop. And he's going to start mangonelling this TC over here. As the market goes up for Yo, ACCM drops that Siege Workshop outside of the view of Mr. Yo's TC. If Mr. Yo knew that was there, he could maybe prepare, but... Look at the food for ACCM. There's nothing stopping him from catching up in bills. Yeah. He's dropping the second town center. He's going to have some siege. Yo is about to click up. Yeah, he Which did. TC does he click up in? Not this one. Oh, that's that's actually such a heads up play. He's like, but oh. what if? <laughs> oh, man. That's such a heads up play. And it's going to be an armored elephant. I don't know if I Ooh. agree with the armored elephant. I actually, elephants. 
I think if you do it, you commit, right? So if you commit to one elephant, you got to go for three. Is that two. double siege workshop for ACCM, or does he have an armored elephant and then a mangonel queued it's, up I behind? think it's Jen and mangonel after. Okay. This is like, right? You've got to kind of commit to one or the other, yeah. I think. But again, if you had knights, I like the armored elephant. But you're not going to have knights. So even if you take the TC out, camels are like... Good job from those They're skirms, by the way. Seven kills on those skirms. Yeah, and Yo didn't overmake army too, no. which is really smart. No, he didn't. He got fletching, which was just enough. He lost a few vills along the way. He still has a villager lead here. Nine villagers oh, as he's man. a minute and 15 seconds away. And ACCM hides the armored elephant inside the siege workshop. He's going to pop out with both elephant and mangonel. Ooh, that, that's kind of sad. <laughs> you had like a free shot before he yeah. noticed. I'm curious to see how this goes. Yo's siege workshop in feudal. Perfect. That's exactly what you should do. It here. saves you an extra like 30 seconds, which is massive in these types of engagements. As ACCM's like, I kill your farms. Yeah, it just, if it, you know, I guess they do cost something different, but double mangonel would feel really good right about mm -hmm. now. It would. But you know what's interesting is Yo's gonna think ACCM's all in. He's three TCs. He's got no, really good I, economy. I, I think Yo knows that ACCM isn't all in. Okay. Right? Like, you see, you only see three camels. He didn't even upgrade his archers. Like, yeah, maybe. He's got one Mangonel and uh, he's Hindustanis. I mean, I, I think Yo is perfectly aware that ACCM is at least two TC behind this. Well, the TC is going down pretty quickly here. And man, is ACCM being patient. Pikeman for Mr. Yo. Pikeman, he's got a couple knights here to maybe run in, snipe the siege, or eco damage potentially. And he's going to go Pikeman, and Pikeman do quite well against Camel, Armored Elephant, Mangonel. If the Pikeman upgrade is in when he actually engages, we still got 10 seconds on both Squires. And the Pikeman upgrade is ACCM goes for a Monk right there, and he's got an Outpost now giving him tons of vision on what Mysterio is planning. And just like that, with everything we said that could happen, it is 59 Villagers to 59. Yep. Yo, obviously with potential to push this back, Ooh. but the siege matters an awful lot here. Does ACCM see that Mangonel? Does ACCM see it? I think he did I see it. I think he spotted it. He spotted it. Mr. Oh. Yo! Oh my survives, god. Survives, but the camels will come in. The camels will come in now. Good job to back away, though. And Yo repairs that. He's got another... No, he doesn't have another Mangonel on the way. Cav Archer is now being added from ACCM as he repairs that Mangonel. He's trying to get a good shot. He's trying to get good engagements against the Camels. And I think these are good engagements oh, against those Camels. Man. All of the Camels dying. Here come the Knights And the Monk the just got a conversion. Side. The Monk just chose Pikeman. He should have chose Knight for dinner. Oh, God. In the end... Oh, what? 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 He didn't die? Hello? Elephant dies, everything dies because of that. What in the world? That was, I'm not sure exactly what happened there, but I can tell you that Yo is very happy about it. We bless the Mangonels around here. Oh my goodness, how did it not, how did it not die there? 71 villagers wow. versus 63. ACCM, he didn't hard commit to fighting. He doesn't have bloodlines there. He did get cav armor. Now he might not want to make more camels. Mm -hmm. He's got Cav Archers, however, again, no bloodlines. And as he goes for conversions here, Dude. and he loses the Monk Yo, the Yo judge that. Yo judge that perfectly. His Mangonel was on one HP. He repaired it. He brought the Knights in. The Knights coming in from the other side were the biggest part there. Yep. As ACCM now tries to find extra damage, he's trying to distract Mr. Yo with some Camel Raids. But they're only Camels at the end of the day. And Yo is pushing out this way. Yo has 67 Villagers. ACCM is 10 Villagers ahead now of that 2TC Cumin Boom. But Mr. Yo has managed to defend without taking that much damage. Insane. Like, everyone in the back room right now is like, th this is like such a dumb choice. Yeah. <laughs> like, Kumin 2TC on Eclivity. Like, why? But for Yo, he makes it work, man. And ACCM, he's got enough eco rolling, but does he have the army at the moment? Here come the Knights. Knights still with no armor, so they're taking all sorts of damage from that TC. It did manage to delay that one range as ACCM is adding another one, maybe thinking about more Cav Archers. Yeah, queues up some more behind this. Still trying to keep his initial Cav Archers alive. His forward is completely done at this point. Now it's Mr. Yo's turn to either choose to add extra TCs or come forward with a Siege Workshop of his own. I'm a little confused. It's been a long day and it's an insane moment. But he's not producing Knights and he's not producing Pikes. Okay, so he, we did catch a him couple more nights. in a moment where yeah. he wasn't producing. Yeah, he was getting Bloodlines, so his stable was a little bit busy, I think. Yeah, could have been that. Obviously, Bodkin Arrow is going to really help out when the TCs get garrisoned, yep. and it's going to help the Cav Archers. And the Cav Archer number is going to be about 10 pretty soon. 
So I'm liking ACCM's position more and more. Is he adding another stable, Mr. Yo? I think he is at the front there. I really, a, a second ago, I was about to say, I think he could all in night before I mean, the Cav Archer match. This is, where, this is where the farm eco that's been working for so long, he set up in the Feudal Age, yeah. is really going to benefit him, and, right? And look at the gold Mr. Yo has. I mean, he hasn't been using it. Oh, and he's killing the Cav Archer goodness. numbers. That is that is a lapse for ACCM. He took his eye off it for one second. Mr. Yo turned around with Pikeman. That should never get any kills on Cav Archers. ACCM was busy with something else. And Mr. Yo takes advantage. If you're out there wondering what a classic Yo move would be, just yeah. wait a moment, okay? Because plus two armor is coming in on the Knights. He's got three stables. And I think we're going to see a couple villagers running forward, forward here soon. Siege <laughs> workshop, yeah. yes. Oh, wait, no, that's a lumber camp. Let's and not get too a lumber excited. Camp at the moment, he's working away on that, uh, that monastery over there and the forward base. He doesn't want that coming back to haunt him again. I think he's even adding another stable at home, Mr. Yo. Oh, dude, both players. He's adding another both stable, players. dude. He's going to go four stable. And both players are going to make a castle. I think ACCM goes at home. Is he out of stone right now at 590? Okay, never mind. Never go. mind. Thank you, Mapu. Mapu was like right on top of he that was. before he even... Oh, my goodness. Not that we're surprised, Mapu. Yeah, I know. All right, Knights are coming in, and that's a oh, great wow. find. That is a fantastic find for Mr. Yo. He knew the gold was there previously. He was going to explore and see if ACCM was on that. And he's going to kill not one, not two, but three villagers as ACCM has this ball of cab archers oh, to respond. That's so but ACCM, tough for ACCM. He needs walls, dude. He needs walls to prevent and, this. And Yo's got him spinning now yep. because he's got a chase. And how many times have we seen this with cav archers? How they just, they're great in one position, but yep. they're not great when there's knights running through your and eco. And now the knights have plus two. And now the knights are just camping under the TCs because Mr. Yo is like, I'll take out some of your cav archers and, and I'll send up. one knight over there. This is what he's so good at. He's adding another third TC behind this. Remember, remember folks, he has four stables he could produce. There they from. are. There are the Vils. They're coming forward. I guarantee it. In the middle of the map, here they and, go. And it's Mr. Yo. So, of course. It's forward. Yeah. I mean, he could choose to make this castle defensively. He could choose to try and pick away with his night raids. But it is Mr. Yo, and he refuses to compromise. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Yo is going to be coming forward with a castle after that incredible oh! defense. And it's Mr. Yo. So, of course, it's not oh, no. forward enough. Delete your range, ACCM. You have to delete your range. You need more surface delete area. It. He's got to delete both. Oh my god. Man, he's got cav ah. archers though. He's got cav archers. He's deleting a range. The castle ah. from Mr. Yo is looking like it's going to go up. Where are the cav archers? Can they get around in time to deny that? He has to delete a house on the ah, other side. Man, the castle's so good. The enemy's base gets destroyed before it's even completed. Oh boy, ACCM. Is he going to get this castle up? This is an absolutely heartbreaking moment for him. Mr. Yo is in his comfort zone. ACCM does get the castle up. Petards, man. Loses a lot of villagers <laughs> on the way. And damn, this was such a crazy moment provided to you by the one and only Mr. Yo. And uh, remember, he, he got spanked the first game, right? And like, game two, obviously, he dominated, but. ACCM's had the Ville lead for a long time, but man, will that change. When you've got a castle sitting on your yep. face like that, your economy's not the same. And now we're I gonna think... see Capped Ram and Castle Age. Yep. The Cumin Capped Ram and class. Castle Age. And, and how is our Hindustani player supposed to defend against this? I guess he's going for another Siege Workshop of, behind. Yep. The Knights are over. Oh, that's just an excellent find, isn't it? ACCM has had no time to wall this, and he's even adding farms behind there completely open. And you, you can't sit there and say, why is ACCM not at home with the Cav Archers? Because if he stays at home with the Cav Archers, he's yep. dead. Yo's going to have him running it's, around all the time. I don't I don't even he think ACCM can defend against those Cap Rams, because I think the castle from Mr. Yo ranges the Mangonels. Yep. I think he can, the only way he can defend against that is making petards to, to and kill he, them. And he is. So there's a world where he could like use the petards on the castle and also the capture at the same time. Yeah. That this is a nice counter attack, obviously, yep. but Yo's got five more knights in queue, and the camels, the, the food eco is not there for the camels. Everything's falling apart here for ACCM. So sad for him, but this and is the most Yo game ever. Yo has a TC up in the north for some reason. We don't know why, but it's there. <laughs> <laughs> ACCM has his stone over there as well. He sees the TC. Mr. Yo capped Ram and Castle H. When is the last wow. time we saw this maneuver?
the only Civ that can get it, pushing back the castle, simply not enough petards for ACCM. And ACCM, the front of his base is now simply wide open as he goes for another castle by the stone and the gold. He's going to play on, and why not? I mean, you still have 102 villagers. When, when Yo has you in this type of position, it's just a matter of when you die, right? He might be creative in how he does it, but I can't sit here when it's 120 pop for both and say what ACCM does because we've seen Yo do it yep. a million times. But it is still very close. Yep. ACCM, he's got his castle up now protecting the other side of his eco. He found it. He and found he, it. He's going to have to he's counter. He's like, Wait, this mining camp is here. D where are they? <laughs> <laughs> Man, that castle's gonna come in clutch though, doesn't it? It protects the stone and the gold and the farming eco. And I, the counter attack's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, he's leaving himself so exposed, but he has to counter. And he's found the villagers. Uh oh. He's found the villagers in the north. Luckily, they weren't mining anything, so they weren't effectively doing anything at the moment as the knights loop around once again and Mr. Yo continues back to add Yo's knights. Base, back of Yo's base, back oh, of Yo's base, back yeah, of Yo's base. Oh, yeah, there is base. a yellow ball there. Wow, great raid there from ACCM. You're always going to have to go back there with knights to deal with that right away. Yeah, I, I, the thing is, it's a, I, those are camels that attack faster yeah. and cav archers with ballistics. He does have four stables, though, and he's building yeah. up knights, and he has pikemen al along with it. Yo did react to that quite quickly, and he didn't lose that many villagers. I love the effort from ACCM as Yo goes Agreed. for another castle in the north. ACCM is doing all the things that you should do in this position. He's dividing Yo's attention, and Yo uh, <laughs> is oh counting man. on ACCM's attention being divided as he castles all of those farms. ACCM trying to go for more production buildings there. Oh, it is getting so tough Whoa. for him, but Whoa. Armored Elephants, <laughs> wait a second. Where did they oh come from? Oh my god, and that was a shock. We haven't looked there in a while. No, I thought I, that was just going to stay up forever. I mean, the petards were in that castle. So you have to imagine petards did 50% of that work. Mm -hmm. That's nice. But unfortunately, you still need to expand elsewhere, and you still need continuous counterattacks. So let's see if he can uh, work that out here. Yeah, ACCM says, you have capped rams, I have armored elephants. Yeah. It is, I understand that Hindustanis have great options and arguably better options, but it, this has been considerably harder for ACCM to play mm -hmm. over the last five minutes. This position is just so difficult. Populations play. are still fairly even though, and ACCM is more condensed, so he can deal yeah. with these night raids a little bit better. He's got the castle over there, he's still got gold access, he's still got stone access. The question for him is like, does he keep going with the Cav Archer approach? I guess he is. He's got three Archer mm -hmm. ranges producing, he just got Thumb Ring, but Yo is just going to keep picking away at ACCM's economy. It's yeah. only a matter of time before he goes around to that back edge, too. I haven't seen Yo loop around all the yeah. way to that back edge. And I, I honestly, I think as well. There it is. If he keeps that right corner away from ACCM, this is going to be oh, really that's, strong. Oh, that's so bad. And Yo is coming around with another knight army on the other side, too. It's so tough to it's judge, right? So... Like, you have to counter, mm -hmm. which he's still doing, and he can kill tons of villagers there, and well, he might. But if he counters, that's just one less military unit he doesn't and have he's, to And he's going for a castle because he can't really fit one that will protect everything up on that ridge line. The knights are still there. He's going for a castle defensively. He has, he has managed to save his villagers yet another time. ACCM is holding in here, and he's still at 121 vills as he's pushing through the center with the cab archers. But Yo, I mean, ACCM just needs to take his eyes off his army for one second, and Yo will demolish yeah. it. It, it. With cab archers, it's so difficult. And, and these castles are on the same part of your screen. Mm -hmm. Would have been good if it was MBL versus Cap Watch earlier, but yep. in this case, you need so much more map control. It's a lot of Cap Archers. He's got 12 in the queue. And they're dangerous, right? They're dangerous, but they can only be at one spot at one time. And wow. Yo continues to harass, and Yo's on the way to Imperial Age. Yeah, and I mean, we, we've seen this situation many times where someone has stabilized so well, and they even get to Camel Archers, Cav Archers, even mm -hmm. Pikemen, but... Once imp upgrades come in on these stable units, it's going to be virtually impossible to stop. What does Yo do? Just Cavalier and then add some yeah, his Hussar equals. potentially? He's got 59 on gold. 60 60 on gold? On what? Gold. 
that's a lot. <laughs> <Where>? <laughs> that's crazy, man. Uh, <laughs> you could easily go Paladin. 53 on food, 48 on gold now. Yeah. You could easily go Paladin. I mean, he also has 144 bills and counting at this point. Yeah. I like how he just gave up on stone. So I don't need that. Adds another stable. He's got 145 bills. He's still queuing up some more ACCM at 131. It's a strong eco for him, but he's been running around the worker efficiency for ACCM 47% in the last minute. He's really been struggling. This this game is just ridiculous. This series is amazing. And I'm beginning to sink lower and lower into my chair for ACCM because, let's face it, the guy's been trying his hardest and he's played so well. Yeah, and that's just ugly. That sums up the state of the game for yeah. him right now. I mean, he's, he's just trying know. to take from that one wood line. So many villagers in the screen. Thank you, Mapu. We got 52 villagers in this area. Cav Archer's now dealing with fires in the back of his economy when he really needs to be pushing. This might be a situation where he sees Yo get Imperial Age, and it's just, it's super demoralizing for him. Yeah. Because he knows he probably had a good position in this game, like a really good position. It's just so tough with Yo as Cummins. We actually, every time we watch Yo on an open map go Cummins, we have the same conversation. It's like, so risky. Oh my God, the other person's yeah. pushing. And then in mid Castle Age, he's always got that eco turning itself into night raids. Yep. It's a lot of cav archers. It's 32 cav archers, but is he does he have potential to go to Imperial Age, get those additional upgrades? Not really. No. At the moment, and does he have any potential to stop the Imperial Age army from Yo and ACCM knows he's like, <laughs> if I'm gonna stay in this game, I screw the raids. Yeah. I, I can't deal with that. I have to do damage to my opponent. He's coming forward, and Yo knows that ACCM knows that. So Yo knows that he can go to ACCM's base. We all know. Everyone's a knower. We all know. Everyone and is a knower. I think we all know what direction this game is going. Actually, a good thing for Yo to lose a couple villagers over the last couple minutes, because uh, he's just going to fill that population space with Cavalier. Yeah. And he's even taking out the TCs. That's all the farming eco from ACCM. He's down to 19 on food. I mean, he needs to go up to the next stage. He's not going to have the food for it. Once again, that area of the economy is very ugly for him. And Mr. Yo has cleaned up that TC. He's even just whittling down the Cav Archer numbers at this point. Like, he's perfectly content to lose those knights if he takes out five yeah, Cav Archers. He doesn't have to micro. He, yeah. just, he just sends just them patrol in. in. Yeah, just patrol. He it's could even fine. wall this with a villager and stick them in there. And he, as he lets that army fight, he goes elsewhere. But I think this is uh, I think this is the end of the road for ACCM, unfortunately. I mean, he's such a such a beautiful human being. I think we That's would call him a beautiful it. Age of Empires player. And he came from so far away. He had a great showing. But Mr. Yo is just rolling over the remnants of his eco. And this is. This is all before Paladin, by the way. Yep. Albert Deer. And look at the amount of gold that Yo has right now. Yep. But think about it, if you have a 1% chance, you should play on in this scenario. I think 1% may be fair, even though we know that Yo will probably make that zero. Also, the population's 132 for the time being, so you don't want to reside until you're probably below 100 and behind an age. And those camels actually clear that. So, you know, he's got some positives to look for. Also, still counterattacking. Like, it, the fact that he's continually counterattacked this whole game is so good because then he is dead if he can't get the counters in. Yeah, and there's the trebuchet attacking that TC. Camel is pushing him back a little bit. ACCM refuses to give up. He's losing more villagers now, though, and there's no stone, there's no gold underneath that castle anymore as he goes for another castle a little bit further forward just to secure a wood line. Paladin is on the way, and Imperial Age is still far out of reach for ACCM. Three on wood. Three on yeah. wood only. Paladin's pretty rare to see in a 1v1 just because if you have the resources and the time to get Paladin, mm -hmm. you probably already have the resources. Uh, the already a win winning position. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that alone should show you how confident Yo is. Sure, he could have done some other things. He could have gone for Siege Ram and Halb as well, but he's content with how this is going. Eco probably KD for Mr. Yo, 140 kill yeah. versus 60. I mean, At ACCM... He's been doing well with the raids, but Yo has just been killing everything. At one point, Yo had 95 eco kills, mm -hmm. and he had 15 deaths. And that was maybe like 10 minutes ago now. Cav Archer Mass is at, down to nine. They've Eight. lived a good life. Seven. Yeah, yep. they've lived a very good life. They have, and they have 33 kills. Also, Yo's only 150 pop, which is 
A little surprising to me. <laughs> yeah, he's only got four Cavalier in the queue. Yeah. Okay, he sells, he sells some wood and he's getting guilds now. I guess he's putting all his resources into technologies at the moment. Still has the trebuchets alive and well, and he's going to attack that castle. And here come the camels from ACCM. The fight in this man is unbelievable. Yeah. And, and the fact he's only 30 population behind when Yo's been sending everything at him tells the whole story, but he calls the GG. He gives the good luck next. Classy, classy man. Classy. Heart's broken a little bit here, Dave, because am... ACCM went up 1-0, but at the same time, we just witnessed greatness. Yo with Cumans. I mean, we had doubts about Mr. Yo. We had doubts. He had doubts about himself, but in the end of the day, he proved that he is a top player. He is a contender. He is the Red Bull Wallala 1 champion. Absolutely heartbroken for ACCM, but not surprised at all as Mr. Yo is a beast. And we're gonna have him in here shortly for the interview. Thank you for staying tuned with us. I mean, it's been a long day. It's late right now, but I think it's well worth it to experience those last two series that we have. Absolutely incredible. Both 2-1 best of threes and uh, both the, like, the very best Age of Empires I think they can be found right now. We had some epic sets today. Yeah, we did. Uh, they were they were unbelievable, and we kind of saved the best for last. It felt like yep. with MBL Capoch, um, just as competitive as this set here, mm -hmm. and then ACCM Yo. Um, I I'm a little speechless at the moment. You know, yeah. we're just heading into the quarterfinals tomorrow, so I'm sure we'll have a conversation shortly on what exactly is going to unfold. But still, like my heart's pumping. It's going to be tough for me to sleep tonight, but I better get some Z's because it's going to be crazy tomorrow. It's going to be even better tomorrow. All right, Riley is now with Mr. Yo, and he's going to tell us some of his thoughts about that series. Thanks very much, boys. Yes, I'm joined here in our feature match area. Mr. Yo, my goodness me, it is very late here. It is half past 11 at night. You must be exhausted after a marathon set of games, but also you must be feeling a lot of relief right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm really, I like, I said it's the last one, so I got really tired and I practiced a lot today trying to find my find my skills back. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I, I'm not quite used to the settings and I'm really happy that I win. Well, I, I want to talk about what this tournament means to you because, of course, sadly you weren't here last year, but you have won one of these. You won the first one, the Red Bull Wallalo. You know, you are a Red Bull champion. Uh, it must just be incredible to have made it through to the quarterfinals, given how much you want to prove yourself here in the castle. Yes, yes. Last year was unfortunate for me. Uh, I failed to come, and I hope this, this time I can prove myself that I'm worthy of the spot. Well, I think you've already done that. I mean, what, a, what an impressive performance here from both of you as well. I mean, ACCM, once again, playing his heart out, a very worthy competitor. I think he's, uh, he's acquitted himself very well. But what was it for you, particularly in that last game, that helped you grind through the, the pressure, the, the constant, unrelenting, uh, uh, you know, the opposition that you were facing? What helped you get across the line? Uh, first of all, I think human is really good in Empire War. Like, it's hard to stop. And I opened with two TCs, and he was harassing me all the time mm -hmm. with archers, and then mangonel and camels. Uh, I think I trans, uh, transit to Pikes. That was the most important part. And then um, those two sneaky knights that killing his mangonels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what, uh, what I did there. That stopped his push. Made a huge amount of difference in the end. And Mr. Yo, you've made it through to the quarters. I, I don't really want to keep you any longer. It's very late. It's time for you to get some rest. It's time yes, for some more to get some rest. Mr. Yo, congratulations. Looking forward to seeing you in the quarterfinals. Thank you. Thank you. Speaking of the quarterfinals, my friend, as we head back into our casting chamber, it is time for us to determine our bracket. And we are going to be doing this with a random draw, a semi-random draw at least. The way this works is that we have players from Group A and players from Group B who will be uh, spread out throughout the bracket here as I join Nilly in the caster chamber here for us to determine who will play whom tomorrow. Nilly, now we aren't going to be talking tonight about which order they'll be playing in. We're just going to be determining the, de determining the bracket and we'll be figuring out and of course announcing the order of this match here. But in front of us, Nilly, uh, Nilly you can explain to uh, the viewers here what we've got going on. We're doing essentially just a random draw for uh, for the, the bracketing in the uh, in the quarters. Exactly that. Both groups had two people that went 2-0 in their group and two people that went 2-1 in their group. And we've 
basically cross them. So we have this group is the two zeros mm -hmm. from group A, and those are the two zeros from group B. Right. So the, the, the two zeros from group A will be playing against the two ones from group B, namely Leary and now Mr. Yo with that win. So mm -hmm. without further ado, we are going to find out who is going to be playing against Leary tomorrow. Remember, these are not the order of the matches that, or not necessarily the order of the matches that we'll be seeing tomorrow. But right now we are going to be finding out who will be playing against Leary. It is going to be one of these two here. I'll pop this down so and I it can open it up. You have the option to choose between the Viper and Velesse. Viper and Velesse undefeated in in uh, in their group and against uh, uh, playing against Leary tomorrow. It will be the Viper. Ooh. It will be the Viper versus Leary as one of our quarterfinals. Ooh. That is going to be huge. Two champions, two Red Bull champions facing off. In the quarterfinals, nearly only one of them can advance. Yeah, and one will be out. This is like arguably the best two players we have, the finals of last year. And I talked to Liri earlier, he wanted the Viper. Well, he's got what he wanted. Of course, that means that Mr. Yo's opponent in the quarterfinals will, as we said before, be Valesse, the only remaining player in, our, uh, in, in the group there. So Liri against the Viper and, uh, well, sorry, it says Valas there. It is, in fact, Valesse, the other Finnish player. Uh, we've uh, fixed that very quickly there. Valesse versus Mr. Yo, another great matchup. Absolutely. And Mr. Yo, he said he wasn't happy, right? That's why he spent the full day preparing, mm -hmm. came up with some interesting builds. For example, behind the scenes, we got to know that Mr. Yo didn't really practice the 2TC build with Cumans. Mm -hmm. He played it for the first time. So if he gets more time to think, He's looking good against Valesa. We'll find out how he goes tomorrow, of course, against Valesa, who's also been in terrific touch so far. But now we move to our other group here, and we're going to find out who is playing against Jordan. It's going to be one of these two players here. The two zeros out of that group were Hera and... Tato. Tato. So it'll be one of those two players again. This is Jordan's opponent in Could the quarterfinals. Could be juicy. Jordan's opponent in the quarterfinals oh. is Tato. It is a GL All-Star match between Jordan and Tato. Obviously, what both would have tried to avoid, right? They rather would have played against M uh, MBL and Hera there. But that also means we will get the rematch. The rematch. Of the most epic set we had in Red Bull Volo 5. In the quarterfinals, once again, it is Hera versus MBL. I challenge you, Nilly, to name a more iconic matchup in the Red Bull Wallolo series. Last year, one of the biggest matches that we saw, and we're going to see it again tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it feels so weird. Like, those, are, how are those quarterfinals? Those, if I read them, yeah. they're more like semifinals and finals. Yeah, I mean, any one of these could easily be a semi. I mean, many of them could be the final as mm -hmm. well, so... Mm -hmm. We've got a hell of a day lined up for us ourselves tomorrow, Nilly, and I cannot wait. But right now, as we've already mentioned, it is very late here, my friends. We do hope you've enjoyed today's broadcast. It has been fantastic to have your company as we have experienced the thrills and spills of Red Bull Wallalo, the ups and downs, the smiles and frowns. We've had so much action. It's been a huge day of competition. But Nilly, tomorrow, I think it's going to be a bit better. It's crazy, right? We are going into best of fives. We have fewer bands. So some of the civilizations that might be your favorites, mm -hmm. but you couldn't see them because they were banned all the time. Yep. Tomorrow is your chance. Longer sets, the better player should win. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all of that, my friends, and more waiting for you tomorrow as we continue coverage of Red Bull Wallalo live from Heidelberg Castle. My name's Riley, the host, of course, of this event, and it's been great to have your company on behalf of Nilly, the rest of the casters, and, of course, all of the people working their magic behind the cameras, the entire production staff. We'd like to thank you for being with us today. You make the success of this show possible, and we deeply appreciate your, uh, your attention and your company, and we're looking forward to having it once again for tomorrow's quarterfinals. Until then, on behalf of all of us here from Heidelberg Castle, this is Riley Knight saying... Good night, we'll see you tomorrow. Welcome back to live coverage of Red Bull Wallalo Legacy for our second day. We've already got four qualified players going to the quarterfinals already. Today, we're gonna to find the other four. So these players, they can't leave anything on the table.
92. Is that amazing? <laughs> oh, there's gonna be four villains down, and this is no look at no looking good. Why you don't make just a house? In all the resources, guys, you need a house when you have Khmer. To another joke, right? <laughs> because it was GG. <laughs> Where we are not going to look, sorry Mapo, but you're gonna be crazy after this game. But he got what? He got the monks, he's not converting. Look at the monks idling. Look at the monks idling and he's not converting the knight and the knight is killing four scorpions. What is he doing with the monks? He's not using the monks, nearly. Use the monks. But these three mangoes, he cannot make that castle. Oh, no. Or the mango, no! Ooh, he take one, he's gonna take another. Balas, <laughs> he's losing all the mangoes. I can't believe he's losing three mangoes. He lost three mangoes, not for one. And now he's gonna make the castle. Oh. Oh, oh no! no! Come on! <laughs> Give the man a chance! <laughs> Come on! Boom! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cavalier, they can do what they're doing here yep. to the trebuchets, and then the theory will have nothing. 